The, oh, oh, oh the, the, the absolute It'd be really funny if, like, this man. the first suggestion he has is just batshit insane, and Dizzy like, well, <laughs> whatever. Well, I heard that his uh, plans for the sequel, his own sequel scripts, like, right, were a bit far out there. He was going to go into, like, the wills, which are, like, the gods of the uh, Star Wars universe and stuff. Have you heard that, those rumors? I've heard that rumor. I heard there was yeah. some crazy stuff where he plays, like, they they go inside of bodies to shrink themselves down and talk to the Midichlorians or something. Or something yeah. What? I don't know. <laughs> I know. What's that? What's that old movie where they the shrink wills? themselves down and go into the human body? <laughs> the incredible. I, I, honey, I shrunk I'm the Midichlorian. <laughs> <Ant -Man. laughs> I'm picturing little cells with like high pitched voices as far as like. Hello, large ones. We are the Midichlorians. And yet, and yet, better than the sequels. <laughs> we are the Metaclorians. We speak for the Jedi. We shall teach you the ways of the Force. We'd all give it a shot. I know we would. Why did you say Force like that? We do it for impact. See, it already oh, sounds God. like a very interesting story, does it not? Uh, I, I'm, mm -hmm. intri I'm intrigued. I, I want to know now. And I give it. It can't be worse. Well, my goodness, gosh. But why? Why must you say this, Ringman? Why? Well, that it can't be worse. Yes, why do you hate? Why do you hate? No answer, see? Why is your heart so fear of Sorry, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure like, my internet's lagging big time, so I missed <laughs> all that. <laughs> I was just asking why you must hate on things. Leave Disney alone. They didn't. They didn't uh, do right. nothing. Leave Disney alone, you <laughs> Disney didn't do nothing. When in reality, they did a lot of things. Not the funnest of things, as well. Disappointing things. Um, you know what? While... Hey, chat, saying hi. How are you, chat? I was Mr. gonna say Christ. I can I can give you some questions that were left over for you. Uh. Yeah, uh, well, sure. well, in in just get a few th the random ones. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a there's a couple there's a couple of comments in the uh, in the um yeah in in the comments. Uh, <laughs> I haven't slept much, guys. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> but just to, just to answer those, no, uh, my surgery is tomorrow, so this is like my last big hurrah before before I'm out out of commission. So gonna well, enjoy it. Yes, let's make it a fun one. What a fun question to begin with. Check out this wonderful super chat that I saved for you. Chad, for your next book, please get a real publishing house to get you an editor. No offense, but your story had all the ideas but died in execution. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. But I, I, it's a valid opinion. I disagree on, on certain levels because there are, there are some, like, you know, choices that I made absolutely on purpose and some people didn't like it because like for instance the more expository nature like mine is what is considered a hard fantasy where the uh the reasons behind how everything works matters and it's important to understand it and things mm -hmm. um and so what some people try and say well an editor would have thought well, like obviously would have cut those longer expositions and stuff and uh, at first when i heard those the feedback i was like yeah, maybe, right? But I actually, since then, I've hired a, like a really good editor to do a second edition of the book, and we've recently completed it. And so I went through like several rounds of additional editing on the book because there were some like little things that I, even I was like, all right, I want to iron out those wrinkles and stuff. And went through beta readers all over again and stuff. And when it got back to those things, I kept them in because it's like, I, I like it, and there's a lot of people who really enjoyed the detail of the world building and stuff, and that's just the, that I decided, you know, this is the style of book I wanted to write for this one. Uh, and so, there is that. But if uh, other things are bothering people, well, um, uh, yeah, there is a second edition that the editing is already completed, and uh, in terms of uh, like a uh, proper publisher release, right, uh there's something in the works as well so when i was talking to brandon sanderson he actually suggested that um uh, i 
have my book a uh, get it uh, a print only publishing deal with one of the smaller presses he did this with emperor's soul and he recommended his own agent I was like that's a great idea and i wanted to wait until the second edition was done and now it is done i've sent it to brandon's agent uh, joshua bilms is a champion and he currently has the manuscript and is looking through it so uh, so yeah there are some cool things happening on that front that's nifty oh, indeed um let's have a look here well, I guess this could be a follow-up. Shad, any advice on marketing a book? Have a YouTube channel. I feel like you may have it said helps. that before. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that helps. <laughs> it really does help. Like That's one of the reasons I started YouTube. Not the only reason, but uh, having you know an audience. And I was very lucky with... Uh, well, not lucky, but I was very intentional with... Uh, a subject kind of theme of my channel because basically it meant anyone who was subscribed to my channel had a very good chance they'd like my the the themes but also <laughs> the genre of my novel and stuff um you know fantasy swords and everything and so uh that meant basically my youtube channel was it was not only it was a good marketing platform, but it was targeted marketing. It was targeting targeting an audience that was like perfectly, you know, it would be interested in my novels. So, that, how much did thing. you pay yourself to advertise? Nothing. Oh my god, you did it I, for free? Whoa! I haven't, I haven't paid. Oh, actually, uh, there are there are small things I paid, like um, Ingram Spark. They do the print book. They give you the option of having your book featured in their like um, their catalog, and it's like one hundred and fifty dollars or something. And so it's like, yeah, that sounds good. I, I I paid for that. I haven't done any Amazon um, publishing or anything because, I mean, I get to advertise for myself, uh, and uh, and the value in that is tremendous because my current rates for how much you know I charge like other ad, you know companies to advertise through shadowversity it's 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 significant now because of the size of the channel and i get that for free and so the comparative value of the um of the advertising i've been able to give to myself is over a hundred thousand dollars now uh so it's crazy but i can do yeah. that for free because of the youtube channel okay. shadow businessman right here Oh, you know, I do, I do some, I do, do some of these things. more than one lesson in Shadowversity. Are you going to build one of them eventually, a university yeah. called Shadowversity? Pro well, <laughs> that's what my YouTube channel is, really. I mean, uh, the end game. Uh, I, I love the decentralization of information, the freedom of information and stuff. And, and so I don't think I'd ever put myself, you know, behind a paywall. This is why I would never do a Skillshare course or anything like that. Because I love the fact that you can get information for free, and I would I just want to encourage that, you know. Um, and so I wouldn't ever really make a exclusive kind of university thing or anything like that. I'd just put it out for free on YouTube. Well, why don't you do the the prank invasion thing for thirty dollars a month? I can teach you how to pay actresses to make videos <laughs> with you. <laughs> God. The amount of scams like that you can find on the internet for the low, low price of fifty nine ninety nine, I'll teach you how to be a complete fraud. <laughs> this novel brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, dun, 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 the, the most ambitious RPG of <laughs> so, yeah. the Sorry, yeah. I know, it's it's been hilarious because uh, I'll be you know of course I watch all the streams and the raid coming up and everything and not listening to it now I have my I have my time I can talk about raid oh here we go is that I turned him down it's like no. oh this man here yeah it's like, no, I know how much they're paying sometimes too so yeah, that's really know. quite yeah and by war of clans like mobile yeah, ad, mobile sponsorship war of clans look no shade on guys you know who you advertise on because you oh, like, I understand the oh, whole YouTube thing. it depends we, we, we mock you can we, throw we some shade jovially. yeah, yeah. Oh, it well, depends I, I just like that I I really dislike the way that they try and. They, they give you such a scripted thing and you just feel like, you know, you're lying when you do it and everything. And, and, and especially like some of, I won't say which one specifically, but they purposely misrepresent, you know, they're like millions of people are playing. And it's like, what, what live active players? Mm. That's not no, like, they download no, it. Or are they like idle farming like, or something? The most played games is like, you know, um, uh, 
uh, Fortnite and stuff, and they don't have a million concurrent players. This is, you're talking about downloads. It's like, no, they always want you to say, millions of people are playing this game. It's like, right now, oh. this very second, including me, and you can play with me right now during this video. And, and, then, and then they want you to play the game. I'm like, no, you look, if you want to pay me, you just recommend it. And I won't, I'm, I, I don't like saying it's good because I personally, personally, for me, I hate mobile games. And so I'll say, all I'll say is that, look, there are a lot of, if I ever, because I have done one Vikings War of Clans, but I didn't like it. And then I've turned them down since, right? And it's because uh, I won't say it's great, but I will say, look, some people enjoy it. And and if, if these people enjoy it, there's a good, because my wife likes mobile games, as a matter of fact. So I know oh, when's the divorce? like it. Yeah. What? A horse? What? What? You said something. Did you say something about a horse? I don't think so. I don't know. Okay. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, but so some people like it, and, say, and, and so if they're going to pay me just to let my viewers know that this game exists and there's a chance they might like it, that's that. I'm, you know, I was willing to do that. And then they want you to say, "I play it, and you can join me in the game, and it's the best thing ever," and all this stuff. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, and, and don't 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 forget to mention your favorite character as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, Blorgnack, yeah, the orc like, barbarian. Yeah, all of the interchangeable characters, all the women with Shmurgle their teeth, too. armor chest plates. <laughs> Like, it's just, I, I don't, when somebody's there like, oh, this is comparable to the greatest, to the biggest RPGs on console and PC, it's like, yeah, The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Skyrim, and Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> hey, listen, Raid Shadow Legends is the Citizen Kane of mobile games, all right? Yeah. I just like the whole, uh, there's that meme, but I swear, this, this meme came out like six years ago, where it was just like, all the words that get interchanged on the... Something of something, like the two somethings always always change, um, and there's just loads of selections. And I'm pretty sure yeah. just Raid Shadow Legends is the next one. I can't wait for Raid Shadow Legends too. That's where it's really at. Yeah, Raid Shadow <laughs> Legends is so good. How come there's not a Raid Shadow Legends too? And I guess the yeah, thing that's it's going to be called is... Fighting yeah. Daylight Heroes. Just, just yeah. <laughs> the, I guess the thing that's just like frustrating is everybody now like acknowledges that. You know, and all the ads are like, we know you've heard of us. Like, so why are you doing this? <laughs> why, why are you subjecting me to this again? Just give it up. You know, yes, they keep it. the lights on. You have to imagine that uh, they've reached, like, critical mass in terms of, is there anybody who hasn't heard of it who is willing to do something with it now, you know? Well, I mean, well, the thing is, they've the, lost me. We had the Victorian age, the classical age, the information age. And now it's the Raid yeah, Shadow Legends yeah. age. It's just the progression of our species. Uh, I think I think the best one I've seen, uh, like the uh, sponsorship I've seen for Raid Shadow Legends, was the Internet Historians one because he just takes the Mickey out yeah. of it. It's like I like uh I like the one that Flash Gets does. I'm, they, just, I'm like, surprised they let effort into it. Internet Historians one go honestly. Um, I I, I think it was uh, <laughs> Chase who was showing uh Rags and I. I can't remember, but um the. The, the ad itself, I was like, if this was my mobile game, I'd be like, nah, you, you're making it seem like a fucking joke. <laughs> Which I'm surprised they let him do it, you know? If I was ever to do another mobile sponsorship, I would want to do it something like that, where I actually personally take the mickey and I'm kind of nodding to my own audience that, guys, you know that I don't really like this game, I'm just doing it for the money. <laughs> Uh, Raid Shadow Legends. I love this game. This, this I'm playing it right now on my phone. Mobile game. I'm playing Why? it. My favorite is interchangeable uh, archer lady with no like armor at all. Number sixteen. She's great. I love her so much. These characters are amazing, aren't they? <laughs> and the best I, part, it's free aside from I the microphone. I've played a trillion hours. Seriously, guys, help me. I need something to get me out of this game. Yeah, <laughs> I play it every day. Once once we get some cyberware, I'm going to hook myself up to it and play it forever in my sleep when I, I wake up. I can't wait for Raid Shadow Legends VR. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, there probably just... is some people out there. Where who... I can idle in the real world. <laughs> um, I, I was just going to say to get a few more of these dub a few Shadow. This one just says Shadow Versity is amazing. So do you agree with this Whoa. objectively? Oh, what? definitely not. <laughs> uh, I, I think he has a lot of issues, and he's this big neck beard, armchair, you know, expert. And it's, it's just, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what people see in him, honestly. 
Um, Shad, what techniques could be possible with dual wielding two swords that the blades pass through each other but are solid to any other substance? Interesting. Mm. Just means you get more versatility. Like, this is why a dagger in the offhand became far more preferable historically because uh, it, there was far less chance for the blades to uh, hit and get tangled up in each other. And when you've got two long weapons, that's much more likely and it limits your versatility. And so it just means you're going to have far more versatility, like if you were using a dagger in your offhand. And so, uh, it, like, it wouldn't make you unstoppable, but it certainly would improve the techniques that you could employ. And so it's an interesting idea, actually. I like it. Um, how does Shad think Revenge of the Sith has the best duel? Crazy. Watch my fight scene autopsy. <laughs> I give a very detailed answer in that video. It's like, there we go. Uh, actually, well, do you think that um, any from the OT hold up strongly? As in the fight scenes? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I rewatched um uh empire strikes back and there's some decent exchanges there actually in fact i think the M and i've been saying i'm oh, i'm intending to do a fight scene autopsy on this for a while and i still am there's just going to be a longer delay <laughs> than i was expecting um uh but yeah some of the exchanges in empire are actually really good and solid uh the one in um uh return of the jedi that's when the techniques get a bit more ooh uh, but they can be justified with the emotional brutality of the fight scene because it's just kind of given up and is just hitting as hard as he can. And so there's a lot more telegraphing mm. in that. But yeah, the, like in terms of the exchanges in Empire, there's some yeah really good ones. No telegraphing, quick, fast, good stances and things. Uh, good stuff. Still holds up. And what about... <laughs> what about the sequels? <laughs> I couldn't even finish that. <laughs> <That's>... Jared! Jared! <laughs> Oh, like, I'm definitely going to be doing one of the Rise of Scar, because that is horrible. Yeah, well, that one was really the best bad. Fight in just... the sequels, if you had to pick one, is the best. The best. <laughs> it might be the first, f if the, out of the sequ uh, sequels, it might be uh, Force Awakens has the best one, and that's still pretty bad. Um, Probably because you yeah, can get I, away with, like, it, they're mostly hacking at each other. It's just Kylo that's sort of weird in that one. Yeah, but there are, I, like, from memory, I think there's a couple of small exchanges that actually had a bit more um, uh, technical complexity in them. Mm -hmm. um, and now, that I'm, was not basically... sure, I'm not sure if you'll agree with me on this, Shad, but do you get the impression that in the sequel trilogy, lightsabers seem to have doubled in weight? Yeah, the way like, holy, yeah. holy crap! Like, the... Yeah. The the amount of telegraphing and it was just the most uh, horrible, blatant example of this is in Rise of Skywalker. They are swinging yeah. these things around like they're yeah. ten kilos. My and goodness! And yet, I, you know, in the original movies, they seemed like really light weapons. They seemed really light. Well, well in, like, the, yeah. in the prequels, they seem really light too. Yeah, but even yeah. even in the OT, they're pretty light because they're. Darth <laughs> Vader, yeah. Darth Vader is using one in one hand in um, uh, Empire Strikes Back, and he's doing some really quick, subtle movements and exchanges yeah. in with one hand movements. Um, uh, and so, yeah, not only does it show that they can be moved, you know, uh, with speed, uh, but also that they are decently light. It, it but doesn't... the other, oh, go sorry, on. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that the other thing with lightsabers is that you don't need power to do lethal force with a lightsaber. In exactly. Fact, you just need exactly. to touch them, basically. That, that's so the thing. It makes sense that they're really light because all the weight is um is the you know the the, the um handle. Well, there's no weight yeah. in the. Uh... Canonically, this is uh, this has been said, but it's contradicted by how they've been portrayed in the movies. But I think I uh, like people have all shared with me that even George has said lightsabers themselves are actually decently heavy. The beam okay. basically has no weight, but they feel like they have weight from a gyroscopic effect from the magnetic field they produce or something like that. Right. Because uh, when even when like um, Darth Vader, and this is because it's a prop, when Darth Vader threw it in Return of the Jedi, the rotation is spinning around the beam portion, but that's because it was a prop, and so they've justified that in canon, mm -hmm. that, it's, that they have a sense of weight in the energy portion. But with it, but with everything else that's shown in the movies, that um, 
you can move these around really fast and then they try and explain that's because you're using the force but then you have non-force users pick up these lightsabers and move them around just as fast like finn in a rise of skywalker not no i mean force but awakens didn't you hear? Oh, he is a force he user. has the force <laughs> yeah he is uh, but he didn't know how to use it. he didn't know how to pick things up yeah but like... ray didn't know that there was such a thing as forced mind tricking people but he raised a freaking every... mary sue fringy <laughs> yeah, they know all about mind control I, I, I just love how people are like yeah that makes sense it's like do you think it makes sense to do something that you never even conceived of being something that you could do you know yeah, what I mean? Actually, it would be good if I could control this guy's like, mind right now. Holy shit! Yeah, I, I, yeah, just, exactly. I just tried it and I don't know. Like... I can't believe this. This is fucking amazing. I, 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 did, I didn't know that I could uh, just turn off the, the Millennium Falcon and flip it around so that you could do a land a direct hit on a time. It's like, oh, but Freen, she's got experience <laughs> with ships. Like, she explicitly says she's never floated before. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and also, like, even if she has experience with sh ships, could you imagine, like, in another movie or something, like a World War II well, movie, yeah. where the guy, like, Whether or not flies she has experience or not, how is she better than anyone who's flown that thing before? Because she bypassed the compressor. Oh, oh shit. Wait, that was the what is it with yeah. the compressor? Because that even came up in the, the for Rise Force bullcrap scene yeah. in the last one. It's like, yeah. did you yeah, yeah, the it came up again. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys like finally fix the fucking compressor? <laughs> you just keep screwing yeah. around with it. So I actually, I don't mind the fact that it's not consistent, which is a big problem, but if they, if all of the fights were like from the sequels where the lightsabers did apparently have some weight to them, but they would like slice through anything, they were, they, so there was a little bit of telegraphing involved, but I, I, I probably might actually prefer that. Um, it's easier for me to keep track of when I'm watching a fight. And in a way, it's like it looks it looks its own way when you're fighting with heavier stuff instead of, you know, the the very, very quick motions. But I'm fine with lightsabers being heavy, but you got to pick one. Are they lighter? Are they heavy? Well, you be, can't, a, a heavy sword swap. would get telegraphed a lot, but a heavy lightsaber still wouldn't because its blade is super hot it doesn't matter how fast you come at what someone with it what do you mean by heavy sword this is a very triggering comment for me here a sword Mola. that's heavy <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to say man. i don't know what to Some say not heavy guys not some so are so fine are. the heaviest that's one the chad one. the heaviest heavy sword heavy, chad. the biggest ones but for, heavy like, heavy specific... swords are heavy right. by definition I... also uh, yeah but heavy but, is but, relative but, 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 chad you know what i mean chad i own one i know <laughs> yeah, but the poorly made ones, the competent swordsmen won't get overly like for for the in their right categories, right? Uh, for their side, because of course a great sword is heavier in comparison to a long sword or an arming sword and stuff like that. But for the size of a great sword, they are remarkably light for the size of because they're thin and then they properly balance and stuff like that. And it's the poorly made ones that when you actually pick up, they feel oh this is heavy, like the the proper sensation for a properly made sword when someone picks it up is like oh this is lighter than it looks that's what swords are they are generally far lighter than people perceive it's i'm so sorry what about clouds buster sword <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm fine with lightsabers being like heavy swords yeah, <laughs> yes but even even still they wouldn't be telegraphed the way that someone like ray does it where she like <laughs> she like yells like and lifts ass. it above her head I and goes <laughs> <laughs> brings it down <laughs> It's, and and I, I so much prefer fast, well-executed, complex kind of maneuvers that we see in the prequel trilogy. Yeah, but that's like, harder to coordinate. So, that, that takes planning yeah. and effort. Yeah, and speed is a game-changer in swordsmanship. If you're faster than your opponent, you have such an edge, and so... I, um, which is funny. I, I feel I like Ray would lose against an average knight. <laughs> like a really average well, she, she knight. She straight up gets tired in Rise of Skywalker. She yeah. just gets tired. Like, honestly, like, huh. with, in terms of the technical complexity in those fight scenes, if they were still using a fight scene, I am arrogant and confident enough to say that I reckon I could beat Ray with a regular sword against her using a lightsaber. Because I just oh wouldn't. God. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bind with her weapon because she telegraphs so much. You just hold your your stance, let her swing at you, and you see it a mile away. And you just move your sword out of the way. You just step back and then take advantage of it because they overswing all the time. And so yeah, you, just need to, you just need to let them swing. They overswing, and then their side is way open. And then you just slash them, and it's like they're that bad. 
Yeah. I've already ran away with this in my head, and it's like, okay, so you win. They go, what about rags? And you've got a little lightsaber in your mouth, and then as soon as the fight starts, you drop it and pull out a pistol and shoot it. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like, I did it. <laughs> I don't think she ever blocked because well, she only ever used the lightsaber to fight Kylo Ren. It's did, so boring. Did we talk about this before so that if you try to block a bullet with a lightsaber, it would melt and splash the molten steel <laughs> in your face? <laughs> 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 and while we were watching um, Mandalorian, I think Mahler and I, we were talking about, I had mentioned that, you know, if you were going to go around killing Jedi, then if you had a blaster that shot three bolts at once, you could kill Jedi with that without much of an issue. And then Mahler brought up, oh my god, the super battle droids have tri shots. Is that what it's for, canonically, to kill Jedi? <gasps> they have that wrist gun that shoots three at once, which you can't yeah. block with a lightsaber. So I'm like, oh my god, it's all coming together. Not like George Rex, knew. I, I, George I, I knew. Said... <laughs> Did you? The bad lad. We're so sorry, George. Come back. <laughs> I said the exact same thing in my problem with lightsabers video that it's shown that Jedi's can get overwhelmed with blaster fire. They're technically not invulnerable, which is why they should be using shields. My goodness, right? Um, and and the, the fact that shields Wars, canonically exist in Star Wars, both Durasteel shields and energy shields that the Gungans use, right? Um, and so, yeah, you're absolutely right. If you just you, you know, like overwhelm them with enough shots, three in like in one single. Chad, game, what do you mean? We're, shields we're, don't work in atmosphere. Go. Don't, don't, don't! <laughs> uh, and uh, the other thing, right, the best weapon for the Jedi, based on their powers, is actually blasters, long-range blasters. They can use the Force to increase their aim. Uh, and so, it's, can you imagine, like, Death Sniper Jedi? That would be insane. Death Sniper Jedi. I, oh, he was my Xbox Live friend back to 15 years ago, ago Death oh. Sniper Jedi. Yeah, he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you, there you go. Um, I like how this one says, Before you go, Shad, I think the fight choreography was bad because I could not follow any of it at all. I don't even know what this is referring to. <laughs> you must be referring to the prequels, I'm thinking. Is that, is that like a follow-up based on well, how can I say that prequel fight scenes were good? No, I, I have no idea, and I don't even know what episode that's from. That could literally be from like 20 episodes ago from, <laughs> from all I remember. Like, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry that the, we don't have the context for it. Uh... Could you tell Shad that in his fight scene autopsies, he keeps referring to shots as scenes? As a cinematographer, it irks me. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I understand Shame that completely. Gamer girl you have been shamed. I have been. Hey, Shad, what do you think of Corvo's folding sword from Dishonored? Uh, I haven't played it. I need to see. Um, huh. I think the folding sword... God, it's been a while since I've played it. I think it's a sword that folds on, like, at the hilt where the, generally where the blade connects with a handguard. It, like, pivots in and out. But let me double check. Don't, let me actually Google it. Mm -hmm. um, All righty. Generally, folding swords are, ha have inherent issues because you need rigidity in your blade. And if there is, like, a fold point, that is also a focal point for stress and can, oh, and so, even if it, like it's holding it in point, having a hinge there could uh, has, uh, creates a much higher chance of it breaking. This is like the the, the disassemblable bull swords, you know, the ones that are made out of separate parts that you're like Highlander. You guys seen the classic Highlander? Yes. Yes. And that guy, he's got the sword that he like clips together out of parts. Mm -hmm. That that would that would that would oh that would break really easily. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have a. I think I have a GIF of it that I can post for you to look at real quick. All right. Uh, also, is your microphone at like right. top efficiency right now, Shad? You sound a little bit muffled. That's all. Do oh I don't know. I can check. Um, is it is it all that? Is it sound issues on there? Not too much of an issue, but if there's anything you could do to, you know, do anything with it. All right, I'm gonna check because I wonder if it's even picking up the, the mic audio. Uh, So, so just just chat amongst yourselves while I try and... Very well. Mind. Oh, boy. That sun sure is hot. Oh, that's uh, Dishonored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Corvo's the protagonist of... Yeah, the sword looks Dishonored, really cool, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the questions I've got saved in here is, Satan, what makes a good Spider-Man adaptation? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Oh my uh, you God. guys, on, on the subject of swords, are, are you familiar with a show called Forged by Fire? Or Forged in Fire, I think it is? Um, sounds familiar. 
It's, it's a show. Aware, yeah, yeah, I'm on the History Channel that. where they build swords, and it's awesome. <laughs> it's a really cool show. And there are a couple Especially YouTube channels like, doing that as well, like, and they build fictional swords. Oh, uh, I mean, maybe, yeah. Like, they make the sword, and then they do a bunch of tests, like, um, trying Cutting to cut through, through things, to figure out how sharp it is, try to cut through bones to see if it'll break. Yeah, I think uh, the one I used to watch was Man at Arms, and then it became like Man at Arms Reforged, I think. Um, right. Yeah, they made some cool stuff. A lot of it was very impractical, because it was all from video games and movies where it was ridiculous. But, you know what, well, like, it's fun. Like the Dishonored Sword? <laughs> I think they made the uh, the Buster Sword, and it was like... It's just, it's just so ridiculous, this enormous sword that has this really thin, small handle. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> to pick it up. But it's, uh, it, whack, it, it, it whacked a wallop. It, it packed a punch. Yeah. It oh, whacked wow. a people know wallop. What, uh -oh. People know what the show is in chat. I can Shad see has become static. I've seen the show, Fringy. I understand. Oh, you. sorry, can you hear me now? Is that better? Yeah, that yeah, sounds Yeah, we can clear. hear you. Is it clearer? Yes. I think um, so. Yeah, I think hard to hard to tell. You were all right before, for me at least. Yeah. Okay, because if it's not this, it'll be internet. I apologize, people. No, this is this is fine. I this is this definitely is clearer. Um, also, yeah, I guess I meant man at arms. If I didn't say that, I think I said something else. But yes. Um, oh, man at arms reforged. Yeah, great stuff. Really like him. We were just talking about um shadow. Have you heard of a show called Forged in Fire? Oh yeah, and I, I, yeah. It, it is hard to get a get like a copy of that here in Australia. Um, and it was on one of the broadcasters here. All the Australian free to air broadcasters suck, by the way. In case everyone yeah, they, they uh, the pickings are pretty slim. It, it came on SBS for a short time there, so I tried streaming it. Uh, but holy crap, the yeah, ads you said that they spam in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they all, have every... so many ads in their streaming thing. I was like, I can't deal with this. The nah. thing is, like, I can't, I don't like because every single network here, except for maybe ABC, because ABC is non-commercial. When it comes to trying to watch stuff on their platform, that ads and oh, you uh, need to sign up to Channel Nine to watch Channel Nine. It's like, uh, no thanks. Yeah, uh, I'd rather not. Yep. Same. Like I gave up. I was like, nah, I'm not putting on this crap. Hey, but, but you I know, do want to watch Forged in Fire because yeah, was... that show that show was really cool. Like when I watched a couple episodes where they're like testing out swords on um, and then they're walking through. Oh, you know, you made your sword. It's too rounded at this part, or it's flexing. Like they they have a final challenge where they try and cut right through a giant pig carcass, and um, as you do, you have like. One guy whose sword just completely bends and wobbles around, and then the other dude slices clean through, and it's no, like, yeah, he's I've, I, I, that, that was a controversy I've heard, like because <coughs> they, the judges uh, they have experience in knife making, and they have like a knife fighting expert, and they know yeah. nothing about how to use swords properly. And the one that flopped, his edge alignment was basically hitting with the flat. It's like, right. And so they, when they do swords, they really need a sword expert on there. Like, get Matt Easton on there for heaven's sake, seriously. Yeah, hey, your sword expert's important because if, if you're going to be determining who wins or loses, d depending on how it cuts, yeah. and you don't cut it correctly for one exactly, of them, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so they, they, there is a shot of the knife guy hitting with like a, a claymore or something on a pig carcass, and it's bending heaps, and it's hitting with the flat. And and it's like because he's supposed to be the weapons expert, he won't say that he stuffed up this cut. It was like, no. oh, sorry, the sword's bad. It's like, no, it wasn't. You yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's 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 funny when it comes to the whole judge thing and how you can't question. Have you seen clips of the American Master Chef? Uh, a, yeah, uh, not like not recently. Well, the thing is, right, because Gordon Ramsay's on it, and there's this guy called Joe who I guess feels like he needs to <laughs> one up. This guy Gordon called Ramsay. Joe. Yeah. Joe Rogan. <laughs> so what, motherfucker. So this this guy Joe, he just he's just acts like kind of a complete douche. Like, he asks someone to explain their dish and cuts them off. He's like, this isn't Master or Raider. It's like, dude, get fucked. Just fuck off. <laughs> Don't be such a twat. <laughs> Nobody's impressed. And then he, like, grabs their food and throws it in the bin. He's not even tasting it. It's like, how do you know it's bad? You're just assuming it's bad based on how it looks. It's oh, is this Master chef, Looker? Yeah. Maybe there were maggots yeah. on it, Friggy. You don't know. <laughs> And yeah, this whole thing, he, he, he walks there and he's like, is this what we expect in this late stage of the competition? You know, it's just like, dude, shut up. <laughs> just <laughs> shut up. Take your money and go home. 
All right. So I'm looking at the pictures rags posted about the uh, Dishonored Blade thing. And yeah. if it's basically a flick blade, that, that'll that work. I mean, as long as the connection point is solid enough and the blade doesn't have segments in it, so there's stress points, that could work. That seems all right. Now, I actually have a yeah. question about that. But you just said segments and stress points. So if you have a sword that has multiple... Like, like a hypothetical, and this is definitely not something that I've come up with because I want to do it in a story. No, not at all. Definitely but, um, not. <laughs> but My a, a friend sword. was talking to me about <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and yeah. He, Quickly he, patent it. Um, and it's, it's like, imagine a sword that is like a lightsaber, but it's just a sword, so it shoots out like it extends out <laughs> with multiple segments. I imagine that that's oh, got like, a lot of like a points. telescope. Yeah, like sort of. Yeah. Oh, but a sword. So <laughs> it would need to be made out of some super futuristic or magical titanium? material. No, titanium would not be out of a whole oh. own structure. Because to, to telescope a blade, the segments need to be so damn thin for it to be right, you know, flick out smoothly ah, and then for course. the blades in between. And because of that, it's gonna have no structure. So if internally. it's if it's built out of contrivium, then it will be fine. Yes, contrivium. then you're fine. Contrivium, <laughs> surprisingly, is the perfect material for that kind of thing. Like yeah. that, that's like that is the perfect material. You yeah, hit it on the head. Oh well the more you know about swords. Yeah. Of course, that that makes perfect sense that it a really sword does. segmented isn't gonna work properly. <laughs> um, Chad, is Rise of Skywalker the pineapple on pizza of Star Wars? No, the oh, the, the, the <laughs> sequel trilogy is the pineapple. The sequel trilogy yeah. is the steaming turd on pizza of Star Wars. It's like... But he's just calling it pineapple, even though pineapple on pizza is an atrocity. That doesn't even do the ju justice for how bad the sequel is. I guess people in here. I guess as a follow up, is like, well, Shad, was this film the spaghetti bolognese you were looking for? No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> and uh, hi, Shad. I liked your book. Would you let J.J. Abrams or Ryan Johnson make it a movie? I'm joking. Don't let them need your book. <laughs> well. Oh, I didn't like this if they offered you like a if million to buy the, the story, script, like if they paid me a lot of money and they didn't touch the script, like well, I think JJ can make something. You even know, then, though, wouldn't you be assuming they'd kill it in some way? I know. Well, this is the other. This is the other side, right? Is there are so many horror stories of uh, of authors getting their work adapted, and and they get these promises, all these promises from the Hollywood, you know, producers and stuff like that, saying, yes, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do that for you, that, that, and they screw them over right up the rear end, right after. And we saw it happen with George Lucas. They promised all this stuff with George Lucas, and yeah, we'll do oh, yeah. your movie and everything. We'll and take they care just of your characters. Screw them over. They totally so, took care of his characters. Oh, I don't, I don't think I could trust them. any promises, like it, like. Because I was going to, like, if you had reassurances, but reassurances aren't enough. But if, the, if say, hypothetically, the reassurances were actually held honestly and true, then I would be willing. But I just, I could never trust. I, I'm not sure I could ever, you know, take those reassurances mm. uh, as, as valid. Because there are so many stories of Hollywood just screwing over the creators and just saying, F you, once they have the, the rights, then it's like, now we can do what we want. <laughs> I guess it depends on what the contract is, doesn't it? Whether no, no, even 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 contract like they hide things, they find loopholes and stuff. Like um, I was really following closely uh, the negotiations that Awesome Scott Card was sharing about Ender's Game, and he had yeah, some really strong um, uh, like desires for how Ender's Game was going to be adapted, and they screwed him over basically. Still, mm. oh, did they? Yeah, right. Um, he like Ender was supposed to be like really young, young, even younger than what he was depicted. They wanted they wanted to make Ender like nineteen years old, like or or you know some some like sexy kind of space tactician guy. And Orson was Ender, always like, Ender's game was about like children. Like, yes, yeah, children. Sexy six year old. <laughs> yeah. I got um. And, and he. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying it, and yeah, he wanted him much younger, even than what it ended up being, and uh, and they still they did younger than what they wanted, but not as younger as Ender should have been for the context of the mm. books. And so, yeah. I got I got well, I two is, uh... messages that call shout out in terms of law. Uh, oh my god! I was gonna say, I was gonna say, bring, uh... bring it on! Want me to bend over, ready to receive it? So <laughs> this this one's a little lighter. It's the uh, the red color is because for lightsabers now. Because you're saying you choose red, you don't want it to be considered an evil color. Mm -hmm. They said the red color is because of poorly made synthetic kyber crystals that the Sith use, and as for eons, the Jedi held ilium 
Ilum, sorry, where saber crystals naturally come from. That's why they're all right, all right, all right, no, so, so I want to, like, I've heard multiple explanations for the red color, and this is just one on the pile, and I have no friggin' idea what's true canon now. Yeah, first because... off, whoever sent that super chat is a fucking nerd. <laughs> oi! 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 <laughs> We're not nerds, okay? Yeah, what's, what's not you gotta get us at all. Ignore the title of this stream, okay? <laughs> We're the Chads. We're the we're yeah. the jocks. Nerds are yeah, gay. I'm, you call me Chadiversity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't know what the origin is now. Because even in um, uh, the four, no, the Knights of the Old Republic video games had their own uh, explanation for where the red crystal comes from, and it's that you know, in in the in the caves where the crystals come from, the red one grows in an egg, and you have to kill an innocent life to get the egg before it's like I don't know absorbed in the animal growing. Oh, so fucking metal. And then I've also heard that um, you need to infuse it with the dark force or something like that. Uh, and so I thought you said to like slit someone's throat and have them bleed all over a good lightsaber and turns it evil. You have to kill evil. younglings. The blood of younglings turns your lightsaber red. Um, they're just, like Star Wars is just prejudice against the red color. Okay, it's like if it's red, it has to be evil. It's like typecasting. It's like what, 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 red's not evil. Red yeah. lightsabers being evil is toxic masculinity. I yes, know, yeah, exactly. And so this this one's more of a blatant one because I think you said that uh, it's not such a big deal that Ahsoka is one of the voices at the end, meaning she's dead because she was probably dead at that point anyway, right? I was of course with that so. attitude. Well, this person says, Ahsoka was confirmed alive after the Battle of Endor, Shad. Her species lives up to 80 years, Force-sensitive up to 200. She'd be in her 70s by the Rise of Skywalker. Okay, so Battle of Endor, she was alive. What the hell was she doing? I don't know. <laughs> She's well, you know. <laughs> chopping, she was fighting a Star Destroyer in some other place. Okay, well, I guess if she was still fighting something, you know, I, I would have assumed that she Death Star threatening the whole galaxy would have been the greater threat, and that uh, you know, some Luke people just didn't know help. about it. Some people didn't know. <laughs> I guess. Okay. She wasn't given an email. <laughs> like a Did she become a disillusioned with the Jedi? Because I heard that she wasn't a Jedi anymore at the um uh, during the. Um, uh, yeah, she has a uh, line I, I think it was in Rebels where she says uh, she's not a Jedi. Yeah, but I feel like that's the kind of because this is the issue with this series is it kind of likes to go into this gray area thing, but not ever throw away the fact that the Jedi are the pr protagonists, undoubtedly. So every time someone says, oh, "I'm not a Jedi," the Jedi suck. It's like, nah, nah, nah. you don't oh, believe come that. Come on, you're splitting hairs here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's Jedi light, uh, uh, light Jedi. That's all the ones I can find so far. You're gonna have a whole bunch more the next time you come on from this stream, more than likely. Um, uh, oh wait, Shad, a castle's still a good idea if you include anti-aircraft weapons. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just to be clear, are they saying is your castle better with anti-aircraft weapons? Or, in it? I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, I. I, Shad, with the inclusion of anti-aircraft guns make a castle worse, I guess. Is <laughs> interesting. There's actually, there is actually an interesting answer to this because um, the Germans during World War II made some crazy, crazy, like, epic um, anti-aircraft fortresses, right, that you might be, I mean, technically they're fortresses, they're not castles, if you're going according to strict definition, but castle becomes a fairly loose term anyway and stuff, but it is a very interesting kind of study to look at the evolution of the concept of static fortifications and fortresses and stuff like that, and they had, like, massive anti-aircraft kind of, you know, uh, fixtures to them, and uh, they were, they seem to have worked well, effectively enough um, in terms of taking on aircraft from a fortified stronghold uh, thing and so if if you actually had to deal with air, you know, aircraft as a as a, a threat to your castle yeah add in an anti-aircraft gun absolutely and it's been done kind of historically in world war ii um oh and and the end of this thing just ends with space cancer space cancer space cancer space cancer space cancer ah i, I don't know what, i don't think they like the space cancer <laughs> You could, you could say um, none of that. Question for Shad, what would be the best elemental enchantment for a sword? What do you mean by elements? Alright, I, I guess the basic ones. Fire, water, air, earth, 
I'm guessing like the classic element. I don't know how they would of... work in a sword exactly. I suppose fire would just, you know, you slash someone and they burn. Well, earth, earth is often linked with poison. Well, that's what I mean. Like, what then after you figure out what elements, because like, um, fire included a, a, as part of the core elemental, you know, things always bugs me because technically fire is air. Like, Doesn't it ruin uh, swords actually... as well? Well, it also on depends on how it's adapted into the thing. If it just does it make the blade really, really hot, or is it literally sheathed in fire that's just burning all like all around? Because that would have an intimidation factor. It could technically cauterize the wounds that you strike, which might not be helpful. But the uh, <laughs> the burning around the wound would be painful as all hell for the person getting cut. Um, but like air, right? If you're adapting air onto a blade, in what way is there like a a flow of air that's a razor thin that creates a shearing force on top of the blade? which increases its cutting capacity and helps separate material because in that sense air would actually be a vicious enchantment to have on a sword in that sense and it might actually be far more devastating than the fire one so again it depends on how it's adapted is earth poison that's another question maybe um, the air one just makes it smell nice yeah but but technically fire is the result of you know oxygen and carbon it's technically if you actually want to pick at the elements of fire it's air and earth if you can include carbon as part of the earth uh, things and so it's always bugged me if not it's not a core element okay? i like that that you have carbon you know what's your element carbon <laughs> nitrogen yeah <laughs> yeah well it's funny elements. right like th this is the better way to handle um fundamental elements in a setting because if i was ever doing a magic based system this is the one that i had written and i haven't you know written on one of my notes that i would resort to i wouldn't do earth fire wind water i would do the states oh, of matter welcome. solid liquid gas heat and cold those right. are the core states that's what you do and then if you wanted to you have create fire from these things it would actually be employing wind air, sorry wind and heat technically and you bond them then to carbon or flammable right, okay. you know material um that's how it would work yeah, that's... scientifically the same well well sounds like fun um it is. I suppose uh, the, the, there are all the questions I can find in my in my notes. There will be more for next time, like I said. But uh, yeah, shall we? And apologies. Yeah, I'll just say apologies to everyone in this stream who are doing the super chats um, if they're directed towards me because I'm probably not going to be hanging around for the super chat portion. I'm sorry I'm going to miss it. And also, I really appreciate all the comments in chat saying uh, wishing me well for the surgery. So say, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely, sir. We will we will have you back the moment you're available as well. There's always more to talk about. Can't wait, can't wait. We'll probably start we'll off cover Mad Lord Season 2 as well. <laughs> That'll happen eventually. <laughs> they probably, I don't even know if they finished doing that yet, because I know they started filming it. Um, probably getting close. Uh, which brings us to the main event. Uh, this is a weird EFAP, because there's not going to be a video to, to talk about at all, actually. It's just going to be discussion tisms, which we've done before. But, um, oh, actually, there is one thing I wanted to show Shad. Actually, two things. He's probably seen one of them before, but the first one is the, the, a couple people in chat have said it. They want you to see the um the lightsaber suit man. <laughs> <laughs> Assess him. <laughs> um, all right, so my concern would be accidentally stabbing yourself. Because... <laughs> Naturally. Uh, so, say you're running at full sprint, right? The lightsabers coming out of the knees has a good chance that they might accidentally skewer you, especially on like at the downward swing of your elbow, right? If you accidentally cross over partially over your leg, or because they do get closer, you know, in the jogging, and you're not used to having objects sticking out, so you need to train yourself to avoid, you know, the direction redirecting, accidentally redirecting those lightsabers into any uh, parts of your body. That would be that would be very dangerous. But if you got used to it. Well, you know, having like <laughs> laser swords when you knee or elbow someone just increases your lethality a bit. So, there could there could be some. You're like falling down out. a series of steps or something. You'd end up as a pile of flesh <laughs> at the top of it. It just it just slices you up. <laughs> well, just think about all the things you can't do like this. About you you sit down and you lean on your knee and you stab both your arm <laughs> and your leg at the same time. You turn them off to do that, freaking gosh. Uh, how does he turn them off? Where's With the his mind. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> this is so stupid. Somebody looked at this and they thought, oh, this is awesome. And then um, <laughs> the other image is uh, something I was made aware of recently. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter yet or not, but it's the Shad. 
Oh, yes, I saw that this morning. <laughs> oh, when someone me, I was like, that is glorious. I love it. <laughs> like, I, I like the big balls there. Probably autistic, but rarely shows side effects. <laughs> King of neckbeards, too humble to wear a crown. <laughs> I love the probably autistic. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the 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 pommel on your sword as a little dick? <laughs> oh, I missed that. Oh, it, it's glorious. I love it. Uh, so I, I hope I hope it gets spread amongst the internet. Like discarded his body pillow after finding the moral compass. <laughs> oh, that's what you got there in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, the final evolution of Neckbeard. I will take it. I accept it and embrace it. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful artwork. Yeah, it's glorious. Uh, with those two done, yes. So we're we're supposed to be talking about the Mandalorian. Um, how do I how do we how do we start this up? I suppose it's like uh, should we should we explain the arc we went on it with? Uh, Let's do the preamble. Yeah, the what? preamble. Uh, first, I'm kind of interested in hearing our our individual ratings out of ten for it, Oof. Um, uh, and <laughs> and then just if you liked it or disliked it, and then we can kind of. Oh man! All right, uh, you know what? I'll go first. I'll set I'll set the tone. So uh, there's lots that I like about it on a rather superficial level, unfortunately. But if I was to say like be consistent with, with how I break down stories, this one suffers immensely. There's like, we're looking very, very low scoring. Higher than the Disney trilogy, I think. We'll go through it today and, and figure that out, probably. But, uh, I don't know, like a like a 3 out of 10 for the season? Whoa, whoa! That's, that's, that's harsh, man. Who's next? <laughs> well, I'll go next, right? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that there is some baffling kind of uh, choices in, in in certain parts of the narrative. And there are contradictions and inconsistencies on and just weird things that, that are happening. Um, but I found for myself a lot to enjoy in it. Um, and, uh, and so for me, because there was so much I enjoyed and... Uh, I, I did look at some of the more baffling weird things and I kind of, you know, found ways that they might be explained in the actual narrative itself in some circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, my, I would, I would be, I would want to probably give it say a six out of 10 if I was to just rate it the writing quality overall, but the other more superficial things I really enjoyed in it, like for instance, just like the production values. And there's a, I have a whole list that I, we'll get into yeah, later yeah. that actually encourages me to up it to a seven out of 10 if I was to rate it. All right. Bring you want to go next? Uh, maybe I'll go next. Cause I'm guessing Rags is going to be the hardest, <laughs> hardest of all. Um, I really like, just just uh, a bit of background so my big thing that i really like and want to see more of a space bounty hunter stories that's like my big thing that i like i feel like there's not nearly enough you know you got metroid but that's kind of been on ice and then you had prey 2 or actual prey 2 and then that got you know thrown away um so like when this got i was really i really wanted to like it and i did right at the beginning and then it just began to deteriorate with each successive episode. It just started getting worse and worse and then picked up a little bit and then went back down again. Um, I mean, yeah, like it's probably a, a four if I would, if I would have rank it with while divorcing sort of the stuff that I like, like the armor and the music. <laughs> I guess the music does contribute to it, though. Yeah, so. I don't think you can divorce those elements, though. I think you should include those in your overall rating. Well, wait, 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 wait. If he just says, I like the armor, that's not really a strong yeah. argument, is Yeah, it? but, like, music is a... Yeah. Is a but mu no, fun. yeah, the music is great, Oh, I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. The music's yeah. really good. Well, I, I probably shouldn't have said it like that. So what, what I mean is the stuff that I guess I was already predisposed to liking, like, the, the visuals and the... And what I mean by that is, I guess, not just how technically well done it was, but how much I personally like it. So if I were to say, yeah, I, it'd probably be like a four if I had to mm. give it a rating, even though there were probably times when I was really enjoying it, even though it didn't... Like, it, there were parts that I enjoyed it 
um, even though I knew that they didn't make sense or were kind of stupid. But yeah, what it's a, probably a... Yeah? Would you, yeah, would your rating change if you were trying to rate it as a uh, mercenary bounty hunter? You know, because you said you really enjoyed that aspect of it, okay? Um, Sorry, could I, you just say that again? Would your rating change if you were going to try and include your views or enjoyment of it as a lone mercenary bounty hunter kind of story? Well, um, the, the, my issue is that um, the big problem, and this is something that will probably become apparent as uh, we go through this uh, series, is that there were a lot of ways that they could have made this like a 9 out of 10 show if they just made, if they kept the things that, um, like, like they could have kept the same plot points, but if they just like spent more time on each individual thing if if this if what happened in this season was spread across two or three seasons like it, it could have been really really good does that mean we're moving on to rags <laughs> yeah, well, yeah we'll, uh, we'll get into it so i what's interesting is that i think this is the same with Mahler, but we both watched them the first time together and the second time together so We'll probably line up fairly closely. Um, if I was going to rate it out of 10 with a 5 being completely average, then I'd probably give it around a 3 at the most. Uh, the things that I really like about it are, for the most part, um, the music, uh, a lot of the visual effects are good. Some of the sets and the props and stuff are really nice. But ultimately that stuff is a lot more superficial than stuff like story and character and the you know nonsense that has things progress as it does that we'll get into um so i'll probably go with a three i won't be harshest to say a two but maybe the more and more we talk about it i might uh it, it might i mean it could change either way but we'll we'll see because i got my notes here that are opened up as we finished watching all the episodes this morning and it was just it was <laughs> it was rough trying to keep up a lot of the times trying to get our notes together for and all the stuff that we found wrong psa uh i'd appreciate it I'm not saying you can't do it and that includes the cast down the chat to refrain from ascribing motivation for as long as you can all right the obvious two choices are Mola Fringy and Rags just don't like it because it's made by Disney and or yeah. Chad only likes it because it's better than the sequel trilogy and he's not doing standards probably. Let's let's keep that aside for as long <laughs> as we can, folks. <laughs> well, the thing is, right, it's worthwhile to note for everybody that Mola Rags and I, we we like liked it a lot for the first two episodes. We've publicly said that. We have publicly yeah. said before we, uh, that we, it's we were very much on its viewings. side. Yeah, we we but, actually we went to bat yeah, for it against uh, we were, we other people. Yeah, we we said yeah. episode one and two were really good and really solid. Uh, I don't have that opinion anymore, but <laughs> there was, I legitimately really thought that the show was good. And I remember when Fringy Mahler and myself watched it for the first time, we were absolutely excited for more. Yeah, we were we optimistic. Were ready. We were like, oh my god, is this going to be good? Is this going to be... Yeah. And then by the, time, by the time we got to episode four, it's like, oh. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, four is definitely oh, it's... the one. It's so bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess, does that mean we should we should start up with episode one? Or do, should we do some kind of... I, I, th I think we should, but out of interest, be, and this I am interested, have any, like, just... Can, Make a comparison here to The Witcher. Have any of you guys seen The Witcher? No. I haven't seen no. it yet. And I have oh, heard everything okay. from it's great to it's terrible and everything in between. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I, uh, I, like, I have some more harsh views on The Witcher overall. Um, I found it enjoyable enough to make me want to watch season seven because I like Geralt. And I have a whole review on my channel, right? Um, but in comparison, and this is what I find interesting, I actually think Mandalorian's better than The Witcher. Uh, especially in terms of the writing, because oh, no. The Witcher, on the, oh, no. like with the writing, The Witcher gets really messy, like really. Um, and people are loving The Witcher. And so I just find that really interesting because it, I, I, cause I was, uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to ask if any of you guys like The Witcher, because for me, objectively, I think The Witcher's worse than The Mandalorian. So. Well, Rags, we oh, should watch boy. that <laughs> just to get abreast of the situation. Yeah, I. It's definitely been on our list of things to watch, but I'm totally down for checking out The Witcher. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, I guess so. If anybody's unclear on it, this episode, I don't know how long it'll take, 
going to be all about Mandalorian, and then it's probably going to be all Super Chats. We'll try and square up as many as we can from the overflow. And then the following week is going to be the episode where we, we look at all of the picture memes. We've got a couple of video ones, uh, the script that was coming out from Colin Trevorrow, the was it a quote from a Nazi or movie Bob, and um, there's a fourth thing. <laughs> oh yeah, the <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Um, the I hate everything conversation. All of that is going to be one episode next week. Um, I'm not even sure what guests we'll have for that because it's going to be weird as an episode. But obviously we've swapped them around because uh, it better fits Shad's schedule. And um, I think it works out for the best because we've, we're have we fresh off the presses from watching Mandalorian. So I suppose it's time, everybody. Um, so, indeed. Episode one is probably the strongest uh, IMO. It is the strongest. I, I think that after watching him again, I would say that episode one is the strongest with another contender being episode two. Episode two, yeah. Yeah. Would you say um, that episode one is, is still like decent to good or? Mm, where, where, uh, where I guess, should we just go through it? Yeah, go episode by episode. I guess, so the format for this, we'll try and do chronological, but I think it should be pretty free flow and throw in goods and bads, I suppose. There's no real need to say that we do them separately or something. Um, do we just start by lining up what are the good things that we're not going to dispute? The visuals, the soundtrack, uh, cinematography. Yes. Yes, we'll sure. just say uh, straight up, those are all really good. Um, yeah, for the most part, the um, visuals are really good. It, it's very impressive that. looking. Uh, a lot of money went into the production value in that aspect. The ships, the effects, the aliens, all that stuff, the environments, it looks really, really good. Never had any yeah. issue with bad CGI that I'm aware of. Uh, parts that I can think of are so minor, it's not even really worth mentioning. Um, but they're very, very technically impressive on that level. Um, I... Yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I actually think it deserves more credit for how impressive the visuals were for it. Because, like, in terms of quality, I'm not talking about scale, but quality, they were easily as good as film. Like, the the individual yeah, ships, the ships and stuff. And, ships, yeah. and, like, I was watching the Mudhorn fight scene again in episode two. And it was flawless. Like the interaction of that thing in the mud and uh, the the physicality that you feel when he impacts the mantle. Like that was. Tough. Yes, it's yeah. uh, I, vis I visually have, it, it looks really good. It's I unfortunate have, that what happens in that fight is absurd. <laughs> but we'll get well, to that. Well, we'll get to that because <laughs> oh, like I I have never seen a TV series done so technically well, and I I loved it for that because I got to enjoy a longer form story in the quality of a movie, and I personally feel it needs a, more credit for it doing that because I've never seen anything else. Like again, look at The Witcher. The Witcher has some horrible CGI, and that's a hmm. big budget, huge Netflix release, right? Well, you saw Game of Thrones, and, right? Uh, our uh, parts, yeah, yeah, um, and the, the the dragons were pretty darn good in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Absolute credit there. Um, they certainly cut back in 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 certain fight scenes and battles with, with scale and yeah. budget constraints, and also like the ways that they depicted castles. They all yeah. they're always using kind of static painted backdrops for the castles in the first season yeah. and things. And so that's why I think Mandalorian had none of that like when it shows you like uh the planets or the flying in or the overhead shots or the uh the, the it was a smaller city town granted but when you're seeing it over overhead it was flawless like i i, I it was brilliant so i, I really liked it for that and, and so when we say that the the visuals were good i think we, no the visuals were brilliant um, I mean, the, do you remember in episode 8 when IG-11 fights those two stormtroopers? That one is probably a, the only, it's probably the only example of the CGI being bad, but it's bad. Like, it's it's very obvious. The yeah, animation yeah. is yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the stormtroopers' outfits in that one scene as well are very plasticky looking, and... Yeah, they look very bad. The they, rust looks like it was colored in. It. Yeah, it definitely stood out as being very cheap, but that which was is like odd the considering... Only instance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was there was that one really other one. The, the the robots in episode uh, was it five when they uh, go onto the ship to spring the guy from prison. Oh, that's episode six. six. Episode six. Well, there some of the the robot guards that were CG were there was one shot that was oh well that's that's yeah. But again, this is this is like but, uh, five but, hours of content. Yeah, so. and, and yeah. the other thing is is like 
you see those mistakes and in actual fact you see ones done worse than that in full fledged fe- full sorry full fledged oh yeah. Yeah, yeah um and stuff and so the fact that it was still that quality so consistently just uh, really impressive yeah yeah no it's visually it's from a production standpoint it's really well put together agreed um but the writing yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was going to say, it's funny because uh, I think an easy first topic, considering the first shot and the first thing you hear in this whole show is the fobs. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the so, fobs, uh, shall let's we? Let's be frank. Let's, fobs, let's talk about the fobs. Um, yeah, fobs will haunt this show <laughs> all, uh, eight episodes, basically. Uh, well, see, this is interesting. I'm here, I, I want to hear your takes because I've, I've thought about the fobs a lot. And uh, and because I like it, it's so funny, big... it, everyone has a bias. And because I did enjoy The Mandalorian, I have found myself being more forgiving or at least willing to go to a bit more effort to try and see if things were justified or not. And I will admit when, thing is, when things are like irredeemable and, and that they're broken, I will admit it. Um, especially if you're, you really have to make up stuff to justify things that aren't, aren't even alluded to in the episodes. But I actually, I actually found some things that explain the fobs a little bit. So uh, this will be an interesting topic. All right. Who wants to take point on the fobs? Anybody's right, I mean, so, I could, oh, yeah, you go for it. So one of the things about fobs is that there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about them. Uh, which isn't necessarily a problem, but eventually it does get to a point where we start to wonder, how does this work, and at what point is it going to be explained to us so we know what the rules are for FOBs? Um, one, of the other, one of the issues surrounding FOBs, though, is their apparent... Uh, they tend to be forgotten as a thing. They don't get made... Uh, factions don't use them when they need to, namely Imperials. True. Um, should we get to that though when we hit those episodes where they should be? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I was just uh, touching on it lightly. Mm-hmm. We, it's never mentioned how you can get rid of a fob tracker, which struck me as very, very odd. Especially uh, if the story is there's a there's a fob tracking Baby Yoda for the whole season, essentially. But it's never in, in all the episodes of one we watched and rewatched. Never is it brought up the idea of how do we get rid of the fob tracker? How do we elude it? How do we stop it? As if it's assumed there's no way to do it, which causes an incredible amount of questions to be raised for the rest of Star Wars and how you can find people and how these could be used in the story or abused for story purposes. Um, Fobs are... Yeah, they're they're very they're strange in the way that they're used. Yeah, um, the fundamental question we need is what are they tracking specifically? What are they tracking? We don't know. I so, guess maybe they're tracking their their life. I don't know. By <laughs> like, okay, like, okay, I'm, okay. I'm not sure. So I had all the same questions as you guys, and I, I was actually starting to feel that fobs are starting to break a lot of elements because if these are like basically magic tracking devices that that kind of breaks star wars why the heck wasn't that why didn't darth vader use them to find the location of the rebel base and he had to interrogate and um and all that stuff uh, and so yeah like what what seems to be implied on the surface is that these things are broken and so i was i was really wondering and and so it started off with me just saying okay how would i if i was not trying to find clues in the episodes how on earth would i even explain how they work like dna tracking that through hyperspace force they're they're connected with force sensing people and stuff and so i was coming up empty but when i was rewatching the episodes um uh, just i guess to uh to bring up your point you know how do you get rid of a fob tracker it's not explicit they did not do a good job if if they and and i'm worried that this might be me picking up clues from what's shown and uh, and then explaining it through what's implied and then it's going to be contradicted later on because this happens all the time in Star Wars like um you know when people say we're trying to explain why Luke didn't use the 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 fighter to go help the rebels in uh, um uh force no uh, last jedi because and everyone just said, well, naturally the ship must be broken, okay, and that was the logical implication. That was a satisfying explanation, and then it was contradicted by the next bloody movie. And I could be doing this. I fully admit, okay, <laughs> and I fully admit that it is not a, uh, explained explicitly when it should be because it implies these things. But I think it's actually shown rather 
then explained with two key scenes. Um, what The first scene is when Mando goes to the Imperial guy and the Imperial guy gives the information on baby Yoda. And he says, uh, um, all I can give you is his age and the last known location. But with that information, you should have an, someone of your capabilities should uh, be able to find it. And then when baby Yoda is about to get snipered by the bounty hunter on the planet in episode four. Um, uh, so when they go to the bounty hunter, the, I forget her name, but she specifically says that um, they know his here. Meaning that seems to imply when I, when I when I heard that I was like oh that's interesting they need to know the location before the fob points to, which implies that fobs are restricted by range that you at least need to be on the planet um, for you for one to be able to find and then you need something some type of marker to be able to scan for the individual what is that marker well I was wondering I was like okay well what's the answer here and I was looking. Well, in Star Wars, they do have fairly advanced scanning. When Luke is flying down to Dagobah in um, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, he scans the planet. He's like, well, there's no structures, but there's heaps of life forms everywhere. And so that's actually really advanced scanning, that you can scan an entire planet life form things. And if you have that capacity in just a small fighter, it means the scanning technology can be fairly portable. And so if you could scan an entire – but you need to be in the range of the planet. And if you can scan the entire planet for – a life form that is specifically 50 years old. That could give you a decent number of hits. Uh, well, when I say decent number, uh, like if the planet is uh, um, uh, not hi as highly populated, that, well, that would give you uh, um, only uh, like a certain number that you could then work through and then, okay, well, if it's in too secluded or uh, it needs to be amongst other life forms, everything, you kind of you know work through things to actually narrow down the, the areas in which it's pointing. And then if the scanning could get so advanced that it could actually lock onto um, the species, where you're actually scanning for a specific species, well, then that kind of explains it. It could actually explain that fobs need to be uh, at least within a planetary range. And that explains how the whole Mandalorians is like how he could actually try and lie low and escape the range of the fobs. His intention was to go to a secluded planet that was completely off the radar of anyone um uh, and that it was unlikely that anyone would even go to the planet to check it out and so when i was like looking i was like okay it, it might might actually so, um, be explained. what about that that scene where he was getting attacked in space do fobs work in space as well or yeah if they're within range if they're fast oh, enough and I mean... so Okay. We, we're not we're not told what got the guy in the fighter um, to attack Mando, and he could have been refueling or any sure. number of things, and they could have gotten proximity, and the fob just goes ding ding. Um, if, and we know that the fobs were sent out to most of the you know bounty hunters and stuff. And the fact that they had so at first it was really hard for Mandalorian to find Yoda, but once he found Yoda and he, and he uh, handed them in, they we, they did some type of test. They obviously got his blood, and so they would have species DNA and everything. And we don't exactly know how scanners work in Star Wars, but we can kind of assume that um, they had a lot more information to scan for once uh, Baby Yoda was handed in. And then, uh, and so therefore the fobs might be able to work far more, I guess, accurately in pinpointing Baby Yoda's location after they got more in, I guess, biological information on him. So what do you guys think? That's what I was kind of noticing when I was looking. Cause, I mean, cause that's, that's, that's a, that's a, like a lot of, um, I feel like there's a lot of, um, that is yeah, harshly extrapolated. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. It's going off because like, it's going off what's implied and what's shown. Um, and what it really needed is someone to just simply say, these are the rules. Fox I mean, a I limit, think... A limitation on distance. And they I'm need basic say... biological information to be able to scan for it. I'm, but it is I'm kind gonna... of implied because the, the guy, when he was giving Mando, he says, we know the last known location. And then he gets some biological information. So, but, I'm, but they I'm needed someone to say... And say. I would say that they should have no fobs at all. That's, I, I think that yeah, would, I agree. yeah, I think you should get rid of the fobs and just have it be that bounty hunters need to track people down properly. Yeah, um, I, I think it takes a lot out of the... This is a little meta in some way, but I think that having fobs that basically just point you to where the guy is you're supposed to go get takes out an extremely 
both interesting but substantial part of what it is to be a bounty hunter. Yeah, which you don't is... need to be smart or th- clever. You don't need to figure things out. For that oh, portion. Yeah. For that, on, for that on, portion. On that note, but hang on, yeah, because yeah. if all you... If you don't know their location to even get the fob to start to clue in, yeah, but that's, a that's lot of... if that's how fobs that, work, though. Yeah, it's a good yeah, yeah, no, no, but see, you would it could take a lot of work to try and find where the planet is to then use yeah. the fob to like you know a scan in towards whatever biological biological information you could be you know going off of for it to track. So I, I I think there could still be a lot of difficulty in finding the planet, and that is kind of implied that you know they I were actually... on that. The, the backwater planet for weeks even after the fight they say they actually say that these last few weeks you know he's been happy and everything talking about baby yoda and it took several weeks for one bounty hunter amongst all the hundreds or thousands that have these things to finally find the planet where the fob might have given him the clue so i think it could, like the fobs don't break the the whole kind of difficulty of tracking people down if they have that limitation and i'm not I saying don't, don't they know. do it's just kind of a... implied I still think that is a, a huge part of it that takes a lot of the work away from it. As well as if if you have fobs and they work along those rules, then if you have things like guilds here, then that would significantly narrow down the amount of searching that a guild has to do because it's not one person trying to track down individual planets. It's an entire guild that is using information. Because remember, the guild has a vested interest in having their members find marks. So if you have a guild, then their ability to cover planets all over the galaxy very, very quickly is significantly sped up. So just to play devil's advocate then, all right, um, uh, I'm wondering that, okay, you know, if you want to take, say, fobs don't exist and that bounty hunters need a track right and stuff like that, what it would make they would like to be consistent they would need to use the scanning technology that's available in star wars that's already be implied sure and but the, then you can explain the that in scenes that, in the show yeah i know and the scanning technology does seem to be pretty advanced and so the question is if you had someone's species their age and you could scan a whole planet just for those two things let alone their name height and other characteristics based on the scanning technology that's already present in star wars it's uh, like they technically should be able to locate someone on a planet well, just by a scan pretty quickly, just by the technology that, that already exists. Do we know they could scan individuals on that level from like space or a certain amount of distance? Well, it's implied, it's not explicit, but because we get life fact, forms, we you do get life forms, get right? Buildings. Um, so yeah, that is a good question. That is, a, and it, it would it would it would help the, us our understanding if it was explained explicitly that the scanning could work. But would you would you concede that you definitely could scan someone to that specific detail, if not planetary, but closer? Like so, the closer you get, the stronger and more detailed scanning you could be. Yeah, but that's I would what, say I'd say it's reasonable that the closer you get, the more accurate the scan would be. But even if we're looking for details on a planetary level, that's still is i i would be it's it's hard to say because we're really doing a lot of guesswork here well yeah i i i fully admit i'm like i'm i'm extrapolating on things that are implied and this could all be contradicted by someone using a fob in season two that is like they're on one planet it's like oh the fob is telling me he's on another planet i'll be like well there we go you screwed it right but I mean, we're, at the we're moment at the there's nothing there's nothing contradicting i guess this theory and the theory is based on uh, specific things that are implied and how that fits quite well with how they're shown being employed at the moment which is why i'm not as uh dark yeah, say or the, annoyed with the fobs right i would now. say the show very much also supports it almost explicitly at some points from from viewing it that it's uh it's just tied to the person um, like that just seems to be how it works. That's obviously the concern all of us have. We don't want that to yeah. be the case. I know, and it would have been so good that, like, all you needed is one small scene when Mando goes to the last known location of Baby Yoda in episode one. And he says, "All right, well, based on uh, the the age and and we're not told if he had species information, but it'll be really is like and the species. I'm only getting and, and that all he, all he would need is that age and species, and if he could scan the whole planet, bang, he would know exactly where Baby Yoda is. And then he'd just um, a scene as simple as that. But it would have been even if he didn't have species, just say, well, it's a very um." How secluded. many fifty-year-olds are on this planet? Yeah, Oof. exactly. But because the, the planet Oof. seemed fairly sparse in terms of population, oh and man, so that's I even exact fifties. Like depending on 
how also, wait, like, wouldn't again, you how like the po- population is? That's it? still gonna screw you over big time if you don't have a puck. Because what if, what if you brought Baby Yoda back and they were like, nope, it's a different fifty year old on that planet. <laughs> He's like, yeah, oh. uh, but it seems like that could have been a possibility. Well, see, but um, if we run with the assumed theory, or at least my assumed theory, um, they give him the age, they give him the last reported position of of Baby Yoda. And then the fob, which let's just pretend for a second it does lead directly to the to the person. That means he can uh, obviously get to the planet, the last reported area. Use the fob to get more, you know, closer and closer, and then figure out where the fifty year old is. Uh, if he can't, naturally the fob will just lead him directly to him. Because um, Werner Herzog says that you'll be able to make short work of it, and it's like, how would anyone be able to make short work of this if they have to search a planet for all fifty year olds? Also, yeah, the, the there's more, no yeah, way. Yeah, like I well, agree. But we're, about it, the more well, that I think, we don't canon... know how many exact fifty-year-olds, because that is an exact age. And for the amount of population that planet seemed to have had, like I would say, the likelihood you might get ten out of all the population on that planet, which already seemed to be pretty low. And then if, and it was, it would have been kind of cool if he did the scan and he got 10 hits and he goes, okay, now we need to work through. Well, um, uh, it's going to be protected is and it's going to be in some but, kind but, of secure but, facility. But, 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 but what if I, one of those guys defending baby Yoda was a 50 year old Mando can't kill him. Well, he could kill him, but he'd have to bring the body back as well in case that guy's the bounty. Yeah, that would have been, that would have made an interesting kind of conflict. Wouldn't it? That he had to well, work with the information he had. No, I'm, 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 I don't think I don't think I'm ready to accept the idea that you could even scan for people's ages. Age, yeah, that's bizarre. yeah. The more I think about it, the more it just doesn't like that. It's a good you're question. You're gonna have to really give me something solid in the material to say you could scan for people's ages. Yeah. You have to be really so, careful I mean, it, too, because like 50, I mean, 50 years and three hundred days, or fifty years in one day. Yeah, yeah, how many? Yeah, yeah. because years are different depending on what planet you're from. You know, so I agree. To, yeah. And the satisfying thing for me, I would say you should technically only be able to determine the actual cellular age of someone's physical body with a sample. Myself, I, I like. Um, and so well, I, I mean, I don't understand. I guess my problem with the FODs is it just seems like I don't even understand how the FOB like activates. How do you? Well, how do well, you hey, have somebody? So there is one thing that simply isn't stated, and this is this is one that is not supported by anything in the show so it's an absolute leap i fully admit that and i don't like and when and when an audience when the audience needs to go to such extents to try and explain things it's a sign of bad writing and so even if this explains it it doesn't explain it doesn't excuse the fact that it wasn't explained in the show and it's it's bad that i need to do this it's a sign of bad writing i fully admit this right but we're not told of any additional biological information the fob had on the scan or we are implied about the age but it could be that he had some of the dna there's some of the species information that he could have scanned for uh, I, i'm, I'm open to the idea that if you have dna samples then it makes it easier to track somebody sure mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i i think that we're all pretty much in agreement though that the way that they explain fobs and illustrate their use is extremely loose mm-hmm. to where we don't really know what the rules are for them well, and I think that's... the planetary proximity is actually shown explicitly enough. I, well, I, I don't mean, think it's shown I, explicitly at all. Yeah, neither do well, I. Well, we, no, that when when uh, the uh, the sniper goes to shoot Baby Yoda, their response was, oh, he had a fob, he tracked him. Their response was, they oh. know he's here, then they can track him, meaning that is a direct implication. They need to know the location before they can find it. That's that's the word that has the the direct implication there. So, I know. am I to believe that the way that it works for a bounty hunter who has no idea where their guy is, that they're just going to go to every individual planet to, like, just land there, pull out a fob and be like, oh, I guess it's not here, and then get off and then go to the next planet, no, land, no, that, and then get a fob and- one that that is that could be a very valid way of doing it, but if you're a smart bounty hunter, you would then say, "What are the most likely locations they'd be hiding him?" And you'd work the, the well. issue. The and, issue and that the- would have. I'm sorry, that would have a, a very good narrative kind of detective elements to it, still, even with the presence of fobs. Uh, yeah, I suppose, get close I suppose my problem is that I don't recall any point in the, the, the show where they show us that fobs do not work in space. We've also, only ever seen, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I've, I've never, this is the first time I've even thought about the idea that fobs only work on the planet because yeah, I yeah. never saw anything that said that. I they agree, but, it, but right. yeah, it's it's implied by, is it, what's her name? The Kara lady, the bounty hunter? It's implied in that scene specifically. I don't says, know that you're right about that. 
Because could you could be, you well, you, you could, could read it in a different way, that. which is when he's like, "Who's he tracking? The kid?" And then she, she, so we that line alone is like, "Oh, of course they're tracking the kid." And then the conclusion is, "Oh, well now they're gonna know he's here because this guy came for him and he's dead, which means there's gonna be more on the way." As in, the reading can easily be, obviously there's well, more. The, the, they they know he's here okay, now because. This guy the did. reason why I think that's wrong is because if they could all track him just with the fob, they would all know the location the moment Mando even landed there. But it took weeks for this guy to find him. And so it's not through the fob that they were able to know the location because it took so long for anyone to find him. And so they found the location, and that's why the reading is well, see, they yeah, know he's here. I just figured that was a mistake on their part that it took so long yeah, for I people to turn it was up. A mistake, uh, too, because no, alterna no, no, alternatively, forgot. you're telling me that bounty hunters are just planet jumping and hoping for the best well no no, yeah. no like i don't think that's a, a disingenuous explanation of what one one of the core tasks the bounty hunter needs to do they need to find the planet that these bounties are hiding on and well, and it's not to, and it wouldn't be a random thing if you're a smart bounty hunter you would say all right known associates last known location best places to hide i can narrow he had the, known, you know, the known associates down. on that well yeah but then remember how they talk about well, in well, episode exactly. one in episode one they mention um Oh, you know, it, that's not even going to pay for my fuel. So fuel is a concern. I don't see that it's feasible, like economically feasible, for bounty hunters to just go to planets. And to clarify, land what I'd assume, to see that they're there. yeah, and I'd assume that the industry works by going bounty hunter. This is the puck, as in this is what they look like. This is probably you can get some information like how old they are, or whatever. This is the planet we know they're on, or this is the last planet they were known to be on. You can accept this job, or you or you cannot. It's it's completely up to you, and the bounty hunter can take the risk or not. But the idea that it's like We've got a high value target that's somewhere in the galaxy. In the galaxy, yeah. It's just like, just go to but, planets and check but, for but us. Hang on, hang on. I like surely though, there would be cases where it's like that. Mandalorian picked the planet specifically in the hopes that no one would find him. And so there ha there has to be conditions in which you can hide and not be found. And that's well, see, the, the thing is when he, other when Star he said Wars that, things, I thought... The issue was that when he said that, I thought it was like, wait, hold on, but the fobs, <laughs> like, how can you well, hide from them? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. That's, that's the implication of the fobs, but leave. it is, I think it is answered if you just give the fobs a, a range limitation by, you know, planetary proximity. But that means, and then, that means he could never, ever move again, because the more time passes, the more planets get narrowed down, which means even if they never find him on that planet for some crazy reason, he can well, never it's... go to another planet ever, because the fobs will instantly activate. Well, no, no, not necessarily, because a couple of things. One, it would be crazy if he was never found, but he was found. And uh, I think that's if if the fobs work in this way, this planet is uh, is very secluded, but it's already shown that random people do happen to stop off there and fly off. You know, there's the Kara people and there's other mercenary-like people. And so it's not out of the realms of possibility that even though it's secluded, that one random bounty hunter who happened to have the fob landed on there to get a bite to eat or to refuel, and suddenly the fob gives a ting. And that was like several weeks after he landed. And then, of course, you could jump from planet to planet to make it you're more secluded because there's heaps of secluded, you know, backwater planets all throughout Star Wars. And in fact, moving from one to another would in increase your chances of not being found because if one bounty hunter went to a planet scanned you weren't there and went to another and then you went to that planet after they had scanned and already knocked it off their search things means uh, you know moving around and that's that's a common thing in, in trying to lay low in most space. things doesn't that highlight we, we, how we horribly no, 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 inefficient it would be how, we don't know how they meet up in space that's not in, that's not so we can't like it would be it's just as disingenuous for me to say well he was refueling ran into someone as to say that they just crossed each other when flying through space that it's it's as likely as either one so therefore we um, no, I, it's, no. it's very it's very unlikely no. that they would cross each other in space exactly exactly uh exactly and so right, but, but what i'm so saying if, is if the fobs like, work, yeah, but... astronomically low chance yeah, yeah, exactly so if the fobs work by proximity it, that it, it makes perfect sense that um no, then you might run into someone massive especially in space Exactly, and so like the chances that you would get close enough to another ship is by an actual location that is a gathering point. If it's a refueling but the, station, but this is purely or a space based station. on the this is purely based on the extent of the proximity. Yeah, and if the I proximity agree. is very very big, then that just makes it even worse. 
Yeah, exactly. But when but we're not we're not told that this guy was tracking him through hyperspace or everything like that. They're just fighting in space. And it's actually far more likely when you consider the scale of space that they came closer in proximity because of uh, a joint place that they were flying by, whether well, it was a human space the station is, is, um, or something like that. because it and couldn't if, have happened it couldn't have happened while he was in hyperspace. So I guess he was just flying around at normal speed, and then the bouncy hunter found him, and then they got. Oh, to hang a on, were they were they fighting close to a planet? Um, yeah, yeah they were close he to was Tatooine. Tatooine. Well, mm -hmm. well there yeah. we go. That that's the gathering point. That so, there is a higher likelihood of coming he in to, proximity uh, of the other oh, people. Oh, actually, that seems like a problem. Why would why would Mandalorian go to Tatooine of all places if fobs activate as soon as you land on that planet? That's stupid. Well, hang on, hang on. Tatooine has always been established as a secluded backwater planet. It's, it's no, a, but it's a, mm, it's a, it's a place so where a lot of criminals are. No, like, don't, yeah. not call. Wait, yeah, wait, yeah, wait, 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 not common it's a secluded one but because it appears in style so much because of nostalgia factor people assume it to be common but technically it shouldn't be tattoo well, wait but is a whose references are we using at that point are you using third party I'm in world uh, to my understanding Tatooine is secluded backwater outer rim planet I, um, I find it very, very difficult well, to believe that a place like Tatooine wouldn't be checked by a bounty not hunter. Going to have a bunch of bounty hunters, especially with the high. Well, well so hang on. There. I would agree with you if Tatooine was known and regularly, you know, visited by bounty hunters. Uh, but that's it, not established. Well, we yeah, assume, no, but, but, but it is because uh, he goes there for bounty guild work. He finds out that luckily for him, the bounty guild no longer ah, operates well, see, there. Well, then this is a valid criticism there because I would absolutely agree if if bounty hunters are the ones who are most likely to have the fobs and then Mandalorian specifically seeks out bounty hunters for work and to be therefore putting in proximity to the fobs, that's a bloody stupid... Well, I guess so. Um, I completely agree. And so I, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, but only when I feel it's justified. When you point out something that is indefensible, I'll fully agree. Yeah, that's an indefensible, stupid point. Don't, don't go. I I guess now I, I have a, I guess a new problem is, is the way that it works now that if he goes to a planet and then lands there, all the, all the bouncy hunters who are on that planet, their fob is going to instantly activate and they're all going to converge on him. Is that, is that how fobs work in, in this? That any bouncy okay. that lands on a, any a planet of... will I think, immediately I think chat, chat wants us to it... acknowledge the huts. Yes, I know. I know Jabba's dead. Okay, yeah, I, good, very good point. As, I agree. Well, no, bounty, always... Jabba, Jabba had bounty hunters regularly in his. Oh, and I made a mistake, by the way. He didn't. I agree completely. He, he doesn't necessarily come there for guild work. He comes there for work. Uh, it's just that. Okay. It's unclear that he knew or didn't know that the guild no, no longer but functions there. I, I suppose there. that there's there's more than one guild of bounty hunters, though. Surely. Well, well, well they yeah, refer to it as the Fringy. guild, so I don't know. Well, yeah. Right. My other point to Fringy is that. Uh, I think even I might have said, taking for granted that all the bounty hunters would have the fobs, but in reality, there's only a couple of hundred sent out by that guild, whatever, on that planet. And if you consider the many thousands of bounty hunters across the galaxy, we could rightly assume. Wait, that, hold on. Well, um, that, hey, hang on. Uh, you you could rightly you assume yeah. that Mando could expect that only a very small percentage of the overall bounty hunters would have the fob uh, to track the Yoda. Sorry, it's um, I I just had like a weird brain thing moment something in episode one mandalorian gives back the fobs for each of the people that he got which implies that each individual fob is for each individual bounty that you're going for yeah right is that that's how it works that seems to be okay. that they're co that, that, that so, one one so, fob for one bounty okay so in right so does that mean then that so all of the bounty hunters, when he went back in episode three, all of them had fobs for that bounty that they were just holding, now, even though now, it had been reclaimed. Yes. No, no, and things. that makes sense because that is the that's the core point that the bounty is being sent out from, and he and and it's even implied. He says, "How many fobs did you give out?" He's like, "Didn't he? Like everyone has." He says, them, all. Yeah, but why would they keep them? Why all. would they keep them then? Yeah, that's another problem. Like it's, it doesn't. They don't oh, need okay, them anymore. No, yeah. <laughs> the bounty's over. Yeah, good point. So they good all point. have them. Good. Or, yeah, yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. And uh, this is all well, still in, assuming, guess, by the I way, guess... that it does lock on to them personally, right? Because we kind of... 
Like, like well, the, that's, that's, exactly how that's works, what exactly. is implied by what's shown. Because the, the, the two <laughs> sort of defenses for the fobs right now is that they work at limited range and that they work based on d data to do with your person rather than you personally. Well, so it could be this, and you're right, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Mola, but sorry. it could be a fob can actually work um, for multiple, well, it can only uh, track one at a time, but you can reprogram it to do another one, and it could have stored into itself several different, you know, informations to track multiple targets, but you can only tell it to target one at a time. And so it could be that what the people had the baby Yoda fob, Oh, the bounty's done. I'll switch it over to my next target. Um, and the fob is you could you could have options on it again. I, I, this is I'm looking into it pretty much. But if I was to make a fob, I would want convenience and say, all right, track the most valuable target all the time and put that up to the top, right? I guess. And, and if you made that a automatic feature, Baby Yoda was the most valuable bounty before. It turned off. Okay, it defaults to the next most valuable one. And then now Baby Yoda bounty is back on. Bang, fob switches over to tracking the only individual one target can at a time, but it could do it automatically. That's a, that's a logical enough thing. Well, why, why would Mando have like four different Mando, fobs? Yeah, why would he have four and then give him in? Because it only can tack, track one at a time. Um, yeah, but so you, may as as you, as hunters, you can only hunt people one at a time. You may as well just switch. Well, hang on. Just go, yeah, to, go to a planet, okay, switch it between switch the it four, you know? Time. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, that, that that would be a thing because you could just do it with one. Track one, switch it over. Track another, switch it over. Okay, these are the uh, one and use one yeah. at a time. Um, I mean, and so having multiple. The, the idea that they have to be like programmed specifically by certain people. Um, I'm pretty sure that Carl Weathers even says that he does something that uh, uh, Mahler maybe can help me. We we, just, we did just watch it. Um, doesn't Carl Weathers, doesn't he say that he has to program them or give? Or he's the one who passes them out? Or Which episode? Remember? I, I forget. Uh, either way, it's just a small thing. Honestly, I, just... I think I, I agree but... with you there, Rags. It actually makes more sense that only the bounty leaderships can put a bounty on a fob because otherwise yeah, anyone could just I, pick up a fob put a bounty and say hey bounty hunter can you go kill someone okay, got, <laughs> i'm not really paying you we, so chat chat is screwing up a lot here so, so one of them said yeah. um, one of them said pucks and fobs are the same thing they're not the same thing no pucks are, are the little the discs thing. that give you their face and the yeah, fobs are like the trashes uh, yeah we and, assume so yeah pucks are they look like pucks and they have their face on them we know not unreasonable to assume they have other information on them, but it's like a a more it's an identifier. It's not a tracker. It's more like your um, it's like a wanted poster, yeah, right. It's like a wanted poster yeah. on, the, on the target. And someone else said that the you don't even know if the pucks or fobs track the target. It's like a homing beacon. Yeah, that's the what fobs a fob are basically is. like it beats louder when you get yeah. closest. And that's how did the bounty hunters who were coming for them? Like, yeah, no, it tracks them. It does. It's you know they give, and he gives the 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 fobs back as if I am done with these. You take them so that they can be re reprogrammed for different people and then for given else. out again. Yeah. Um, also, I just want to say this is all. Uh, all of this is underneath the looming specter of the fact that never once in any of the eight episodes is it even mentioned. How to get rid of uh, a fob tracking you? So, uh, someone else, I, the, the person. I don't. Yeah, track. see, I don't think you can. I think the only way is to get out of the proximity, and I think that's explained by Mandalorian's actions in going to a secluded planet, just flying. Yeah, but they never off wear away. off. That's the thing. Fobs don't ever turn <laughs> off. <laughs> So, yeah. There's so many yeah. things to address yeah. in chat. This is gonna be weird. I, so I, yeah, somebody um, said that there was no baby Yoda fob. It's like, what about in episode was, three when all of the bounty hunters converged to baby? Yoda? There was Yoda only a baby Yoda fob. There was no baby Yoda puck. That was yeah, the, that was, that was no the point. Pucks. He says no puck. Also, uh, <laughs> no puck. Kirill said uh, fobs track the implanted ID chips every citizen has. What are you talking about? When was that established? Yeah, no, implanted don't... chips in every yeah, citizen. So people, when was yeah, that? <laughs> Yeah, people are not going to be... Never heard stuff. that, and and why would Baby Yoda have one? He said, this whole discussion is redundant. You can't just make shit up from other stuff. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, and people will take them out. The first thing that you're going to do is yeah, you're going like, to take if, them yeah, out. If you, you know that that's that how you, you get tracked, you just Imagine the black head. market value for that. You could totally pay surgeons to do that. Yeah, and you can put them on other people and have and send them yep. off, and it's that's a whole other mess that we definitely don't want to get into. But yeah, people aren't gonna <laughs> um, are gonna do that. I think season two will be able to either confirm or deny what the hell's going on with these fobs. The funny thing is, I just looked at the Wikipedia page for it; and it is dry as a bone. It's 
<laughs> tracking tracking fobs were devices used by bounty hunters to track their quarries. The bounty hunter would return the fobs after capturing their bounty as proof of capture. In 9 ABY, the Bounty Hunters Guild handed out tracking fobs to its hunters. A bounty hunter simply known as the Mandalorian returned his fobs after capturing all of his quarries. <laughs> it's like, thanks so for that. The thing so, is, though, like, it, I think it know, could be salvaged if they made, like, some of these limitations that are at least shown and you could connect the dots. But there's a big flaw that, you know, it's not explained and uh, and there are still problems with it, don't get me wrong, like the, the, all the fobs turning on randomly and the fact that they all suddenly have it and stuff. So there are still issues there. It's just at the moment for me, it can be explained. And so that that may, helps me at least, OK, I can watch it and not have the fobs stand out as this glaring problem that's breaking the whole show. I can I can keep watching and enjoying it. I, I still think also, they, we have I the still, Empire. Yeah. The Empire is looking for Baby Yoda. The fact that the Empire is not using fobs and tracking him down wherever he goes is something that they are going to have to address if they want to have good writing. Yeah, like, I would agree. It, I mean, yeah, you yeah. could address well, considering, it. You could explain, but... Considering everything we know, it blows my mind that um, they didn't send a, a faction of stormtroopers to just go and get Baby Yoda with the information they had. Okay, so is, my, my thoughts strange. on that, my thoughts on that is that they, except at the very end when there's a very large imperial presence, the um uh, the stormtroopers are hiding out in a bunker and they're trying mm. to lay low. And it seems mm. like they, no, it seems like the empire factions yeah, are trying to avoid that? Republican, uh, you know, the new republic uh, weeding them so out. So how do you explain that for Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, I was about to say it's the a end. problem. Don't get me wrong. I said I, I, because like, yeah, there's obviously what are they doing problems, in the but... finale? It's like they're specifically trying to capture Yoda. It's like yeah. wow, you guys probably should have done this in the fucking pilot. <laughs> would have been yeah, a good idea I, mean, the, the, I think the only have... defensible thing you could say is that they couldn't be bothered he didn't wouldn't want to use their resources but they got the money so yeah we'll throw out a bounty they have like, enough resources to I start think... killing their own men willy oh so. my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so which so, is a part that i hated the one thing also, the other thing stormtroopers are notoriously incompetent I, I want to highlight, by the way, as as James Moore's know. just pointed out, if everyone had ID chips, wouldn't Vader have found the rebels way easier? Especially knowing his yeah. son, he has like I don't know about this ID Dude, chip thing. The implant thing, just f drop it. Someone else said you can't you can't take the chip out because then you can't interact in normal society. It's like what? There's no that. Uh, don't what? Even, that is no that's dumb. there's there's no like system where you go to a bar and they scan your ID chip before you can buy anything. <laughs> You Does give that them mean money and they well give you a drink. Yeah, it's Jawas credits. and said people have chips as well. <laughs> so Jawas yeah, I don't know. But this is the thing. <laughs> Fobs are causing loads of fundamental issues. That's why I love that this is the first thing we've talked about. It's lasted like an hour. <laughs> but well, but, but right, even then, I want to play. I, I, I know going further is not justified in the in the plot, but uh, I'm down the rabbit hole and I like playing devil's advocate. Okay, so yeah. what yeah, if this is? Yeah, this is I, this is very I, much a there are there are potentially there might be explanations for things, but that's basically the Also that's very yeah, wishful that's thinking considering we've felt this way a lot over the past with a lot of different franchises. Like they'll explain it. They don't. <laughs> well that's the exactly this could be so contradicted and everything I say is just shoved, you know, back in my well, foot and mouth kind of crap. Shoved back in my face in ep in a, in season two if they contradict this stuff and so but at the moment, all I'm saying is that there are ways to explain there it, and I shouldn't have to, an and it's bad writing that I I need to, even in the first place. But, all right, one of the reasons why I like to try and see, okay, is there a way to make this way? It's like a uh, a writing exercise. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. Like, yeah. If, I if, yeah. If, if I was going to make, if I was writing this, how would I justify it to make yeah, it? Yeah, if you were writing exists? season two, how would yeah. you make it all make sense post -hard? Exactly, exactly. And so one of the ways that you could explain is that uh, a fob is potentially very dangerous technology that falls into the wrong hands um uh, if anyone gets it and could code anyone's basic information and track whoever they want to kill whoever they want and and the guilds seem to be they're accepted in society as i'm not even sure if they're considered a necessary evil they seem to be these bounty hunters are good they help us deal with criminals and you know people skipping bail and all these things and so it could be that fobs have a a, a very uh, like Ma they, they could be behind a massive code that the bounty only the bounty hunter guilds have the codes to be able to encode a fob to track someone and not even the empire has or something like that or you know, so it, it can't be abused in the wrong hands essentially that's one way you could try and spin it
I want to um, defend you as well, Shaz. So, someone said you're writing the script for them. Shaz's not saying this happened. This is the truth. Yeah. He's saying it's an option, and he's also acknowledged that they haven't explained it, which is uh, not a good thing. Which is bad writing. This, this is the this terrible is the from need, the gaps yeah, that we're It's terrible. With right you need now. to go to we're, these extents. It's totally to cool to explore options in terms of how it yes. could make sense. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Cool. Uh, but I do. Th I I will. I will again reiterate. It is an extreme leakness of the writing as well that it is is not even suggested of how to get rid of them. And if there's not a way to get rid of the tracking, which I find very hard to believe, then they should say, you can't get rid of the fob. It's, you know, da 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 We have to go through the people who did that or something. I don't know. I, 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 th I think that one is actually more explicitly implied by Mandalorian trying to get out of the range by going to a secluded planet. I think that, like, if, if, you, if it was impossible to um, escape the fobs, and again, this could just, like the the options are: he's either a bloody idiot because the only way to if you can't break the fob tracking, the only thing you can do is to turn is get the bounty withdrawn, which means you have to go to the source and fight them. And so it's, it's retarded beyond belief that is just trying to run away when you can't run away from these things. That's the only that's one option, and the other other option is that you can get out of their range, and that seems to be the more logically consistent one. And I think that one is actually implied quite strongly in the show. Um, I think it's quite a strong indictment on the people who were around Baby Yoda protecting it that they just stated a position that apparently the Empire knew about. Like, you should probably have kept moving, I guess. Well, I don't know. We don't know what they on. were doing. They, they didn't. Did they know that the Empire wanted him? Because technically, this wasn't even just the Empire. It was a, uh, what, one guy within the technically one guy yeah, who, had we, a leader who also more wanted people him. had come there before. Oh yeah, when I say they the Empire, died. I'm mainly yeah, talking about yeah, Moff Quill Gideon. In the first episode, oh. said other people had come and they all ended up dead. I tried yeah. to help them. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I said, but, I'm, I'm not necessarily referring to the Empire when I say the Empire, it's just the bad guys in Mandalorian who are organizing the whole thing. <laughs> they kind of look like the Empire. <laughs> Someone said Bob's and Pucks, trash writing. No, Pucks make total sense. Pucks yeah, make like a I said, lot of Pucks sense. are a wanted poster, I'm cool with them. Yeah, they're That's digital good. wanted posters, they're dossiers on who you're trying to find, what they look like, last known location, maybe next of kin, age, stuff like that. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. And fobs, fobs are only dumb depending on how they work. I, well, I well, could you say at least that it's implied quite strongly in the show that they work by range and proximity? At least I'm not sure that it is strongly I'm implied. Not sure. though. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It, like, uh, proximity, yeah. yes. It, it might be, yeah. but what? Again, like I said, how big the proximity is is it's the difference. Totally unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally I agree. Unknown. It's unknown. It could be galaxy spanning. It could be certain systems. It could be a solar system. We don't even know. Hmm. So that. The extremity of the proximity is not only a phrase you don't hear often, <laughs> but it is really important as a detail for... Yeah, because it, it would it would not only and... influence how easily they would have found it, but it would have influenced the decisions that Mando would have made. Because, i.e., if it was for a whole system, it's like, oh, this causes problems. If it's for a planet, yeah, then maybe it could away. work. Yeah. But if it's for a system, then, yeah, you're, you're screwed. There's no way that you can escape a fob. And, and just to address the people in chat saying that I'm talking too much, it's because I'm doing the defense, okay? And so I'm playing yeah, defense. Yeah, yeah, no, it's and the only one. Yeah. And, and by yeah. the way, we're all we're all pretty good friends at this point. People are like, stop interrupting each other. It's like we're fine. We're okay. We're, yeah. we're, don't worry about us. We're okay. So, um, well, <laughs> stop that. Uh, let's uh, put that in the uh, the old cupboard. Mm -hmm. Close the door and lock it up. And we'll well, I was going to say, later. fobs will it's come relevant. up as we proceed. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we we will. What we'll have to do is critique the, the 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 criticism based on the two different assumptions about how the fobs work, I suppose. But um, I I actually think it's not a bad idea that we started with fobs because there are a few aspects that kind of go through all of the episodes. Um, that aren't nest that are they occur in specific places, but across eight episodes. Yeah. Um, so maybe so Mandalorian's armor. Should we I talk about, about that? <laughs> yes. So, uh, oh um, well, for I, because I, I think so right the, the sorry to interrupt, but I think the the main kind of uh, run of our discussion here is going to be trying to pick apart all the things that we found wrong with it, and uh, and uh, I'm probably going to be playing devil's advocate because I'm the only one who's fun. <laughs> Well, there's, there are things that I'll criticize too, don't get me wrong, but I think before we do that then, should we at least point out the things that we felt were good or enjoyed? I thought we, we kind of we we did, did that already. <laughs> yeah. Not, well, I have a list that I didn't give. Oh, <laughs> right, well, yeah, sure, go, go for it. Um, yeah. Well, we, we talked about the production quality that I thought was really, really good. Um, now, in terms of the Mandalorian's character, I think there are a couple of ways you could look at it, because... Uh, 
there, he makes some dumb decisions. Uh, yeah. Words. Okay. Um, I liked his character, uh, and I think I liked his character because uh, the it was kind Wait, of we're talking about Mando. Mando. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, I liked the concept, and the, and that concept was con- was consistently represented of uh, the lone bounty hunter mercenary uh, doing his own thing. I, I personally liked his reserved personality and the emotion that they were able to convey in dialogue, body language, and stuff, even with a helmet on. That we're, like we don't see that often, and uh, it was refreshing for me to see, and I appreciated it, enjoyed it. Um, like Master Chief esque kind of yeah. Uh, emoting, yeah, yeah. And I, I was endeared towards him because he had a good heart. Ultimately, you know, he he decided to save Baby Yoda and things like that, and he showed loyalty to friends and other stuff. I th- yeah. this part I <laughs> we get we all right no no like if I'm going to be bringing just up just gush gush that, away we will get to the yeah the you can you, you can object my my um uh, my positive Wait. points those will probably pop up as we go through each okay. episode all righty then um, so those will be addressed over the discussion of the episodes with like, yeah. bullet points and stuff we have um when I left we had brought up the armor had we discussed oh, that we, well because or... you disappeared um uh shad wanted to sort of um dive a little bit more into one of the things that he liked well well, several i I have a bit of a list that i think that these are for me fairly strong positive elements that um go in the show's favor and and apply more broadly like because also something that i just really enjoyed one he was he was he was a good fighter he was talented but he was not like unbeatable i actually really liked that they showed him struggling on many on many different levels and failing at many points and i think there was a decent enough balance of of them showing him competent but also being out beaten by other people who were also competent he wasn't unstoppable and uh, and that made for a more engaging kind of protagonist than and for me like it wasn't always the fact that he was always going to win because you know that has failed many times already his life had needed to be saved and uh, and that may again just added to the strength of his uh character overall to make me i like him i like the mandalorian um uh overall as a character for the, for those for those things um Sorry, uh, I'm, just, I'm just gonna cut you off because somebody yeah. made a super chat and it directly acknowledges me, and I think it's a bad point. Um, Friggy, if Bob's have system size range, they're screwed. And then he said there are 70 million worlds. Please grow a sense of scale. All right. Um, so 70 million planets in a galaxy is a very, very small number. There are hundreds of billions of planets in our galaxy. So that if that's what Star Wars has said is how many planets there are in a galaxy, then Star Wars has a very narrow scale for how big galaxies no, are. It I has to be one way or the other. No, like, I, I, I think their point was it's a very large scale in terms of the number of planets you would need yeah, to, yeah, to try and find. Yeah, for something. sure. But but the issue that is with Star Wars is that they've always kind of played a bit fast and loose with uh, the nature of space anyway. You know what I mean? Like, there's always oh, been some stuff. It's surprising where... how many planets show up <laughs> consistently yeah. with how huge yeah, everything is. Exactly. Like, Tatooine Tat- exactly. is the best example. There's back Yeah, Tatooine Tat- shows up all the time. Everyone's going back there. But what I find interesting is that when they do go to a different planet, it seems like the fan base still criticizes it, like Jakku. It's like, oh, this is definitely not Tatooine, guys. Or, or I mean, it, with a, technically, there should be a lot of other de- desert planets. And using the same one, you, it, people criticize it. When you use a different one, people criticize like, and well, which one, guys? Come on. I, for people saying it's just Tatooine, but a different desert planet, it's like, um. Well, somebody, somebody's now said seventy million habitable worlds or something, but that's still like, how does Tatooine show up all the time then? Like seventy million ha- inhabited planets, really? Well, I wonder how many. Planets, I wonder how many planets are in the outer rim, or habitable planets are in the outer rim. Well, I guess that's that the that thing, right? When we're talking about systems as well, and this is part of the problem as well as um. And this was something that came up in, in Maul's Captain Marvel video where, like, I think we made the point that uh, the solar system, like, if you define the boundaries of the solar system, you could either say until Pluto or you could say to the full extent of the Oort cloud, which is about three light years. Depending yeah, and people on got really testy arguing over that. Yeah, like, depending on which one you interpret, the whole idea of fobs will detect you depending on which star system you're in. It's, d- could it just mean that if you're going at hyperspace and you're traveling, the fo- sorry, we, we shouldn't get caught up on the mobs <laughs> again. <laughs> we'll stop there. We'll just get back to keep going with uh, with what you liked about Mando specifically. 
Well, yeah, those are all the reasons why I like Mandalorian. And the thing for me, if I can enjoy the main character, I, I, I can generally enjoy a TV show overall. Um, uh, and that's also what got me through The Witcher. It was the main character. Um, uh, uh, and so uh, I thought I counted that as a strength to this uh, TV show. In terms of like making a good character for the things you were trying to achieve in the series, I think Mandal the Mandalorian himself was done mostly well, even if you were trying to judge it on objective, you know, scales of what makes a good character. And then my standards would be, what type of character do you want for the uh, purposes of the series? Does does he fulfill those needs? And I feel they did it quite well. Um, and not to say there isn't dumb things he does. He absolutely does, right? Um, but yeah, and also the fact that it was a, it was refreshing to see, uh, once again, one of the callbacks to one of the classic staples of the lone hero kind of thing. Uh, and, and I like that archetype. That's very, that got enjoyment out of me as well. Um, the nature of the storytelling, okay? It's not to say there wasn't a lot of issues in terms of the logical justification of certain actions, like there are some big problems, especially, well, like, I know we'll get there, but, you know, the the um, uh, the guy, when, when they're bunkered up and the guy's like, you have so many hours to give in, oh, yeah. so there's a lot of dumb things there. But in terms of the nature of the storytelling overall, it was simple and straightforward. And the propositions of the problems of the episodes were very easily understandable. Uh, you need to do this, or this is in your way, or that's it. And bang, and then everything revolved around that. And I enjoyed the simplicity and clear nature of that style of storytelling, especially coming out of The Witcher, where every episode was so bloody convoluted, you couldn't understand the, the, what was going on most of the time. Um, and so, and I think the simple nature of these overarching plots went in the uh, series strength that was a strength for the series especially for what it was the type of story that it was it was again the lone gunslinger kind of hero so really good strength uh, again um improved uh, my uh, my you know um opinion of it i loved baby yoda uh, <laughs> i feel i thought baby yoda was absolutely brilliant i hated baby yoda healing don't get me wrong okay but it, i i very cute, very enjoyable just on screen. And even just the small things. Like I was watching it with my kids the other day and the scene where Mando gets um, is fighting the girl for the first time and then they roll around and they get shoot the guns at each other and then they just look and it cuts to Baby Yoda just sitting there slurping. My kids busted out laughing like you wouldn't believe. And it was a oh, good man. example of, of subtle scene. comedy. No, that scene. We'll, we'll get, get there. to that scene. Um, we'll get there. I was just going to um, say quickly as well. So, um, this, this is criticism in chat that I find hilarious. Rags and Mauler seem seemed to be obsessed with applying real world Milky Way constraints to Star Wars. Right, that's the first half. Which, by the way, me and Rags really. It was more fringy talking about that than me and Rags. And secondly, the Milky Way is larger than the Star Wars universe uh, if we go by galaxies. So that doesn't even make sense. Like. Well, the thing is, is um, I, what I'm seeing here, and it's a bit of a problem of trying to reach into the extended universe, because I don't recall ever in any of the movies where they said that there are 70 million inhabited planets in the galaxy and where they said how big the galaxy was. So you really do not want to dive into scale when it comes to this, because it's really just going to become a big problem. And, like and secondly, they said all of their problems can be applied to Lord of the Rings. What do you mean? No, they can't. What? What? <laughs> I understand that. I was like, what? Um. Uh, anyway, about the the ring. So, yeah, I was going to say how much I, uh, in terms of Mandalorian as a character, I hate him. I never want to see another character like him. I despise him. I think he's borderline autistic with the decisions that he makes. I I cannot believe that a character who makes these consistently stupid decisions is alive after doing this job that long, uh, the amount of times that he shot, the amount of times that he just has plot armor, the amount of times that he does things that are just insanely brain dead, his inability to use his equipment well, just, I cannot believe that he has been doing this job for this long and hasn't been killed a thousand times over. Okay, those are interesting... Also, his, sorry. sorry, guys. It, it is extremely... Um, well, well, I, I, we'll stop there because I'll get to the next part later on as we progress through the episode. That'll be easier to illustrate it then. But yeah. I do not like Mando at all as a character. I am absolutely. I don't. I don't ever want to see another Mandalorian character. I think, uh, as he's so, so hang on. I find I think, that interesting because sorry, you go, Fringy. 
Oh, I was just going to say, I think I might sit in a nice little middle ground here, which is why I figured I'd say, I think my my view is that um, you got a lot of things with Mando that if you had spent more time developing it, as in you you extend the character development, you could have had something really, really good. Um, and I think the things you can latch onto are, so we have a character who, you know, is a gruff, hardened mercenary, but then we he gets to the point where he, you know, Baby Yoda makes him sort of maybe change his philosophy. And even the idea, even in episode four, where you have um the the whole idea of him potentially settling down, these are all really good ideas, but they're good ideas for later, if you know what I mean. I feel like you need a lot more time with gruff hardened Mando. And then the progression for him with Baby Yoda sort of softening his exterior. And then you can start reaching into him developing more relationships. I think that if they had taken it a bit slower, it could have been really good. But I think that it rushed it to the point that they wasted a lot of the potential that they had for a uh, for that sort of bounty hunter character. I don't dislike Mandalorian, though. I'm, I like I'm him not, enough. I'm, I just I'm think he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's pretty tough. I think it's pretty tough to say he isn't an idiot based on all the things he, he makes a lot of bad episodes. decisions. Well, well yeah. we're gonna go to them one by one because I think some of his decisions are far more defensible than perhaps you're mm -hmm. feeling. Um, uh, also, we'll you get, sound a bit we'll muffled again. I don't know if anything's changed. Oh, really? I don't know. So, uh, well, I could bring it closer. Um, well, uh, what did you do last time that made it change? Was it complicated um, or? No, well, I unplugged and plugged back in, but I did change what the sensitivity just recently, and if that's made it worse, I'll put it Can back. Can you, just um, for curiosity's sake, do an unplug and plug it back in, see if it makes a difference? Because you just, I don't know what it is, but you sound cleaner, um, or you sounded cleaner before. It's like a week, oh, I, actually, I'm okay yeah. to deal with it, it's fine. It's just, I was just curious if you could. I, I can, I can, so uh, continue talking, I'll be back in a sec. Very well. And also, there is a, um, just to be clear, as Fringy said, I have no idea with the I, I have no problem with the idea that Mando befriends a bounty that he has some connection with based on his past. I have no problem with that as a concept. I have no problem with the concept of him finding a buddy or a partner. I have no problem with any of this stuff. In concept, all of this stuff is absolutely fine. But when we look at all the stuff that he does as a character, especially his plans tactically in combat, how he executes missions and a lot of the other decisions that he makes. We, it, it is, it leaves us baffled when we watch him and we try to find out how he rationalizes the things that he does. I guess it's all and, the problem of, um, he's meant to be a really accomplished, talented bounty hunter. Best in the Parsec. The, yeah. He, he doesn't make the decisions that, you would expect him to make he does you yeah. know what i mean like it doesn't seem consistent. yeah if you are if you are the most well-known most famous bounty hunter in the parsec you are a mandalorian you've trained for this your whole life you've trained to be a bounty hunter for all this long you have strict codes of honor this is what you do you are an elite bounty hunter it shocks me all the decisions that he makes in a lot of these episodes. I feel yeah, like, like um, we're, we're, we're doing lots of generalization. We need to get stuck into some references, although yeah, we're going to get because restless. Because I think this, yeah, let's do it, yeah. the specifics are going to be the one that'll either, uh, I guess, lean me more to uh, feel your views are justified or if I feel they can be more defensible. Because the, the thing for me, like, if a, you know, a decent amount to a portion of those decisions can be explained and they're not as blatantly stupid um uh, that could solve some of the issues but also it does seem a lot of your issues are with his actions um which technically that is part of characterization but in terms of the character itself it's going to go down to like um personality and how the the character has in regards to their motivations their goals and stuff like that um and so overall, I think the portrayal of his character in the sense of the subtle body language, uh, the ways I, I still like his character as the, how the character was made. Um, and as to if he's dumb or not, well, that'll be a good discussion. When well, we I guess um, I, I actually like to, because uh, you're probably best suited to answer this question. One of the things that we observed was when he gets into fights, he really relies on his armor to save him. There are many parts where he gets shot in the face and shot in the torso. Where it's like, wow, it's pretty lucky that you have this best guard, you know, like this steel <laughs> armor, because you'd be dead. Is this yeah, is this like does, see him in. does it make <laughs> sense for somebody to fall back so heavily on their armor in fights? No. Maybe let's use no, the, no, if no? I was to say okay. just I, but 
so there's there's a lot of caveats to this, right? Because I did a yeah, whole video of on Mandalorian's armor, and I, I criticize it saying it's not covering enough, okay? And it's awfully convenient that every shot that seems to hit him is always landing on where the armor points are. So I have legitimately yeah. criticized this as well, all right? But uh, the, the response, and a lot, it was interesting to hear um, uh, a lot of people's responses about, in terms of body armor, he's technically wearing more armor than the standard soldier does in modern warfare, but the standard soldier doesn't fight the way the Mandalorian does. They take cover. They and it's like it's the yeah, last. Standard soldiers you know, don't rely on their armor. Yeah, it's the it's last. The you know, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's the last just point of defense, case. just in case. They're absolutely right. Um, and uh, and so yeah, I I would say that he's not. He, he is relying on his armor way too much. If the armor covered most of his body and didn't have openings, then he would be justified in leaving himself open as much as he does and just tanking it. Um, and then I would say yeah, I would agree. So. Well, and I guess it, the it, thing is, is when you look at the fights, there are so many instances where it's like, wow, if that shot was a couple, just a little bit lower or a little bit higher, you'd just be dead. <laughs> it's yeah, just, just like, to, just to clarify, so right? Accomplished? He tanks, well, uh, tanking it is fine with me because of the Baskar. It's the fact that he gets hit and he doesn't get hurt by 13 different blaster shots throughout the, uh, the season. Eight knives. <laughs> yeah, we, we did a little tally. This is obviously subject to, like, we might be off by one or two, but it, uh, I counted 13 blaster shots that he blocked with his armor, eight knives, um, the pterodactyl, and an explosion. Uh, his armor saves him from dying from both of those. That's a lot of uh, impact, and it's like, what, what did he do okay, before? Yeah, I, I agree, I agree completely, but I guess for me, this is why, and it's not really, doesn't redeem it by any measure, but it lessens it for me as well, and it's the fact that he is actually getting hit in some instances, because if he didn't have the armor, the only other option is for the hits to never land at all, which is technically what we see in we see a lot well, of that. Yeah, the original trilogy, they're not wearing armor, so everyone just misses. Unless, yeah, but that's, unless, that's a criticism unless too. it's convenient in the plot for someone to get injured, and then it's only a shoulder hit in Leia in Return of the Jedi. And and for me, I feel that is more indefensible uh, uh, than the Mandalorian actually getting hit. So the fact that he is getting hit, I feel, is actually a little bit better than what we've seen in other well, Star Wars. I guess the problem is that when you look at a lot of the fights that he gets into, it's like he puts himself in these very dangerous situations, almost expecting that his armor is going to save him. I remember in our... I remember it was most pronounced in episode six when he was fighting in the prison. There was this instance where he was fighting some of the robots. It's like, dude, you are... Like, this is really dangerous. Like, I'm not sure why. I mean, there's, you're, you're there's a lot of John Wick so 2, 3 moments yeah, where, there yeah, is just, where there, there's just no way he shouldn't be shot. There, There's all of these, a lot of these fights that happen where you just are wondering, why hasn't he been shot a hundred times now? I want to clarify, he's, he's people are saying, like, it's good that he gets hit in the armor, than not at all. He gets hit not at all a lot, too. Loads of shots yeah, missing. That, that happens as well, but but the thing is, if he wasn't wearing the armor, the only other option is to have, have him never get hit, which is exactly what they did in the original trilogy. The whole meme of Stormtroopers not having to aim is because of plot armor. I mean, he and, can and, have and it, it happens because they can have, they can have the him act series. in the show as you if he have... knows he's yeah, vulnerable. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I'm not saying this is... But also, All I'm saying is the fact that he is getting hit, for me, is at least better than what we have seen previously, because in the original trilogy, they're like... There are so many points where the heroes are standing right in front of people and they're never getting hit. Well, the and thing is, you say, said... And this is in, like, Empire and Return of the Jedi. So the defense that they were purposely missing on the Death Star uh, doesn't apply because it is, it's consistent throughout all of Star Wars. Well, here's, here's yeah, but, a... Cause... They, they, the only times the laser bolts are on part of so now is we're... If they have a lightsaber to defend themselves or it's a convenient in the plot to get hit. Yeah, so, so this is just a, it's bad in other things, too. Yeah, I know. I agree. This isn't a good yeah, argument. Because it's but, bad but here. Me, it's really yeah, bad here. Yeah, yeah. But, but for me, it makes it at least a little bit better than it was before. And and uh, I can still enjoy the pre the, the original series with the horrible plot armor that's everywhere. And to me, the plot armor is actually technically a little bit lessened because of the armor he's wearing, even though it's executed poorly, which but, I fully acknowledge. I guess the thing is, you said before something like, if, if they didn't have him getting hit, then it would be that he doesn't get hit. But I guess... My thing is I immediately think of, okay, well, maybe maybe we can do something with this where it's like, how about we have an episode where he's still got his armor and, you know, he occasionally gets hit. We dial it back a lot. But then we have in one episode, maybe it's later in the first season or sometime in the second season when we're in the trust arc or something, we have him get shot, like, in the leg. It's a really bad one. 
Like it's not a shoulder one where he brushes it off. It's like he gets shot in the leg and he's in big. I want to um, I want to stand trouble. up for the OT. By the way, uh, the only time the stormtroopers yeah. do really great in the opening of A New Hope, and when they don't shoot Luke and Leia and Han and Chewie, you do remember that they're supposed to be letting them think that they're escaping, right? Yeah, that's in the um original in the original one. Right, so so and the storm. This, what I'm trying to say. Wait, 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 I'll finish. So, the, so a new hope. Stormtroopers are actually pretty good from everything we understand about them. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. They're good in Hoth. They're terrible in Bespin. Um, and then Return of the Jedi. Everyone knows that it's ridiculous what happens in Return of the Jedi. Um, so what what I'm trying to say is the like they nailed it in a New Hope. They were fifty fifty in Empire, and then they fucking farted in Return of the Jedi, and now they're taking that to the nth degree in the sequel trilogy and Mandalorian. Well, Mandalorian and is Mandalorian arguably made... worse because they establish its canon that stormtroopers are stupid See, or can't aim. I yeah. love that. <laughs> Me, I, I, I personally love that. I, 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 I love that. I, yeah, I, I thought that was great. I hate it. <laughs> but we'll get to it when we get to I mean, episode... Because, I mean, yeah, we will. Uh, we will six get and to eight. it. Yeah. And also, to address something that is in the chat, someone said, I blindly call him dumb. I am not blindly calling him dumb. I've watched the show twice. I've yeah, seen every this, this is the thing. Twice. A lot of people aren't going to take I'm it seriously because we haven't gotten... Calling him stupid. We haven't got the references out yet. We're getting there. We this is going to take a while, chat. It's going to take a while. It's, it's a big one because we're still going on the things I um, like. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to get back to the, my leg shot <laughs> example. Go, go, go for it, go um, for it. Yeah, the the idea that you have an episode where he gets shot in the leg and it's a serious injury, it's not a TV show, oh, he'll walk it off, like he's in big trouble. And then we spend maybe the next episode, he's with, um, he's with, uh, what was the name of, I keep forgetting her name, the the lady bouncy hunter that he's working with. We can Cara have Dune? her there. Yeah, yeah, Cara Dune, that's right. So you have an episode where, I don't know, she's like got to help nurse him back to health and like help him get out of this location that's swarming with stormtroopers or something and the two have to work together like you can find ways to make it to where he has his armor and it sometimes protects him but you can still have him actually be vulnerable and get shot i don't really like the idea that it's like either he gets hit with his plot armor or he doesn't get hit at all you know yeah, what i mean I, I agree completely i agree completely yeah i, I figured, I figured it's, still it's, it's still convenient and contrived but yeah. i have to also acknowledge that it seems to have been just as convenient contrived in the plot armor of the previous ones. Um, and so, and I don't think it ruins a movie for me because I enjoyed the previous oh, one. That, that's, that's, one of, that's one yeah. of the problems. Is it yeah, with yeah, this, I agree. It's, it's still a problem. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's absolutely right, so it's a problem. It's a problem. All right. Yeah. So, okay. um, <laughs> um, doesn't also, ruin we'll, we'll get into the details later. I do find that after what we see here is bulletproof, or sorry, not bulletproof, blaster proof. All right. Um, it is shocking that not everybody is wearing armor. Yeah, I agree completely. Like uh, the inconsistency yeah. of the blasters and what they can penetrate and not bugs the hell out of me. It and this bugs is a the hell out of me with too. Star Wars overall. Um, it's very inconsistent. This is a problem that I've kind of always had. It has bugged me more and more as time goes on. Mandalorian has made it worse. But when we start to see um bounty hunters who do this for a living, uh private security, things of that nature, nobody has armor which is very strange considering that apparently a lot of stuff is blaster proof we see droids that are blaster proof we have the beskar stuff and i'm not saying all armor has to be beskar but it is clearly a well-established thing that there there is blaster proof stuff no, yeah Odd to and see not how even apparently that. nobody uses it to, to go on to your point even further, there are random transportational platforms that hover that have blaster-proof sightings on them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but like, that's how common blaster-proof material is that you can make crappy, you know, hover platforms out of it. And so the fact that no one is making armor or shields out of this material is bafflingly stupid. And that applies to Star Wars as a whole. And I've had that problem with it. For the whole, like... It's been, all a problem. Problem. it's been yeah, a problem no, for a long yeah. time. And I, by the way, and someone brought up in chat, it might be too much for grunt soldiers or even poor bounty hunters. Apparently, the fledgling New Republic has the money to put it on their security droids that guard prisoners on ships. They can and put it also, on crappy hover platforms. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is like Everywhere. like a lot of stuff is bulletproof. Like if you pulled the panels off of worthless carriages and slapped it on yourself with duct tape, you would save your life. Yeah, like it's insane yeah. how prevalent yep. this stuff is. It's very prevalent I, now. I have body armor, like yep. especially. And if you do this for a living, if you're a bounty hunter, if you if this is your life, if you're in dangerous places, then you are shelling out the cash to cover your chest and your head. 
Yeah, I agree completely. Massive pet peeve for me, and it's not expensive. This crap is everywhere, used on so many things. And uh, yeah, I, I, and we. And like, what's uh, the to, point to of blasters it... then? What's the point of guns in the real world then? <laughs> I mean, what? What, what a stupid <laughs> argument. <laughs> like it, Mandalorian episode three, when he's surrounded by everyone, he literally jumps onto a hover platform that has a metal siding that blocks everything. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Even his disintegration rifle, which is insanely powerful on the scales of destructibility of the weapons we see in Star Wars, and I kind of like that because it was so powerful, it required a cartridge for each shot. I like that kind of design element to it. Um, sure. The uh, the the ATST Walker blocked one of those shots on its flat armor like it was nothing, and so the armor is exactly. really ATST effective. just boing boing nothing. Um, and and they even say that there is nothing on the planet that can take out the legs of that ACST, and I'm assuming that is including his ship, which is like holy crap, oh, his ship we'll has get to that. massive guns. We'll get to that. <laughs> so I like yeah, when I when when there's something like absolutely indefensible, guys, I'm all on board with you. This is absolute. Well, so like, how should we format this? Like, should we just go? Episode one, try and find the good uh, and the bad. Yeah. Well, I think so by episode. I, I, if, I still if have we good need... things I like. <laughs> well, surely, well, surely you can fit yeah. them in as we go. I, well, I'll yeah, try. Because we try, have sorry. eight episodes to go through. I, I don't like the idea that we're taking so long. We haven't even started talking about specific yeah. references and <laughs> episodes yet. We, we're not. We're going very slowly, and slowly's fine with me. But also, I realize you, you don't have all day, right, Shad? <laughs> you don't have. Yeah, 10 yeah, hours. true. So I'm I'm going through my list. And I'm just looking for any if, if there's any compliments I, that I could I, I need to state broadly that won't come up individually. Um, uh, and I think I can bring up things um, uh, individually as they come up. I'll just have to interrupt and say more specifically. Um, yeah. All right. So I think we, we're good to go. Um, well, before we so, do, I might... Can I go to the toilet? I'll be yeah. back. <laughs> go no. for it. Damn it! I'll <laughs> use a cup. Uh, I'll be back in a sec, guys. Uh, I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is just a little bit of a uh, retread, I guess. But my first point that I have for episode one on my little sheet here, my little spark notes, my little bullet points is in the very first scene we see mando getting shot luckily in the armor not three inches to the right where it would have hit him in the like neck uh lucky i guess uh but yeah he uh and that got me started on the whole thing of he doesn't even react when the guy pulls out his blaster and points it at him he just like knows it's gonna hit him in the armor he doesn't even he's really very confident otherwise. yeah very uh, confident that his terrible armor will save his life all the time. And it does. It does, but, yeah. yeah it, 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 it's, well, yeah, the, it one of two things will happen. They will miss him or they will hit him in the armor. That They are the only two yes. things that can happen. Um, but yeah, in, in my, my note here, it says, how did Mando survive this long before he got his armor? Um, kind of insane uh, how, how Mando is still alive and doing this stuff. Uh, it just seems that as many times as he he gets shot, especially with when you when you tally up the amount of time that takes place in the show where he's actually in combat and the amount of times he gets shot, it is insane that he hasn't been killed yet many 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 times over. Um, there is I, I expect him to be very or professional like professional bounty hunter in the way that he moves around and engages <laughs> in combat. David and Chaz said people do win the lottery though. People do when they're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, yes, lucky things can happen, yes. Yes. Um, and it is v very, very lucky all the time how he has, uh, like, imagine you're playing a video game, right? And, like, I know um, some games have heat maps for where you shoot people. Uh, I mean, you get shot at enough times, you're just going to not hit someone's armor. It's just insane, especially if you get hit 13 times that quickly. Expand this over the course of his lifetime of work from when he started to, you know, the show taking place in quote-unquote modern times. I don't, I don't believe that he should be alive. So the experienced bouncy hunter can't be confident. What? Okay. okay. So, like, imagine in the real world that you have Kevlar armor and you just decide to walk out in the middle of an open battlefield just shooting at people and you're so, like, yeah. well, I'm pretty good at this so, you know, I can just kill everybody. This is not yeah, like, he, it's he is, way... again, he is not, he does not have armor covering his neck and his upper torso and his sides his and legs. his thighs and legs. Part of his yeah, legs this is not he like, full, this yeah, is he's he not dressed up like a renaissance knight here, alright? He is not 
very heavily armored. Like his head, his chest, his shoulders, his shoulders, those are those are favorite places to shoot Mandalorian. Um but yeah. Uh uh, definitely a problem that I have. It, it really ruins my ability to believe he's alive up to this point. I don't want to just progress too far without Shadowversity here, though. Mm -hmm. um, like, again, armor in the real world, especially with soldiers, and there are parallels that can be done here. Um, you don't just walk out. Like, if you have body armor, like, let's say that your chest and your head is covered with armor, right? You still have the gaps in between. You still have your neck. You still have your arms. Getting shot in the thigh is a big deal because of the blood vessels, stuff like that. You don't just walk out into the middle of, oh, I don't know, say, a courtyard full of dozens and dozens and dozens of enemies who are all aware you're there and want to kill you. You don't do that because you can't rely on your armor. To, like, let's say that the armor will stop 90% of shots that are made and hit you. That's a one in 10 chance that you get hit whenever somebody shoots at you. And when your life is at the line, ugh, not taking those odds. Man, well, I'm just like, so every action hero should be dead. That's the entertainment we want to watch. First off, that's not a very good argument. And secondly, yeah. like you can look at examples in movies and TV shows where the main character has to actually like make good decisions. And that's the reason why they... Like John Wick 1, there's a lot of instances where he does really good maneuvers that take him, like, you know, a situation yeah, yeah, where sorry, he is in I danger, interrupt? but he makes a really good decision. Yeah, go ahead. You're, you're absolutely right. John Wick 1 had really good choreography to help him Love avoid it. field of fire. Mm -hmm. John Wick 2 was trash. Oh, yeah. Was like, yeah. yeah. In front of people <laughs> shooting at never getting hit. And so well, he's got like, his Kevlar suit. Yeah. <laughs> this magical plob. Sorry, and and my, I don't know if, I don't know if right. chat knows, I guess just quickly before Shad finishes, I love John Wick 1. I assume everyone here loves John Wick 1. Yes. We have, I, I, I have serious problems with 2 and 3, and this is one of the main reasons why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so I think if we're going to be criticizing Mandalorian for, you know, um, all the shots convenient landing of his armor, we need to be consistent because plot armor is everywhere in Hollywood movies. John Wick 2 is like one of the best examples. And I honestly feel getting hit on armor and having it just be convenient that the armor is protecting him is a lot better than not getting hit at all and having plot yeah, armor. It's doing better, but it's still bad. And both still yeah, happen. Yeah, good. If, if we can acknowledge that. But, but for me, it's an improvement than what we've seen before. So yeah, I was like, is. all right, let's, let's improve it and let's keep the improvement. Like, ultimately, you want John Wick 1. I don't know if it's an you... improvement for me. You reckon? Like, like for I other Star Wars? Like, for the like, I don't armor? even know if it's, it's an improvement for me that they constantly get hit to, like, a crazy amount in the short amount of time they're actually in combat and it all hits their armor but not the unprotected parts i don't i don't know if it's better or worse for me i'll have to think about it over time i just i don't know that i can I, see that he has both happen to him do you know the amount of bullets that were well, bullets laser shots that are fired at him that don't get to him like it's significant oh yeah, that's a lot. and we're not even counting all the times where he, he should get shot in just he just Episodes Doesn't. one to three, he no, sorry, it happens in episode one, two, and three, but two they're stun shots, so I'm gonna discount that. Uh one and three, he gets surrounded by like twenty plus enemies that are all firing at him and he manages to take no shots. Yeah. Like obviously if they had hit I his armor, yes. then it'd be so like, like, oh well yeah. okay, but obviously, he's like it, yeah, obviously he should have and this is like I say, I do agree with Rags. He should have been using the armor as a last resort and taking cover and it's uh, and it's there just in case that he was put he act like and should you should only put yourself in a vulnerable position where you can get shot accidentally. You should always be taking cover, even with armor, or yeah. the the whole opposite, his armor should be covering every inch of his body without any opening, and then he could just tank everything because it's yeah, best it has to be specific. Like it yeah. they need to make a big deal of it. Like this is really special armor it you had this is an up armored variant of something else or we built this just for this one mission make a deal about it to say yeah it makes sense that he could go out there and reasonably expect to just tank hits also i'm not i'm not saying he never chat. gets hurt i'm not saying he never gets hurt just, yeah uh so is that rags's complaint is that he doesn't try not to get shot yeah you should not you should try to not get shot yeah, he behaves as if he can't be shot. Yeah, That's the like, kind of the problem. Well, no, 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 no. There, there are dumb. cases in the series where he does try to. Yeah, there are. Like yeah, in the first episode. Yeah, in episode one, like in the battle where he's he does fighting take cover. at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but that's that's the there, thing. That's sometimes. why I like that that battle yeah, more so than yeah. I prefer that too. Yeah. Yeah. 
I prefer that too. Yeah. Like yeah. armor and, and tanky cover with your life's on the line. Yeah, I oh, agree. Yeah, I like that. Um, and so. Um, <laughs> um, oh, just the other thing about how did he survive yeah. when he didn't have armor? I remember you making that comment. I mean, was there a point when he ever he didn't have armor? Because even the foundlings have at least the armor helmet, and it's pretty easy to get Jura still armor. Oh, well, it's because yeah. so, at the, the first uh, two episodes, he has the he has some best guard, but the other stuff okay. is like normal. Look, yeah, I, I knew I knew this would be a sensitive topic, deep, but holy shit, chat! There's loads of like uh, people assuming now that our point is he never takes cover. It's like no, no, we yeah, no one like, said I this. Don't... I don't know how you guys are extrapolating. Calm the fuck down. Based, like they they're doing it in caps lock things. as well. It's like chill out, chill out. I know it's Mandalorian. <laughs> I know everyone loves Mandalorian. It's okay. We're gonna get I'm, through I'm this. Again, like you guys are much... literal Nazis. Yes, and like I'm we're trying like a lot of. Uh... I, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but like we have someone saying he takes cover in every episode. Lol. It's like okay, that doesn't address all the times where he doesn't. Exactly. All right? Okay, and, so like comments yeah, and, and like let's, let's like, try to think before we finish diving this savanna, all right? All right. Does he take? Hang on. Let's let's try and break. Does he take cover more often than not throughout the series? Ah, uh, he, I... he takes cover. I would guess he takes cover more time, often than not. Sure. Yeah. Probably. I, so. I didn't. I wasn't counting well, it. That's up. a good I, thing I, then. I mean, yeah, sure. Ooh. I mean, like something that's sixty percent bad isn't as bad as something that's 70 percent bad sure. yep. yeah well obviously yeah. we're, we're <laughs> highlighting the flaws we're not like if the parts where he isn't doing that it, it's it's strange um and you know like if you're wearing body armor in in modern day obviously and shoulder pads that have basically his stuff but in modern times mm -hmm. and someone pulls a gun on you it's just rare to just be like huh. you'd be okay. like oh fuck it's a gun yeah, 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 but also it's uh, one more additional point of the uh, armor defense, right? Is that um, I think he could be justified in saying screw it and, and just jumping out, relying on his armor. Because when people are firing, it like I don't know how much this applies in Star Wars, but in the real world, generally people always aim for center of mass, and so it's more likely he's going to be hitting his torso or head, I guess, if people want to do an insta kill. And cool. those are his most armored parts, and so. He has more validity, like to say, to rely on his armor, because it does cover most of the vital areas. Essentially, I'm not mm -hmm. saying getting hit in the legs and everything wouldn't suck. It obviously would. So there is a bit of a defense there. Yeah, and and again, back kind of back to chat a bit. Like I, you understand, there are points in the show where he just like walks out I think, into hails of bullets and gunfire. I think my favorite one like, is when he just stands to take the him. shot from yeah. the assassin sniper in episode five. He, like, wants to be shot. It's really weird. Yeah, like, that's the thing. He does things I that mean, oh, are... See, that, I haven't really watched that one, because I they were actively trying to avoid getting shot. What it's, happens um, again? He gets, uh, it's when he gets shot they, off his speeder. He stands up, she yeah. has him in the scope, and he's just staring at her, and then she shoots his chest plate. Well, uh, well, 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 I'll talk about that when we come to it, because there might be a defense there, so we'll see. It's just Maybe, it, yeah. it, it's just it's just strange that he's not doing anything to like you know even getting behind the the speeder looking for a get behind any anything at all drop do something he's just standing well, well, there. Uh, that's what I think there could be uh, defenses there because if she hits the speeder and explodes, we know that nearby explosions can damage him quite a lot. And so if he knows he's going to be get shot, there's no cover he can take by standing up. There could or just that movement could actually encourage her to aim for center of mass more because there's it's a more well, open she's also target. tagged him like you know, three two i think two times before that um twice, yeah at, at first she hits him twice and so she should yeah. and she's supposed to be one of the best of of like i don't i don't want to call her an assassin if that's not accurate but i'm just going to run with it for now um it's weird that she just keeps shooting him in the place that she knows doesn't kill him even though it doesn't do anything yeah well, well, I mean, again, this is this one. That one's hard to try and determine. Should she be out there, or like, I personally like that because in the real world, the best snipers in the world, at, at such ranges, it's very difficult to get him in the throat purposefully and stuff like just hitting. Uh, is, I know she. Bad. I want to just. That's, that's, that's the. Yeah, that's the. I'm showing you the. Uh, that's what she can see. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's. And this is after shooting good. him twice. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but even if she sees that, we don't know how much um, straying the blaster bolt does over long distances. She, that's what distance, she does. 
And she hit him twice from an even further distance while he was moving. Yeah, but that's technically what a master sniper is achieve, trying to achieve, just hitting them, and just hoping that it's strong enough to blast through his armor. And even Mandalorian says he's not sure his armor could take it. And so, like, to me, that makes perfect sense. Like, like she just wants to hit him, and that is an but achievement she knows in itself after all of the, range. But she knows that hitting him in the chest won't work because she's and done he, it twice I already. I want to clarify, he's standing oh, yeah, but, still. But, but, at this point, and she gets a decent chunk of time to be able to aim this. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, try and show chat see now. This image. Is this image on the stream? It yeah. is, and I'm, I want to show the clip itself, but i got to be really careful at copyright, because YouTube's annoying with this. So, the assumption, though, even with armor, is that if one hit doesn't work, you've weakened it, and perhaps more hits will... She doesn't know that is wearing Beskar, does she? She could just like... I oh, mean, crap. does with blasters, does, it, does blunt force, is that, like, a factor? Or... Well, yeah. well, see... My like, I feel if they were consistent, blasters should have a lot more penetrative ab ability at close range. They established it kind of in the first episode, but then they give up on the consistency of it um, because that could be great if they were consistent. That oh, he's wearing armor. We need to like get point blank range to be able to kill him. That could be a, that's a great limitation in the functionality of blasters that they need to work through in the actual narrative of the story. But they never they never listen to go with it consistently because uh, you know when they take cover or behind metal things it's always strong enough to resist whenever for convenience of the plot so yeah and so to me like hitting him in the chest uh, center of mass at large range like if 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 in the Star Wars universe the master like if they take a more realistic approach that a master sniper it's a great shot if you can just hit them tag them at such distance in terms of pinpoint accuracy is just something unattainable because yeah of but he's standing still and he's way closer and she has plenty of time to make the shot and she's put multiple rounds in his chest and, and she's extremely fine. talented from what we understand yeah and she's like really really good at this yeah like I don't you add all that like, stuff together and you're like mm. like. Your criticism is just as valid as also saying that, it's, you know, being master just means it's good that you're able to hit them. And 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 to expect one or the other over the other option, you this can't really pick shot. one. They're, they're both they're both kind of arbitrary. And so this it's is just to like a freebie shot. What, so that's him standing up in the thing. Yeah, he's just there. Yeah, yeah, he's well, either on his knees or just standing. Yeah, I think down. I think the look. I'm not saying it's a perfect defense, but I'm saying the logic could be he wants her to hit him in the chest, so it's presenting an open target to encourage it. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, and I, I just oh, I find right. it bizarre that she wouldn't go for you. You can like Something see else, what's yeah. working on him in terms of armor. She's shot him in the chest plate already, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. To... yeah. But yeah. the logic I'm is why she didn't yeah, hang, on, hang on, guys. The logic is a lot closer, and so he or, he already said that he's not sure the uh, his armor itself would be able to survive at that close range. And so her logic is that I've hit it twice. It must be weakened. He's closer now, so she could obviously uh assume and rely on the fact that this one should go through because she isn't aware of how strong or, uh, or she, shoot him in the head. she could just shoot him in the neck because she knows that there's no armor there also wouldn't wouldn't you say sure. that um him acknowledging well, he on. doesn't know if it'll hold up is actually a reason for why it wouldn't make sense that he's just standing here instead of moving. well what else if he can't take cover because the bike the bike well, literally just moving face, moving will make you harder yeah. to shoot I agree. Maybe just ducking to the side and rolling might have been better. And also, but, like, but... if you're risking, you're putting a lot of hopes in this sniper to give him a free shot that they're not just going to headshot you right yeah. here. Like, he's taken up half her scope, basically. And she's yeah. just staring at him. I don't know. Yeah, I just, it's, I mean, we, we can move on because. Kind of... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, move... yeah, I don't think this is a, like, look, there are easily points to criticize it, but it doesn't break the show. And, and to me, it's not a huge one, even if there is valid criticisms to be made. It's just, yeah. Look, there are, there are know, for sure bigger flaws then, for us to get to. Yeah, um... Exactly. Like when there's, let's focus, because for me, things that break a show to the point where something start, happens so dumb that it ruins my enjoyment is like hyperspace ramming or they don't know which way is up. That's like, sure. you know, that's. And you can't sure, yeah. defend that crap. Can I, can we, I want to rapid fire some stuff just because I want to make sure we actually are progressing, you know, in some way, shape, or form. Just some stuff. Yeah. Just some yeah. stuff. I, I, will, yeah. I will just say about his neck, right? His armor, if you go back to the picture, his armor went up high enough that it, it looked like that angle, yeah, like there wasn't a gap between his helmet because he was like moving, he's holding his chin down and the armor. Wait, this but I don't here? think that, yeah, the picture we're just looking at, I don't think the neck was open. Yeah, there's by. clearly a gap. No, no, like his, his, his hunching, his, his helmet. Like I think he's he was looking slightly down a little bit, but she's above him shooting downwards. 
yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, they're, they're like right aiming for that. That's a very even if there is a gap, it's very small, and there might not be a gap because the helmet might be covering it if he's hunching his chin down. So anyway, that's just another observation. Yeah, this doesn't also get rid of the why doesn't she shoot him in the head thing when he's just well, well his helmet is made of Beskar as well. Okay, but the slit, the but slit, so is his chest. His face, yeah, the, the slit, slit isn't slit, though. Is a also, it's a headshot with and, the right. And it, I, I, I still think that the fact that he is so much closer in range and she's already hit him twice, it's an easy, you know, thing for her to feel that, all right, this surely well, this... Actually, but that would just now, that I'm thinking about, now, that, now that I'm thinking about the headshot, it's like that, that body shot, it seemed to hurt him. So the head surely would be the best option at this point. Well, could, the head could have enough concussive force to knock him out. That's true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, I no, feel it's like... It's just like clearly a better decision to shoot the head, I feel. Uh. Anyway, moving along. Um, all right. Mola, rapid fire. Something. All right, so don't you think it's weird that both Satan and uh, the blue alien, for some reason, know the access code to get into his weapons? Or is it just that you press a button and it opens up his weapons case? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, like, I don't know what that's about. It's weird. Maybe you should have, maybe, maybe you should have locked them. Yeah. But, like, what's, I don't and know. It's, are, it's weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, so, I, if I was going to let aliens walk around my ship that I had captured and was going to... For a bounty, I would lock up my weapon safe. Yeah, yeah so would I. Yeah. I would lock it. Yeah, like, um, um, pretty risky to let your bounty wander around with, with the option to grab any guns it wants to. I don't know why. It's just, it's just it's a weird moment. That, uh, yeah. It's pretty interesting that he left uh, his ship open so that the baby could just like walk out of his ship when he was um, on he Tatooine. Oh, wait. He does, oh, that. Wait, he does it a couple that's times. Pretty... Yeah, he yeah. does it a couple times. <laughs> he does, yeah, because. When he I say rapid fire, I'm well actually trying to go uh, chronological. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and and some of these are going to be uh, tiny. Some of these will be more significant, I imagine. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, keep going. I should be able to keep pace yeah, with you because my next one is the the little. This is this is a nitpick of the nitpickiest nitpicks. But the little continuity thing with a table, Mauler, you you found. Oh, it, this so. is, Shad would disagree with uh, would would agree with that. No, nobody would disagree with that. But it's it's tiny, so we're probably fine on that one. Like it's just okay. they 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 put money on a table when it's not supposed to be there, and then it appears later. It's just a small thing. Okay. You guys are just nitpickers. These are all nitpicks. <laughs> yeah. Especially um, last Jedi. If, any, all if anything, we thought it was interesting. Nobody on set noticed it. All the editors. Um, but it happens. The, I didn't notice it the first but, two times I watched the episode. So I didn't either. Um, so I find it interesting that um, Mando is meeting with his the people who are going to commission him for this job, and a scientist walks into the room unarmed, and he pulls his guns on him and pulls out his, his obviously other gun to defend himself in the room, right? So it's like, okay, so we established that Mando's quite edgy. Uh, on edge, I mean, not <laughs> edgy. Um, and very careful. Uh -huh. I, I like this. It's like, he's he's like, he needs to be in control of the room. He needs to know what's going on at all times. And they do it again when uh, a little girl in episode four uh, walks in, like, behind him and she's like, she's just there and he goes, whoa! And he, I think he even might pull out his gun. I can't remember. But she's like, well, it's fine, it's fine. It's just a kid. And he's like, oh, okay. And again, I kind of like that as a sort of, he's so like riddled with PTSD that he can't even trust the idea of a little kid walking by. It's like, okay. However, in episode four, yeah. when he's working on his ship in the middle of the night in the fucking woods, two dudes <laughs> come up two behind guys. him and he's just like, what do you want? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Uh, we weird. Sorry, his his devil's alertness advocate, and risk. Just devil's advocate. Did he see him before an approach and so he knew who it was? They came up behind him. Yeah, yeah, but of the night. Like, yeah, but still, like his visor thing could give him, and he could have just glanced that direction, saw him much further away, and so he knows it's them, and then he keeps working. At, when at this air. point, I mean, they're creating scenes that don't exist. He, he doesn't know who they that. are, though. He doesn't know. Them. Yeah, you don't. Like, yeah. like what yeah, do you okay. think he saw about them? That they're two adult men, right. like. I'm just playing devil. I'm just playing <laughs> no, devil. of course, of course, of course. I'm not gonna, I don't yeah, hate yeah, you, yeah. Shad. I love you. <laughs> I, I, I know you guys hate me. Um, all right. Like I said, rapid fire. I'm going to keep this going. Uh, uh, are we so, still on episode one? Yes. Um, every Mandalorian uh, constantly wears the helmets? Question mark? Like, in, especially in, uh, not more sizely, the, the place that they are in episode one. I forget what it's called. Um, Navarro. Yeah. So we should probably talk about that then. The the Mandalorian sort of sect or whatever you want to call it in Navarro. Um, are they all not allowed to take off their masks, and they're all not allowed to go up more than one at a time? Except one at a time. That you seems. Shad, uh, Shad, you're, you're, yep. you're circle. You're turning green, but we can't hear you. 
Oh, can you, sorry, I wasn't yeah, saying. I can hear you oh, now. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Good. 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 Sorry, uh, the mic is on sensitivity, so you're going to hear that it'll just go green with very minor background. Also, one know. more interruption before you go. Uh, someone said, "Were they primitives?" So he's startled at a little girl primitive, but not two adult male primitives. Okay. At night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the um, the we learned that. They only go up, the Mandalorians only leave their hideout one at a time. Yeah, it'd be nice to have that explained, like, why. So, like, I don't know how a society can, like, if they're all bounty hunters and they all do either work for the guild or they all are hunters of some kind, I don't know how you could keep a society going if only one person is allowed to do stuff on top side at the, and surely time. they'd be found eventually. Especially because um, he just walks in. Well, one of the so this is the biggest like thing that door. I didn't even think about until me and Rags rewatched it. You have Mandalorian go and get a big old tub of Beskar. Cool. Uh, Empire Man establishes later that it's so neat to see Beskar be crafted by its artisans, like because that's a very specific skill apparently. Mandalorian gets it done in the same day he gets that Beskar, on the same planet, he didn't even leave. Does that not make everyone wonder where exactly he got that done? It's like, hmm. How did you... How did and you, it did, literally does seem like you can just stumble into their hideout. Yeah, like there's, there's no security. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, it's just a staircase. In the last episode, in. they actually showed that to get to that part, you need... There's a big tunnel complex. Like, it, it, it's no, bad they editing get there to apply that. The because there's a big there's yeah, tunnel complex, complex, but... Well, they're just in a sewer. One. He go, yeah. he walks downstairs, but I can't remember if there was a cut or not to like to establish that he could have walked through a large. You can see daylight from the there. staircase. Yeah, but was there a cut between the staircase and when he actually enters the thing? I mean, so at this point, we have to assume that there was a door he opens, but there's no check because it's weird because they show when the in the Imperial hideout that he has to the little butler robot pops out of the wall, he gives the credentials, it unlocks, he goes in. They have it for the Imperial place, but not for the Mandalorian hideout. Seems like a very, very odd choice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hidden by. Um, see, just... There's an opening because I'm watching it now. I would show it on screen, but I'm trying not to risk a uh, copyright. So he, he moves like a blanket that's on a door. He walks in, and then he goes to a staircase that's lit up from something. I just presume daylight. I don't know for sure. And then he's already seeing Mandalorians from the moment he hits the bottom of the staircase. Like, they are very oh, close. Oh, there's no cut. Oh, that they, means, yeah, yeah, all right then. And the second yeah. time in episode eight, when they arrive, they arrive there through the sewers, through a separate way, and they just walk in as okay, well. Okay, well, yeah, terrible place to hide. Yeah. Not yeah, a, not yeah all my point would be is I fail to believe they could have kept hidden for very long at all. And um, this is much later on, but when they exposed themselves, why did they stay there? Did they not leave? I thought they were going to leave. Yeah, we'll that's what, that's one of yeah. my big problems. And how in the and world? They all... they how in the world yeah, did the stormtroopers all... defeat them? I know. That <laughs> was like, what? That was that was well, yeah, that's no, one of my because it's issues. funny because like... stormtroopers are shit. It's hilarious, but they can also kill Mandalorians. A I whole know. whole coven of them. Yeah, I agree. Big problem. Yep. Um, so, um, rapid fire. <laughs> I have here, I have here, um, uh, I, we talked about it earlier just to reiterate, why don't the Imperials go get Baby Yoda themselves? Things like later episodes show that they're not fledgling or weak. They have lots of troops and stuff like that. Uh, but we talked about that earlier. Um, I do want to say it is, um, I liked at first that the stormtroopers were wearing dirty and poorly maintained armor that was clearly worn and not to show like, that they're hiding up. and they're not getting cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. To show that they either don't have the supplies they used to, that they are kind of skint on supplies, that they're laying low, that appearances aren't the most important thing for them right now. And then uh, every other time we see stormtroopers later, they're all super clean, super pristine. So I was hoping that there might be a little uh, showing of it. It's just it's weird that one is one way while the other. Well, is hang on, up. were they clean in episode three when he goes in and fights them? No. Okay, well then it's just that these are the fancy ones for the higher up that he, you know, expects them to be. Yeah, but all you know, of all presented. of the stormtroopers later, they're they're pristine, cleaned up, perfectly maintained. But these guys here, who do have contact with the stormtroopers from later, I guess they're just making do without supplies. It's it's just it's odd to me. I'm not going to really count it against the show much, but I will say it is odd to see that inconsistency. 
um, you would think that there'd be some cross. I don't know. It's 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 odd that they wouldn't continue that. I think. Yeah, for me, I, I just assumed that the stormtroopers for the other guy are more well equipped and maintained and present themselves, and the stormtroopers on that planet who were stationed there are dirty. I didn't really notice. Um, yeah, you. But you yeah. would still think that if they're laying, if anything, if they're laying low and they're not in the field doing missions and doing work, that their armor would be really good looking. I don't know when you when you're away from real strict authority and stuff like that. They were though. They were surrounded by the their guy. They had their guy. No, that, that one guy. Um, but it depends how strict that guy was on them in terms of just maintaining presentability. And yeah, chat wants me with, to to clarify whether or not the Mandalorians actually died or if they left their armor. Um, she says because uh, Mandalorian says, "Did any survive?" And she says, "I hope so. Some may have escaped off world." Which imply I don't know about you yeah. guys, but that tells me a lot of them died. Yeah. Also, the armor is clearly got like hole shot in it and stuff like that. So mm. unless stormtroopers just really hated that armor lying on the ground, <laughs> which they should pretty, just use. And, like, yeah. like that armor is worth a fortune if any of its best guys. Yeah, like, yeah. What? What? And, you, and you would it? think How that the die? empire, who is supposedly not nearly as well equipped as before, for pragmatic reasons, would be like, yeah, this is a lot of money in this pile right here. We could use money to, for outfitting. I don't know, no, maybe buying our guys some nah, shooting nah, Clearly, lessons. it's an in-world canon knowledge that stormtroopers are cursed, and no matter what they wear, it automatically becomes... <laughs> it becomes paper-thin. Yeah, they can maybe, wear, maybe they can wear Beskar, and it's paper-thin instantly, and they'll still die in it, Mike. Well, the Rise of Skywalker taught me that the Force is a good answer for literally anything. <laughs> Let's say the, the dark side the of the force is a pathway. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, Sheev. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna for quick fire. Unless, did you guys want to continue on that? Um, the point. No, it was just a minor thing. I didn't mean to talk about it too much. Um, um this is this is potentially nothing. I'm just curious. Did all of the bounty hunters get a down payment like Mando did in a bar of a Beskar? Good question. I'd say no. Because there was a shit ton of them. Is, I'm assu like all I can yeah. say is, did he get one because he's the best in the past? Mandalorian. They, yeah, they I, did say he was the most expensive. So I, I, I think that it's a different reason. I think the reason is because multiple times, um, I what does this character have a name? The the Imperial guy, the bald Werner guy. Werner Herzog. <laughs> nah, he's just Werner. the client. Does Werner. The client. So Werner says multiple times he brings up the fact that the Mandalorians and the rightful way of things and returning it to where it belongs, the Beskar. So I think it's specifically he gave the Mandalorian the Beskar because he was a Mandalorian. He seems to have a um, this idea of there's a, a natural way for things to be that the world needs to be returned to um, or that things should be. And for him, part of that is Beskar steel is, is something that Mandalorians have. Uh, it's yeah. very possible that he probably gave down payments to the other bounty hunters if he did at all because they probably weren't as good as he was in just things like credits or whatnot but i think the best car was specifically for him i think no i think that's valid it's an so inference I, I, I yeah I, I was just i just thought it was funny if they'd given a best car bar to like everybody <laughs> just like... I, I like this uh i like this in chat uh herzog is a mandaboo <laughs> <laughs> he does actually seem to be that's a good um, That's a good. My next, in terms of "quote unquote" quick fire, leads me to uh, when he arrives on Baby Yoda's planet. So I don't know if there's anything else before we move in there for you, Rex. Um. Yeah. the The next thing I have here is where he has gone to land on the Baby Yoda planet. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah so I was wondering why he landed so far away, and I have yes. heard some people defended that. You know. Uh, people could have seen, you know, him from the sky, but then why couldn't he just fly in low once he landed on the planet and get closer? Yeah, or just um, if anything. Maybe close. they did, like, scanning, but, like, scanners don't seem to be limited in planetary range. If you can scan something on the planet, it does seem you can scan the whole planet. So there's that. Um, and so, yeah, it's hard to try and find a valid defense for it because, yeah, I, I, that's a, that's a lot, long way to land. Also, uh, John Penn said, you need to discuss the size of a Parsec. As long as we establish that he's the best in, out of the uh, Navarro, that's pretty significant because that's the Bounty Hunters Guild. It's like all of them are there. Yeah, and and like even if, you're, even if you can't look it up and you're just going by, why would he say that? No one says he's the best guy in the neighborhood 
or the best guy in this city. building. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, the best guy in this building. Let me see though, how big is a parsec? How I think a parsec is six point uh something light years. Hold on. A parsec is uh one point nine plus ten to the thirteenth power miles. Three thousand two hundred and sixty two light years. Uh, hold on, let me, let me, uh, so one parsec is equal to 31 trillion kilometers and equates to about 3.26 light years, so it's nothing. Parsec is not that big in the galactic scale. Still, if you're the best guy in the, if you're the best in guy 3. for 3.6 light point... years, that yeah. means for basically in two or three star systems max, you're the best one. Which, hey, I, man, I, I don't think that's, that's... insignificant. <laughs> yeah. There's a no, lot of bounty it's... hunters. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, exactly. It's it's just yeah. funny because parsecs are yeah, they're they're pretty big, but uh, for so, like galactic scale. Just because this does come up in episode one, and we're kind of running through it quickly, mm -hmm. I'll uh, mention one of my points of praise for the series that was pro present in episode one and then throughout the whole thing. I like the consistent set pieces that were accurate callbacks to establish lore. So you know the. The weird eyeball thing that comes out of things we saw. Yeah, uh, the droids that we saw, other things, helmets and things. Yeah, and I like it. Yeah. it. It was done beautifully well that like this is showing a very consistent Star Wars universe visually and I could enjoy just watching the Star Wars universe in each episode, which also yeah. was good. It didn't seem like it was just shoehorned in because it's a reference. A lot of the stuff, it seemed like it made sense where it was. Not exactly. It made, they integrated it naturally and consistently. And they didn't, like, there were new things, but they didn't make up crap that contradict. Like, why, like for instance, the bombers. Like, you got Y wings that are so much better. Like, where they're like, uh, and those weird things on the, on the, uh, on the salt planet and stuff. Uh, like, this was not trying to recreate Star Wars. It was, this was just trying to be Star Wars. And I appreciated that. Um, I agree. So he he pulls up his sniper and he sees a creature that looks pretty vicious heading right toward him and instead of firing his vaporizing flash gun, he decides to try and pull out his pistol, I think, is it? Yeah, no, yeah. his uh, flamethrower. No, he does you flamethrower, yeah. Flamethrower, yeah. So he's he so this, he lands this... where he lands for whatever reason. He's scanning around for something. Uh, he's looking through the scope of his rifle with his rifle raised, looking around. A essentially a wild beast, for all he knows, pops up right in front of his scope, right in front of his um, reticle, and he instead of shooting it, he instead pulls his rifle away, and then instead of getting his blaster, he readies his flamethrower. Really strange choice. I would like to submit this the for the list of he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I would need to watch that scene again because I can't remember. Also, oh, I've, I've, I've got it on screen if you're able to um uh, hang on. see the stream. I, I, I could, if I can just bring up Disney Plus in the background, um, and that means I can also reference things um, uh, just while we're talking about it, and I can follow along. Um, it's so strange that his first port of call in terms of defenses is a flamethrower, with which, if anything, would probably piss the thing off. Seems very inefficient. Maybe he's like, hungry. I just mean out of all of his choices, like... <laughs> he gets to kill it and eat a steak. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it just, obviously, if he had just... Well, it's good. we also know that his gun is like a cattle prod, and he doesn't choose to use it that way. He doesn't fire it. He doesn't pull his blaster. He just uses his flamethrower. Yeah, why didn't he immediately shoot? He, like, lowers his gun that's pointed right at it, so if he used a flamethrower... Very odd. charging him? Yes. Yeah, it well at, at afterwards, yeah, it pops up and instead of again shooting it, he lowers his weapon, brings it to the side, and he tries to flame he in fact he activates his flamethrower, but it grabs There's his not arm. even much of a chance for him to aim the the flamethrower. He's a it's all very strange. <laughs> it's a strange See, uh I like I can't remember it, so this could be a completely inaccurate retelling, but my memory was like, I thought he saw one, it wasn't a threat because it was far enough away, so he lowered it, and then he was attacked from the side from another one he hadn't noticed. No, no, it's the same one. Here's a screenshot. I don't it know if it's the same one. This one, like, yeah. Them. Yeah, there's... I mean, even if it wasn't the same one, you're still shooting the one that's in your gun yeah. sight right there, and especially because, oh, big monster teeth. It's strange that it wasn't heard beforehand. 
Because these things go blah 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 as they then they stamp toward you. It's weird that like it's sort of Oh yeah, the jumps yeah, the jumps. It's kinda like all the, the, time, uh, though, you know? the scene in, in uh Avengers where Black Widow's walking around and then she just looks up and Hulk is suddenly screaming at her. It's like, oh where'd yeah, you come yeah. from? Also, he's lucky, like, I'm looking at it now, look at that bite it takes. Like, he's lucky that arm didn't come clean off. Yeah. Because he, he looks at one, and he sees it in the distance, and then he keeps on looking, and he keeps on looking around. And then this one just pops up right in front of him, right in the middle of his scope, right where he's pointing. And I guess he's like, oh, okay, I'll try to flamethrow it. Yeah, all I've got to say is just... He likely didn't have it loaded, ammo is rare. Okay. What? Sure, chat. Okay. Well, hang on. No, I mean, that's a very powerful gun, and if you thought he could take it out easily with something else and not waste the valuable ammo, I think... I don't disagree fair. with that. The idea that it's not loaded, though, I don't... No. Yeah, why would he not have a bullet in it? <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. If he wasn't intending to use it and he just wanted to use the scope to... Uh, like a telescope to look... Nah, no, why hang would on, hang on. Hang on. No, no, wait, 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 because... Um, he's there, he had no indication that it was a monster, it really looked like he just wanted to scan the, uh, this star. Now, I know this is probably being too generous in trying to excuse it, because yeah. it's not explained in the show, but if he was just using it as a telescope and it wasn't loaded, um, it makes perfect logical sense that he would need to throw it aside quickly to get his flamethrower there. Um, because the thing literally jumps up in front of him without warning, and it does look like it's a separate one. I'm just looking at Disney. Plus it is, now. yeah. It, but it's not like it's. Con he didn't confuse it for a different one. So, Somebody's one, made the observation it, it, that it, it you jumps can up in the front scope. of him. It jumps up in front of him. Yeah, you can remove the scope. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he can't remove the scope, so this is invalid. He, he... Well, no, 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 hang on, hang on. If I had a scope on the thing, and it's just as easy to look through it while it's attached to the gun. Um, it's not though. And, well, no, if I'm holding the gun, like, and it takes, you know, I could attach it or just look through it. I mean, that, like, that's that's not something to really do. So just, like, <laughs> but he doesn't, but he doesn't do it later, scope. then. Does he? Wait, wait, yeah, he does. When well, he's... because later on he uses the exact same scope when he gets to the compound, but he doesn't have it attached to the rifle when he knows there are bad guys that are armed right in front of yeah, him that no, he's looking at. I'll certainly give you that one. But I think yeah, the defense yeah. that... um. If he was just using the the rifle as a telescope to scan the vista, this thing jumps up in front of him, and it's a very short time between um, it appearing. So yeah, he sees one in the distance. Hey. And, and by the way, this this loads more to right. this scene. I'm happy to sort of if we can slink along a little bit, like whether or not all right. the points have been made, sort of thing. I was going to say. Uh, of all the times to not use your flamethrower, I would say this is really not a good idea, bad though. You should probably use it now. Yeah. Yeah. Which one is that? Or his gun. When when he's got one arm trapped in the first one that's been oh. tranked, and he's like, oh god, yeah. I'm gonna die. It's like, dude, flamethrower now? Yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> flamethrower, gun, something. Did the flamethrower get damaged because Wait, he's getting chomped on? It. What his happens? pistol's on his right hand no, no. side, though. His pistol's no, no. on his right hand side, so he can yeah, grab yeah, yeah, you're right, but, the but holster. It's, uh, his first arm that gets um, uh, chomped down was the arm with the flamethrower, and so the logic... Yeah, oh so my god, Fringy, he has access to his gun, he doesn't even try. Yeah, I just yeah. said it, his pistol's yeah. on the yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. said yeah. that to you when we watched it. I'm like, man, I guess yeah. he just doesn't shoot this guy. <laughs> Well, well, this is this is one of those clear plots that he didn't need to shoot him because he was about to be saved by. Dave. What? Yeah, <laughs> didn't know that. He didn't I know. Know that. That's what I mean. He was, it's no. just, he, he was saved by Deus Ex Machina, and he clearly knew that that was going to happen. All right. Well, yeah, I think we've established that. that <laughs> could, could you at least concede he behaves very strangely in this scene? <laughs> Um, I think the, uh, the, the, the the part that's indefensible is in not reaching for his sidearm. Everything else can be defended mostly, I reckon. Um, no. Like, it is literally a second one. He's looking to his right when his, uh, and he sees the one in the distance, and then he then changes his perspective and is looking in front, and then one jumps in front of him. So it's a big, completely different monster, and he doesn't have t enough time, and if the gun wasn't loaded, he has to throw it aside, and then he goes to try and use his flamethrower, then his flamethrower gets chomped, but... Uh, easy but logic is that it gets damaged. Loaded, he's got the cattle prod on it. Yeah, good point. He could have used the yeah. cattle prod. Okay, so two. Which is also, which yeah. as you know, he could have used the cattle prod. It... Yeah, he could have yeah. used that. And it's the the further prod. away from him too. It's the end well, of. Well, hang on, hang on. Well, the other thing is the cattle prod isn't nearly as deadly as a flamethrower, and so he could have been wanting to kill it well, then because he has uh, no. I don't know. He doesn't have a guarantee. So no, the cattle I'm, prod could stop it. I'd rather have a cattle prod. Yeah, I mean, it's called a cattle prod because it's messed with cat. Like if I was that beast. I would much prefer he use the flamethrower because what, by the time that, it even yeah. 
has time to like be on me, it'll just be a second, and I've already charged him. I'll probably done. be dead if he uses the cattle prog. He's gonna stun yeah, me to the point where the he might be, he can do whatever he wants with me. Sorry, I just saw one of the super chats. It's great. He says he should have milked it and gained its trust. <laughs> no. What type of milk is it? Would that qualify as rhino milk? Um, I... space, no. um, <laughs> something. It's um, got, it, it, okay, so, it looks sorry, like going a back with legs okay. or something. Going, I guess going back to the argument, um, if someone, or look, and again, this is just me being devil's advocate, if someone was really desperate to defend it, they could take the uh, defense that the cattle prod wasn't strong enough to take something down that big. It's effective against humans. It's no chance he could have knocked it out in one prod with this beast. And so I threw it aside to try and use a flamethrower. It wasn't quick enough. His arm gets chomped. That damages his flamethrower, so I can't use it again. But the thing that can't be defended is why doesn't he just grab his blaster? Well, that, the thing the is, problem. with the, the issue I have with the flamethrower is that a, a flamethrower is not going to kill it straight away. It's just going to charge you and be on fire. Like, it's it's not going to kill it straight well, away. Yeah, it no, probably has a really it. thick hide that's because it, it's a wild, well, a well, large... Also, hang on, hang on. And... Fire is usually extremely effective at scaring off animals. Like, yeah, but by that time, it's already committed it's to It's already too you. close. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I don't know. Really like, 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 getting burnt on your face, it's instant pain. Animals he, react very strongly to pain. The... But hang on. If you're arguing for the best thing to do, then it would be the vaporizing bullet, surely. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. If it's if it's not loaded, that's uh, that makes. I sense refuse that, that argument. It's not I, loaded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is one that you can't prove either way. Uh, and sorry. But why we have would no it reason not to be believe loaded? it's not loaded? <laughs> like, why would well, he not put a bullet in it? <laughs> because he wasn't intending to use it. He was just trying to scan. The there would be a bullet in anyway. <laughs> well, they're on a mission that he knows is very dangerous. Clearly, scanning for something. The fact that it wouldn't be loaded is very silly. Yeah, that's why oh, he didn't like, use his pistol in this fight, because that wasn't yeah, loaded look, either. Even if, even if you say it's a mistake, I feel it's a realistic mistake that doesn't portray him being... Well, I mean... Like, it, I this, one, it, uh, this one, this one uh, thing that he didn't have it loaded, even if it was a mistake, it doesn't portray him as being a bumbling idiot yet, okay? Well, the thing and, is, uh, I saw somebody I'm, mention uh, <laughs> earlier, maybe he panicked and made the wrong decision. It's like, well, then he's not a very good bounty hunter then if he's, like, panicking and making yeah, really like, bad Yeah, like, that's what training is death. supposed to That's prevent. your job. This is yeah. your job. Like, you like all of panicking. these things, like, this is, like, eight episodes of all, and these are, like, tiny compared to stuff he does later on. Yeah, and, you so, know, like this it, all adds up in this short amount of time. It, I'm noticing chat. It doesn't seem like chat are understanding that I'm purposely trying to be devil's advocate, not that I agree with the points I'm making. All right. I'm just well, trying to give well, it the to strongest defense that other people would try and make for Mandalorian, because and especially because by testing any defense possible, I think it's much better. It's, it enables us to really find the indefensible mistakes sure. and that stand as a legitimate criticism, like the fact he didn't reach for his sidearm when he was about to be charged. That one is indefensible, but we reach that by looking for any other defenses. So that's what I'm doing, guys, okay? I'm not sorry, trying sorry. to be an yeah, anal but... kind of nerd, but... Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's okay, Chad. So... I, what, what <laughs> it's a chat yeah, it, I'm just it, yeah. saying. I'm just trying, guys, <laughs> no, it's, 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 okay, right. it's okay, Chad, because when, I, when I'm reading chat sometimes i'm like oh no <laughs> well for example i said i would be more concerned about a cattle prod if i was that thing because then i'd be stunned and you could do anything he wants to me and i was yeah, in my head right, thinking right. about like th th you could take that joke in a couple ways but people in chat were like you realize cattle prods don't kill people i was like that's yeah, not like I that's not that what i was chat. saying like, that's not what i was saying like, <laughs> If you incapacitate something, it's at your mercy. Yeah, that's that's entirely what my point was. But you know, it, it, it's all right. Very Every, strange. It's it's fine. Chat doing again, it's so everybody, yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody's getting as if shit the on point, the chat. Anyway. As if the point you said was, if you have training, you will never panic. As if that, as if that's oh, the point yeah. you made. <laughs> um, I was gonna say we can Jeez. we can kick on because there's a lot with this moment. Yes. So um, kick on. Yes. Lucky Quail was in the area. Quail, sorry. Lucky Quill Quill. spotted Quill. the ship Quill. slash Mando, and Lucky Quill is a person who is willing to save his life because he, for some reason, assumes that he's going to be helpful rather than allied with the people he wants out of this place. Yeah, very convenient, and it is a contrivance. Um, I, yeah, I completely agree. And Lucky saved I him before he was killed. Yeah, yeah. Like, like this one doesn't break. It, I, I fully admit it's, it's you know, a problem. And if I was writing this, I wouldn't want something as contrived like that in my own writing. It doesn't break it for me because you do learn to have to put up with it because this is the this is a very similar contrivance that happens in so much. Crap. Well, the thing is, like, and, uh, I know it's what about ism, and it doesn't it doesn't invalidate 
uh, the criticism the criticism is completely valid, and I agree. Well, the but thing I'm, is, I'm kind of used to it because this is a common one. When it comes to contrivances, anyway, it's like, yeah, it could happen. It's just really <laughs> unlikely. It's, yeah, you know? Exactly, it's and it's, it's a couple unlikely. at once as well. It's not just the one. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty because um, the whole planet seems pretty empty. But he happens to land in the one place where he gets immediately attacked, and the one place where Nick also, and Nancy is just sort of around. Yeah, see, to clarify, see, is to his me, name uh, is his name Quail, Quill, or Queel? I thought it was it Quill. Up. His is name it? is Quill. K U I I L. Quill, Quill it oh, is. All right. Okay. Because yeah, I'm pretty I, sure Mando at one point it? says Quill. Yeah, I was unsure, but I had been writing Quill, so I. We'll least... go with Quill. Yeah. Quill. And so, yeah. I guess just one final note on the scale of contrivances, there are one like, like there are ones that are so much worse, like a dagger that happens to control absolutely to the to the the Death Star that you just happen to see in the exact position, and you know that all that stuff. And so, even though it is that there are ones that are far worse, that if it was something that bad, that would kind of be like you know ruining the episode for me. But this one, all right, I can I can I can put up with it. Uh, nice. the, this is one that's very commonly thrown at the episode. Couldn't Mando have just uh, parked his ship way closer to the outpost? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, moving on. Move on. <laughs> um, uh, well, all right, hang on. Could we think of any logical way to justify? Well, one of the things that I was thinking before was there was something along the lines of he didn't want to alert the guys. Um, he didn't want to alert the outpost that he was going to. So his logic was. I'll, perk, I'll park further away and then find a way to get closer to it. Um, which makes sense, but the issue is that he's parked so far away. He's yeah. parked yeah. really, really far like, away. I'm not like sure what his plan travel. is to get there. Yeah, yeah like on, on the yeah. back of uh, riding on the on the <laughs> weird uh, rhino things. You know, it's like, yeah. So can I just point out, and I know you'll probably mention this more, uh, because you're probably a quarter as well, but Quill mentions you can only get there on the back of these things, yeah, and then he walks back. He walks <laughs> so back, he yeah. Need, he walks back, yeah. and he doesn't need it, so he didn't need him in the first place. He and he seems to go a different way, like... Yeah, he goes a different way, and also the path that they take, they don't show any terrain that a speeder couldn't cross. Yeah, they're very small well, gaps. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have a speeder. It does seem to be implied that you need one of these things to jump the gaps, and they're good jumpers. But then it's contradicted by the fact that um, the gaps didn't prevent it because he just walked through the gaps yeah, on the he way back. back. He and in actual back fact, walking walking through the gaps there seems to have been would have been a much better approach because it provided him full cover, and then the there was much less chance of the being gaps seen. anyway. Like, and yes. plus, IG Eleven yeah. got there. <laughs> like, yeah, to get there. So I mean. Yeah. The next thing I have on my list is how come the IG unit only gets spotted <laughs> without yeah. cover when it approaches from a vast open desert? I will I will provide <laughs> a screenshot in a moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's quite hilarious actually cuz the all they I think all they should have done is just have some caverns or something that had emerged from but instead they show this open plain and uh, I don't know if it was just like a default background. But uh, well, here you go. What could have worked? What could have worked well if the facility was actually on a prominent hill that gave it a really long vista, and they had an anti-aircraft gun or something like that. Yes, and that so would be yeah. much better. Yeah, yeah that exactly. Would have exactly. Better, and, he, and he needs to land it, like because if you have a large enough hill, that can cover a really long range and could explain why exactly. Exactly. Land a day's, you know, distance. Yeah, but like, it, did he walk there. the whole way? Does he has his own have his own ship that landed? We know he can I use guess his, he has his own ship. Not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, he could. Yeah, he surely didn't. Where's walk his that ship? Instance. Yeah, but yeah, in just... case, the whole the point is there's it's it's ridiculous that they didn't spot him before he was twenty feet in front of him. And I find it odd <laughs> that because yeah. they're all just standing. Around I thought the IG so, units uh, were established to be like hunter killer droids, and so they're not. I figured they should be like, oh fuck, it's an IG unit. That sort of thing. That that's a good I'd point. Immediately kill well, I, I'm just picturing this that the IG unit commando crawled all its way on the side, <laughs> got to those <laughs> barrels right there, and quickly ran out to the middle and like, yeah, I approached. Right. Like it, it, did a, uh, <laughs> it did a little T1000 jog before it got there. Yeah. It's like, all right, I need to catch my breath. All right. <laughs> and then it jumped out of the barrels on the side and was like, I'm here now. <laughs> um. So again, some quick fire stuff. I think there's, these aren't necessarily flaws. They could possibly be explained, but I find it odd that. IG-11's intention to self-destruct is countered by Mando. Like, he's like, don't self-destruct, and he's like, okay. Like, they're not on Multiple a team, times. necessarily. It's it's kind of strange. Like, why would why would Mando recommending against it stop his protocol? 
Well, we're I think actually skipping a. He might not be fully aware of Mandalorian's capacity, ability in a firefight. And so it's just kind of Mando saying, yes, we can get through it. And without knowing the history of this, you know, Mandalorian, the robot's just kind of going, okay. Uh, if like, I'm mostly willing to let that one go. Yeah. I just find it strange, that's all. Um, and, I think that uh, one passes. I did, have a, um, I did have a thing of for... So throughout the season, it shows that Mando has an extremely... I'll be inconsistent hatred and mistrust of robots. Um, when he sees the IG unit, what he does is he goes down there and he sees that this is an IG assassin droid, right? And what does he do? He walks right up to it without any cover and says, Oh, hi. And then and instantly then gets shot, shot conveniently yeah. in the chest, please. You know, that's oh, a good thing. He had that. Yeah, Good point. Uh, like he tries if I, to make, yeah, he tries to make a deal with this robot, even though it's established how much he hates and distrusts robots. And that this his thing is incredibly dangerous, that. and to approach his it the way he did was really dumb. Okay. Like, his, so, yeah. his position yeah. on robots. Yeah, yeah I don't he get... won't let pit droids fix his starship. He will make deals on the spot with assassin droids he just met. Yeah, I don't get as hung up on the, on the uh, deal, because... He either needs to kill it, which is not sure he would be able to, be, or he kills it one shot to the this, head. He could have just shot it from the side. Well, hang on, hang on. That's assumed that point blank. But um, the the point the part oh, that's more no, indefensible it, is him no, just walking out. I like, I, I feel I don't, I don't like buy that. What? Well, I, I, well, I'll I just say I that, that. I agree. That I, would be that much of a a change in the damage to prevent that headshot. Also, we see, never see. I would like it IG. if it was. Yeah. Uh, and we also never see IG taking a shot to the head, as far as I'm aware. He always tanks the shots to his armor and his chest, and they just bounce off. We never see him get shot in the I head. I think it's but, weird that his yeah. head isn't made of the strongest metal versus yeah, his body. That's what I would assume. Yeah, yeah that's best. Yeah. Like, and this is the thing, because I, I actually like that idea if they if they make the... Uh, the utility of blasters far more something far more understandable and then you could apply it in, pl in plot and if if the rule was blasters can go through really dense dura steel at point blank that would be a great mechanic that they could use if they were just damn consistent with it which they're not and so i wish they were because it's it, it, it worked it worked well if that was the rule in this episode um and uh, yeah i agree it's dumb that he just walked out he should have been taking cover and saying oi oi um yeah I, and I, if it was about if he was trying to be as safe as possible then he would have just shot it in the head because he's really close to him yeah, I mean, my, back, my 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 major issue is just out. that if if rags and i were approaching this area and, and we were like oh god there's a robot killing everything i would try and, if i was part of the guild i'd try to address it from behind a pillar or something not rush out and go, hey, I G U did, la la la, and then it just. <laughs> yeah, sorry, this is, sorry. This I mean, is a... the thing is though, Mandalorian's hatred of droids doesn't exclude him from being willing to use. I'm not even addressing that. I'm not even addressing that part. I'm I'm strictly talking about it from a survival point of view. It's a really stupid thing to do. It would be like if you just saw somebody undertake a really stressful battle. And then you just leap in from the side, like, hey, how's it going? And then <laughs> yeah, like, how is he going to know that you're a friendly, like, you nutball? Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, walking out like that was a very bad Uh, this is a plus one for his stupid meter if we're playing like <laughs> an <laughs> Alright, hang on, hang on. Okay, so if we're going to do a proper tally, I think we should try and be aware of the smart moves he does and then try and do it more objectively. Because he does do no, smart no, no, that, tactic that's not moves. How, no, that's not how this works. If you are in a situation <laughs> like him... No, I'm, I'm going to explain it. Yeah, because... If, so if you use cover 60% of the time, you say, all right, he used it mostly. So 40% of the time, right, he's doing something incredibly stupid. Something like this is insanely boneheaded. So... I don't know how you're going to objectify saying, oh, well, he used cover in this scenario or he did something smart in this scenario. So this one time where he basically survived because of luck, oh, he's still good at what he does. He still doesn't, right. isn't stupid. I guess so, the idea, yeah, go ahead. For me, it, like, I kind of expect, just, I've never seen a, a show where, um, uh, and this doesn't excuse it, I'm not excusing it, uh, but I've never seen a show where, they don't make a character accidentally do something dumb because they didn't think it through. I wish they would always avoid it. And so I agree this is a, a big problem, but as to does it make me decide that this character is stupid because of a mistake in the writing, or is the character still overall competent when he's written properly that's true well, to he is how the, the character is? Well, the issue well, is that... The um... thing, but because 
stuff like this happens like for consistency. I don't think you'd have to look too far, say, in the original trilogy to find Han or Han died. I had I thought of one already where Han, you know, is chasing down stormtrooper and runs into like a whole group of them and screams and runs away now of course it was a mistake and so that one's probably more defensible but what i'm saying is i think you could find examples in stuff that's just as criticizable as this situation here um but it doesn't ruin those shows for us because i kind of talk yeah, in the same way i take this yeah, no, 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 no. that it doesn't mean that the character is boneheaded to the point of being irredeemable well, it depends like, on what still a do. smart that's tactical like character this. We see him do stuff I, like this throughout the season, and it's incredible. It's uh, well, that's why I think we'll yeah. need to tally them up. I'm interested in that because if the tally well, the is, is overwhelming, this is the second one in I'm this willing episode. to grant. Yeah, if it's overwhelming, I'm willing to grant the concession that okay, well, he's I think, a um, character. But if we need it, if uh, but to do that, we would need to balance it out against all the times where he does do something. Smart, yeah, but if every well if every episode he foolishly does something that is insanely stupid, where he risks his life and only survives through luck, and that happens like yeah, once every, every episode, firefight, every episode, every episode yeah. at one point you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, you I do agree. Really stupid things consistently all the time. Yeah, and and it's, it'll depend on the consistency for me to how regular. And this is definitely one I, I grant it. Um, well, I mean, I think uh, I think it might be worthwhile actually to just. Well, well, There's well, two right. instances where he nearly died because he did something stupid. Yeah, devil's um, advocate. And time. then, then you had, yeah. Um, is there any justification that you would have assumed him to be part of the guild because he's a famous, is the famous Mandalorian hunter? I don't think it tried. matters if somebody's in the guild. Like, even if it was, even if you were fighting in a war and you just he literally your kills of yours guild members in the, in the next episode. Battle. Yeah, yeah, he did. Hang on, but that's that's with that that's with cause, and they're pitted against. Well, they they him, jump him, like, they jump him, but he ju him, he's he's him. literally jumping IG here. Like, what does he expect? Uh, yeah, it could be yeah, a good it, point. Yeah, yeah. IG's so, in the yeah, courtyard. He that... just killed a bunch of guys. There was yeah, just yeah, a firefight. Sorry, he just pops out. Counter. Hey, yeah, yeah. I agree. That, that's a valid counter. It's it's established yeah. in the next episode that the bounty hunters are more than willing to attack each other. Um, Which is and, kind of and weird. specifically to to. Uh, to uh, get the bounty for themselves that, and that's the uh, that's the point that uh, plays into this that mm -hmm. it, it seems fairly consistent that bounty hunters will try and kill each other to get the bounty themselves and so uh, like jumping then to the droid saying hi is established that there's a much higher chance the droid will just shoot him to keep the bounty for himself and not say hey you're an anyway, ally I won't shoot yet. somebody's yeah. saying like and he gets punished for that stupid mistake it's like but he could have died like <laughs> He, like this is the problem is he makes a decision that could have killed him and he does it in every episode where it's just like i mean i think i think, really I think we're, we we we're good on this right we can move on yeah on this yeah. one yeah. yeah yeah um uh let's see just real Go quick ahead. why is it that ig11 thinks that it's a an absolute dead bounty versus dead or alive doesn't this bounty come from the same person yeah, that is odd. Um, uh, unless the droid just thinks dead bounties are easier to transport and so oh, unless he was killing by default. Orders. Maybe he was told something else. Could, yeah, could be conflicting orders, or it could just be that's what the droid does. He prefers bringing him in dead because they don't have have a chance of escaping, and he gets sure. Dead. Yeah, I um, I do also think it's it's odd. I think that IG instantly agrees to splitting the bounty when he just destroyed everybody practically effortlessly. That was against him. Sorry, I missed all that, that one. He, all, uh, IG unit. He shows up. He destroys everybody with. Uh, Practically effortlessly, but then Is he agrees the the to split. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> then you have, um, but then he instantly agrees to split the bounty with also, this other guy who shows up. Sorry, I just, I, he, I just. Sorry, the droid the... would have died on its own. It wouldn't have succeeded. Why would have? Why would the droid have any reason to believe that based on what it had just done? It doesn't know the future. Um, uh, I, I guess, That's you know, nice. you're right. They're right that there is some validity in thinking, okay, I, there's no real big threats and I can take it on myself. Yeah. Like if yeah. you're steamrolling everything in front of you with no issues whatsoever and someone's like, hey, I'll help you if I take half of your reward. You're like, hell no. I got the this. The sorry, someone said unless, the unless the droid is just naturally cautious by default if it has the option to droids are always going they generally always go for the highest statistical advantage which is generally what c3po establishes in the law and um, so even so... if the droid is winning because there's a higher statistical advantage to succeed with his help it opts to that that's logically consistent for me i think this would make more sense if it wasn't a droid because the droid is perfectly fine blowing itself up 
if it, it instead of like it would rather blow itself up and and by the way the first time it says it's going to blow itself up it is a very flimsy situation where i would go oh i can't risk capture i'm gonna blow myself up here it's like well calm down like it's not actually that bad the situation we're in at all so sorry i uh I, I got to interject with something like, else. I've seen a, a few people said in the chat that only the scientists wanted it alive. Like what actually happened was um, that German man said like, we want it alive, but uh, you know, he, then he does this whole like, yeah, I know it's a complicated profession. So if you kill it, that's fine. We'll just pay you less. They do not yeah. want to kill it. I want like, yeah, uh, um, to, to bolster Fringy there. Yes. Um, the, ro the, the robot at the end of it says the commission was quite specific. I feel like I'm being gaslit at the moment <laughs> now. Because people keep telling me that I'm talking too much, but I feel like I'm not. So no, I, 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 feel I, like I would, I would say... The... I just had another... I just read a chat saying, let Fringy speak, damn it, so... Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> this is the thing. Chat, chat is all kinds of opinions all at once. <laughs> so, yeah. But I was going to say, like, uh, the robot does say the commission was quite specific specific and so it's yeah, not it's not the droid's preference to take it uh, a yeah, baby or alive point, good point mm -hmm. also someone saying it is a droid it would be considered expendable no it's probably ex insanely it's probably expensive. really expensive i like, have to imagine those anything, things are quite valuable more, if anything the ig unit is way more valuable than actual bounty hunters that you're hiring it's way more valuable than like 50 stormtroopers <laughs> oh yeah man like ig i i'm ready to say that it's like insanely op I don't think it's a overly unreasonable thing to just take the manufacturer's protocol so it can't be captured and stuff. And and it would be unreasonable if that's a core programming tenet in its head. And so, yeah, like uh, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, I, I do. Th I, I understand why, but I think that the first time that it activates that and says it's going to blow itself up, it is definitely not really in a worse position than it was before in the middle of the courtyard spinning around shooting everybody. What, Instead the, of where it was now, safe on, hang cover. Hang on, with the big laser guns. cannon blowing him to bits? Uh, no, this is before that. No, this, this is before that. You, oh, you yeah, remember yeah, that yeah, big, like, revolving shot they did where IG is in the trailer where he's just there, like, doing pew 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 shooting around and all that? Yeah, like, the, the big heavy repeater, I understand that far more. I have no complaints about that. But the first time it offers to self-destruct, it is really premature, it seems. Yeah, and... I would just take that as a, like a quirk in its own programming and that, you know, it's just over oversensitive to resort to that protocol. And that seems to be the case with it because it tries it several times. So that didn't bother me. Um, all right. So uh, wait, wait, just to clarify, it's clear that apparently it's not clarified enough still. So the, the script, um, I have a Camtono of Beskar waiting for you upon delivery of the asset. Alive? Yes, alive. Although, I acknowledge that bounty hunting is a complicated profession. <laughs> so, uh, Fring Fringy is right. He's asking specifically for it to be alive. However, he accepts that it might die. And the doctor is like, wait, 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 whoa. Well, you know, we, we want it alive. Um, so, if you're going to take the, the specific uh, commission off that guy, it would be dead or alive. Um, it wouldn't be strictly dead. And uh, someone cited, well, wait, but the Doctor says in Episode 3 that the Baby Yoda is the only reason that he's alive, implying the Doctor is the reason. It's like, no, 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 the Doctor's talking about keeping Baby Yoda alive post-delivery for As Mando. In he, yeah, he's the reason why, babe, because he doesn't want to get killed by Mando. He's trying to be like, nah, dude, I want to, uh, he's alive because of me. Don't shoot yeah, me like, in the uh, face, Yeah, like, implying please. Baby Yoda would have been dissected up to that point, uh, if not for the Doctor. Which is actually a good thing. Uh, it's telling us that it's not convenient Baby Yoda's alive still, it's that this character has a vested interest in keeping it alive. Which yeah, is supported is by the episode good. 1. This is good stuff. This is the good writing in the show whenever it happens. Yes. Occasionally. It, it does exist. It yes. happened more so in episodes 1, 2, and 3 than everything that came afterwards. And um, like, just on so, yeah. that note then as well, that because like... I think it's good to acknowledge as well that there's, for me, I found a decent amount of good part things to enjoy in it that I enjoyed it overall. And contrast this to other things when there's barely anything good to enjoy, like the rise of Skywalker. I feel there's a marked difference, which is why I think giving it something like a three is, is pretty rough. 
because there's still a lot of good in it, and it's nowhere well, near as bad as Rise of Skywalker. Well, what about the relative, I guess? Because what would be the scores that you, Mola, would give for, like, Rise of Skywalker and TOJ? Like, one we're, two, we're, right? we're looking at ones and zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't, okay, exactly. I can't say zero. I'm not going to say zero, but holy shit. 0. 0.5? Our expectations yeah. were low, but holy shit. Yeah, and also, like, I don't generally assign numbers, but we did that, so for the sake yeah. of that, sure. But, like, very good like if you have masterpiece uh like audio and like sound effects if you have masterpiece level visuals those are not going to get you nearly as many points as masterpiece level writing and direction mm -hmm. I, I agree i agree that that yeah. but it does increase it still like I, oh yeah, yeah it does good. Yeah. I'd say i think that, I'd say i, think I honestly like... raised my uh, rating on it a solid point uh it was a single point but still a solid point for how good the production values were well i guess oh, maybe yeah, the maybe yeah. If we were to divide it into like visuals, production, production wise, it's like an eight or a nine. Yeah. Um, it's really, really good, but the writing is what brings it down because the writing is is low. And on this I'm, one, I'm I very say. proud. Yeah, like, in terms can... of consistency of writing and stuff, I probably would give it a four. I would say that the writing is consistent in that it makes the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah, like the with him making bad decisions. I was going to say um, this is going to get a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. I'm, I'm so I just want to keep yeah, going. Yeah, this, this is this is the the best, this is the better episode. Yeah. Um, is there anything else um, for episode one or? <laughs> Not that I can uh, pick up. So, uh, the last thing I had was, yeah, IG says the bounty was to kill but the the orders. Why would the Empire have him go kill it when, yeah, it's doesn't make any sense, especially because it's just right there and they could take it back. It's it's very odd. That's the last thing I have for episode one. Well, I enjoyed Mandalorian um, taking over the the gun turret thing and then just yeah, that was cool. everyone to hell. Yeah, that was, I was a, fine uh, with the distraction and thing. Use, I, using I, his grapple I, I to get to it. Yeah, I, and see, the grappling hook is actually one of the things I, I enjoyed a decent amount because it was like a, it was like a superpower that had very strict defined uh, uses and limitations, and it was used consistently within those realms. Um, and he used it outside of just you know grappling things. He did use yeah. it in combat, and I enjoyed. it. I was like, you know, they did a good job. Yeah. With yeah and to I, add to I that, agree. I I think that the grappling hook is what he is is one piece of equipment that he uses the very effectively. Best. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he seems to use this very well. But when you talk about, I can see through wall of vision and yeah. flamethrower and stuff like that. He is very inconsistent and illogical with a lot of uses, and he doesn't use them in a lot of places where he should be using them. But the grappling hook, man, he that is his favorite tool because he uses that rather well. Hmm. Yes, yeah, that was great. I like that part. Yeah. So, so cool, like even um, in the beginning of the show, I'm gonna when grab it. Pulls the guy in. Uh, should we move on to episode, episode two? two? Yep. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start um, with saying. Oh wait, go ahead. I'm just trying to think. Is there any any good positive things in episode one? And there there is a decent amount. I guess I don't want to. I think uh, I think Mandalorian's character isn't tarnished yet in episode one. I think he's still pretty good. <laughs> I can just picture Shad's yeah. face like. <laughs> <laughs> what do you but, mean? <laughs> just just, just like the, the the idea that he's he's doomed to be tarnished the more we progress. <laughs> um, that, like. Well, episode one, you could point out one major stupid point. Yeah, he makes a stupid front. decision, but his um, characterization is still pretty good. Because... And, and and showed competent and capable, and is uh, he can kick butt when he needs to, but is not unstoppable. He still struggles, like he needs. Yeah, his... he's, he's definitely... not a Mary Sue. He's not. Oh a Mary yeah, Sue. yeah. He definitely um, seems to be at his strongest in terms of being a competent bounty hunter. I would say either episodes. either in this one or. Three? Maybe the best candidate is... He doesn't really do anything in three, um, he just sits in the thing. Yeah. Uh, what about an six? in the last episode when he shoots out his thing and grapples onto the TIE fighter? The... Oh, okay, that's... that's Okay, that's... <laughs> yeah. That. Also, six, you're probably right, yeah, six when he takes out each of the team. Oh, yeah. he's, probably, he's probably best at what he does in six. Except for There's hanging still a lot of Satan. That episode. Except we'll get there. Right at the beginning, yeah. yeah, we'll get there. There's still some problems, um, but he's probably I wanted to best highlight. in that one. Cameron Netherton said, uh, not a single person decided to take cover when uh, he was spinning around on that gun thing. <laughs> yeah. They're a bit silly in the head, uh, apparently. <laughs> well, there's a, there was a common theme in this entire episode of the enemies or the bad guys for the scene are insanely stupid. And they don't seem to show any real... A lot of the times they show a complete lack of self-preservation. We're actually about to highlight one of those significantly. Yeah, go for it. Um, I was going to yeah. say, so 
I'll, I'll, I'll throw in a good thing and then a tism thing. So I really love the the wide shot where you can actually see the shadows, uh, and then you can note that Mandalorian is reacting to sm like very small sounds. Yes, I noticed that too. That was that you saw a shadow move, and that was like the clue as to what he's reacting to. Yeah. Um, and then they attack him not all at once, which was a weird choice. They like two of them. There's one, and then a second one comes in pretty quickly, and then a third one far later. But I'm more forgiving of that compared to this weird moment where he's like tussling with one of them, and then another guy, like, just decides to sprint off and away from him, despite the fact that he knows he now has a fucking vaporized gun, to kill Baby Yoda. And it's like, if you are successful, if you kill Baby Yoda, Mando's gonna kill you. You can't collect the bounty. What are you doing? If anything, I'm dropping my weapon and saying, I'll tell you anything you want to know, take everything I have, just let me live. Like, it's a bizarre also, moment in the man, fight. man, <laughs> just sure is a good thing that none of those guys had guns. Yeah, they did. It's pretty stupid that all three of them didn't <laughs> jump on him at once, though. They, well. So this, this is the collection, right? They didn't all jump him at once. They all, for some reason, don't have blasters, which are pretty commonplace. Uh, and one of them decides to try and kill Baby Yoda <laughs> when the fight... To a suicide run, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Yeah, if, if... <laughs> Look at him! He's so goofy. <laughs> yeah, I think the yeah. uh, honestly the biggest criticism is the fact that they don't have guns. I can excuse yeah. you know stupid moves in combat because bad people fighting it bad. But he's just the... like if we can't have them, no one can. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, this is Star Wars. Carry guns, no, no. kids. But and the thing is, I. the the actual fighting itself. Is decent enough and it's enjoyable yeah. and uh, yep. you know yep. is is deflecting and is cattle prodding them and and yeah so like I still think that it's enjoyable even though there are still things that you say are very dumb and I would say where are the guns but I, honestly they didn't have guns because they wanted a choreographed hand hand fight scene. Mm -hmm. um, are we and, supposed uh, to assume these are bounty hunters by the way? Yeah, yeah, they uh, have fob, right? has a fob. They have a fob. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, have, have fobs. Um, is there any? Guild rules for this or no? Can any because the problem oh, right now is that I can obviously uh, extrapolate. Isn't it incredibly yeah. risky to be going back to Navarro when apparently anyone can attack and take your bounty? Yeah, I I assume this is. I'm trying to read the scene to try and have it make sense. You have to do that a lot with this show, but I assume that with a guild, it is strictly super against the rules to attack and steal the bounties of other guild members. Of course that should it would be. be. Like yeah. One of the points of the guild is that you're competing, sure, but you're also cooperating to a degree. Also, if the guild finds out that one of their guild members is killing other guild members, yeah, they're just going to kill you. They're not going to kick yeah, you exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. Kill you. Also, right. um, what was I going to say? I, I would assume that these guys are knowingly going against the rules because of that. Because if, the, if, it, if it was the case that you were allowed to just steal everyone's bounty, everybody would just be waiting at the spaceport at Navarro to ambush people and steal their stuff. Yeah, I think there would be a couple of caveats to it. Like, um, uh, there would be a race to, uh, to try and get to the mark first, and so there'd be competition there, and they might be able to fight each other on the way, but as soon as you have it in your possession then I think there would obviously have to be some type of guild rules to say you, you shouldn't be able to uh, steal it. Or they have the and, rule that until you get back to the planet where the you know bounty was issued, it's all it's, all, it's a free-for-all. Anyone can and, get it. Yes, and, but as soon just, as you're in vicinity of the guild, that's when you have to play nice because we don't want our bounty hunting people. And I, and I want to... I wanna... I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to cut off chat. Uh, I've seen a few people notice it. I'm not saying that what they do doesn't make sense. I totally understand why with the value of this bounty and with the fact that Mando, Mando is alone and they're on some somewhat semi-remote planet all out alone in the desert. I totally understand why they did. And I'm not saying it's bad at all that they did from a writing perspective. I totally understand why they did. I'm just saying that is super breaking guild rules because we're talking about the guild and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. I see it as so, more of a problem like, for Navarro than a problem for this scene. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this scene, I totally understand I would, why they did it. I would it like totally to sneakily throw in a detail here, just sliding in a detail. He did not load that yes. rifle before firing it. 
Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! And it was on his back. I don't know. And you know why? Saying. You know why, Mola? Why? He learned from his mistake when it wasn't loaded. <laughs> oh, <laughs> After that, he was like, Mando I'm keeping this bloody arc. thing loaded all the time. He was like, yeah, something could pop up in front of me and might have to, I might actually have to shoot with my gun. I better keep yep. it loaded. That's a good lesson. Oh, and I'm glad, glad to see he learned from it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Let me go, let me scroll down to my episode two. Um, also, my, my notes start off as, why is Mando walking at the beginning? Where is his mount? Can you not? I thought you couldn't get there by walking. You can only use the animals to move. We addressed that earlier, though. Oh, so, yeah. Why did he yeah. leave his mount behind? Yeah. Where, well, yeah, so, may, maybe Quill took it with him when he left and said, that's you're a dick on your own. I, I, I know, I know. You'd think Quill yeah. would have left him one. So I think that's just bad writing. Um, he ate it. Yeah. He was hungry he and he it. ate it. He ate it. He fucking flamethrowered that shit <laughs> and he ate it. He's I like, finally a use for this damn flame. I like the scene where he is repairing his, his arm or healing or whatever and Yoda keeps walking toward it. It's a nice little like moment yeah, of just being I like, all right. And mm. it was foreshadowing with the healing, which still annoys it give, me. It, it gives that, us yeah. something to make because, like, the logic would be: this little guy is like my 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 protecty man is hurt. I want to help. That sort of mindset, which can sort of lead to you being like, I wonder if I can do anything. In the you know, it's it's a bit of an extrapolation, but it's in the same vein as Luke like trying to pull that lightsaber because it's just out of his reach. Um, in in Empire sort of natural actions that might lead you to attempt uh, something or make you feel like you have something, as opposed to, maybe I can brainwash this person. <laughs> like, it's like... So, uh, someone, someone asked me in a uh, cantina if, uh, I guess this relates to the, the gun thing. Someone asked if I keep around in the chamber on my everyday carry, and I do. Um, because you need there to be one there if you're going to shoot. Um, so, but yeah, that that is what I do personally. And as far as I know, there's a lot of people who do. It's certainly what I prefer. So to answer that well, question, there you go. It was asked of me. Well, we have evidence of someone not doing it. Oh, we do, some people yeah, definitely do. I'm sorry, I've just been busy. Mandalorian clearly oh, yeah. doesn't, but he does now because yeah. he went from it. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, and so it's foreshadowing. He's clearly trying to heal. Um, and Mandalorian's not letting him, and uh, and you know I have like I hate the healing uh, in Star Wars. I I do think it's more defensible with Baby Yoda because of the uniqueness of his race or something like that. I still prefer that they just keep it out. I don't Star know that Wars, I like. Uh, I don't think it should be about the race at all. No, no, and uh, I don't like that one race is can use force to some fairly extreme levels, like even lifting the mud horn is an extremely yeah, see, powerful force move but like a healing a, a, a flesh wound that's that small and knocking him out for the day or something i'm cool with that lifting the mud horn is like whoa that <laughs> like, is that thing, i yeah. i'm gonna say that that is too much that is way too much that thing probably weighs a shit ton and for how long and he doesn't just stun it or stop it or push it off course he lifts that motherfucker and he yeah. holds it up Couple of things. At though. least uh, they have him knocked out for like a day. But yes. Still, yeah. See, Damn. the thing that redeems it somewhat um, uh, is that uh, at least it has a very significant cost on Baby Yoda, and they're actually consistent with that. So that's good. Uh, and uh, it is a, a more unique situation that could help explain that he can do it just because his Yoda race or whatever. Uh, so it's not as bad as just a human suddenly lifting something up and not having needed to train for it and things. So that makes it a little bit more defensible. Still don't like it, but I can I can go I can go along with it. Just put it in the back of my head. Like, ah, okay, fine. Pe people people are side. citing size matters board. not. It's like come okay, on, like, so guys, you know you know that size, size matters. You know that it matters. <laughs> it definitely right, so matters, guys. How I I think they're saying size matters not as for the person doing it, but this is a really large object moving at a high speed with a lot of oomph and weight and effort behind it. Also, let's just be clear: this thing isn't even smart enough to speak yet, let alone understand what it's being told. But it has the mental capacity to do this. I think that's really, really pushing it. When you look Sorry. at the kind of strain Yoda had to go through to stop the falling rocks and things of that nature, 
man, this baby stomping that charging mud horn and lifting it and holding it in the air for as long as it did. Mm. And I've got to say, like, you got to be careful on this because I'm assuming, right? Just assuming then most of chat will take not, issue with yeah, Ray. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> you you yeah, gotta reconcile all, size this. Size matters not. Yeah. 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 Like, Move half a mountain. Size matters not. So yeah, a couple of things is Ugh. like I said, I I have issues with it, but I do think there are enough significant differences to separate this from just. It's different. It's definitely it. not as. It's um, not on the same level. Yeah, it's not as bad. No way. Yeah. No uh, way. I think and part I do... of that is due to the fact that we have no idea about Baby Yoda's history. And I do appreciate well, that they knock um, him out for a while. Yeah, and yeah, I, that's a, what I that nice. redeems it a lot for me. Yeah. Um, in terms of size matters, not the th my own thoughts on it is like Yoda does say that, but that's outrightly contradicted by every way the Force is shown to us being used on in the movies, where so, heavier yeah. things are always harder for people to lift. Oh, oh so, Chad, Chad, I I think when they say that, they mean the person using the Force. Well, what the... I. Yeah, what I was kind of taking from it to contextualize what Yoda was then saying to make it make sense instead of contradicting is that Yoda was trying to say you can overcome size. Like, just do it, focus enough, and then size won't going to be an issue. Here, I'll show you. Still more difficult for me, but I'm overcoming it. And so... Um, also, someone someone quoted me, the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. I was like, all right, the, this isn't child. He can't even speak. He can't understand the things that he's told. Like, yeah, that has something to do with intelligence. Like, sorry, the ability to speak does have something to do with intelligence, and the ability to concentrate, it does have something to do with your mental faculties, right? And, and it's like, you, it, it takes training to use the Force. So I find it very hard to believe that someone that is that young, quote-unquote young, who can only do so much, has the fortitude and capacity mentally to be able to use the force to that you know to, to that capacity so um, i had a uh i had an unfulfilled fan theory that um baby yoda was faking it and he could actually speak and was actually fully mature like a 50 like a 50 year old person and that he was only faking being a baby because he was still really vulnerable being so small he had the force but he could only use it and then it would get knocked out and so by acting as a baby pretending to be a baby it got others to protect him and uh and uh, and there was a protective thing, and that would have been cool if just somewhere. I in think this at this season, point, fans would find that it. annoying. Like they'd be like, "No, yeah. they gave him a weird voice." <laughs> no, no, but I would yeah. like it as like you know something happens, and Baby Yoda is there, Bando gets hit or falls down, and he just waltz, waltzes up and says, "Falling down, you have." And he's like, "What?" <laughs> he's like, yeah, and I'm not. Like, I'll, let, I'll let you in on my nah. secret. And then he could be it, like, if he was a smart mouth, then going on it, there was a lot of potential they could have milked. With and again, like, some people are chatter saying, like, oh, is that intelligence is on a spectrum, all right? Like, like, a, like a cow has a level of intelligence. A human has a level of intelligence. This is all on a spectrum. Like, an infant <sighs> is not going to have the same, like, it's hard. I don't believe that an infant has the, I, has the ability to access the force in a way that we know requires or should require training in order to use if he isn't intelligent enough to speak and understand and communicate with people and do stuff of that nature like I when you're talking know. about how he hides from the droid on the ship that's a pretty that's a very very base level kind of thing to do yeah i don't know about that because there are certain instinctual things that different species can pick up and just born with it just like, to clarify what are we know, establishing that's... his intelligence to prove that he has a certain amount of force power that he that he can use the force power, and for me, that's not too much to of an degree. issue. Now, to this degree is important. The force power to this degree, because like he doesn't just use the force a little bit. Sure, I can understand that a baby that's force sensitive can use the force to a degree, but this is like some stopping the mud horde from charging it and holding it in the air. I think that's yep. a really big deal. Oh, but it it really struggled. It really struggled to pull that. I off. guess the thing is though is that it. Luke Luke had to like train to be able to lift the X wing. Oh yeah, wait, no. But he didn't. Li he only lifted yeah. it. But yeah, like he. I guess my thing is is I'm kind of a, I'm I feel like I'm in the middle ground on this one again because I'm not sure that it's like so far out of the realm of possibility that a like baby Yoda might just sort of in you know like might instinctually know that the yeah, force I, is a thing even if he doesn't fully understand what it is if you know what i mean like i'm i'm in the camp where if later on they explain how it has had training or something then i'll buy it but right now i'm not convinced of it you know like like is it's a i can't really buy it 
but it can be explained later. Yeah. Like yeah. if they if they find out like he goes back to his family or his planet or whatever, they're like, oh yeah, this is a race of people that are extra force sensitive. Um, even at a young age, they show an incredibly gifted connection to the force. Even infants, da 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 da, and they're like they're like super special in some way, or there's some kind of explanation for it. Okay, maybe I'll be convinced. But as it stands right now, I'm not quite convinced that it's you know, a thing. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I don't like the implications of it, it subverting the fact that you generally, to, especially you get to that level of the force, you need to train. And it's always been, you have to train to be able to know use the force. So I don't like the subversion there. But I think it can be justified, even though I don't like it. Um, and which is exactly what you were saying before, Rax, yeah. And also the the when he uses the force, when Baby Yuda uses the force, I feel like that more than lifting the mud horn is a display of like I it, it's really hard to get a bead on Baby Yoda and his um like his force competency and the training. It's like I I, I think there's still a lot that can be explained right oh, now. Yeah. It's definitely not like Mary Sue levels, but I'm still not quite Still not quite buying it. Like it still I, seems. I think like, that it should have just calmed the mud horde down. That was all, and keep keep it stunned, but don't lift it. I don't know why they had to lift it up in the air. Cause that's a yeah. cool. It's a cool shot. It's a cool reveal. Yeah, so that's why they did um, it. So I, I think, think they should tone it down. We have skipped over and the. No, I'm not mad, chat. I'm not mad. you mad. I just don't buy it. You're okay. Angry male. Uh, this is my white <laughs> white male rage I got from Joe. Yep. It's all it's all seeping out. Yeah. We did skip over the Jawa chase scene, which I thought was was good. I really liked it. It was oh. like, uh, oh, what, didn't... I didn't at all. Why? So oh, let me pull up my notes. All right. So what is his plan? Get his stuff back. Climb on board. How how Wait. is he? So what what Wait. happens is yeah. Go ahead. Um, why wasn't his ship on lockdown? Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, and it's established that it can go on lockdown in the last second last episode. And also, I agree. Yeah. here's an important one. So when he, you know, like, uh, oh, Nick Nolte knows that Jar was on this planet, but I guess he just didn't tell Mando that that might be a problem for a ship. Yep. <laughs> I would have told him. By the way, your no, shit, if here. you leave yeah. it here, it's gonna get fucking on. Maybe you should drive a little here. closer to the thing. <laughs> you, Maybe you should yeah. just leave. You know, it two birds with one stone. Fly it to that. my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he should have flown it to his house. Actually, yeah. Yeah. My point was, is the actual chase scene. I I enjoyed it. It was fun. And no, that, of course. Yeah, uh, I was just doing that yeah, first like it was chronologically. Well done. Um, yeah, it was so, well done. It was a. Uh. uh why aren't the Jawas shooting him with stuns immediately instead of throwing bits of junk at him? Uh, there seems to be a range limitation on those stuns. They're always used close range. He's right by the windows. Yeah, he pulls one of them out. He's so close. Yeah, Mando yeah, even pulls good, one. Good point. Yeah, um, uh, those are, yeah. they're all up there with the stun ones. But I'm... it was tough for him. And in terms of his plan, like I can understand someone, you got my stuff and just chasing after them without ha having enough time to think of a plan. And now I'm here. Well, yeah, but that's uh, like a, that's something like it. an amateur would do. Like we we've established this is another thing about like Mando needs like if he is the best bounty hunter in the parts, like he's doing this whole life, he's been trained in combat by the Mandalorians. You expect better. I don't know what what would you say would a, a master would have done in that situation. Well, I I can't say accurately because I'm not a master of combat, well, you know, but, but but I feel like as if me, that like I'm. Not, Look, I'm not a master, he, does, but I don't he, think picks he, off, he picks off a few at a distance, right? And then he starts running close. He doesn't like try to sneak on board. He doesn't use his grappling hook to get to the top before they start to take off. Um, it, well, it's, yeah, it's, when you say take off, what do you mean? Like, like the, when they start to oh, close up the ship and go away, spin away, like travel away, move, go. Oh, move. so you think instead of. Like, because for me, if that was my favorite ship and I see them stripping it, I think it's a valid reaction to go, you sons of that, and just go straight. Yeah, sure, on, on an emotional level, sure. But I expect better out of a seasoned veteran like him. Instead of going, all right, I need my stuff back. Instead of him going, you know, or I'm mad, I'm going to 
start killing them going, oh, well, I need to get my parts back. So what's the best way for me to do that? Giving my position away from this distance at a long range. I can't kill them all. There's no way I can kill them all. I don't even have enough ammo for that. How am I going to get my stuff back? Do I wait and then follow the tracks until nightfall? Do I sneak on board the crawler or at least try to? What is he, what's he doing here? Yeah, I don't know if you're... Uh, like Because it's established that he's not flawless like he, he struggles and fails a lot and so that also is implied tactically he can really kick butt when he needs to but he also I mean, the fails needs and, him too. yeah but i think that's just, just it's consistent to show him you know reacting emotionally and so, stuff he like can, that because, so he can be really angry and behave intelligently can't we all yeah why doesn't he yeah, what if he, you, if he's but, such but, a but no, no, my, my, I thought I, I thought you were saying that as a contrast, saying you can be angry and make mistakes and be intelligent, like uh, because you know it, I I know it happens to me all the time when when you don't have enough time to think something through or something like that. Yeah, plenty, um, yeah, but he had plenty of time. I don't know. They were in the middle of yeah, they, the ship they had parts everywhere. Um, the ship was open. They some were people are saying he's around. not a veteran in chat. Surely he's a veteran. Uh, isn't he like he's in his forties? He's, he's the, the best. The he's the best in the parsec. Yeah. yeah How's like, he not a veteran? How does he not yeah, have yeah. a lot of experience under his oh, belt? Well, well, he's been on, trained his whole on. life to do this stuff. No, 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 no. Because that doesn't mean that he is flawless. Like he is really good at fighting, and you could become the best bounty hunter by being really good at fighting. And his like depending on how smart he is, I think we're gonna have to determine that. But just on this case study alone by itself, it's not acting like a complete buffoon idiot. It's reacting emotionally. Yeah, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't acting like a total idiot. Sure. Yeah. And but I think like, if someone in chat said, I feel like Rags is holding him to a high standard. You bet your ass I am. You bet your ass I'm holding Mando to a high standard. He's a Mandalorian for starters, who are supposed to be the elite of the elite in this universe. Also, this well, is what he's been trained for his whole well, life. No, 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 he's the best bounty hunter in the parsec. Yeah, I'm holding him to a high standard. Yeah, yeah, but he, you can achieve that high standard of being an elite and the best in the fight while being just by being good at fighting, which he clearly is, and have him make mistakes tactically, which he can do. And I think that's yeah. Oh, we see, he definitely can do that. In fact, he, yeah. it's almost like he likes to. Well, okay, just no, just no, to no, remind no. people, he's like, been at doing the moment, jobs. We've really found one big mistake he did in the first episode, and I don't think this is a huge mistake in this one in just reacting like you stupid things get out of my ship. He wants to stop them stripping it, so he shoots them. That you know makes them run away, and then he chases them and stuff. And you know that's all. That's you know it's fine. Like it's reacting, being real. And I would be ticked off if my ship was getting stripped like that. Um, granted, he could have acted more tactfully and like all right I'll, I'll chase him down but if he didn't do something to strike right off the get-go they just would have kept stripping the ship if he like wanted to wait to sneak aboard that's still the length of time in which they're damaging his ship further and stripping it even further which means there's more stuff he would need to get back and so by but firing all be he in the stops same them no no but he, by firing, he stops him stripping it in that very moment. So yeah, but I guess that doesn't matter wouldn't anyway have been because a all those parts idea, would be in the same place. It, wouldn't it have been a better idea for him to like sabotage the uh, the vehicle so or, that they could or straight up just try to approach them? He he seems to be on good terms yeah. with Tuscan Raiders. I don't know why he wouldn't be with Jawas. Well, he's ticked off. They're stripping his ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. So the, the best thing to do, the yeah, the best thing to do at this point is to be like, oof, gotta suck up that rage yeah. and be like, look, well, guys, well, this is my on. ship. Yeah, yeah. I'm not arguing the best thing um, he should have done. I'm arguing what he did done is justifiable, and it doesn't make him an idiot. And uh, he still can be a competent, one of the best, you know, mercenaries well, like, in the galaxy. By still, you know, not immediately shooting the Tuscan Raiders. I actually quite like that bit in that it's like, oh, it tells you that he's. Again, I hate to use the word, seasoned. He knows what to do around these parts. He knows how to talk to these people. He knows how to deal with all this. Like, how does he not know what Jawas do? Because this isn't even Tatooine, right? This is um, some other planet. Yeah, this is another planet. He can well, speak not, Jawa. Well, not... He can speak a little bit of Jawas. So yeah, he's definitely he had experience with Jawas. And Jawas do trade. Like, we know that they're uh, they're not yeah. like a... They're yeah, strictly on scavenging on steel. Hey, Jawas on Navara. Is, I get his thing. I would not want to have to pay money for that, for stuff that is mine. 
And so if I can, they took it, you know, without trading. So if I could try and take it back forcefully, so I don't have to trade or go through crap like killing a mud horn to get back what's rightfully mine, I would take it. And if well, that what means, was his plan when he got onto the ship? By- what was his plan to get, when he got on the vehicle? Like, what was he going to do? Kill every single one and then drive it back to his ship? ship I, like I if guess. he was able to pull it off i reckon he would have done it yeah i i, I mean how's he gonna he kill them beaten. all there's no way yeah but he had to know that there was no way that and he, he must he must know that they have stun he must know that they have stun guns as well right well no no, no yeah we because he know. scopes on. in on the guy we who has a gun know. he do- well okay so if you see someone with a stun gun that might indicate but he doesn't know how tough or weak these jars are in fact jawas seem to have a reputation of being cowardly like because that's the, the way they act and so I think he could feel justified with the. He has taken on seasoned, you know, people and beaten yeah, them. Yeah, but there's like fifty of them. There's so many. Yeah, yeah like, but they're they're all little and weak, and they just. Well, he's on guns. their he's on their sand crawler. Where well, does he expect well, the thing them is, to even yeah, run I, to? Like it, it goes badly for him, and he fails. Yeah, because it was a really bad yeah, idea. He should have. I don't have... know. I, 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 I'm willing I, to move I, on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm fine with moving it, on. I didn't yeah, mean to discuss yeah, yeah, yeah. this in this detail, but I still am. I'm still definitely being critical of him for his. I mean, there's more anyway for this course. moment. Well, First of I, all, his fall. Is, I, yeah, I his fall is pretty significant. His, his fall could have easily killed him. Yeah. Oh well, that one. Uh, I I agree, but and I find it really uh, odd. Things like that happened in uh, in everywhere, and you just kind of accept that these are heroic characters that can survive uh, okay. more damage. Uh, I kind we of don't know what medical things, but I just want to say that I think what he did was valid, and it doesn't undermine making him an idiot and stuff. Especially in the sense that he's angry, and he could have very well been thinking as he's trying to climb up. It's like, all right, I'm in over my head. Maybe I've bitten off more than I can chew, which he clearly did. But he was committed by that point, and so he was like, oh, I'm just going to go with it, and. I know I've done that when I've made it. I don't know. I feel like, but that just adds him to being incompetent. If he's like, I'm just going to commit to this terrible plan. Well, it still might have worked. He didn't know that it would fail. If it's a, yeah, I feel like committing to a terrible plan, if he acknowledges it. Some cost some... fallacy, you know? Like he, yeah. he's, he's got him already. He's like, fuck, I guess I got to see it through. <laughs> and then, of course, that happens and he nearly Because well, like, he knows, no, he knows even... that there's tracks on this thing, too. It's just. Mm. Yeah, even if he knew that it was going to be harder than he expected, because he's committed, he could still feel, I'm still going to try and pull it off. And I think that's something that many people do. I know yeah, I've but... found myself in situations like where I've tried something bit off more than I chew, but I commit to it because there's still a chance I could I could pull it off. It is a fallacy, though. It's it's the sub cost. Yeah, I... It's called at, the sub cost fallacy. No, no, no. Wait, at what point does the, the season... I, I'm not I'm not saying it's the best option. No, no, no. Saying... I didn't. Yeah, 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 guess... yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get that. Yeah. It's cool. just that as a bounty hunter, he of all people should really be tuned into sunk cost. Like, this is something that he would be dealing with all the time. Well, well, you know? yeah, it's like, how many yeah. times does he have to do something foolish and stupid until I'm like, man, this guy's just awful. No, I don't think this one qualifies as actually being foolish and stupid. I think this is something intelligent people can resort to very easily by emotion and anger. It's his favorite ship. Yeah, I, I, this doesn't make him an idiot. Yeah, and I I think that I, I like, uh, there's a comment in the chat, Mando can be imperfect, but it could be done in a way that doesn't make him look like he's new to the job. And I agree wholeheartedly with that. I I really would, and again, I didn't mean to have this be a huge tangent, but man, it's like it's one thing after the other with this Mando guy. <laughs> I think Rags and Muller are losing credibility with their nitpicking. <laughs> have you seen this show before? <laughs> like the... have you seen it? Yeah, like yeah. Um. So yeah, I was just gonna say, moving on. Uh. I think it's ridiculous the fall he takes, but fine, I'll let that go. I think it's ridiculous they don't scavenge his armor after he's killed a whole bunch of them. Yeah, they just leave. Like, they know he's stunned, they watch him fall down, and they're not... They just leave? So that he can survive to hunt them down another day? They just... Don't do anything? Well, see, I think this one, you could defend it, like... Like, sometimes people just want to lick their wounds, even when after the one, and yes, they could rob the guy or do so whatever they want. I do agree that it's probably a bit more out of character with Jawa specifically because they're known for scavenging everything. Um, but what do they know about Mandalorians? How long is he going to be knocked that out? He's knocked out? Um, well, just, no, keep, just, keeps, is, just keep yeah. hitting him. Well, the thing is, 
for all they know, he you know could be stunned, days or whatever, and they get closer, and then few other one are gonna die. He's killed several already, and so even if there's a small risk factor, and they are cowardly, that's any number they of them stood up could to die him at the again top. because they were forced to. He was chasing them, but now they're free, and now they don't have to risk any more lives. I think that, that, that like this one isn't um, a strong point of criticism when it can be justified that they. It's time to lick their wounds. They don't want to risk any more lives, and they are cowardly by nature. That, that makes sense. I, I I don't think it makes any sense at all. I mean, like I see your point, but the idea that they they have all all of these guys have shot him with stun guns. They watch him freak out. They watch him fall back and land on the ground far below, and he's just laying there, and he doesn't have his like, and they just leave. Like that, that seems oh. extremely weird for Jawas yeah. to do with his armor yeah. and with the fact that he's killed him. At this point, I, you could kill him. Like, and well, then at the very least, they could have uh, they could have turned put the thing into reverse and backed over him. But yeah, you know exactly. what would have happened then? <laughs> yeah, because being oh God, knocked out, be the length of time. Yeah, the the length of time being knocked out is arbitrary for, for whoever the writer wants. And so, if they decided to back it up, they just would have made it that his armor prevented a lot of the stunning and he woke up and jumped and rolled out of the way. And so, yeah, but I guess an arbitrary when he's at the top, way. there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Jawas that stun him at once. Also, do, do you say we're, we're not right. sure of how long it took it's for him to wake start. up? It, no, I think, I think no, no, point no, no, I'm the, saying the plot's that just going to make him knocked out for as long as they need him to be knocked exactly. out. If, exactly. if he so got knocked out and they came back for him. Yeah. yeah. It's an arbitrary thing to criticize because they could have just, if they try to run him over, they'll just say, Beskar's pretty darn good at blocking those, you know, um, things. But now they have established it, so they should be consistent with it if they if ever has to get stun shots again. Um, but there, there are, there's a lot of ways in which it could have been written to avoid it. But I agree there. There is a question mark. I, I agree that, you know, um, Jawas, it's not a big one though for me. It's like, yeah, they, they ran away. A few of them died. Time to lick their wounds. They got their, they got most of the scrap they wanted. Uh, let's not, you know, try and... This isn't criticizing the story more. for being unrealistic. This is, don't like what he did. Fine, but ease off a bit. <laughs> is this a criticism of just disliking how he acted, though? Or is it more like in service of he's not that great about... I mean, I, I've been well, listening no, 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 to no, all no, these no, arguments. No. I just think he acted like an idiot in this scene. No, I don't think it's an idiot. I think it wasn't the best thing he could have chosen, but it's far from blatantly stupid. I so feel like, like it's the worst the steel armor, armor yet. I, uh, when, the when helmet about... is, and he has a bunch of Durasteel on him, and he has all the gadgets and stuff on him. They know he's got a rifle somewhere. Oh, like, yeah, he's not they... wearing the best car. Good point. Good point. I, not at this still... point. Yeah. But the thing is, is um, I guess when I think about all of his options, this feels like the worst. Because when I think of things that he could have done, he could have done nothing and followed them to where they stopped for the night to try and get it back he could have um shot his you know incendiary ammo at one of the wheels to make it so that the the vehicle couldn't move anymore well no no there's was... no guarantee that he did try and shoot this the thing and it did nothing and he did he try and shoot, shoot, shoot the ship yeah, he, uh, shot, the ship, the, he shot the, the back of it one time yeah. and then oh. gave up after that, hold on, I'm, I'm pulling it up. I, I want to. Yeah, he shot check. the back um, of it once. I, I okay. think. I anything. think sending a shot to try and stop them from uh, like completely dismantling his ship to nuts and bolts is perfectly fine. Like they're stripping my ship. I need to stop the damage before it becomes irreparable or so bad that I won't be able to fix it with two weeks work or whatever and help and stuff. I mean, even well, though I mean, you have help. Um, like he was actually enough, hoping uh, that it would still fly. Like he tried to get yeah, it to fly I when he went so. back. And so so that the fact that he wanted them to stop stripping the ship as soon as possible is a very valid option to resort to I guess, the shooting thing right is, away. Is, um... Yeah, sure, but but when he jumps onto it, it's like you're not gonna be able to take all this back to your ship. I mean, because again, he, he would have to all? kill them all. Yeah, sure. I think he's more than willing to, and um he doesn't I don't know that he that would be able to. I don't think it's possible. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I, I, I don't think, I think he's I, I think he could have been thinking, all right, I'm pretty over my head, but committed, let's keep going. Because he killed a lot of them pretty easily already. And so, I mean, he killed well, like Because he was sniping six. him at a distance. Yeah. But even, even when he's trying to climb up, he pulls several out of their hatches. And I think he only pulls their... one out. No, 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 more than one, I'm pretty sure. I think he only pulls one. Let me, let me check, I'm pretty sure it was more than one. But yeah, I think he pulls one, we even like... see it hit the ground, yeah. But I saw, I remember seeing more than one fall, so... But it, it doesn't really matter. But still, 
you know, he kills several in his uh, beginning of his attempt to get rid of them. Um, I'm just and... rewatching the scene. Yeah, he he kills three of them, and then he puts down his gun, and then he runs down. This is so he runs down. He doesn't make any attempt to stop the. Uh, he doesn't make any attempt to sabotage the, other thing, the vehicle. He, like it's funny that. They're throwing junk at him, right? And then one comes out and prods him. Oh, and then, So they're trying guns. to prod him. All right. yeah. um, and so the fact that they're throwing bricks and stuff does mean that their stun guns aren't long range. And if you only saw one, he might be assuming that they're not, you know, heavily armored with like lots of weapons and stuff. And so from his frame of mind, he, d he is, val you know, I think it's valid enough for him to assume that they don't have lots of weapons up top. Because they've been throwing bricks at him, basically, and so as soon as he gets up, he he, could he does throw his second one off. Okay, so yeah, he throws two. Yeah, off. he throws a second one off right before ten of them all shoot him oh, with stun guns at once, yeah. and he falls off and lands. Yeah, on his back. and he pulled out his gun, and so he could have been expecting that they just had bricks and scrap that they were throwing at him, and he could have just offloaded his gun on him or threatened, saying, "I'm going to kill you all unless you give my stuff back." That's a valid oh. thing. And in that sense, he technically succeeded if his assumption was that they didn't have the stun guns. And uh, do, uh, how many stun guns was he, you know, justified in the, uh, assuming that they had? Did he even see one? Like, that could have been a surprise to he him. He saw there were 10. So, I mean, he might, he probably might not have counted them individually, but there was there was 10 up there right in front of him. So, yeah, 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 but but he, if he was assuming that they didn't have the stun guns, technically what they he was trying to achieve, he succeeded in what he was trying to achieve. He he successfully climbed up to the top, pulled out his gun, ready to threaten them at gunpoint to give him his stuff back, and then they stun him because he he miscalculated that they had stun guns. And that's valid enough if you didn't see them having the yeah, guns. Yeah, but he already them. saw them with guns through his scope. Well, before. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. Because it's also how many guns. Because I mean, if he sees one with a gun, there's no way he's like, ah, oh, it's probably the only gun they have. <laughs> well, what like was he expecting 10 to be up there, I think? It's his gun in his holster, even though he fell one. and dropped it. Because they're not they're certainly not firing back when he starts shooting at them. And I there's only one with a stun gun that was hanging at their side. And there was a lot outside. If he's assuming that's the entire crew, oh, no, one is firing back, actually. But then he kills it. So he kills one of the ones, one of the only ones with a gun, actually. And so he could assume that they had no, That's a valid assumption. They have no more guns. Would, if that's their entire crew that, that was stripping the ship, there's like uh, 13. I don't know why. The idea of making an assumption that that's all the people stripping is all the people he could see and that there weren't any guns on board and they didn't have a bunch of guns stored, like that's a huge assumption to be making. No, I think that's a valid. Like, the they, they, they want to strip that they are scavengers. They that's want to strip the ship as soon as. Make. No, it's not. If they want to strip <laughs> yes. the ship as soon as possible, you would assume that the entire crew is working on it to get it done fast and get it on board. That's sure. I just, I find it unbelievable that he would think that they have no guns. Um, That's they're insane. scavengers. Well, if, like, he sees definitely... their, if he sees their whole crew, and well, it's a safe assumption that it was their whole crew... For, uh, for no, no, just no, a piece of information, a they're using ion blasters, which is uh, what they use to disable droids. It's what they do with R2 in uh, New Hope. Yeah, and if he speaks Jawa, surely he knows enough about Jawas to know that that's something they do. Yeah, I, I don't think there's massive failings in logic here because there are valid enough assumptions he can make from what he's seeing. If that's the whole crew of the ship and only one of them currently has a gun, which he kills, um, and it makes sense that the whole crew would be trying to strip the ship before the owner comes back, then they get on board and then he thinks he could take them on and, you know, threaten them to give him his stuff back. That's fine for me. I mean, I'm happy to just keep going because, again, yeah, sure. it gets so much yeah, worse. Keep it going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do, do what is next? Uh... <laughs> I, I like one of my notes. Just says, "How common are frogs in a desert?" <laughs> oh yeah, because we saw frogs and and then it was like, but there's yeah, no water here. Desert. So there's space yeah. desert frogs, clearly, guy. Desert yeah, frogs. Well. All right. All right. Desert frogs. <laughs> um. Yeah, this is just a tiny thing, but like, how did the dude know where the Jawas were? Like, I assume Jawas they follow the tracks. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that has to be it, right? Yeah, like, I guess, I yeah, okay, tracks. okay. Because yeah. the other thing that we observed when we rewatched was if they have a circuit, then Nick Nolte was really dumb for not pointing that out to Mando. Like, hey, the Jawas come this way, so move your ship. So they must have followed the tracks. Um, 
I was surprised that he like happily gives up his weapons to essentially barter with them with with how easily they can fuck him up. And then he shoots yeah. his flamethrower at them anyway. And well, they, no, and he's lucky that doesn't screw up everything for him. Yeah. He technically still had a weapon, so he didn't give up. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he was relying on his flamethrower as a well, like, yeah, 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 so well. It would be one or the other, right? Like yeah. as in the criticism would either be he gave up all of his weapons when they are quote unquote his religion, but he didn't, fine. But it's like also then wouldn't that fuck up everything with the, the Jawas? Wouldn't they be yeah. like, Motherfucker, you just fired fire at it's us? Like, what the he, hell? Let's <laughs> say he scorches like six of them at once. Like he knows the others are right there. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's this is the end of off. your bartering. It's his favorite ship! He's ticked off. I was like, yeah, he's uh, angry. This is emotionally trying. Yeah. I mean, I want to try and get past episode two because, uh... I just want to. I just want to get to the bigger <laughs> like, stuff, especially know, episode four. Like, I'm looking good. forward to getting to four because four is where it all falls apart. Um... So, I guess we skip to the Mudhorn battle. His approach is... So, this is kind of what I mean. Like, every time he does... I want Not every time, right? A lot of the times. When he has, like, a, a thing to achieve or or, a, or a, just an event to sort out, I always... I'm just sitting there raising an eyebrow. Like, why was this your plan? Like, he has to... He doesn't check the cave from, like, a distance with his scanners or anything. Like, his, his heat sensor on his helmet. He just goes in with, like, a torch. Well, he, his helmet... Ha he has he has the ability. He, we know he has thermals. He uses them in episode five. Yeah. Only oh, okay. So th so he can pick up heat signatures, but at what range and what would block it? Um. Well, we if know he the can do it at extremely it. long distances, it will definitely work very close up in the dark. Well, also, appara apparently, amphibians in the yeah. desert is a thing. Oh, okay. I had no idea. Right. I had no there idea either. Go. There we go. Desert frogs. Yeah, like, I don't care either way. <laughs> this is fine. Um, yeah, the you keep going. Well, uh, just just the it just his approach seems strange. He he's uh, he's not using all of his tools to the best use, as far as I can tell. Yeah, he walks in with a flashlight, looking around instead of using the thermal vision that we know he has, and all this stuff that he has ability to see through walls and listen to people through walls. But he doesn't. He just goes in with a flashlight and gets ambushed by it. And I'm just. I like, wonder if this is um a disconnection in directing that um you know what and I'm not an excusing it I'm not excusing it but it's perfect like because it makes much more sense that thermal that he didn't have thermals in that you know context which is obviously why because yeah why wouldn't you use the thermals if you had them um and then someone later gives him thermals because he's got a mask and that must have taken it without well you think you'd be like. I like you. You very well might be right. Is that is the reason? I mean, we've seen what a lack of consistent vision can do to Star Wars as a trilogy, mm -hmm. and you you would think that they would have all the people that they know are going to be directing the episode, or they have like a sheet they give to everybody and say, "All right, here this is his equipment that we've established. He has this is the knowledge he has. Here is who he is. So make use of it. And if he doesn't, then that's just an issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he I guess should be consistency." Um, yeah, it's definitely a problem in consistency, and it almost gets them killed. All right, all right. So this is me being, this is like <laughs> being the, the nerd defense going too far. But still, uh -huh. what if what if the mud horn's cold-blooded or something? I don't know. I mean, it's been, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say it's presented. Uh, Even the, if it's cold-blooded, you'll still be able to make out the shape. Really? Can you? Is, is that how thermals work? I don't know. Yeah, if you I've have never thermals, used them. you could still like uh, I've, Yeah, you I'm could still sure. like I... tell the difference in like objects. Even if they're like if like if you're in a if you walk into a room with room temperature desk and TV and everything, you could still make out objects. Look at look at this. Yeah, but it's funny how Mola brings up points and then when they prove it incorrect, he says the thing he was wrong about doesn't even matter. What? <laughs> Are you basing this off a frog? <laughs> okay. Uh, like we're, we're fine. I, I didn't know frogs lived in the desert. But if you remember, I like, yeah, said... Frogs are in the desert. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I said, so frogs said, in a desert, question kind of mark? Minor. I did it like a question. Yeah. I didn't say it's impossible for a frog to be in a desert. When did I say that? And I said that it doesn't matter. It's a fucking frog. It's an alien world. Like, <laughs> what, the, what do you mean? Frogs don't matter. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... It. I, I, all species are beautiful. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, of 
But yeah, um, I, I I would just rather kick on, like, because uh, these these things yeah, are just... Yeah, yeah, I think this is a pretty uh, yeah, this, obvious... This one's a small one, I reckon. It's a, yeah, it so doesn't this... make it idiot. It's a small well, one. Well, um, this one, it leads in... to him nearly dying and having to be saved by Baby Yoda. Yeah, but I reckon even if they gave him thermal stuff like that, of course they're going to have him nearly dying because that's what they want in the narrative for a Baby Yoda. Uh, that's that. not a reason, though. I don't. It doesn't excuse it, but the thing is, yeah, that doesn't. I'm not excuse sure it, him thing. nearly dying is a result of stupidity because that's a really tough. I mean, it's. To fight. Well, no, it, it's stupid that he walks into a dark cave knowing he has like thermals and night vision and stuff, and he doesn't use it. He carries around a flashlight. Like that's just that's really yeah, I mean, really stupid. It probably yeah. There was many other. Uh, there was a lot of other easy ways to kill the thing. Did he know what he was getting into? What he was about to fight? Apparently not. I can't. Told he was Hell, told to go but get even if him, anything, that, that just owes to him being doubly. You well, think the Jawas would? Make him would... doubly cautious because he doesn't know. Well, you think the you think they tell him though because they want him to succeed, right? Or, or they want to screw him over and they like watching him. Well, no, no, even if he didn't happen. know, they can't watch he this. They're not. Use it. He travels too far away yeah. from them to watch it. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just oh, look. I'm reaching for. Is the right? Um, I was gonna say I'm happy to just kick on because these are just ruining episode two. So. like this is. And These things are important that... to me to establish if he is legitimately dumb or not. And I'm interested to see, all right, because I actually don't mind a protagonist who's a bit stupid and fails a bit because they, if they have other redeeming qualities that make him good. Um, at the moment, but, I don't well, think he's an this idiot. This isn't yet. like this. He almost dies here because of a very basic mistake. Basic? Yes. He's walking into a dark cave. You have thermals and night vision. Yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to process it, like, because if he knew what like he was getting into, so that this was a big monster, and it almost I gets mean... him killed. Yeah, yeah. Like he has to get saved by Baby Yoda for this. That's the thing. Like, I don't consider this pick because it leads to him basically almost getting killed, and he has yeah. to get saved by Baby Yoda. Like, if um, he was just, if, 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 if it wasn't for the consequences, I would agree it's a nitpick to a degree. Yeah, but this and is I stuff think, that I'm killed. Yeah, and I think my thing about saying it would happen anyway, like it's that's a disingenuous counter. So I think there's more validity to yeah the stupidity of this point. Pro and I actually think it's probably more for this one than the Java one. If I'm really trying to break it down. Um, Next one. <laughs> I I do know what you mean though, and and if I was in your position, I think that uh, I would probably say having it be covered in mud would obscure it. Even then, that's reaching super far, but at least that's something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, there's not much you can do with that, I don't think. Yeah, exactly. And like, my point is, to have people watching, is that my whole role here is, to, am I like the only one willing to defend it? So I'm going to try and play devil's advocate, even on things yeah, that I think are very indefensible. And then after we test any possible defenses, if they are still, if you guys can count it, which I think you did in this mud old one, I'll probably agree with you. And like, I, and I think this no is... One of those times where, yeah, this one's a bit harder to defend. Uh, someone in chat said, but we don't know uh, that Mando has it yet. It doesn't matter because Mando knows he has it. Right. I mean, but well, it could be explained so, if he yeah. legitimately didn't get, have it until the upgrades. So yes. Yeah, but, like, yeah. if that would be really cool. Like, uh, I know Muller and I were talking about this and Fringy as well, where we thought from the beginning, maybe he thought this as well, but he would slowly but surely get his armor and equipment as time went on. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just like, like oh, it's a video yeah, game, you know? Kind of like yeah, a video yeah, game. yeah, yeah. Um, so that would have been cool if he gets night vision and then starts to use it. And Springy said earlier about the pacing is really quick. I think that'd be nifty because a part of a bounty hunter's like his thing is his gear. So having yeah. him earn gear through missions and get it from the fellow Mandalorians yeah. and stuff, and then seeing him that use could it, be I the that, entirety would be really of, uh, yeah. that could be the entirety of season one leading up to him finding Baby Yoda and then making the decision to kill IG-11. And then it's like, oh shit. Like we've seen Mando for a whole season being of single mind. I want to get my armor. I want to get my things. I'm completing my armor set. I'm a really good bounty hunter. And then you see him make an emotional decision. It's like, oh shit. And then you continue from there. This is what I mean. I really would have liked this show to have been just a little bit well a lot different yeah. i guess at this point i didn't i didn't mind the progression of his armor and equipment and stuff that he got the most of the armor it was just really quick the, the... i yeah, i mean it's I, not I like was... a big issue it's but i think that really. it goes it's under it's in i file it under my wasted potential thing and i'm not gonna hold mm. this i can't hold the show yeah. 
like it's not a negative on the show because no. it was something else mm. but i feel like they could have done a lot better with the progression so w would it answer your objection here though if he actually did not have the thermal scanning stuff on his uh in his helmet at that point i'm sorry say that one more time would would uh, would that answer your criticism here if he legitimately didn't have the thermal scanning stuff at that point? I'm if he, pretty if he didn't sure have, yeah. it's on the scope of his rifle as well, isn't it? Yeah, uh, he uses it. Was, it yeah, yeah he, it's it's not it, it. None of it is new equipment that he acquires later. Yeah, it could be retconned, but and because even even say if it was right, the fact that it isn't mentioned in the show is a problem with the writing. I'm not excusing it because the fact that like whenever the audience needs to step outside of what is actually said and shown in the show to explain things to make things work is a problem that's that's not good writing I, yeah this I, is like if he didn't have thermals and if they didn't establish he had all this stuff then i'm i still don't think i still think that he should have done stuff like create a distraction maybe yeah, don't leave baby yoda sitting right outside the cave you know stuff like that stuff yeah. like have a plan so, don't just yeah. go in there with a flashlight you just know? just to but, just to push us on um yes one shot from that rifle would kill that thing and his gun jams because there's mud on it i know it's gonna very be, unlucky uh, that's un that's a, that's unlucky yep um <laughs> uh i think i think most people here cast and audience alike will find it a little tough to believe that that knife kills the thing it's got a pretty thick Yeah, line. I would have liked it to have been longer so it penetrated deeper. You think something that yeah. big, like, uh, yeah. unless you hit, like, something massively vital to drop Which, it. Which, again, would be that. really lucky if that happened. Yeah. It's like, wow, pretty lucky that you hit the one thing that killed it instantly. Yeah, it, it, again, that, that one is a small thing. I admit it's a valid criticism, but, uh, like, yeah, okay. And someone's it. saying, using a rifle in a cave and looking through a scope is stupid. It's like, you could move forward... Use the scope and look around. Also, we know that the scope detaches from the rifle. He uses. Also, yeah, and I can just show you. Move a... forward, you look around. Yeah, the, the, move like, forward, you look around. I'm showing chat the shots now. So obviously, you'd be at the entrance of the cave. He'd use it, and then as he progresses, you can see that this space is like back here. Like so, look look at this shot. I'll even send it to you guys. This is him entering. Back in episode five, I can give the picture of him using thermals. Lots of space to be using it as he approaches. You know. Um, so I like I still think the mud for horn fight is enjoyable because he's struggling, he's getting knocked around, and uh, and even if he's in a dangerous situation arbitrarily and it isn't justified, he is in a dangerous situation which causes suspense, and you know you don't want the hero to die and things. And then there's a twist with the baby Yoda thing, and the the CG was flawlessly done. Um, uh, all the mud and uh, yet some indication of what the armor can take, how much of a hit it bends, but he uh, protects him to some extent. And so I like, even with the flaws, I still think that scene is enjoyable uh, in the fight. Um, I, I see why, but I still think it's, I, I still, I, I couldn't enjoy it because I think, man, he has taken some insane hits. It even hits him in the helmet with its horn as it's charging. I, I think it's wearing a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, like, if someone's wearing a helmet and you get hit with a hammer smacked on the side of the head, like, hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, but this is a heroic show, and, and it's almost <sighs> takes, for, like, an established thing in all shows that the heroes can always take a bit more damage than, and I, I will point it out as being unrealistic, and I do that in my own reviews, yet I happily accept it as also, part of the heroic trope, that they can just take more damage because it's in a fantasy That's just explaining world. why it's bad. No, 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 but, but it... I, it's, if these are supposed to be heroes that can take more damage than the average person, and they can keep fighting and everything, that's just. And, that's and just I, mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Um, is I it plot really, armor or are, or are heroes legitimately tough? I don't. Than the average I don't. Person? Like, I don't there, really, there is an where it goes too far. No, I, I. Yeah, I don't you agree. Think it's that too far. The well, my my yeah. view is um, I think this is a kind of critic. It's not really a crit like when you talk about a video game, it makes sense because you'd be like, well, there's gameplay concessions that you have to make. But, like, in the context of the universe, you know, when you play Uncharted, yeah, you're stronger than the, the villains, but you're not actually, like, you know, like, in the 
in the context of the story that's lunar narrative dissonance yeah that's that's like a meta story. thing that this is the it's a, yeah it's a meta thing it's outside of the universe no no no, no, no but but can... okay, yeah it, it's meta but it's a, actually an established thing in heroic stories that the hero is always I, I, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna agree with you on this i yeah, don't think I, I, don't I, agree. I can't subscribe to this one yeah, yeah. Well, well, I can't, no, you don't get a special it, you don't get a special pass on surviving stuff because you're a protagonist well, hang on. Then you should apply this criticism to nearly every single. Yeah, it's always shit everything. when it happens. But it's, it's okay, so problem, you so yeah. you criticize as much like you know because there are so many hits that so it depends many on the degrees and whether it's a problem survived. or not. It's always a problem. Like, that problems it, in terms of the scale, too. in terms of the scale, the Rhino hitting uh, Mandalorian is on par, but and nowhere near as bad as so many other. Sure, hits and when I brought that take. point up, it wasn't like a, a be all end all of why okay, I didn't cool, like that fight. Cool, okay, it's cool, just right. one aspect of it. It's yeah, one of many. Because I, I, I admit it's unrealistic. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we see it all the time, and uh, and so if we're gonna say this is a, a an episode breaking thing, well, that means so much of pop culture needs to be uh, criticized. Done better. I level. agree. Yes, I think I it should be done better, but yeah, it should be done better. Time, it doesn't get a no, pass. No, at the it. same time, like Jackie Chan fight scenes, the amount of times he gets hit, right? I'm willing to, you know, suspend my um, uh, disbelief that he can survive all these hits for the sake of a longer fight scene, so I can see him doing lots of cool kicks. Happy to do that. Well, sure, I, yeah. I, think, uh, I think every the... fight would be analyzed based on the specifics of that fight. Sure, it depends okay. on the scale of the problem. But well, before well, I forget, well, sorry, before I forget. Okay. Everyone, his thermals are not the scope. He uses in episode five, he uses the thermals to look for the do back after they capture the sniper lady. I thought it was he both. He does not use the scope. He uses uh, his it, thermals well, it, in uh, it might episode be three as well. In episode yeah, three, he, when he's eavesdropping on uh, that's on, the scope, right? Or, or am I wrong? Yeah, he here, I, I like I posted in chat, like that's not him using a scope, that's just him using his visor. My impression was scope. that this it's yeah. kind of like how it's canonized in Halo, where when you scope in. The idea is that the scope is projected against the HUD. Like, as, as in, if Master Chief aims his weapon inside of his helmet, it projects the scope onto his HUD. I assume that was the same for Mando. Yeah, but everyone's saying that the scope thing, it's it's not just... He, he doesn't need the scope to have thermal vision and night vision, okay? See, there's like, this point is done. You can't... If you defend this, you're just... Oh, stop. <laughs> Like I, I get the devil's advocate thing, but come on, guys. There is a point where you gotta be like, mm, it's just we have all the references and everything here. I like the show. shot with the puny knife. He doesn't have thermals yet. Are you fucking the puny knife? Yo, you see it? <laughs> yeah. There's a very little yeah. knife. Again, that, this, this, I, is a, this is a nerd. This would be a nerd um, defense, and I would say it's too too bull to be any level of valid, but. But clearly the vibrations when you stab into someone they're projecting yeah. another meter into the flesh. It's a spe it's a special knife. It's, it's a, a spe spe it's a plus ten to mudhorn damage. <laughs> yeah. Now the thing is that could be valid if they actually showed it, but because there's no indication at all that these knives project a deeper penetrating um, you know stab when they into something, we can only go off the length that it's portrayed, and that's that is that's a very Southpaw just said Iron Man one, Tony gets blasted out of the sky by a tank, plummets to the ground, survives, walks it off like it was nothing yeah that's bad yeah bad okay but, but uh, all again, right this so is what about the what the about Chan comparison? That... no 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 it, like it's good to bring up other examples because there are sometimes i feel that for the sake of uh making something enjoyable in terms of lengthening out a fight scene and having your heroes do remarkable things you can justify certain exceptional, even unbelievable feats because I the heroes can't justify and you the fight scene. Scene. No, I thought that the well, whole like idea. Like fight I... scene. All right, let's go. Yeah, but the I thing is, is I... the talent of writing. Have you seen... Okay, so you feel it can be justified then with with writing. Yeah, each individual, justified. each each individual circumstance yeah, needs for, to be evaluated. For the Iron Man example, it's like we need to knock him out of the sky. It's like, can we hit him with a tank shell? It's like and plummet him into the ground from really high up. It's like, no, that would kill him. We gotta do something else. You, you don't no, then go, yeah, but say... people will enjoy it. It's like, of course, people people no, will no, enjoy Palpatine yeah, returning. That doesn't mean okay, we no, Rick no, in return, on, right? There, there is something. There is something that is uh, something that I, I think people will resort to as an easy way to. Say. He's wearing armor. It's it, it's space armor. Okay, it can protect him. But Tony's armor doesn't work like that. You don't know. No, we do know. In the film, it yeah. falls apart Where? after getting hit by all kinds of different things. Okay. That would be an inconsistent. I yeah, like each individual um, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like we we have scenes to establish what are the limits of what a character can take. 
and we base that off of like, i would agree with you if it was magical armor yeah, or whatever. armor and yeah it's just each individual circumstance can be good or bad and then varying degrees of good and bad it's not something that i'm ready to blanket um i suppose the, put on stuff the problem that i have here is it's it's all this meta thing of oh well they're the protagonist in the world they are not a protagonist they are one person in the world yeah like the protagonist is the meta so in the world they're not remarkable in the sense that beyond beyond what they can actually do themselves they're not are you talking because it's not it's flashing no. sorry oh, no, um, no, no, no. I'm not, <laughs> okay no worries. Just uh, like, yeah like in in the world they're not remarkable in the sense that it the the universe itself recognizes that they're special no, no, if on. you know what i mean no no they are remarkable mandalorian is no no, no what, I, what i meant is, what i it, meant it, no it, what it, i it meant sorry uh, let me clarify what i meant was they're not remarkable beyond things that they themselves can do what i mean is that the universe is not like mandalorian he's the protagonist of this story so he can do these things he's going to be okay <laughs> it would only be mandalorian can do the things that he can do because he learns how to or he's predisposed to it, or something like that. The the fact that they're the hero or the villain shouldn't be relevant. No, 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 because I, I, I think absolutely, because they become the hero usually by ability, competence, that they're stronger, tougher than the other people. Sorry, no, I, I guess surviving like, is... things that you shouldn't be able to survive isn't isn't like competence. It's I, no, just... no, I, like because I fully agree that there comes a level where it goes too far. Don't get so. I'm not saying that he should be invincible in any measure. But I'm saying that in this context here, he's got the armor. He's a tough, you know, Mandalorian with all his years training and stuff like that. All right, I'm fine. He survived it. It's not. So a I'm starting to get actually like I'm reading the chat now, and I'm just like, so what I'm trying to explain is that the idea of they're the protagonist of the story, so it makes se it's acceptable that they can do certain things. When I say that the universe doesn't recognize that they're the protagonist, what I mean is that there is nothing in the story. That is, this person is the main character of a narrative that is happening, and that is the reason why they are able to do things. The whole idea is that anything that they can do is justified in the universe itself, within the story, not from outside the story, not from the POV of they're the main character, they're the protagonist, they're the hero, or something like that. I feel like this is clear, but maybe it's not. Am I, well, no, I, 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 I not? Think the I think the disconnect is that when you're trying to say the universe can't acknowledge it, it's contradicted by the fact that the universe is literally created for this hero's journey. And so that's an open admission. That yeah, the universe is the created universe is by the writer. And the so writer it's, like, but... it's, it's like a chicken and egg argument that's hard to try and delineate. Well, not, what well, what, no, what I, what I mean is like the idea is that when you're partaking in a story you're not meant to be thinking this was written by somebody this was fabricated it's kind of like uh tolkien's yeah, the whole quote point on is the that second you world think these are actors no, no. on a set yeah you want to but there's a thing you want to fool the audience that that's not it like the thing is all stories are contrived no matter what but the goal of good writing is to make it appear that it's not that's the yeah point. but giving um, giving protagonists special privileges does the opposite it makes yeah, me... it's, 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 no, 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 uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. They're always going to have special privileges. No, no. What do you mean by that? Like what that's, 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 that's not true. Entire, no, no. The true. entire plot is structured around their journey, their story, and so no, the plot is entirely arbitrary. Okay, maybe I went too far when I said special privileges, but what I'm saying is that the plot is always constructed around that character, and your goal is to try and make it seem like this is a natural story following. And the more realistic you make it. The more believable you can. Yeah, that means not giving people special abilities and survivability no, 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 no. and contrivances See, no, this is different and armor because, because heroes don't. Mandalorian has those things by default for the nature of the right, story. Right, but, but the, the, the story. thing is, um, he has no, he has abilities. those things. He should have those things because of training, equipment, yeah, 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 yeah. armor, is, not because yeah, he's the protagonist. Yeah, no, well, no, it's both because um, no, it the, shouldn't the purpose be of both. This. The no, protagonist no, because... part shouldn't even factor into it at all. What do you mean? Of course it well, can't. The, the, what if what you want to give it, no, 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 no. I didn't say it can't. I didn't say it can't. Okay. It clearly okay. does. That's what my problem is. Well, that's what, sorry. I think we're agreeing then. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. He All shouldn't right. have. You don't get special plot armor and everything. You don't get special this, that, and the other thing because you are the protagonist. Well, no, you no, get I it agree. Because of things that are explained right. in this the universe. The dis I think. I think the one of the main reasons you give characters special things that should be justified with background and training is because they're the protagonist and uh, and trying to deny that. Well, I, I think, know, what I, I, think I think I think it's better to yeah, think about it. The, 
but, th- but, th- but but the reason why they justified Mandalorian's additional abilities with his training and background and everything is because of the protagonist. I think that's self-evident. I don't like this. In many think, instances, um, not in all supported. instances, but in many instances, you do want your protagonist to be special or more capable. I think it's viewing. I think you're doing it from the opposite that in the narrative. Yeah, I, I, I think, agree I, completely. I agree completely. Yes, I think and not not because they're the protagonist. Right. If someone, if you're going to follow the story, they of somebody, are the protagonist then, because yes. they have these things. It's the other yes. way around. You're yeah, starting. Yeah. It's, well, it's, again, it, I, I think chicken this. and egg argument in this instance. I don't think it's the chicken or. and egg because the the idea is um like I e it's the same for your catalyst for the story. You know where you have a big coincidence that happens and then it thrusts them on the adventure. You could look at it from the perspective of wow, it's quite interesting that the protagonist uh, happened to stumble into this coincidence that kicked off the story. But it's more from the other way around of the reason why we are focusing on this character is because this remarkable thing happened to them that kicked off the story. I don't think it's and, the chicken and the egg. I think it's the, the idea is that you've selected that this is the protagonist and this is the things that they ha- like. The reason why you pick them as the uh, POV character for the story is because in the context um, of the world that they live in, they have on, these abilities. No, no, no. no you, you don't in pick chat- a protagonist generally in writing. You create one and then you well, create... Yeah, I know you there. create them, but what I mean is that if you're viewing it externally and you're viewing it in the sense that if this were a real scenario, this character who exists was picked by the, you know, the the sort of, uh, I guess, the omniscient creator of the story because it works well, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, they're yeah. created, but yeah, that, it's that's meant to the be illusion from the context that, yeah, that they're not yeah. created. Yeah, I know, but that's the illusion that the, the whole narrative is trying to create. But, right, we but are what I mean to, is... We're getting caught in minutiae, because I, I guess bringing it back to the thing... Look, I agree it's a stretch, but it, it's not It's not a, an episode-breaking thing, and I well, enjoyed the fight scene because he did struggle, he got beaten up a bit, he survived, and he needed help. Yeah, and it's, it's, like, yeah it's, good. it's definitely not the biggest problem, but, like, I guess to, to put a cap on it, like if your reason for something happening is because because they are the protagonist, like you're gonna have to do better than that. Like yeah, there needs to be in yeah. yeah, there needs to be yeah, in I agree. Yeah. Um yeah, and the and the in world justification yeah. is his armor, that the armor protected yes. him. And there needs could to the be, armor yeah. truly protect him in real life? Probably Dunno, not, but, but space it's armor. It's not a huge deal to me. Yeah, it's exactly. one thing if any, but I get it. Yeah. So yeah, I cool. I do get that much. Um and I would like to point out in chat someone said MCU rags, think about Hawkeye and Black Widow and what they somehow survive. Yeah, those yeah, are issues. That's, that's a problem. So, yeah, yeah, that's a problem. So again, this is when we cover videos in EFAP, the whole what aboutism. When we talk about, oh yeah, well, in something else, you have to have a problem with something else. I probably do, right? So to say that of all the things that I'm saying, and then bring up Hawkeye and Black Widow and what they survive is like, yeah, those can those can both be problems. We're talking about this though. Also, I'm not. It gives so. people like, why aren't I talking? It's like, I mean, there's nothing for me to add. The, the argument was being had. I didn't need to add anything. I was happy to listen. <laughs> like, don't worry, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm right. just like EFAP chat. I listen. It is um, Rags literally the stupidest some... human being on earth. What have I said that's stupid? I, I guess I'd legit like to know what, what have you said, said that's stupid? smart, Rags? <laughs> The, oh, yeah, clearly. I guess the thing is, right, the whole Ludo narrative dissonance when we talk about video games, the whole idea of when you play Uncharted and you can take down a hundred dudes, but in a cutscene, two guys have guns on you and you just surrender. It's like, it's one of those things where you just have to go, well, it's a video game. But I think, I think you can apply I think games to video good. games. Yeah. yeah, I don't judge video games in the same way because no, they have I don't either because the, interactive elements they have to be game. interactive and if the interactive and if the challenge in part of it is you have to fight a hundred dude but then you have some games where the main character is totally vulnerable and then it's a different thing but yeah, yeah I don't then think, the gameplay is can... generally based around that but yeah, if, I, if we I, didn't have that in video games you would have to be as good as a Navy SEAL to actually play Call of Duty in a way right, exactly. which is just not a feasible thing to do for you know the, these games for being interactive so i hope that explains it but uh yeah yeah and so an yeah topic. Uh, i guess episode two i enjoyed it yeah uh it's one of the better ones i'd say it's certainly one of the better ones and it's funny someone else in chat pointed out uh you guys are ignoring the larger issue here how does this creature exist at this size with no foliage in a desert planet like yeah, I did. Yeah, I think I mentioned that. Yeah. The only excuse they've got is yeah. it's an alien thing. Who knows how it lives? So it's like, okay, <laughs> it's called a yeah. mud horn. It eats mud, all right, and it can you know get nutrients from it, it breaks it down. All right. yep. Okay, and, and uh, that's its food, and it supports so, larger life forms. Uh, somebody, somebody like, the big question I have: Why the hell does the egg have fur? 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's weird. That must be going coming out. Of I mean, it, if, unless it's anything significant for episode two, we've got to push on. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I, 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 I want to. Right yes, I want people to be aware. Times another e we I have issues with Black and Hawk. Yeah, yeah. I want people to be aware. The issues in four compared to one, two, or three are staggering. We really need to get there. Yeah, yeah we thought yeah. we'd blow um, through these. Fucking hell. <laughs> I guess because this is the thing. I think a lot of the things in the, you know, especially early episodes and uh, maybe even some of the other ones can be defended or aren't as big. And when put in, uh, I guess, comparison weight to the really bad stuff, I generally find that the good stuff outweighs it overall and it's still mostly good. Um, it's, it's fun. It's enjoyable. Um, well, not to excuse the bad when it's there. That's what I've said all from the beginning. Yeah. And some of the bad can get really bad. But like I think the the first three episodes, especially with the level of discussion we were able to go into, means that I I think uh, the decent amount when it is good is uh, you can uh, the bad parts are not nearly as bad and easily overlooked. And it, uh, yeah, so. Uh, is there anything else for episode so, two? I don't think no. so. No. Um. Uh, did did we have a problem with them being able to fix the ship? Because I was willing to buy it. They fixed it yeah. very quickly. Come yeah, no, I no, think no, it's no. really it quick. A, it, but... was a, it was a montage that, and we don't know how long, essentially. Well, it all happened. It all was at night time until they were done, and it was day. So it's it's a, if it was over the course I of the never. Week, yeah, I didn't assume it was a single night. Yeah, it's not. It's not a big deal. I was just it's wondering if anyone deal, had no. an issue with it. I'm fine with it because mm -hmm. fine. Sure, Quill's amazing. I'm fine to buy that. Yeah. So, uh, episode three. so yeah, I guess uh, as a reference to what we were talking about earlier, just walking through the town with the bounty that everybody's currently chasing and apparently will apparently betray each other for, it's just like, they risk you there, yeah, man. Yeah, because he's already been betrayed. Uh, and, and le unless there is that stronger rule that once you're in the location where the guild is, no guns out. It would I certainly think. be harder for people to get away with it that close to guild HQ. Yep. Uh, Yeah. But still, I would really be on my toes either. It's just, to me, it's a bit risky because of that is an extremely valuable bounty. And uh, he doesn't even have the um, the cover on, which I find, I'm just like, oh, man, don't, careful, man. Like, well, hang yeah. on, hang on. How do they, well, they would only know it's a bounty if they're actively using the fobs to track. Um, yeah, but everybody, 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 you could every assume single... that, yeah, you could assume most of the bounty hunters uh, are they trying to find them. They all have off, them. Are off planet, they all are have off planet looking for them. Well, that's the thing. If fobs have the range limit, no, they're there they're because it walks in the bar and they're all there. Uh, well, they all look Every... at him. And yeah, they, they know that that's the bounty. Yeah, the yeah, yeah Carl so... explicitly says, "I gave them to all," and he looks at everybody and says it out loud. So Everybody can okay, hear so yeah, all they would of have them. The fobs there. You're right. Yeah, yeah. The and then at the, right the end, when he gets, uh, when he captures it back, the fobs reactivate, and everybody starts going on. Yeah, good point. Um, well, so, sorry, I'm I'm gonna directly. Someone in the chat keeps saying that Rags and I hate this show and are trying to make <laughs> everybody hated, and that we came <laughs> into it wanting to hate it, and that that's our goal. Can you just no? Like, do you not remember yeah, us defending the show? We, we literally said at the beginning that we really liked the first few episodes when we watched them, and we were on this show's side. So just, can you, like... <laughs> I thought I made a PSA. No ascribing motivations. Don't do it. Like, why do you, like, we don't hate it and look for reasons. We see the reasons, and that's why we hate it. At least give us the benefit of the doubt that we're not trying to pull the wool over your We eyes. went back to watch episodes one and two because we thought they were the good ones, and we wanted to affirm that, but it just didn't happen. Like, yeah, like we rewatched all of this stuff. I mean, they're still, on, they're still though. the better I would, ones. I would call episode one and two good. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I think we argued I, it through, and I, think I wouldn't, call them but good. they're the best. I think I'd call episode one good. Just like yeah, tittering on the. In good. actual fact, I would consider them really good when you when I look at it broadly with uh, the especially production values and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty we, good. We gotta Very keep good. going. We gotta keep going. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going, go, 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 go. Um, the, the for for being very, very covert, the troopers don't seem to mind walking outside of their hidey hole. Um, I don't know what to think of that yeah, myself. Yeah, they just walk out and yeah, they just walk right out into the street with their armor. They don't have anybody to check who's not wearing armor. Seems like a really dumb thing to do. I don't know if that's risky or not. I was just like, yeah. Eh. Yeah, unless unless there was something that they're worried about and then it's passed and then they never like, oh, fine. But you'd that. still yeah. think if, if you mean, wanted it, to send someone to not check, they wouldn't be wearing stormtrooper yeah. armor. It's not explained, but at the same time, it doesn't really doesn't need to be because it's so small. Like it's just okay, they're out in the open now. Well, they're they're trying to hide, but they do something that actively contradicts. 
Well, okay. Not a big point. Where, where, is, is, it, where is it established that they are trying to hide apart from staying inside? Why wouldn't I they be just... trying to hide? Aren't they? They're, yeah. They're, no, no, no. I the think galaxy hates the galaxy. Again, hates if we're going to say they're at odds with the guild. Well, it's still an assumption. I mean, this, if this is a secluded planet that they could then, and so that they were inside for some reason, which isn't defined, and then they're outside for another reason. And so again, it's like because, like, you could explain a reason as to that that they are hiding for whatever reason but that's the same as me trying to make up a defense for something that isn't explained in world that and so it goes both ways i guess i think it makes sense in I a mean, more yeah. obvious contextual way that they would be trying to hide because yeah. we, this is this is different to trying to like sort of look at expanded universe because this is like the main saga stuff you know the idea that this is the 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 empire's ended. They were underground. They're on some different planet. I guess you'd think that they would be a little bit more. It's not too big a deal, but it's yeah. It's not a. a it's not like more. a big deal, but I would be like, eh, I would be certainly hiding. I would be want to keep and be keeping a low profile. Mm -hmm. Like notice they don't even they don't even tell. For instance, they don't even tell Carl Weathers that they are imperial. For him to tell people, they discover it face to face when they go to the their Imperial HQ. Someone asked, they don't they control as, that it's not an Imperial contract, it's listed as a, uh, like a private client thing. I, Somebody, I thought uh, Carl knew they were Imperials and he just didn't tell Mando. He did, yeah, Carl knew, yeah, okay, but he didn't tell people who were given the contracts that they had to go there personally. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just telling people, but again, it's a little thing, I think it's unusual, not a big deal. We can move okay. on. Uh, yeah, he says that uh, the reason he'd, he'd given out the um, the bounty to so many people was because he had to ensure its delivery. I just find that interesting. It's like it's a bit risky because you're sending so many people who are unaware of each other after it. That um. Yeah, I would agree with that one. I would think uh, you would actually get a, a, a big group meeting, getting this target by hiring the one best bounty hunter at a higher chance, and then. By hiring additional people, you're just sending people to get in his way, really. Or you have like a big happen. group meeting, a big group meeting where you're like, "Hey guys, so you're all going for this bounty? Just you know, keep an eye out for each other, okay? Don't kill each other, all right?" And, uh, I and gotta just check because... really quickly. Uh, someone said, "I really hope they show the scene where the uh, thermals uh, are clearly only his scope that is thermal." No, that is wrong. Season one, episode five, in the dark. I can give you a time. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did bring this up before. <laughs> I have the fucking screen caps in our chat of it. You're wrong if you think that only the scope has thermals. Get over it. Post I've got my receipts. We need the nail in the coffin. Post a screenshot. 20, 20. I, I have. They're I in the chat right now. I won't believe you rags until I see it with my They're own right eyes. There. It's, it. a, it's right there. You're it's lying. Like 21 minutes You're lying. Seven. He sees the zoo back. The zoo bat? He doesn't even have his rifle with him in this scene. And he's not using the scope either. Um. So stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> he says that uh, Mandalorians are rarer than Beskar itself, which is interesting to, to sort of consider alongside the position of the Mandalorians in this place. Just just a casual thought uh, in relation to how how well, secretive they need to be. Um, and for me, it added to the idea that Mandalorians would be very protective of their own numbers. One of them in, this, in the third episode here even comments on how we used to be numerous. Now we're hiding. There's not that many of us, you know. So it would give the idea that they would be really want to protect their numbers because there's not many of them. Carrying um, on. Yep. Do, do, do. Okay. Oh yeah, these are the things we brought up before about uh, the Mandalorians themselves. Um, it's weird that when he gets into a fight with the Mandalorian, he keeps like stabbing at the armor, like slashing his armor. It. Yeah, he takes his knife and slashes across the chest plate. Unusual. Maybe they weren't trying to kill each other. Maybe, Maybe they were just they trying were just to spook each other. Just, yeah. Like, uh, for instance, Hema, when you spar, you spar in protective gear and landing a hit is uh, is a victory. And so if they don't want to kill each other, but showing that I can actually still tag you means it's a one-up. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. That makes sense because there's not many of them. They probably don't actually want to kill each other. He clearly slashes with a knife. And I'm going to be honest, Shad, it fucking bugs the shit out of me how in video games and movies, daggers are used to slash. <laughs> fucking bugs me but yeah, yeah this is just I, I, yeah that makes a lot of sense to me that's fair enough um 
Um, let me see what I have for episode three. Oh, all, he doesn't lock his ship when he comes back again. Um, what in episode three is? It, when is it? All, yeah, because Carl Weathers gets onto it. He's on. He's on board. Yeah. Um, um, does Carl know how to pick a lock? I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. you'd still like, think that you, it, I, I just, like, you would assume you just that it would be it? secured and locked, and it would, and that he just was able to hack in or break the door lock or something. Maybe, you know? but he specifically tells Quill to like initiate lockdown mode. Uh, yeah, and, that's an, that's uh, obviously an additional yeah, defense apart from just yeah, but like always do that. Always. Yeah, always. No, well, hang on, hang on. No, because you would only do that if everyone's a hostile and therefore anyone approaching it was going to get shot. What if a kid approached it? You wouldn't want that on like, Well, it would just lock where... down. You couldn't well, yeah, get in. Well, well, it possibly could have been. We don't know. And that, you know, well, yeah, you want, to, you want to lock it down so no one did gets he have in. A, did he have a droid that can hack in? Because droids can always open doors. Oh, he, he, he owns the ship. He, he can unlock it. Yeah, no, I'm talking about... Hang on. Carl, when he... Well, I'm, I'm talking about an episode. We might be talking about two different things. Um, oh, in episode seven, he specifically tells Quill to get into the ship and like lock it up, like super tight defensive mode, right? Yeah. Like that should be the default thing. Well, no, because that I thought that the super defensive mode implied that it's going to shoot anyone who approaches. With what? It has, it has guns on the ship. Well, yeah, but they only point forwards. Well, uh, yeah, do they have... Like, how is it going to shoot someone... How's, how's, how's the ship going to shoot itself? Yeah. Or, like, people below well, it trying I mean, to walk it? It's funny, right? I, like, I was kind of... When I, when, I, when I heard full defensive mode, I was kind of thinking, and this isn't shown, so I have no validity in saying this is what would have happened, right? Is that also someone... a, a gun turret would have popped up that rotated because spaceships uh, seem to always have hidden guns everywhere. We see it on the Millennium Falcon where we don't uh, see it suddenly on the ship. a gun just pops down from the other thing and then points at people and fires at and stuff like that. Yeah, but that would be really useful to keep Carl Weathers off the ship later this episode, but he doesn't do it. But yeah, that would have prevented because, him from sinking uh, under the ship if he had Yeah, I, I know, thing. I know, right? But yeah. um, Mandalorian, he... Uh, and we're like... How aware was he that that was going to happen when he landed the ship? That should be the default. Go back to it? That's what I'm saying. Well, no, no, like, when he landed, the stuff is on no, no, the no, ship. no, no, because if you have automatic fire on thing, and these uh, there are families and kids in this um settlement, what, I don't know where this automatic do that. fire is coming from. Well, that's the thing. Like, I like again, we, I don't have any justification that... for it, but I, I guess we'll have to find it. But I yeah, would almost the idea expect that there is that a, a hidden turret, a, a hidden automatic turret that pops out of the ship to fire on people. Yeah. A, in a really assumption that's based on nothing. It, you're absolutely but, right. I completely yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. Except um, that we have seen it in Star Wars before on the Millennium Falcon. And someone said you need to be in the ship for full lockdown. If that is the case, then fair enough. Yeah. So, and just just on my point, we have seen it before though. The Millennium Falcon does it, and a gun pops out and shoots at people. And so yeah, but I uh, yeah, but like, that's the Millennium Falcon. And we well, know it has turrets. I know it's a stretch, but yeah. Like, so well, I, like, I will say this. All though. right, here's my question. What would full lockdown do over just having it locked? I don't like, know. Um, I'm wait, not so sure. you would concede that, has... that he should have it locked then? Yeah, so th that's my real point here is the point I'm trying to make is he should have it like locked always. Like when you leave your ship, you lock it so people can't just walk in. Well, that's the, I thought that would be the default, and full lockdown would be something that obviously has some measure of additional defense. Something else, that, like maybe it seems, only responds that to, to a manual. That seemed to me that it was just implied by what full lockdown meant. And we've never seen it. And so, because we're not shown what full lockdown is and what it's capable of doing to repel people trying to get on board it, all we can assume is that it must be something better than just having the ship locked. Sure. sure. I, I can assume, yeah, like there's a difference, but I'm not ready to jump to. The difference is a turret, a hidden turret that pops up and shoots. Well, well I, I kind of assume that just because that's what we've seen in Star Wars previously. But if not, it obviously has to be something. Um, yeah. Uh, point is, the point is here. Lock your doors. <laughs> well, well, my po because... my point, my counterpoint is always been getting that. You, I assume that it was locked. Uh, not people just walk on board. Like well, Carl just walks that, on. That's it... that's one instance, and he could have hacked on because droids can open locks. Yeah, but that's still so going with a... stuff that there's no scene to support. I know, I know, but it's also yeah. implied and shown many times that you can. I don't know if it's implied that he hacks to get in. As far as I know, he just walks up to it and opens it. Yeah, Mando's well, not like does. Mando's not surprised if, if it was that it's like is, left is... open. I agree, but I just can't remember it being left In open. Fact, let me go to episode one here and see if he has to do something to unlock. <laughs> I just yeah. sort of just said, "Please moderate." What do you want me to do? Shut up, both of you. 
Like, no, they, they've got something to talk about. They can talk about it. Yeah, I just think it's lock, lock your ship. Use a padlock if you gotta. <laughs> um, we, we moving or are we not? Yeah, yeah all right. All right. Yeah. Um, I think it's a tad risky of him to advertise his Beskar armor as he does in the cantina. I understand that it's uh, obviously a deterrent to try and shoot at him because it's Beskar armor. But at the same time, it's like wearing a golden suit or something of a yeah. very valuable set piece. And I'm just like, careful. Yeah, but, but, but would he ever not wear it? And I mean, yeah, it, he's kind of... he's kind of it are different things. You could probably it's, cover it's some of it with some cloak like, or poncho. I don't know. I, I think part of the thing about whole Mandalorian is presenting that I'm a Mandalorian. It's almost as if part of their religion that... They, like, they, they, I mean, I'm willing to accept that. I just, if I was a friend of his, I'd be like, dude, be careful, maybe. I don't know. You know you don't yeah, wanna... and I would have been good to have a line or something like that, and then he's just like, no, this is my <laughs> honor, or something like that, and shut up, I'm wearing it. I was like, oh, okay then. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, funny, I have, uh, I have something maybe, like that. It, yeah, but... I have something like that in my book where the main character, he has a sword that belonged to his, well, when he was, you know, like an emperor, an evil emperor, and it's imperious. It's this famous in, indestructible sword that everyone recognizes and is told, like, it's, there's actually a conversation in the book saying, you're not going to just walk around with that, are you? Everyone's going to recognize it. And so, anyway, and I'm, yeah. And there does, and, and this isn't, this is just me thinking, right? At what point does a culture's culture, mm -hmm. Uh, become so counterproductive and potentially self-destructive that you ditch it. Or oh, cultural ties are very like I I, I know that yeah, like, but I'm just I I'm curious at what to the point... point of that culture's extinction. If we're looking at history, I'd say. Yeah, but still, I mean, at, at what point are you like, yeah, maybe this part, you know? Because like Django Fett, he could take off his helmet without a problem. So. I, I, there's probably, I'm, and I'm not discounting any reason why in lore so, so, hang on. And stuff. You know, Django so, wasn't a Mandalorian. He was just right oh, I had, oh, I had no idea. Yeah, he, he was not. He stole it. He, he was not. Oh, was well, not fair a enough. Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Fair enough then. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I'm mostly okay with it. It's just, uh, just something to think yeah. about. I was like, be careful. It was just, it was just amusing of mine, right? Because later yeah, on, I, we I, see in later I agree. Episodes, I, I think it would be it would add more consistency to what this is implied by having people trying to jump him just to steal the armor because he is wearing gold essentially like more better. Yeah, um, um, it, it's I think it's really interesting because you have the whole don't take your helmet off thing and you can't do this and can't do that and you have to do this and only one person up at a time and they're clearly struggling and a lot of people there's a lot of unrest clearly. I'm just like I'm wondering at what point would it take for Mandalorians to be like yeah maybe we could adjust this maybe we could change this. And everyone's like, "Ooh, Islam is like okay." I guess there are no examples to a culture changing to fit anything. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I, I, well, so I, I get you. Like, I know. I know what happens. I know some. I know cultures are obviously very deeply ingrained. I acknowledge that. Just amusing, just a thought, you know. In chat, you got uh, in uh, in the old EU, uh, Django and Boba were both Mandalorians in the EU, and then soon after, you got a uh, Django wasn't even a Mando in the EU. Is like, really? I guess, so I guess true. chat disagrees Somebody's with itself. Wrong. Somebody's my, wrong. My, all right, my resource is when I did my video on Mandalorian, I looked up the Mandalorian armor to find out what it was made out of stuff, and it was listed several times on Wikipedia that Django and Boba were not Mandalorians. And that's yeah, that's fine good. with me. I, it, I, well, I, I, here, if, Rebels, if they aren't Mandalorians, almost. that's fair enough. If they are, something did change, which I'm, I'm ready to accept both. I'm just bringing it up as a thought. Um, I like. It could have been retconned. It could have been that they were Mandalorians at at one point, and then it got retconned. Disney retconning was... lore. Who would have thought about that? I liked that he got reminded of Baby Yoda by going to pull the lever. I yeah. that was yes, good. I like that. The little knob on the yeah, I do right. like that. I think. Yeah, well, see, for good. me, this episode was almost made by the kind of um, uh, heroic arc of him saying, "No, I'm going to save this little guy's life," and. Uh, and that, that that was great, and and it was uh, portrayed that the moment of decision was executed really well for me, and uh, and so I really liked this episode as well. Um, and even if it was like for a small, well, it's not a small reason. It's the whole you know theme of the episode, and uh, and you're like, yeah, cool, you know, go save him. Um, of all the things, I you will could... say, go ahead. I mean, I think your thing is probably going to be more relevant. I'm moving on. I was going to say, in that aspect, I think it is, like, I, and I think this is uh, going back to what Fringy said earlier about having them, it feels rushed. 
uh, as I said be- in the beginning, I'm fine with the idea of him like becoming like a father figure or a savior to baby Yoda. I do feel with only eight episodes and some of them having nothing to do with the plot or advancing it in any way, they kind of rush that a bit. Yep. Um, I really wish we got more development on that. I really wish Same we got here. more justification but, for why did he choose Baby Yoda when it turns out that his actions there got all of the Mandalorians killed and caused all this all these problems. A lot of and, them. Hey, hang on, yeah. hang on. Are you sure? Because I thought I was thoroughly justified when you find out that he was essentially the same as Baby Yoda. He was a uh, yeah, but the thing is, the same. I know, and, and he has a I, soft I spot to, to foundlings. Yeah, like, I thought I, that was. I understand why he did, but I think they should have taken they should have taken more time building it up. Show uh, us what it was showing... like before, you know? Like don't you know, it'd be worth it'll make it more interesting to have all this time where he's really hardened and really cold like he was in the first half of like he was in episode one when I really liked him. And then uh and then build up to it. And then over time we the mystery unravels and it becomes more apparent why he made that decision. Because if we hadn't yes. seen any of the flashbacks, it would have been and it was the end of season one, everybody would have been like, Wow, holy shit. Like this is not something they would have expected. You know and what I mean? That's like they all didn't die, is like, okay, the survivor the survivor yeah. says some may have escaped. Oh no, 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 hang yeah, on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Specific. There was no guarantee that they would have died at all. He had no indication that this action was going to cause the death. So yeah, he, he that, had to yeah, know he, that it was... he actually. No, yeah, he it said was you got him. Like, you have to move now, and his assumption was that they were going to move and be fine. And then they just didn't. So, so move. Like, I know that that's a so plot hole that they didn't move. But, but... from this is shifting a problem from one person to another. Yeah, yeah. Well, it should because if the main character is so crucial to the story, you should you know figure out what but is he, legitimately he his fault or not. This would put him at odds with the guild, which would really hurt the reputation of the Mandalorians, which would specifically give the Empire and the more reason to hunt Mandalorians, which I think is interesting because while they used to, it's clear that I forget his name, Hurt Ver, Werner Werner Herzog Herzog I forget the name. He clearly had some level of connection. He, like he wanted to see the Mandalorians succeed in a way. But that's gone now, essentially, no, see, because of like, this betrayal. No, hang on. Like, it causes was, a lot of problems by doing it, this. For, it does. It does. I was again. half expecting that the other Mandalorians were going to ex- exile him or hunt him down. For, that's what I thought. Uh, cause, yeah. uh, but that's, that's the thing. From his perspective, that could have been a legitimate outcome. And it just goes that it was even a greater risk and even more noble of him to risk so much to save this little guy's life. Because well, he's risking it's, his own... Um, uh, you know, exile from his religion and people. And then, luckily for him, and I don't think this is a stretch that it was convenient that that the Mandalorians showed, no, we're loyal to our own, we're going to protect you. And then, um, uh, as a result, we need a move, we'll be fine. And so it wasn't him, like, saying, screw you to his own race with the intention that now you're going to die. No, I I, I think um, it was perfectly justified from his Yeah, and one of the reasons why they should have spent more time is because he has to weigh the people who saved his life, who took him in, who trained him, his ray, who raised him, his family, essentially, over a creature that he just met. Yeah, like, that could be a really cool thing. I get why he did, but I think they really needed to push just the, like, why why he weighed one better than the other. Well, for me, it was perfectly fine. I, I, I found the indecision conveyed subtly but powerfully with uh, just his body language and the callback to, you know, um, uh, the little knob thing. And then it was fully justified when we find out that he was basically the same. Um, and so, it's just, I feel like it's just not potent enough. I feel like all you needed to do was yeah, take longer with it like and give me, them more, and it would have been more potent. Like it, I, I feel you couldn't criticize it as an objective fault. This would be a subjective thing, and for me, it was fine. Yeah, I don't think it's objective, but I, I definitely... I think they could have done yeah, it better, though. I do yeah, think, I think that the they alternative done a whole lot better. better. Yeah, I think the alternative is better. Yeah. I would have been happy to have maybe one or two or many scenes of just him and Baby Yoda hanging out. Yeah, exactly. Maybe like you, you should just prolong the amount of time. I don't know. Spent. Like you, you're, I'm not saying it wouldn't improve it, but I think the fact that Baby Yoda legitimately saved his life was enough for him to be justified in what he did. And oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, a little more flesh is all I'm after. That's all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and, so, and, and like, I get like the stuff chat saying, like, I get that he sees the foundling thing in Yoda. Like, I get it. I, I really get it. We all get this it. Yes. In that concept that we have a problem with. And as like, I see like Mando's protect their own is like, sure. But to the point, like, at what point do you say, nah, we got to you know, cut you This loose. is going to yeah. ruin everything for everybody. Yeah. I wasn't, stop you know, personally, I'm not a fan guy. of how they protected him despite him like majorly breaking rules. Like, what he well, did? Hang on, hang on. He didn't, hey, guys. He didn't break Mandalorian rules. He no, I didn't say that. Rules. In actual fact, it seemed like he was obeying the Mandalorian creed because it's already established that Mandalorians protect younglings, like wait, you know, foundlings. So, and surely that causes that them problems younglings. a lot in the bounty hunting business. It probably does then. Um, but like, how often would bounties come up for babies? So I wouldn't say. Uh, all well, the I mean, time. children, right? Foundlings are children. So how well, often the, do bounties come up well, for children? Like, probably in the Star enough. Wars context, and I think you could even expand this to the expanded universe. I think this is the first one ever portrayed in Star Wars, and so maybe there is a rule that bounties are not done on children. I don't know, because this is fifty years old. So it's why like, did he ever take little, it? Oh, it's, it's a yeah. way to get around the rule that this isn't a child; it's fifty years old. But in actual fact, it is because the species. Yeah, my thing is that. When does, like, will you go, like, is the life of Mando worth all of the stress and the trouble and the danger that comes along to everybody else to protect him? Like, I'm, I'm curious how far well, see, they will no, it, it's actually to protect baby Yoda. And honestly, it makes me like the Mandalorian Creed even more that they would risk the lives of their entire clan to save one child. That, that's like, that's awesome. You guys are boss. I, I think yeah, they're cool. really boss. Yeah. yeah. Um, my yeah. The the if we were to reach a core issue, it's just they were really uh crazy to have not have left as soon as possible, and I don't believe they would have lost to an yeah, army of stormtroopers. Like even a hundred stormtroopers, I feel like they would have annihilated them. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. The the, the true criticism uh, that it happens after this is that they don't leave and then they get wiped out and they're so tough and it's like what what. How did that happen? Come on. Um, what I was going to say, next up is uh, Mando is just doing doing a little detective work, spying, and um, he manages to catch, extract the necessary material and be done with it. Hurry, I can't guarantee your safety. Basically, he catches a line that's explicit about Yoda is, is going to be killed soon. Like, of all yeah, the things he could have heard, which would be including and not limited to toilet sounds or people just breathing, or just nothing. Do you remember, uh, Mola, do you remember that episode of Community where they're, they're telling Halloween stories and then Abed says, you know, like, he turns oh, on the radio. Oh, I was thinking of that exact yeah, thing! He, he turns yeah. on the radio and they're listening to music for a while. It's like, well, they're not going to turn it on exactly when the important <laughs> update is. And then, and then I skip the update and it's like, According to the update we just heard, but not just just heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love community, and you're absolutely yeah. right. I, I love that. Yeah. And you're right. Like, if I was, say, writing this, I would have had to have had, I would have written a little bit more meat on He was it. there, yeah. standing I don't for think a while, you need it. doing reconnaissance. Yeah. You don't need so, it. Yeah, that's, it's he's, an easy fix. But... He's already interested in saving Baby Yoda, and he already knows that they're going to do something to him that's not good. Like, he doesn't need this motive. Like, he doesn't need to hear them say, Meh -heh, we're going to kill Baby Yoda. Meh -heh. It's just like, no, just go get him. I know We all know you want to get and him. He can see people through walls. I'm curious. Uh, there's a lot of things I could have done to fix what is very clearly a super contrivance. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's it's obviously contrivance. I would I would class something as super contrivance if it was crucial to the plot for, to progress forward. And this isn't. This is just a thing. I guess um, it confirms something he already did. So, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. I mean, it just the going by odds, it is like whew, super lucky. Yeah, it's just unlikely. Yep. That's all. Um, yep. what else we got? Let's see. What do we got? So I've when got he's um, blasting through. I mean, there was the classic stormtroopers missing, and like even for me, that's the stormtrooper was so close that they still missed. And then of course it hits the armor as well. But yeah, then he, he, he does of... act tough and take him out. Other ones in like cool tough ways, and so it's yeah, a mixed there's bag overall. There's times in this fight, I thought the fights were really tis me. Uh, there are times where stormtroopers clearly should have shot him, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. And also, he he get he opens a door and instantly gets shot, luckily right in the shoulder. Um, yeah. Almost said it's uh, clearly so we don't feel bad when he kills all of them, you dubby. It's like well, I, I don't think we would have really cared either way. I would have felt too bad so about the stormtroopers getting for killed. Storm stormtroopers, yeah. <laughs> I didn't need any didn't need any extra uh, motivation to be like, oh, not too bad. Stormtroopers die. 
But um, I do think that, and, and I don't, I don't count this against the show because, you know, because I can't count against the show because it wasn't something that wasn't in there. I thought could be better. Moving on, but I, I would have been really, really curious, and I kind of wished, and I was hoping, and this, I think it would have been better if they spent time and gave us something about stormtroopers that makes me go, why are they still stormtroopers? Right, like the empire has collapsed. The empire is very, very weak. They are that these guys clearly are not well supplied. Their armor isn't maintained, and yet still here they are. Why are they here? Why do they still wear the armor? Why didn't they you know chuck the armor away and go live a normal life? How come they're still going through this? Is it because they need money? Is it because they have an ideological reason for it? I think it could have been interesting to explore the mind of what happens to stormtroopers after the collapse of the empire and what they choose to do. I agree, actually. I find it interesting that stormtroopers are still so loyal after the fall of the empire. I mean, you know, brainwashing or something? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. So he's like annihilating everybody in this place, and I found it really weird that he walks into a room that's empty, a door opens, and he sees two troopers approaching him. He just chooses not to shoot them. And, like, th this goes on for a little bit, and then people turn up behind him, and he's like, okay, guys, you know, I give up. And then he's going to use his new gadget that he got earlier. But it just it just struck mm -hmm. me as odd. It's like, why wouldn't he just shoot them? Why didn't he just shoot yeah, them as soon as that door yeah, opened? Yeah, there's a lot of those in this episode. We see it in later episodes, and we highlight it, where if you would have just shot the person here, it would have been done. This happens a lot in later episodes, where they just don't He's got the drop on him, too, there. and I just don't yeah. get it. Yeah, and but I, I They get I agree to have their that. little... 10 second it's a floor, but mouse thing. we know why it's there they just wanted to like i yeah, know it's, a it's not excuse it but it's just, no it's to show the whistling birds look he used a cool thing oh i was referring to yeah i was i was referring to the, an earlier part but yeah in the, in those two it's like yeah um yeah when enemies pop up on your screen you shoot them um Check the shop. what else we got so or up to now, I'm not seeing massive like episode breaking flaws. There are flaws, but they're they're small and they don't ruin the enjoyment for it overall. I find. I mean, I wouldn't call what we've highlighted small, but the thing is, the things that we've got to highlight to come are so enormous that I wouldn't really care to call these. Okay. I wouldn't care uh, if you called these small or not. <laughs> okay, I again, I gotta address the chat. So is it Rag is complaining <laughs> that the troopers are slower to shoot than Mando is silly? Fucker, that is not what I said. That is not what you said. <laughs> there are clearly times when stormtroopers have him right in front of them, and Mando's not even facing him, and they just don't take the shot. Well, I am not guess. complaining that troopers are slower than Mando. You extrapolating what I said to that is, that's a problem on you. I do um. not expect stormtroopers to be able to one-on-one -on -one beat Mando. I'm, they, they, this is ridiculous. This is, the, this is the stuff we need to avoid. Carry on, though. I guess uh, it's kind of like it's it's interesting. I feel a level of empathy for uh, Carl Weathers being like, "I got you this job, Kinda. you completed it, you got loads of money, I did too. Now you're like fucking it all up for everybody." And then he like has, you know, from Carl Weathers' point of view, it's like, "Wow!" And your your He's team of Mandalorians right kill like all of my bounty guild. <laughs> Like it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it from the perspective that Mando okay, hey, completed hey, the God. bounty, got paid, and made his fucking right. armor, and then he's like, "Lol, nah, I'm gonna go get." Wait, 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 hang on. You, this, this isn't a criticism against the plot of the episode. Oh, it's a criticism right? against Mando. No, no, like, I agree. He's fully justified in being ticked off. <laughs> Yeah. But it doesn't mean that Mando no, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. Okay, okay, okay not good. That actually show, can I'm be saying, like... it can be turned into a criticism by the time you hit episode eight, where Mando is like, "Carl Weathers, did you kill the Mandalorians?" Mm -hmm. He's like really pissed at him, and it's like, "Motherfucker, maybe like, he did. Dude, what, he if he did? The... Yeah. <laughs> what if he did? What if he did? He you killed all of his men after you betrayed him. Like, I just after it really you frustrated got paid me as well. You yeah. got paid. You accepted the payment, and then you betrayed him. So yeah, what if he did?" <laughs> It's such a weird, like, <laughs> moral grandstand. It's like, you did that to well, it's me. Like, it's, it, it honestly reminds me of Batwoman, that part. You know, yeah, where it's just bit. like... Oh. Well, well, there is a distinction in that the, the, um, the bounty hunters are not on the same moral level as the Mandalorians, because they're willing to, you know, kidnap children off to be executed by whoever's paying them. And so, 
I mean, even the fact that Mandalorian betrays the Bounty Hunter Guilds isn't a bad thing. Is a Bounty Hunter culpable for the bad things that they do on behalf of their clients? Well, they should be. If you're willing to do evil for just getting paid, that is Well, evil. you're not doing it. You're just doing what they want you're, you're to, faci- to do. You're facilitating it. You're carrying okay, it Okay, yeah, out. sure. I, I mean, I'm not sure that I disagree. I'm, it's just an interesting little uh, yeah. tangent. And I, and I also Bounty don't... Hunters aren't morally good people unless they have like a stance that they won't do, you know like kidnap babies to be executed well, no, I mean, there's, there's one bounty hunting is a neutral profession that can go either way based on yeah, what I, yeah, I would agree there and perhaps it's yeah. based on but anyone who is then willing to try and take the uh, baby yoda bounty and carry it through is by definition evil because yes that's i would say that that is definitely a moral flaw um mm-hmm. one thing i will say though i guess if we're talking about it even though you could say that uh, Mando is not like directly in the most personal personal way responsible for the deaths of the Mandalorians. I would expect him to have like it yes. on his conscience in some way. Yeah. I agree. I think that like that should be a good point of um, conflict that he might blame himself somewhat. He didn't know it would happen, and he and you know the Mandalorians should have left a long yeah, time yeah, before. But, but I agree. Like, uh, like yeah, it would be interesting for as we go on. Whenever he looks at Baby Yoda. He sees the faces of all the Mandalorians who died because mm-hmm. of stuff that he did and the, the results this of things. Be, this would have I been wonder a great what they like. Three plot point. The thing is, it can easily be justified that the Mandalorians could have a creed that you do not mourn those that die in fulfilling the creed, and so it could be something. And so, it depend, like, there are a lot of ways to spin it. In all honesty, I feel like they won't though. That's the problem. I feel like they're not going to do this. And uh, someone said, "What they didn't shoot him? The stormtroopers didn't shoot him on spot when they surrounded him because he saw a baby on his arm." I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to something that happened man where a stormtrooper. But also, comes German in right beneath, right behind him, and just but doesn't. German man at this point doesn't even really give a shit at this point if he gets killed. Remember, German man doesn't care about Baby Yoda being alive anymore. But do, yeah, true. But do the stormtroopers know that? And like, they're well, probably maybe, not privy to not. all the progress of things, and all they knew is that. This is a valuable thing that this bounty hunter was told to get, and now he's trying to steal it. And even if they knew that much, I don't know. And he does sell, like he tells them, "What I'm holding is valuable." Um, and that might have been enough. So yeah, at at that point, I definitely believe why they wouldn't shoot him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ones in the back, eh, maybe not so much, but still, I totally get it. It's not a problem. I don't have any problem with that scene. Um, I, I'm referring to earlier on before he gets um, before he gets uh, baby Yoda. You know, I, fi- I just checked the script. So after he says, I order you to extract the necessary material and be done with it, um, he follows up with saying he he has explicitly ordered us to bring it back alive. Um, if, is that Moff Gideon they're referring to? The guy who fires at them with a TIE fighter when they're holding baby Yoda? Uh, I can't remember. Because, man. Yeah, because in episode <laughs> 8, Oh, look, they've got Baby Yoda that, that I need, and I'm just going to pew pew shoot him with. Oh, my... but also, the bounty hunter who was trying to kill Mando in episode 5 would have blown up the ship. Not to mention with the IG the IG unit as well. Apparently, he was supposed to kill Baby Yoda, but oh, Moff Gideon no. wants it alive. Oh, no. <laughs> it's falling apart again. I, I, I lost track of the conversation, sorry. Um, um, I got to use the loo anyway, so I'll be right back. Oh, well, so. um. The, the, the Werner Herzog says, um, extract what you need and be done with it. Um, he, it says he wants uh, the specimen alive or something like that. Uh, okay, which referring is, to the, the, uh, the higher up, the guy in the TIE fighter, yeah. We assume Gideon, yeah, because he seems to answer to yeah. Gideon. Um, which is interesting because the IG unit was told to, to kill it definitively. Yeah. Um, I, and I, obviously. I, that's a contradiction. The bounty hunter in episode 5 would obviously, if it destroyed Mando's ship, Baby Yoda's going to be floating around. <laughs> like, oh, maybe it could layer. It could do the layer thing. Yeah, um, yeah and even when a Herzog said that you could do it dead or alive, so I'm just confused. That means we're up to episode four now, right? I think yeah, so. Yeah, it's interesting. It is oh, it's very interesting what Moff wants at the end, because he still wants Yoda, but then they've extracted what they needed, have they? Or what? Like, or maybe they have extracted what they needed, but it's useful to have more so having the original source oh the only other thing was it's surprising how many of them have the jetpack and yet all of them aren't allowed to leave that place more than one at a time and he doesn't have a jetpack and he's the one who's bounty hunting you know what i mean Hmm. i i get apparently you have to earn it i guess does she does she mention that i don't really know yeah there's nothing like 
it, it is strange for me there's only one out at a time uh, because kind of be useful to have more you guys are tough are they staying there to protect it but that didn't seem to work out for them did it uh, so i don't know um it's not explained um all right and yeah i'm happy to move on to episode four yeah here we go <laughs> here's the good stuff here we go <laughs> uh, we should wait for rags for this one oh he'll, no he'll yeah he will he will want to be here i'm sure i think you know um, that this is this is so, uh, so... been an adventure just just putting it out there already it's five hours <laughs> Why? Well, I, I don't <laughs> i don't oh gosh i'm not sure i'm gonna be able to stay for the whole episodes but you, who who else are you gonna have to try and defend this thing? <laughs> i suppose a... we will have to be very calm and just state our criticisms and then people may make of them what they will as opposed to saying they are definitive flaws uh, I, Drinker, he um he didn't mind it. He said it was flawed, but overly overall he enjoyed it enough. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll still be too late if you could get him on board. Well, yeah. The other problem is that we do actually need to round it off eventually to make sure we can get. I know. And <laughs> I'm not going to be able to come back for a while to finish it off. That so is all right. Oh, oh. We will we will have you back the moment we can. Oh. Um. So, well, we can still talk about some things, like, I mean, the fight at the end where he jumps behind the uh, the ship and suddenly the ship, it can block all blaster bolts and it's just made out of trashy, well, I assume it must be made out of Durasteel, like, Durasteel is the common type of steel yeah. everything is made out of, because, my goodness, that stuff gives him full protection for a good while. Um, and as to how much cover he has, I think he has a decent amount. It was good that he was jumping into cover, so that's all right. Mm -hmm. And then when he disintegrates a few of them, that certainly would scare off and not like his, like, and I wonder how, how exceptional his pulse rifle is. Cause people are surprised by it yet. They're also familiar with it because the, the girl lady in episode four, she's like, give me the pulse rifle. So she's familiar with that kind of thing. Yet we've never seen anything like that in Star Wars before. Have we? Cause that's a full on disintegration gun. Yeah. Um, I assume they, they drew that out of, um, Vader saying to Boba, no disintegrations. Like, Does he? I missed that. Yeah, he's because he said he wants the, the bounties alive, so I just assumed that that's where they were like, hey, that means bounty hunters or Mandalorians have disintegration capabilities. Cool. Um, You know, now that I think of it, while Rags is away, I should go to the toilet as well, or do you have to wait <laughs> until he comes back? So. No, no, you go yeah, for it, so, go for it. So, you're pretty, I'll be back in a sec. Mm-hmm. We're on the cusp of episode four, uh, finally. Uh, yeah, I know it's exciting because this is when it just deteriorates completely. It a poopy in his pantyhole. <laughs> uh, I guess for for the reference for how it was when we were watching the show, by episode four, I was still on the show side, even though episode three was. You know, I got very frustrated that, with four. I felt insulted. <laughs> I was like, "This is ridiculous." Yeah, four, four was um. Yeah, and it, and I wasn't the only one. I think most people seem to agree that four was really bad. Like four, I've four seen people stuck. saying four and five are the weakest ones, and then six is really good. The Bill Burr one, which will be interesting okay, if we can six. talk about it. I don't really like six either. No, I don't either. <laughs> I mean, four and five are the low point. I would say, yeah. Um, and then I guess it picks back up a bit in episode seven, but then it kind of falls back down again. There's a comment in chat. I don't even want to watch the shows the, the way that Muller and Rags do. I'm, I'm amazed they like anything. Um, Are you, uh, yeah, I guess you're new to the channel. <laughs> we, yeah, we do. So we like stuff that makes sense a lot of the time. Um, I like plenty of stuff that doesn't make sense. Uh, mm -hmm. The way we try and figure this stuff out is that sometimes, whether I like a thing or not, I have to acknowledge that there is a flaw within it. And vice versa. I might hate something a lot, but I have to recognize that it's particularly well made. And that's what these discussions are for. To try and explore whether or not something was uh, well made or not. Um, yeah. For example, a pretty easy one is just Lord of the Rings. I'm pretty sure all four of us here think that Lord of the Rings is incredible. And uh, yep. the writing is staggeringly strong. Um, yep. But there's, there's, example, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, it's... Well, I mean, a good example of that, it's good, but I don't... And this isn't for me, because I love this movie. But the, the common example of this is good, but I don't like it Who's is Blade back? Runner. 
Blade yeah, Runner, Blade Runner Citizen Kane. Whether or not you find it boring. People say it about 2001, people say it about... Uh... Yeah, people say it about a lot of really good movies, but they are good, whether or not you like them, right? And then conversely, Venom. I like Venom, but it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Hmm. Are we still on episode three? Well, we, we, we're about to go to episode four. We're on to episode uh, four. We're waiting boy. for you, but uh, Shanda decided to go to the toilet as well, so... And then oh we, we, were, we were explaining to chat that, uh, no, we don't in fact hate everything. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, it's just that this problem, this like these were the best episodes, and they have a bunch of little problems, and all of these little problems adds up. Some of these I wouldn't call little problems. Like, for instance, him not using thermal vision directly results into him almost getting killed, and he has to be saved by Baby Yoda. Like that's not a little thing. Like those are the things that stack up and stack up, and it only gets worse from here. Would you say it ruins the episode, though, that the episode is still fully um, really enjoyable? Yeah, that kind of stuff, it certainly adds to the pile for me. That's the kind of stuff that ruins it for me, like or adds to ruining it for me. I can't unsee it. Like, it's not stuff that I can't see. Um, but, sub like, subjective, I, I just can't not see that stuff. And yeah, I and I get that. I mean... It. But I, well, the thing is, I definitely see why people like this, which is why people who do like it, like, I don't have a hatred for Mandalorian as a show. I just think it's bad. Mm -hmm. I don't, like, I have a hatred for The Last Jedi, you yeah. know? Yeah. What I, I find it. interesting, yeah, is that I think there are things that I have criticized in, say, Rise of Skywalker and Jedi, and some of them were on, like, they were, uh, you could say, are as small as some of the things I'm defending in this one. And the difference is, I think, is that there was enough good in Mandalorian to help me just... And I admit, like, the the, the uh, thermal thing, in the, that's a legitimate problem. And I don't think there is a real valid credit, like, uh, defense for it, except for making up something that he didn't have it beforehand, which isn't valid because there's nothing saying it. And so that that's completely valid, but I can ignore, I, or I, I am willing to ignore it. I think that's the difference. I, I, I acknowledge it, but I'm willing to ignore it because there's enough good for me to enjoy. When there's no good for me to enjoy or barely anything, I'm not going to ignore anything because it doesn't deserve mm -hmm. it. It's like, no. Yeah. Yeah, like there's there's plenty of bad stuff that we see, um, that we like, um, but like subjective stuff is that's the thing about subjectivity, and that's why we treat it differently from objectivity. Like well, it's not subjectivity yeah. isn't consistent. You know, my, that's it's it's a weird kind of thing. Yeah, I just can't not see stuff like I do. Yeah, my contention is that there is a decent amount of objectively good things in the Mandalorian to make it good overall. Generally, not in every episode. Don't get me wrong. But especially with the episodes we've covered so far, to me, I think those are mostly good episodes. There's problems, but... I mean, I, I don't know. Like... I would say a lot of your defenses were a lot of inferences. Um, lots of yeah, extrapolations. Were, yeah, I, I agree. Some were more uh, based... Like, there were some that were actually based on what is implied in the story, sure. and some were completely more kind of... Uh, leaps, I fully admit that, but the ones that are based on things you can actually point towards have more validity as defense. Do we um, want to get to episode yeah, episode, four? Episode four. So, yeah. where to begin, I suppose? Um, <laughs> at the beginning, let's do this. So, uh, I guess, should we just establish, the raiders at the beginning, they seem to be interested in stealing food and then leaving. They don't, they, only, they destroy a droid for some reason, but other than that, they don't destroy much, and the implication being that they're doing that sort of um, raiding, like pillaging, where, where they're like, we will attack this farming, you know, out, outset place every once in a while, take their food, and it'll just be a common source for us. Like, that seems to be their goal, right? You just have to think. Yeah, it seems yeah, to be what it is. It's uh -huh. definitely a recurring thing, yeah. Uh, okay. Um... Now, yeah, you're bringing we've, that up because some stuff there's we've... a contradiction later on based on that it's just, it's that just good to keep it in it. mind uh it may not come up again i'm just making sure for my own sort of framing of this whole thing um yeah, pre-production is never fully explained in the star wars universe it does seem that they rely on farming moisture farming whatever that really means and and, and old school well, here it seems to be shrimp yeah and so they don't have like replicators or advanced you know um industrial I mean, scale farming but it's, it's interesting about that they I and and it's nearby. They are aware of a settlement that is like a, essentially like a small town. It's like a step up from theirs. That I assume that they do trade with on occasion because these people do have access to droids and floating barges and basic stuff like that. 
Um, so f first things first, I guess then, because we've talked about fobs and stuff, so I don't want to repeat any of that. Uh, the way Mando happens to fly to this place is a way that he is spotted by the village people, and uh, they assume just from him arriving that he'll be somebody that they can sort of get to help them. Even though when you when they talk to him, they say that his armor is what gave him away as being someone that can help him, uh, help them. Sorry. Mm -hmm. so I found that very strange. It is odd. I mean, it would have made sense that they could infer that's a gunship that has big guns on it, so that might be someone who could help us out. Could yeah, be someone who could, uh, who could, who could kill us. Ship could help. Um, but but hmm. you know, it's something. It's something to go off. Yeah. The, oh yeah, that's right. Um, oh. Like he's really weird with Baby Yoda in this episode. First of all, he's like, "Stay on the ship on your own, okay? Lol, bye." And then Baby Yoda's clearly gonna keep up with him, and it's like, okay. He just lets him walk along with him, and they do the movie magic thing where Baby Yoda just keeps managing to not only keep ahead of, uh, keep up with Mandalorian, but somehow get ahead of him when he walks at like incredibly low speeds. And then they'll they'll show like Mando's clearly getting way further ahead of him. And you might be like, "Why are you bringing this up?" Cut. And it's like, yeah. "Well, because uh, Baby Yoda's clearly like vulnerable." Um. And Mando doesn't seem to give a shit to the point where Baby Yoda could have been eaten by that cat monster. It's just like, eh. yeah, man, Mando shows a very, very inconsistent care for this thing in the most basic and common sense kind of ways that go Sorry. past, oh, you're you're not a parent, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, this thought... goes into just common yeah, sense. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So I actually agree with this, but I'm just doing the whole devil's advocate thing. Yeah, go for it. If there's any defense, all right. Could it be that Mandalorians have a very basically tough love mentality? If you're not going to be tough enough to fight off a, a cat, you're not going to be tough enough to live by the way. So they have a very much, you have to handle things even when you're little starting out from the outset. Could that be the answer? I don't I think mean, that. They, I don't it, think it so. would, they would have to really specify that because he doesn't seem to do anything in the show that would have him, especially at this point, think that this is a, this child needs to defend itself and be tough and be strong. He doesn't. I agree, and and he's not yeah. raising it as a uh, as a foundling yet. So no. yeah, exactly. But it, I mean, it could that be, would an be an instinctual thing. Idea, if that's the, yeah, to... it could be an instinctual thing, even though it's not a foundling. This is just how he feels kids are raised, and he just you know you got to handle yourself a bit even at, at that age. So but then, why would he keep putting him back on the ship? Then why would he keep putting him back in this thing whenever he gets out? Well, I mean, he knows that it, <laughs> it looks like uh, maybe he can get off the ship whenever he wants, but. From this episode, he does think the ship would hold him in, but his following so fine, come along with me anyway. Well, and he gives the coin to the lady him in like the the somewhere, yeah. but he he just says come with them. I know that'll be Doesn't actually interesting to find the... out why he like does he like his company. Like we're not given anything as to why. Well, he says it just yes, seems but... to be that he's incompetent. That's the that seems to be the impression. No. I think that's an uncharitable way of looking at it. Well, I mean, no, I why? think he's definitely no, incompetent. Think about no, especially not, with Baby Yoda at this point, Baby Yoda's following him and is like, all right, we're, we're laying low. You want to come? Sure, come along. Yeah, but then well, think about just... how in, in episode five, he just leaves him at Moss I like he leaves him at the spaceport. They, I, 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 oh, hang out. on, hang on. There are points when it is like, you, you should have been looking after him more. But yeah, we're like, looking at there this are some episode, insane in things instance, he does. Like yeah, that, yeah. In this nuts. instance right here, um, I don't think it's incompetence. It's just like, you want to come along? Sure. Yeah, but then afterwards, he, he tells some woman, like, look after him, and it's like, yeah, you don't we're, know we're her. We're definitely like, going to get to that. You, you, is... you don't know who she is. Also, I want to, um, yeah. I don't know that it's wise to devil's advocate every single thing that exists. Like, I mean, pick the bowels, I suppose. Because <laughs> if I said, like, two plus two is four, then you go, well, what if numbers aren't real? I'd just be like, no, okay. All right. Come on, guys. When you say something that's indefensible, I agree with you. And I've done that multiple times already. I'm just saying, I, I do want to challenge things when I think there is a valid enough defense that's worth putting towards it. I know I sometimes I haven't where I've gone too far. But... The tough love defense seems uh, shaky at best. And it's not mentioned at all. Yeah, I agree. Um... Um, but yeah, it, it is weird to see how New Planet, he was walking through the forest, he doesn't carry baby Yoda with him he's like just walk and with it's, me it's weird to leave him so open when he's checking this planet to see it's suitable to be here so for all he knows anyone could be here right now that's dangerous yeah, in fact he ends up getting into a fist fight check it out very soon yeah okay. he, he and takes... i agree with you there that 
I think it's it's fine to have Yoda come along, but the fact that he's not protecting or cautious of him very much at all is a, like, and I yeah you're right the tough love thing doesn't really explain especially with Yoda's value kind of thing and he doesn't know that there might be yeah. other bounty hunters on the planet. It's, it's one thing for him to check the town out and then bring him in later, but to just right off the bat display him so openly and irresponsibly, very like oh uh, I thought this thing was every you like you gave up a lot for this kid. Like you should take care of him. Um. Uh, Cara Dune. We know that she's in hiding, and later on she has to cover up her uh, her arm on on Navarro to avoid people detecting that she's used ex rebel or whatever. I'm just like, why wouldn't she always have that covered? If she's she in only hiding, covers it up when they wouldn't, have to deal it, with storm. Wouldn't it go in her favor that she's ex rebel most of the time? I don't know because she said that she's on the um, run. She's got life sentences uh, to deal with if the Republic ever found her. Yeah, she said she's done things that would put her in a life sentence. We learned this, I think, at the end of this episode. No, we did learn this. Uh... Ah, is that the end of? No, I... it's it's when he comes back for her the second time. Yeah, that's when we learn about it. But this is still knowledge that the characters have at this. It time. seems weird that she, because it's it, you know it's very advertised. That's, I guess that's what I'm going with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's funny that the the waitress offers to give Mando broth and alcohol. I assume it's like a flagon or something. And I just like, does he have a, a bendy straw or like, how does he? <laughs> I see, I, and maybe maybe there's a straw thing that will like you can pull down from underneath the visor that he could just suck on. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would, if I was a Mandalorian, I legitimately. You what? Like it's silly, sure. You, you but you would I would want what? a straw. Yeah. That I could just stick up eh. my helmet. You know? I think they just wouldn't show us that because it would just, it would just, it would be hard to not take it. It would just, you'd be laughing yeah. at it. Just. Bone it's just, broth it's weird sounds that she awful would as offer well. him a drink when he clearly said in the man that you know stuff. It's, but it's odd. But also he gives her he gives her money and she doesn't tell him anything. And to well, trust trying to, yeah. to trust it to look after baby Yoda's just like, damn, dude. That's insane. Careful there. And she literally doesn't. Like <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Maybe he just walks off and does and, mm -hmm. and you'd think that if he did that, like, he would be really cross with her. He'd go back in and say, give me my money back. Or something. But he's not. You know? yeah, he, but just he just, just kind of... Yeah. He just like, oh, well, I guess I just wasted my money for nothing with this person, and they put the baby in jeopardy, and oh, well, I guess, you know. Um, yes. And I know that Fringy can attest to this uh, because he literally did it while watching the episode, if I remember correctly. But when Mando's chasing her footprints, he takes a really long time to assume the first thing would have happened, which is she's above you. He's yeah. like, hmm, where could she have gone? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like she disappeared like, into thin air. And it's like, dude. Just look up. <laughs> Also, he doesn't use his wall of vision to oh, look. Oh, and also, her. yeah. When, when I'm not sure if you just said it, I think I might have zoned out. But like, when they point guns at each other's heads, it's like you, you know, you can just shoot her and she can't kill you, right? You've got this big best guy steel <laughs> helmet. Just blow her brains out. She can't kill well, you. Well, there's a lot of issues with this fight. Uh, this is the thing. We might just machine gun this episode because there's so much yeah. wrong with it. She. So to clarify, first, she punches a wooden panel when he dodges a punch and she's like oof I've got the screenshot right now yet she punches yeah. his helmet four times his in this fight and, and she's fine yeah best car steel you can slam that thing to the point where he gets like punted straight into the ground and it's just not gonna bother because a lot, a lot of people were like she's wearing special gauntlets like nah hitting wood hurts her but hitting <laughs> stuff that's stronger than Dura steel doesn't it's like okay it's funny, all they needed to do was not show her getting hurt by hitting the wood, yeah, they did that too. Because I can get how punching a wall that's solid would hurt, but uh, like, come on, you're still punching, like, I know that armor will have a little give on someone's face, It looks but like they're just on, panels. still punching steel. Yeah, yeah it's so, like, so, uh, Someone uh, said uh, that uh, Mando didn't want to kill her, why not? She, yeah, for all he, he knows, him. she's a bounty hunter trying to get baby Yoda. I just think it's funny that she's point. aiming her gun at his fucking Beskar steel. It's yeah. Like... yeah, it's like they both pull, it's like, it's one of those things where they both pull guns, they're pointing at each other. For some reason, Mando isn't like, oh, she can't hurt me because she's aiming at my Beskar, and he just kills her there, right there. 
and they have that pause so that then they could go, then they could hear Baby Yoda next to him. It's like, and oh, okay. Something that Rags right. pointed out when we were watching this. So he, there's several points where he's grappling her, which would be a fantastic time to activate the flamethrower. Instead, he chooses to activate it when he has, like, no way of aiming it at her and telegraphs it usually so she can just stop it immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like, this whole fight is relatively frustrating, and I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. I just, uh, I don't get so many of the things that happen in it. It's just, like, the someone hell. saying, yeah. weren't you and, uh, someone say, Fringy, weren't you and Rags literally earlier the sniper lady should have shot Mando in the head to kill him, but her doing it wouldn't? Uh, she has a blaster that we know just bounces right off of him. Yeah, whereas yeah. she had a giant I'm pretty sure rifle, you advocated but, yeah, yeah. for um, his head would possibly kill him because of the amount yeah, of damage possibly. it does to the chest plate. Yes, and also yeah. she's well, a lot closer now, the, so the it's a much more powerful rifle. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the better Very thing, bad, we kept saying it was bad. aim for the neck, yeah. because there's no armor there at all. Yeah, and you, you did, you did clarify line, neck guys. as well, so... You yeah. can't get yeah, us on this one. Give it up, you're not gonna get us on this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is on. not a good one. At least you're paying attention, sort of. Um, uh -huh. so it's... Sorry, sorry. I guess I shouldn't do it for everything, but I was just gonna do it for fun. What if he's attracted to her and wants to flirt? Oh, yeah, she's definitely Maybe. hot. What if she's not even real? Well, what if she's Snoke? Hey, Rags, you don't know his type, okay? I guess I don't. I imagine he would be attracted to the strong type. Okay, I'll, I'll take. I'll walk that a little bit back. She's not ugly. She's fine. She looks fine. Yeah. She's hot in her I way. think she's beautiful, just, Rags. You're a racist. The rebel scum. <laughs> um, no, so I, Look, something I appreciated, just to point out, even if it's a small thing, I like that they decided to cast a you know a woman who's got a bit of muscle on her to reflect the characters. Yes, that helps so much. I prefer much. that. Yeah, it's, I, I prefer that. Better, like yeah. about skinny damn time. chick beating everybody, every Agreed. big strong man up. Well, it's she like it's like believable from strong. a strength. Yeah, yeah, it's believable from a strength perspective, but I still think, especially in this fight, I think Mando should have whooped her ass. I would like well, to. He's got the steel. That's the thing. Like he's it... got the steel. Well, hang on. We don't know how many hands that she has and how strong. Like it's implied that she's. She is physically stronger than Mandalorian. We don't know why. I would assume she? because some type of hand. She? She because they arm wrestle later, the and, it's, and she doesn't beat him. Uh, she, she one punches him to the ground. I, she, she's yeah, which is just yeah, but they, they <laughs> arm wrestle, and she can't beat him. Really? Well, maybe maybe he could punch her to the ground. You don't know. <laughs> maybe. maybe I, um, I was just gonna say though. So when the Rhino is about to charge Mando, Baby Yoda saves him. When he's having the arm wrestle with her, Baby Yoda, quote unquote, saves him. When they're having this fight and she even pulls a gun on him, Baby Yoda just doesn't seem to fucking care. Oh, and, and to be clear with chat, I'm not saying the actress isn't hot. I'm saying the character, like just like with Rose Tico, right? The actress is actually really good looking, but what they do with her in Star Wars is like. How did you do this? How did you manage this? What black magic wizardry is this? Um, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, right? the reason I brought this yeah. up is because I actually quite like that Baby Yoda's always going to assume any harm coming to Mandalorian is a bad thing. But then in this scene, Baby Yoda's just like, eh, this is fine. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. okay. Because yeah. Baby Yoda chokes her while they're arm wrestling. I know, yeah, that was... Doesn't um, do anything. I'm like, man. Odd. It's inconsistent, yet it was a funny scene as well. I chuckled at him just slurping up. It was amusing. Going, it was just, yeah, it's, like, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. fun scene in that sense. Sure. I like Baby Yoda a lot. I like Baby yeah, Yoda. Too. I really do. Um. Yeah. Uh, I guess just moving, moving quickly. Uh, the planet isn't big enough for the both of them. Apparently, it's strange. They have completely different yeah, reasons I to have... be hiding. I have it listed here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. She says that one of them has to move on. Mando doesn't even ask why. He just says he can't stay here anymore, even though he explicitly stated that they would be safe here and lay low. He just completely acquiesces to her demand instantly, just like that. She's, he says the planet is taken. He doesn't haggle. There's no pushback. He just totally cucks out. Also, it's I a think planet. It's framing in a, in a, in a more a critical planet, way, but yeah. I ultimately agree with you. It's like, yeah, it's not explained why, like, or it doesn't make sense that he now needs. But it's to like leave. some chick is like, "There's not enough room on this planet for the both of us." It's like, what <laughs> are you talking about? Um, then, then we're jumping into the he doesn't get startled by the two guys or seem to care, which yeah, we've covered that. We'll, we'll just move on. Um, it's very strange this scene, the way it, it sort of runs, and this happens again in episode five that we'll go over just. Mando being convinced of something that he's clearly against of like so in this one he's like no nah, I'm not gonna help you 
And then he's like, wait, you guys came from a village, so you have lodging, right? And then they're like, yeah. And then I'm just like, well, wait, but you already have lodging with your ship. And you were planning on leaving to find a better place to... to like, why, why would that convince you to go with them, I guess? Yeah, why is, ha why is living in a shack a deal breaker? Or I guess I guess the opposite of a deal a deal maker, I suppose. Very strange, especially because at least on the ship he's like, well, if we need to leave, we could just leave any time. We're right here on the spaceship. We could relocate whenever we want. Also, I could him, lock this up really securely. Him doing random repairs to his ship is very lucky because if he had just left, they wouldn't have been able to get him in time. Like, because he was in the daytime and he said they have to leave, and then it's nighttime and he's just doing stuff and things, and it's like, oh man. It's just, yeah, just tightening. Because obviously, the they establish right it takes a day to get to Mando's ship from where they are. So obviously, they couldn't have them turn up at daytime for that to be true. So they had to delay Mando, and they have it just be that he's just he's just just fiddling with the ship. It's like, okay, is it is it's not that big of a deal. It's just. uh uh, obviously allowing things to happen, and I just don't believe that you would have gone with these people under the promise of somewhere to sleep. It's like, you could sleep in your ship, and you're a Mandalorian, like, you don't really care about it. I mean, like, there was one other thing, does it justify it more? A little bit, but not fully. It was that, what? it was in the middle of nowhere, specifically. Then he asked if Yeah, but the ship can go to the middle of nowhere whenever it chooses that, it. That, any that's true, that's what I mean, but yeah. there was lot, if lodging implies food and, and, um, resources to live off for an extended period of time. So, like, he was there for several weeks, and so even if he can take his ship to the middle of nowhere, he would need a, some type of food, resource, or whatever to yeah, help him use a ship going. to fly to those. I know, but if you're wanting to lie low, you would want to fly around as little as also, possible. Also, doesn't he have access? Like, there's that, that bar or whatever it is, restaurant, is right next to him anyway. Yeah, but that's not yeah. in the middle of nowhere. That's where people often, obviously, go to when they come to this planet r regularly. But he, yeah, but the village is close enough, and people are aware of and it. And I thought he said that the planet, like he has to leave the planet. Yeah, I know. I'm not. Look, I'm not saying it fixes it. I'm just saying it's not. Like there are some things that make it a little bit less bad, I guess. Um, how did he? Uh, how did he find Kara like so quickly? I guess he just had a tab on her or something. He used a fob. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> not, let's not open that can of worms again. And I don't think he did it, honestly. I'm being an idiot. Um, yeah, he just found her because plot. Uh, just catch up with, with Minutes. Minutes. Luckily, we've covered some of these uh, things ahead again. of time. Um, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. He will pull... Oh, okay, we're not there yet. Uh, I think we said the next thing I have is he is not at all startled when he is approached at night in the woods at a ship by oh, yeah, two we've men done that. who do not announce themselves. Yeah, uh, um, he'll pull a gun on an unarmed safe. Yeah, that's he's his 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 concern levels and reactions are extremely inconsistent and illogical. Um, let's see. He I one thing I notice is he says the payment isn't enough before he knows how much the payment is. A little strange. Uh, let's see. We did the lodging thing. He has man. He goes to her to tell Mando to help. Sorry, Mando goes to Kara, finds her to tell her to help him. <laughs> so, all right. I guess he thinks that. Is this quick? He does that. I mean, it's lucky that um, she's willing to work with him. She seems very against him. Uh, yeah, you know, she said he had to move on to a new planet, but she's like, "Oh yeah, I'll do this job with you. I'll go to the village with you." She's got the hots for him, okay? All right, all right. Um, that explains everything. Done. So problem solved. Uh, so now they have entered the village at this point in my notes. Um, he's introduced to his quarters. He spins and nearly pulls his gun on a child in a village. Hey. That just goes with the inconsistent <laughs> alertness from earlier. Um, he lets Baby Yoda go out and play without his supervision, and he acquiesces when the village woman just when the village woman just says so they'll this be was, fine. Yeah, so this, about the tough love thing, right? He's very against the, the idea of Baby Yoda being out of the same room as him until the, the, the woman says, it'll be fine. And he's like, oh, okay. It's a very strange moment because I think it would have actually been better to just not have him freak out at all. 
considering the other stuff we've seen, but at this point it's just like, wait, so you do want to have Baby Yoda just, like, right next to you at all times, yeah? And it's like, well, no, not really, because she just says, nah, lol, it'll be fine, and he's like, oh, okay. Like, I, I don't... His, his attitude towards Baby Yoda is very confusing. Well, you said while we were case, watching the episode, yeah, why doesn't he just say, sure, but he has to play in front, or where I can see him? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Out of all the locations he's been in, this is probably one of the safest ones. Well, then why does he freak <laughs> out? <laughs> he's like, wait, wait, no, don't do he's that. I, oh, look, I'm not saying it's justified as jumping. I'm saying it's fine that he just lets Baby Yoda go off. And like I said, it, it would have found him much more smooth if he had just said, play in my line of sight. That's all. I'd been like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and minor, but... You know, there's a lot of what I would call death by a thousand cuts for episode four, for sure. Uh, and then, and then comes the taking the mask off in front of like three meters away from several people, and if he is seen by any of them, he cannot put that mask back on again. Uh, uh, all right, all right. So nerd, nerd, nerd response. The window is looking. Is he even looking through a window? What if the window is the, the top sill cut off at at his neck, and so. And so oh. his head was still blocked behind, the, like, the top sill of the window. Oh, I like think I know what you mean, see. but no. Like, yeah. I, I can... No, here's a picture. Here's yeah, a picture we can of the see window. it. Yeah, I can... Let me post. Okay, sorry, let's have That's one see. picture. Um, also, what if somebody just walked in, as has just happened moments ago, that he freaked out about? Hmm. There's not a door. Hey. There's no door here. Foiled again! Blast <laughs> you, right! And uh, I'd heard a, a, a lot of people didn't like this. Like, this isn't uh, not well known from what I understand. Um. Yeah, um, very weird that he would take his helmet off with so easily being seen. Yeah, because uh, he makes such a big deal about it in the episode. And even later mm. after this, big deal about it. But I'm like, man, we know you're not consistent about this. <laughs> it's I'm a sorry, one way mirror. Got... Yeah, this is uh, this don't work, man. <laughs> Frustrating to say the least. And then, yeah, there's like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just gonna say to, to kick on, we got um, for some reason the villagers didn't tell them about the huge monster thing that was shooting at them, and you might be like, well, they wanted them to come, and it's like, yeah, but that's like the whole thing they need them for. So it's just weird. They highlight to the villagers, it's like you didn't tell us about the enormous monster beast ATST because they were like, what, what even is that? And they're like, the thing you didn't tell us about. <laughs> I just thought it was weird, it was like, because that's the whole reason they're there, right? Um, they have this line, right? So the idea is, uh, when when understanding this difficulty, the first thing you might think of is like relocate the village, right? And then they're like, no, we can't because it took generations to seed this ground. I um, I'm not an expert in in farming or fishing, but I don't know that that's how that works. They seem to just have pits for like. Mola. Alien it's shrimp. Alien fish. It's alien fish. In okay. order to have alien fishing, you need to seed ground for exactly. generations. I'm, I'm, yep, I'm glad you understand that. It's just, it's, it, you know what the line <laughs> is for. It's designed to say, no, they have to win this ground because this ground has to be won. And you're like, okay, mm -hmm. fine, yep. if you say yeah, so. We would, we would rather all get blowed up and killed and our children destroyed than have to move they're like, okay, I guess one is more important than the other. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mando says there is nothing on this planet that can damage the legs on the ATST. That is, I guess, the ship can't. Blatantly that not true. Ship, yeah, yeah, uh, blatantly <laughs> untrue. Like, what about um, two logs tied to trees that would <laughs> swing in on either side? For oh some reason, God. I suspect that works. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you must, yeah, but to rig a trap like that, you must be big and strong and... Uh. <laughs> you can't be small and furry. <laughs> Wait, um, what does furry have to um, do? That's just disingenuous, bringing... The amount of time it took to yeah, train the really. village to be able to defend them while they yeah, try and shoot the ATST well, is it's... the time they could have just gotten his ship. I don't know why they didn't. I mean, I'm just going to go in further and say the idea that they try and train these is insane. Like they literally have done it. That's the reason why they did it because Western target practice is okay, but why the sticks? Yeah, they literally have shot like like this is on two different. I still think giving them just guns randomly is stupid. I think they're going to be more likely to kill themselves, especially with how haphazardly he hands them out. 
but they literally have Kara training them with pointed sticks. One of them even is holding the pointed stick with a pointy M facing backwards. <laughs> like you're sending these people to their deaths. Uh, yeah, it's it's all very very bizarre. The the the, the fight the, the the plan is to bottleneck the enemies into coming from one direction. Kara and Mando will take out the ATST while the rest of them need to keep the raiders away from those two, and they're going to do that with guns and sticks, and it's staggering well, also to barriers. behold. They, they they make barriers and stuff. Oh, and the barriers are to bottleneck them. Mm. Oh, but also they won't actually like. Have you seen pictures of the barriers, actually? Because they, they don't actually do that. Yeah, they're nothing. <laughs> they're worthless. Like, they're, they're so pathetic and widely spaced apart, and they cover so little of the village that no... Like, the idea that they think this will work is laughable. It is... This plan, this whole train the villagers, make the barricades, <laughs> it right. is nonsense Those of the highest degree. barriers are pathetic. They're basically fences with large holes in between. They, yeah, um, they wouldn't be spared. Yeah. And they, they, they don't account for the... They, they account for the idea that they're going to have to try and trick the ATSD into falling over and killing itself, but they don't account for what's going to happen up till that point. Like, what about all the times the ATSD is going to shoot at us up to that point? They don't account for that, and yeah, lucky for them, they don't yeah. really need to because it doesn't shoot at them. It shoots at the houses in the background. I think two or three times. <laughs> just it just and doesn't. It, there was no guarantee it, it would even walk. Yeah, and there's no guarantee it would even walk as close as it did. It could have just hung back at the tree line. And yeah, yeah. Could have. There's no reason for it yeah. to come in, in closer. In fact, it's pretty lucky that it did. When Kara is shooting at it, it, it decides to try and get closer to her to shoot her, which is precisely the opposite well, of what it needs to do. We're skipping. Well, hang, we're hang on. We're skipping way ahead. Oh, we, we, we've been doing that all because, stream. We jumped forward and back. Because I was about. Well, I was about to say that in the first, in the opening, the ATST doesn't even go to the village. It doesn't even appear when it assaults the village. Okay. Uh, so there were shots from it. Are so you saying it from the tree line? Huh? Is saying there was shots from it from the tree line in the opening. Yeah, it shot from the from the tree line. It didn't even it didn't even come into view. Yeah. yeah. Uh... And they weren't even like, oh, it doesn't even. Oh, the big thing, yeah, it doesn't even come out like last time. It didn't. I have been it made aware this, of a defense, this, Chad. I was going to ask you what you think about this. Uh, the ATST shot the houses in the hopes to kill innocent hiding people in order to demoralize the attacking defending team. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that's a good defense because if there are people, well, actually, it depends. I guess it depends how uh, I guess um, how much of a threat it, it considers I feel, all I the feel people like... in the thing. And honestly, by not shooting at the people who can shoot back, you might feel safe in your ATSC, but all your other buddies are getting shot. And so, by not shooting at the people shooting back at you, you're just giving more time for them. Yeah, to get back. Personally, I feel like you should prioritize your targets. I think it'll demoralize someone more to you. kill their allies in war than killing their families. And you know what demoralizes somebody? Oh, is if, you, if you kill them for real, then they're properly demoralized because they, can't, they moralize can't experience anymore. moralizing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this the I this is I I don't think we would get any resistance from especially you, Shad, on this plan. Because it's no, just no, so. This, this is probably one of the. Well, it's the tactically inept. Like, in the, like yeah, this is there's insane. A lot of dumb, there's a lot they, of dumb in this. They so, describe. And this will... comes back to the. This comes back to the idea that this is Mando's plan and hers. Like these are both veterans of either wars or trained in tactics. They and forget he has all a this ship. Stuff, they forget this is the how plan to they effectively. Come up. Also, like just to reply to someone in chat, they're saying complaining about the distance of the ATSC. That's this is a valid one. Okay, it actually is. Like when you have a tank. You don't want to put the tank in any level of vulnerability. You want it to hold back and to blast the target to hell from a safe position. I was going to say, where was and this so, guy when we were talking about episode 3 of Game of Thrones? Those yeah, trebuchets. Like, Are you really complaining the about the trebuchets? Come on. Yeah, this is what this is being consistent, right? Because yeah. the placement of the ATST, you're like, oh, you're just nitpicking nick about where no, it it's stands. It's like, no, no, this is integral to the survival yeah. of our protagonists See. in the village. Like, this is a huge deal. It is, it is. I think a, a good distinction between something that's that's lesser to something that's like either a super contrived thing is if the, enti the entire plot is hinging on this yeah, thing happening. And, and that's very much it is. Like, like uh, the, the, the whole thing, the ATSD is destroyed by it being used in such a dumb way and moving forward when it could have hung back and just blown them all to hell. Yeah. 
I, and I mean, the fact that when um, Mando and is it Cara Dune or whatever, when they're sneaking in, that they don't go for the ATST first thing to either blow it up or to steal it or any number of things is like, yeah, there are problems, a lot of problems in this episode. Though I will say yeah, there are then... some things I was able to enjoy. I mean, I enjoyed the production value still. I enjoyed Baby Yoda. And out of like, even though the ATSD was used in a very poor way, I did find a silver lining that I was able to enjoy. I enjoyed the fact that they showed it being so menacing and threatening because usually they were just throwaway pieces of junk. And I, I just found it refreshing that, oh, good, at least they're showing it as a true threat and danger. And it's not just some comical, oh, no, logs um, off. I mean, die. like, well, I don't know, because they act like it is, but then one shot disables it. Well, no, they, it's hard to get that shot off, though. She has to get rid really of no, it. No, it's stand. No, it's no, that doesn't make any sense, though. What do you mean? Like, it's the, like, this is a rifle that has a scope, can kill things at long distance. This thing is standing still with two bright Legend of Zelda weak points right on the front of it, and he just doesn't shoot it from where he is. Yeah, good point. Good point. He could have aimed for that earlier. And I think the, the any defense to say the angle was better getting close up is undermined by the fact that being so close and you fire through one of those eyes, you're just going to hit the canopy top of it. And not the yeah, and thing. also, um, you could it, the, it's not covered because we could see the red lights yeah. from the inside. And, and so in all honesty, like, the red lights, with then... those openings, the thing that Mando did to throw the bomb through the eye slit to blow up the people on the inside, he could have just been hanging up on one of the, the trees. Inside. And as soon as... What? Yes. There was nobody on the inside. Oh. What, it was auto? Well, <laughs> so there's still discussion on this. Any... Yeah, that's the thing. So we well, it have doesn't, plenty either of, or, either or. Well, because... have, that's the thing. We have plenty of references for ATSTs with people in them. There mm. are no people in this ATST. It's just red lights I, on the inside. I just, and I she, always, no, I always assumed there was. You just didn't see him looking through those eye slits because it's an no. Open, that's you can scream no, no. They're not. No, there's no one there. When we don't see anyone there, but the natural yeah. assumption is that someone would be because these things no, are. Always... But we can we can see in there, and those are where people sit in ATSTs. There's, are you sure? People are arguing yeah. to this day of have, whether or not it's have... an AI ATST okay. or well, driven well, by like to, a really to, short to person. To my, point, the Jedi. Yeah. to my point, I don't think it matters because the, those eyes are openings that you can throw bombs through to take out the entire cockpit. And if Mandal if uh, the Mandalorian was just on a tree. Um, waiting for it well, to. Uh, granted, you wouldn't know I, where it would walk underneath, but if you could climb up on top and throw a bomb through the window, why not attach one um, to his leg? Honestly, yeah. Well, honestly, this is solving a problem that shouldn't exist because, and this isn't even going into how does one shot up into the top of it disable the whole thing. It doesn't make any sense. But also, this is why is the aid? Why didn't they? Because we haven't even gotten into the whole what was their plan in the raider encampment. Why didn't yeah, they, they would... just find the ATST and put a sticky bomb on it and blow it up? Yeah, that's what I said before. Like, they could have just, yeah, yeah, um, yeah like this is all uh, because all the grunts, like, those they're nothing, we don't have to worry about them. The thing is the ATST. Mm -hmm. So, why they start blowing stuff up and causing a commotion in the camp instead of, all right, like, we need to find where the ATST is, let's just follow the tracks because I have like literal thermal imaging that could find tracks that could off that wow that could come in handy so i could track down this atst and blow it up but they don't if anything the atst surprises them and then decides not to blow them away and then they run for it and it misses all of its shots and yeah. oh yeah it misses them like I mean, seven times <laughs> frustrating uh, storm troopers and everyone's like fun. red lights better for people at night is like I, I i understand but there's nobody inside we can see inside and there's nobody in I, mean, yeah, I don't know about the nobody inside thing. Because if there was a very like, short man inside it, maybe, but like, it's just like, weird. The whole thing's portrayed as if it is an AI. I, I don't really understand. Um, yeah, there was like, and they could have made it work. Like if um the, the ATSC was used to patrol their camp all the time, so you couldn't sneak into it to blow it up when it's not active, that it's always used in defense, so they have to deal with it. And, yeah. But the way they executed this was very poor. And someone brings up a, a good point. Why? the red lights if it's controlled by an ai that's the thing that's why it doesn't make sense because again to like make, we can it look, look it's to make it look menacing yeah that's right but we can see inside of it where people sit in an atst and there's nobody there hang on could you do that in um last as return of the jedi Did, yeah, i don't remember seeing people through those window holes when only when they looked up like I thought you you would naturally be looking through a, a view screen or something when you're piloting those things, and the no, windows they, uh, were only the back. Normally, you do, but you open up those hatches so you can look through manually. That's what the hatches are for—for for people to look through manually, for the two people sitting inside to look. 
Yeah, but therefore that would mean it's not necessary to you to look through them to pilot it. There's nowhere else for them to be. That's where they sit. So the That's idea is sit. that when you Those flick them, you but, can see, but you don't need to have them open to see. If you get what I mean. I yeah, you could, you I, can... If you're sitting, your head wouldn't be in line with the window, but you stand up and then you look through it. And so, well, no, no, that's that's what the windows are for to for people sitting down to look in and see. See, I don't, I don't know. know. I, this I, isn't. Yeah, you can look at uh, through the Return of the Jedi, and then you could also look at all of the models and all of the supplementary materials of where it is, and there. This is how it works. Which is why it's so confusing that there's no one there, and also, and it, yeah. and I will say it would have been better if there were people there, so that when Kara Jade or whatever shoots into there to hit the guy, he like slumps over. Well, maybe he she, she could have disintegrated him, but maybe he slumps over if he gets hit, and it hits a control, and the control steers it over, and it trips yeah. the thing or something like that. Well, yeah, I've looked up the cockpits, and sitting down, it's perfectly in line with those window openings, and so the only way you wouldn't see someone is if they're actually sitting in between those window openings. <laughs> yeah, 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 which would be a little bit weird. Well, there are screens yeah. in between that would give you your field of view. And that's probably what you're supposed to look through normally, and the hatches are supposed to be almost like backups. Yeah. I mean, like, we have that in real life on tanks and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there are Oompa Loompas inside may... the ATST, okay? <laughs> well, I mean, that would be that would have made for a more interesting episode. Oh my God, this planet is Loompa Land. Oh my God, the Lord um, expands. And I know that we've we've jumped ahead of just 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 we're getting all through lots of things. Um, there's a quote where they say, "Cut down trees and build barricades that are strong enough that they can't be broken," or he says they can't break it. An ATST shot to any one of those three collected logs is just going to obliterate it. Yeah. 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 Um, can I just say this is an aside, but yeah. ATSTs and ATATs. I've always thought were retarded in Star Wars because they have hovering things and having things on legs is just stupid. Yeah, I will say I'm wondering. I I will agree that they seem stupid. I'm wondering if there is some limitation of hovering that we're not aware of that would make it a certain <laughs> way. I just don't know, but it does seem like that is indeed kind of dumb because we have the Imperial or the uh, the Droid Federation tanks. Those hover. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they also have the ones that have those weird wheels that spin at an angle. So I'm like, man, that's weird. Like, it does seem that hovering would just be the best in almost every scenario. Exactly, yeah. Um, I've never liked them. Ma Mando unloaded, like, all of his gear, but he decided not to bring his ship. Like, he, he took the time to get all of his gear out in the case of needing to arm the village, I guess. But he, instead of just being like, you know what, I'll just bring my ship... It'll be faster to get there. You guys can come with me, and uh, I'll have all my stuff. Like, and and my ship will be in field of view, so I'll know that nobody's stealing it or fucking with it. It's just a weird thing to me. Someone yeah. saying weight is a problem. Hover tech can be jammed. Well, I guess, and and uh, dare I say it, in the Rise of Skywalker, they confirm that speeders can be jammed. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. The can they fly now? Oh, they can fly God. now. Maybe there's a reason, no. I'm not sure, but uh, to get a height advantage, that's actually a good point. Um, yeah, so Hovers and then can't the, the, go through shields. That's strange because, like, they have spaceships where entire starships can fly through shields into the interior atmosphere of landing bays. Anyway, this is getting off topic, but it felt weird that shields he was like risking his life, Baby Yoda's life. All of his gear in his ship and just just everything um, for what was I don't even think he gets paid from what I remember. Yeah, again, this is season three Mandalorian. <laughs> like like man, what an altruistic thing for you to do, buddy. You're gonna help him be free of this horrible menace when you've got really big issues for yourself to be taken care of. But okay, that's his character. I think uh, at least we're supposed to believe that. I I do think the show is trying to say that he has got a heart of goldeny goldeny gold. It's he would. He would help an old lady cross the road, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. He's an iceman. Um, yeah, so the size of the ATST, I'm not convinced that uh, the puddle would have been able to uh, down it. It's like enormous, and um, it, the, the, the thing is only so deep that Kara is like waist deep in water. And uh, I'm trying to get a shot yeah. of how big this ATST yeah. is. 
Yeah, it's really, really dumb that they think that such a tiny distance for an all-terrain walker will get knocked over by that. Like, that's insane for them to think that it will do that. So what you'd expect yeah. to happen with uh, the drop being, I want to say, like, a third of its lower leg at most, is that it would bend its other leg to compensate. <laughs> right? And it would be well, yeah, okay. Yeah, because that's how legs work. I well, mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe robot. they're really poorly me mechanized. <laughs> I don't know. They, well, they should have used the, the Ewok tactics, or like a, a like a heap of rolling logs that it can't balance on, or something. Because uh, this thing is big, and also like one of the reasons that people trip a lot when all of a sudden they take a step they don't expect is because their biology gets surprised. Which doesn't apply to an ATST. Oh. Um, I guess so. We can move to the the original, like the initial assaulting the area plan. So you have two guys by a fire that seem to be like scoutish, and uh, Kara and Mando knock them both out at the same time. Cool with me. Then they spot seven dudes around a fire, and so their plan, from what we can tell, is that they're going to walk into the nearby tent, plant a bomb, and then either bait people inside the tent or just wait for them to walk in. They seemingly wait for them to walk in. Fist fight them. And once all of them have been alerted to all of this, they're going to hope to just jump out of the tent while it blows up and kills all those guys. That seems to be their plan. Now, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm really getting my noggin jogging as best as I can to try and come up what the hell they are thinking and doing. Yeah, this is a huge tally mark for how retarded those two characters are for this whole plan. I cannot believe this is what they went with. I have several suggestions for uh, better plans. First of all being, shoot the seven dudes around the fire. You both can do that well before they'll be able to defend themselves. But if you're really concerned mm -hmm. about not being able to do it, throw a bomb at them. As soon as it goes off, start shooting anybody who didn't manage to get blown up by it. Like, just put a low counter on it or whatever. But, um, their plan like, is ridiculous. Is... Yeah, okay. the whole, like, the obvious thing that they should be doing is we have to disable the ATST before it gets up and starts walking around and blowing things up. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be our priority first and foremost. And what do you know? I have trackers that will find footprints and I can see in the dark and I have thermal vision and I have all of these gadgets and knickknacks and doodads that will allow me to do this and they just don't. And all um, of this with the assumption that he doesn't just blow it up with his starship. <laughs> could have just flown over and shot him all to death. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the ATSC could have fired back, so... I no. I mean, it, it, the logic of, like, would well, he really risk his ship? It's like he's risking his life, so... Yeah, might as well. Also, yeah. that ship takes a beating from that other starship in the episode after this. True. Also, there's no way that ATST can aim straight up. Yeah. Well, it's not shown, but... I, I mean, you know, I, it, I'm i less concerned with that. I'm more concerned with the idea that it's could have gotten Kara to bait it out, and then they hide the ship yeah. a little bit further back. He launches yeah, it, and the ATST is... Using... Mm. So yeah, there's lots of ways to do this. To try and lure it over to then blow it up. Yeah, a lot of this is indefensible, like, it's very bad, um, and a lot of stupid decisions overall. Now, as to how much I feel it should reflect on the character, is this a dumb or smart character, it's going to be determined about how consistent things are in uh, every other episode. Um, mm. And also, honestly, season two as well, I guess, because, uh, for instance, especially with TV shows, I always expect there to be one or two episodes that's going to be pretty lousy, because that's just the run of the mill. I've never seen one whole series where there hasn't been horrible episodes with terrible writing. Um, and so then I'm general because of that, I'm generally reluctant to take on board the actions of ca characters making episodes that are just bad because someone bad wrote them as to a uh, reflection on the character as a whole. And I guess that my comparison would be like, there, there obviously must be bad episodes in Buffy, uh, speckled around there. More. Oh, there's a lot um, of them. Yeah, ones where the characters make really dumb decisions, but I would assume that because everything else is so solid, and they, and especially if actions of, char of characters are contradicting how these characters usually perform, because overall, 
like with the all the other previous episodes, and I admit, like they haven't looked at the the later ones, but there's really one indefensible stupid thing he's done, and everything else was mostly defendable. Um, well, this isn't one stupid thing. That's the yeah, thing. it's a bad, but it's a bad episode. And this I, is and a I, yeah, I, this I, is I a long that. series of terrible decisions. Well, well, hang on, because I would I would need to take every single decision on one by one to an hour to discern if I feel it's really indefensible. And I and we have found one that I'm more than willing to admit that that was bad. And that's you know they give villagers sharpened sticks to defend against an ATST. But, it, but that but this is very much the result of a stupid writer. And uh, and then and so does this mean the character is stupid because of the stupid writer? Well, it would depend I mean, on is, the larger body it? of evidence. Yeah, like, well, well, at the moment, I get what you're the saying. Body of evidence indicates the character shouldn't be this dumb. Um, well, and I don't know. And the previous like, episodes in, uh, say this. I would say, and I I'm not convinced. I, I'm not, I'm certainly not convinced that his norm is to do intelligent things. Well. I'm yet to do, I'm yet to give my call on that. At the moment, I feel he is not wholly incompetent, which is the con and so I'm willing to admit that he he is not perfect and that he certainly fails and make mistakes and makes wrong decisions. But as to being completely incompetent, um, in this episode, there's a lot of problems. But again, for me, I can't really just say that this is the problem of the the character, but more so, this is just someone wrote the so they got the per wrong person to write this episode because it's bad and so, but if it's consistent in the next episodes then i would i would you know probably agree with you yeah and chat yes i know what his point is <laughs> I, I, I um, get his point so when we I'm say stuff like can... han solo is a deadbeat dad that's fucking just like disrespectful but the only reason yeah, we're annoyed like, is because is, that's what they're saying what it is yeah like, you know, people can say, like, the sequels aren't canon. It's like, the reason it annoys us so much is that it is canon. Uh, this is canon to Mandalorian. All of his decisions in this episode are canon. He's an yeah, idiot TLT in this episode. Was just, yeah, Ryan Johnson was just a bad director. That's not really Luke. Like we, um, and as for Buffy, for example, like, uh, the characters are usually pretty solid. It would always be contextual. I'd have to go through the episodes if uh, we were to point something out about it specifically, but it's usually the plot and the world that suffer in the bad episodes, and in this one, well, I, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but I'm fair, I'm very confident there's at least going to be one blatantly br brain dead thing that the characters have done, and probably multiple times. But you take you have to with series, especially, you have to take it as a whole and not judge it by its weakest point. If that makes sense. I mean, I would probably concede that they they were being an idiot in that instance. Um, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to be like, no, it's a bad episode, so we don't count it. But what if it's like, what if it's so brain dead stupid that honestly it contradicts how the character is established uh, in mo in the context of the rest of the series? Um, I would say it's a flaw, and that we have to consider it in the totality of the character. I suppose. Yeah, I can't, I can't, ign I can't ignore it as being bad when the whole thing okay, is. Okay, and, and you know that's consistent. But for me, I'll just say it was a bad episode, and they got the wrong person to write it. Um, I mean, it's certainly a bad episode, but these are still things that characters do in the universe, and their actions, they are, they are taken into account within the world that they're in. Can you recap this argument, because I obviously missed a decent amount, because I was <laughs> dropping in and out. Yeah, you were all tis me there um, for the connection. So the idea is that the episode itself is so awful that we shouldn't really count it as an example of Mando's character, as opposed to just counting that it as... That doesn't make that... No. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Well, yeah, like I could, my, I could see an my, example. My justification like, for it, so. I guess um, I could see an example being when the writing is so outrageously bad and inconsistent with well, like if you had an episode where Homer Simpson just got a hatchet and started chopping people up, it would just be like, oh, okay, so we're not going to treat this as real in my head canon, you know, or something. Like I could understand this is episode four. It's it's so early on that at this point. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I said, it needs to be taken in context with everything else. But if I was sure. just to look at these four episodes, this one would be the outlier for me. And uh, I would want to clarify I mean, as I well. Like it's it not does... like he made a bad yeah. tax decision or he made a poor decision in terms of cooking something. This is like his bread and butter. Yeah, this is this is like what he does. This should be his. This is his thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting. You're saying he he shouldn't have made it like these decisions. By the context of, would you also say by well, the context that, of the pre previous episodes, it's um, portrayed him to have more intelligence than what is showing in this episode? This doesn't. This doesn't seem like it's a huge betrayal of his character based on previous episodes, though. 
See, I don't know. Like, is because like if I take the things that he did, he has done in the past. All the stupid stuff that he's done in the past, and now he's in this situation. Why would those stupid decisions not carry over? Because well, one of the things is that I only agree that one is legitimately stupid. I don't. I don't see a totality of evidence to indicate he's incompetent up to this point. Um, I think he's been decent most overall in the previous episodes. The big issue is that this is canonical. Like, this happened. I made the point, because somebody made the point, like, does that mean we ignore Luke? It's like, you can't really. We can't really, I mean, yeah. you can choose to, but it's canon. So, like, this is why it's really important when you add stories. That, th that's the issue. Is any That's why we're all pissed at the sequel trilogy, yeah. is that it's canon. Yeah, exactly. It's canon. It ruins it. And in this instance, every episode you watch afterwards, you're like, man, remember that really bad plan you came up with on, on the forest planet? Remember that really stupid plan you came up with? That was really stupid. Like, you can't really ignore it because it happened. Even though Sorry. we... I don't know. Sorry. We, we I, recognize I, I, I that think it was it's the fault of bad a, writing. Yeah, I think it's in a balance as well because... If you consider Mandalorian to be incompetent, and then in season two he's really, really competent, it comes out better writing and everything. To me, that's obviously a reflection of bad writing and inconsistent writing and stuff. And what should be the norm in consider of his character? Did he just get better, or? Uh, um, uh, and so it's a it's a more complex kind of uh, I guess argument way of trying to determine the way character, especially when you have different writers on a series, because it annoys me when characters are inconsistent and stuff. And so. Yeah. Do, uh, we move so, yeah, on? this episode is really, really bad to the point where I like the defenses for this have been like legit. Uh, laughable. See, it's not. It isn't just that the Mandalorian is stupid. It's that every a lot of, like of this is all stupid overall. <laughs> like I agree with that. With yeah. The bad guys and the use of and so th this isn't them actively saying we're going to make the Ma Mandalorian make some mistakes in this episode. It's just someone wrote this who was bad at writing. Okay. Yeah. And everything. And... Is and for someone in chat, like, I, we never said that he is a tactical genius or should be. This is not, like, this is the A layman thing can come up with a better about. idea than him. Like, it's... Yeah, like, this is insanely dumb. Like, you don't have to be a tactical genius to just be baffled at this plan. Like, that's the thing. They're, like, start, they're, don't they're do the whole taking ground. our argument and turning it into the absurd version. Yeah, like, don't you think he should be probably better than average? Don't, don't just think he should be at least better than average. Um, well, I guess my point average. is that I feel like they have shown him better than average until this episode. That's why this is the outlier for me at the moment. I would say it's an outlier well, I mean, to me in that it's like uh, incredibly it? stupid compared to his other decisions. Yeah, to like in a, in scale. But when you, for instance, like in with the Mudhorn, he didn't use his thermal vision. Here, he doesn't use his thermal. Vision. Like it's the same mistake, just in different circumstances. Where the stakes he just keeps are... forgetting that he has things that he Got can use for some reason. Yeah, he forgets yeah. his ship. He forgets his thermal stuff. He forgets his foot. He has that big thing. armory, but he never makes decisions about what he should pull from his armory, you know, to to use for the best, like, in the right circumstances. Yeah, I would, would have liked to have seen him use a couple of different weapons and stuff. But, yeah. his, you know, he uses his uh, grappling hook uh, cleverly and consistently and stuff. Except and, when he tries to hang I, Satan. There, there are two points yeah. of... Uh, th sorry, what? Except when he tries, to, when hang he tries Satan. to hang Satan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll come to that one. <laughs> but also, so it, well, yeah, keep going. Um, yeah. Well, no, okay. Oh, nice little, nice comment here. We want him to be better than average, but we want him to be human and not a Mary Sue. Um, that is what, definitely what is our like? position, one hundred percent. Yeah, we yeah. we want him to be. If if you don't think that there is a huge Grand Canyon's worth of space between being better than average and being a Mary Sue, I don't know what to tell you. Also, I, we, we've yeah, I mean, always been okay with characters having a specific trait that they're actually very good at. That would be kind of refreshing to see, actually. Yeah, it's when they're good at everything that it becomes a problem. Yeah, generally it's no problem if they're really good at one hyper-specific thing. And look, Mandalorian, he's tough. He can take on multiple opponents. He's generally good with his uh, grappling hook and stuff. And uh, with the first three episodes, and uh, again, it needs to be contextualized with everything else, but uh, he, yeah, I think is perfectly fine at the moment, except this episode. But that the thing is, the clue for me is that everything is dumb, um, and so. Um, yeah. I think I mentioned it before, but it's just is the ATSC just like doesn't shoot at them for ages. 
um, and then chooses to shoot their houses. It's just bizarre. Like, I was just like, oh my god, this whole thing is over if it just nails Mando. Like, I'm not saying it should, it's just that it doesn't shoot at anyone. So many people could be killed here, and it's just like, do do do. It's like looking around, like, I don't know, who should I kill? It's like, and she's like, stand, <laughs> stand your ground, because like, obviously the, the light goes over some, some people. And so you'd think like, oh no, they've definitely spotted us now, and she's like, no, 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 stay there. Like, even if it's gonna shoot at you, you need to stay there. But it just doesn't. It's like, eh. And she tells people with sticks to just stay there, die. Don't know what's going on, because the yeah, ATST yeah. could have fired, like, so many more shots, and it just sort of doesn't. Yeah, and I know there's someone in chat saying, but how can you say it's a dumb plan? They won, after all. I was like, the reason they won <laughs> is because on. it's just... It's a it's bad writing to fit. It's a, it's something stupid to fix something stupid. Right? I shoot myself it's through like my saying, mouth. It goes through my head. Doesn't kill me. It shoots the guy who's trying to kill me behind me. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah, it's hospital. almost like I was playing against someone in a video game and they lagged and disconnected for a moment. So I killed them while they were AFK. I mean, see, I won, right? I, it must have been better. My plan must have been great, yeah. right? I mean, I won but after all. But it's all consistently stupid as well, and so it's not, it's like yeah, they win in Game of Thrones it's... if we remember. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean their plan uh, was smart. I mean, it's all consistently stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Can't... Is that the outlier? Well, well, the point that, that's or... just why the example wasn't a perfect comparison because technically they're all glitching, and uh, and so. Um, it's not just one being good and then taking advantage of a dumb plan, but anyway. Yeah. Ara takes the rifle, she dro drops into the water, she shoots at it, she doesn't reload and takes a second shot. Ha! <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> and also, out of anyone who should be risking, um, you know, running forward, it would be Mando. It'll be Mandalorian, because he's got the armor. And so, Another weird choice, survival. yeah. Yeah. I also, I'm curious why she thinks getting closer to it would... Like you, you have a long range rifle, man. Like you should. Yeah, and they're trying to. They, they, by by the setup, they needed it to walk in the pond, and uh, and so by jumping forward and getting underneath their field of view to see her and fire at her, it needed to step forward. No, it would step it backward. Was, it, was, it would step backward in that yeah. scenario. And also, it no, was no, shining no, no. its flashlight no, no, right angle, at her. Like she was sitting lower than the ground above her in the pond, and so from the angle of the ATSC, it needed to step forward to look. Okay, over the ledge. I, I guess in that, that case, I'm a I'm ledge. a smarter pilot because knowing that the blasts from the ATSC are essentially like grenade drops whenever it hits anything, I would just back up, aim in her position. If she's hiding behind a foot of soil, she's still gonna feel this next shot. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it's it's yeah, terrible cover like, for the it, firepower at bay, but that I'm just pointing out that was the logic they were trying to pull off. Yeah, and the ATSD yeah. does shoot at her and basically hits within like a foot of her. And then yeah, well, and, she, and, if, and, and, and the soil it, blocks it, and, and so when it's convenient to the plot, soil can block you know cannon. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And if if you if, if the actual goal was well no because she had to get close to it in order to get under the flaps to shoot inside. It, there's a shot that I'm showing right now that's just like, nah, you could have done that from where Mando was. Yeah, I'm yeah. A, I mean, again, there. if you can see red, that's looking inside of the Yeah, just cockpit, shoot it, man. So just shoot yeah, it. Yeah, which is yeah. what... Especially because it's standing I, still for a long yeah. period of time. Yeah, I, I thought she was only shooting at it to goad it, to get it to walk forward, to uh, take her out, or, so she, again, feel the fire see her over the ledge. Not that she was actually going to incapacitate it with a blast through the window because like, oh, okay interesting. yeah man they they really yeah. needed that roof is where the cpu <laughs> was and she <laughs> ruined the roof of the inside of it and it took it out um... someone says in chat wet dirt is very good at absorbing extra energy i wouldn't say grenade explosive equivalent yeah atst is not gonna best you're gonna and besides and... It, it's not like it can only fire once <laughs> like that thing is gonna also, fire again I'm gonna be... I would be a little. It's, it's strange that so Mandalorian, uh, he shoots that rifle at the exposed backside of a sand crawler and it does nothing, but the same shot to the roof of a ATST disables the whole thing. It makes it drunk. That's the weird thing. Yeah, it's, it it's like goes whoa. It's like what's happening? Well, well, I, I, if there was a pilot in there and there was an explosion, they could have been stunned, concussed, or whatever. Um, there wasn't a pilot in there though. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, there's there's the question. It is it, honestly, people are still talking about it. There could be a pilot in there, but you're right; it's a stretch. I mean, like yeah. And even if there was a pilot and it hits the top, you're like, oh, okay. Well, no, no. If there was a pilot in there, though, those rounds seem fairly concussive and explosive, and that could really disorient someone if they're inside. I don't know it doesn't do anything to the um to the back of the sand crawler. 
Yeah, because it doesn't penetrate any armor. She literally shot inside and the explosion went off inside the cockpit. And so if there was anyone in there, that would really ring their head around, I reckon. So that one I can, and especially because it's I'm willing to believe it could bounce there. off the wall and actually hit the dude who's in there, assuming there was one, which I don't There's really... Not. This just, this, I don't know why they did it the way they did it. Like, it really gives me the impression it's an AI, which is just odd. I, I, if I had to gamble, I would say it's an AI as well. But that seems really strange because the, the, um, the ATST is like painted up and it's, it's in a little bit of disrepair. Like, it's kind of dirty, which makes sense that they can't um, maintain it as, you know, up to super standard. But, you have an AI piloting in it, and not just guys sitting up there. It seems odd, but also I would okay. like to uh, make you aware of this 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 little bit, Shad, in relation to the fobs and and Mando being maybe not, but maybe stupid. Let's just assume it does work in the way of proximity or whatever. But once you're on the planet, it, it's not really the point. I just want to get to. Um, he says to Kara after they've killed this ATST and made some done done some stuff. He says, words travel, uh, words going to travel fast, you might want to cycle the charts and move on, implying that it may not be safe for her here anymore, now that words going to get out about this happening. And yet, he's happy for baby Yoda to stay here? Ah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. He's a very silly man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, yeah. In this episode, yes. Yeah, but what about this? Well, yeah, we'll see that later <laughs> episode. episode I, think, stuff that I think, at least I, I feel I was able to defend most of his action in the previous one, bar two. There were two legitimate ones that I don't think has any excuse. But in this, you know one, how in, epi cool. in episode five he's going to do a lot of really stupid things too, though. And six, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. We'll go for it because. Yeah. I mean, the assumption was that episode one, two, and three still had a lot of things in there, and I think most of it is excusable, except, like I said, two. So I guess we need to go through it with my analness to see. If... Um, <laughs> yeah, I also think it's doubly weird that because after the fight, weeks have passed, no, one's, no one's still come. come yet, including the Empire hasn't come. Well, the single bounty hunter does come because that's weeks later. <sighs> Also, if you go to... Like the, I feel like all of these people look in and all these resources, and especially the Empire, uh, don't buy that they haven't been here yet. Um, Honestly, though, I mean, they wouldn't be able to tell the Empire Baby Yoda's there, just that, oh, one of the, you know, one of the gangs got blown up, and there was an ATST, and maybe... Yeah, but, but, a, maybe yeah, but the Empire the takes over Navarra, the Navarra town, so they would have access to all... If you guys are able to uh, pull my stream up, I really this one shot that they show, I really think there's no one in there. Like you yeah, get a I nice big clear view. In. Like it's not like a particular how, like, screenshot. Just look at the way the the hell the the head part of it moves around. It's like there's I don't think there's anybody in there. Um, I don't know what we're looking at, but I've got Disney Plus up. I can quickly. Oh, uh, see. so the timestamp is around twenty eight fifty five. I've got it on repeat right now, which, luckily for me, does not get me in copyright trouble. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I don't know, looking at it, it's like, how could there be a guy in there and we still can't see them with that shot? Yeah, I mean, we know we know what the interior of an ATS is. Where are they? They're ducking down, it's, it's piloted by, <laughs> um, by uh, Ewoks. Ewoks. Done. <laughs> They got sick of people's shit, and they took those e a ATSTs and they went to their own planet. <laughs> the ATST mercenaries going to be hide the themselves out from the ones that they they kept from Return of the Jedi. Um, Play Creation then, said guess, they forgot to add pilots because it's CGI. That's possible, but I doubt it. That's like legit. Like would be if like that actually might be the reason. Um, I mean, when they could easily uh, we just watch it you know a couple of years later and suddenly there's CG yeah, on the extended like... editions when they come out and the blu-rays and everything there's all of a sudden pilots there and i can actually believe that <laughs> um uh, so yeah the last thing i have uh on my list unless you want to continue to develop but the last well i was just gonna have... say because i think i know what you're gonna say and my one i think is right before it um Pretty crazy that uh, both Mando and Baby Yoda were like a split second away from dying there. Uh, with the sniper. 
Yep. Like, yeah. uh, Lucky Kara so turned. Did, did Kara. Fun. Yeah, did Kara turn up, like, yeah. just to it, bait him? Like... Saving from, you know, someone jumping off screen. It's. Yeah, I hate that crap. It annoys me. Very close. If he had pulled that. And they show him pulling the trigger almost. It's like, woof. Yeah, man. He's like, whoa, Kara, cut it closer next time, all right? And, yeah. it's, and I assume what you were going to say, Rags, was just like, how did Kara know? Uh, she just. Um, okay. I guess no. she just did. Uh, I was talking about how the widow wanted him to stay and tells him to yeah, pack up his gear and live a normal life. And he like almost lets her take off his helmet. And he There's legit, no way. Yeah, he legit yeah. considers it and almost does. I remember when I was There's first watching this episode and I was like, please don't take the helmet off. Please, 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 please. please. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it's way too close. <laughs> I was like, damn, he almost was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, abandoned oh, his entire life just to stay in this swamp. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. He's very consistent with his uh, code. Accelerated I guess. years I mean, of his does... character development. Yeah, like that's like that's something. If it happened at the end of season two, season three, I'd be like, maybe, maybe yeah, after all that he's done, like, he's ready to just. Of, this would be the end of the show, honestly. If we were at this point, yeah, like, but he's like done four episodes <laughs> in. Yeah, it's, like it's, man, it's like really a couple done. days have passed or something. Like chill. And then the only um, other thing I've got before the end for this episode for me was going to be the it's just lucky that nobody fucked with his ship while he'd been gone for weeks, question mark. Mm -hmm. I guess there were no Jawas. Yep, lucky, lucky no Jawas on this planet. Alright, yeah, alright. <laughs> it, it was on lockdown mode, guys. Ah, uh, yes, it lockdown mode, alright. has a turret that right. most definitely pops up and shoots at people when they get close. That's a thing. That's That's it. Someone made the get out of my swamp joke because as soon as I said swamp, I'm like, oh yeah, like Shrek, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Do you have um anything else, Shrek? Or... No, that was my last note for this episode. Ah, uh, what a travesty! Dump dumpster fire. And uh, I guess I'll show uh, this. Yeah, for the... so let's go from one dumpster fire to the next. Oh wait, I was going to say that that photo I've just put up as well. So that's um why we assumed oh, you'd I, see I the see. pilots. Right. Like, how would you not have seen one or two of the pilots? Um, yeah, definitely would have. Yep. Especially because what's doubly weird, too, is that this is an AI, uh, allegedly, but it is using a flashlight to look for Kara? I don't know, man. Episode yeah. 4 is a look, fucking Wiz, disaster. If it is an AI, so. usually, <laughs> usually Star Wars never has AI-piloted things. So at the very most, they'll have a droid pilot yeah. or something. But not an actual computer. Um, and so, I assume that if yeah. a droid can do it, you can program it to move itself. I mean, it's just it's it's the same thing. It's like a tool assisted speed run, essentially. Right. Unless they, there is like an in canon, you know, thing that says no computer AI piloting stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I because a rule might exist, but I think it'd be more reasonable to have yeah yeah absolutely an AI can do things. It, it would be more convenient. I, yeah, it's I, it's just it more. It's like, just an extension of what. Auto, we know autopilot exists. It's just an extension of that. Yeah, it's just just such a consistent thing in Star Wars that droids are the ones piloting stuff. Except um, for uh, in um in Solo when they uploaded the robot to the yeah, but she doesn't. She can't pilot even when they uploaded. Right? Yeah, no, well, she no, I know what you mean. I, I think yeah. I agree with you. Like Star Wars has always had it where it's like droids will do it, not the computer itself. Yeah, yeah, um, but if this I mean, was a real universe, I would oh, absolutely in, in bet reality, that have it. Uh, yeah. yeah, in yeah, reality, but in Star yeah. Wars, not so much. Like even in the first episode, when you got droids, you know, driving the cars. What about you know, okay, vulture droids? Yeah, some of the tanks in the yeah. droid army. It looks like they were AI piloted. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, and it, it's either way, it's an odd way to introduce this or to have this be in the show here of all places. But oh yeah. Well. Uh, Moving I'm on to episode to five, then. Move on. Episode five episode is also five. terrible. Yes. Episode it is. five, uh, um, from what I have gathered, is the the public people's most hated episode. I remember a lot of people saying this one felt like a cartoon in terms of like how. Yeah, I don't care about that argument. Yeah, oh, no, I, I don't care about it either because cartoons, cartoons can be amazing. Stupid. So, <laughs> but unless yeah, they're referring to because a lot of people use cartoon to mean in episode one. Sorry. He directed episode one, too. He oh, didn't right, write right. it, but he directed um, it. I was going to say, like, to give leeway, though, some people can use cartoony to mean 
a lot of things yeah. not necessarily is the quality of a cartoon um yeah i mean cartoony is a style it, cartoon is a style not a line of logic but we know what you generally mean when you say that yeah. so it's so, all good in the hood we open up with space battle uh just space battle weird obvious Girl, thing first of all it's just like why doesn't he hyperdrive is it is it damaged or does he? I, I, well, all we got, episode, you know, if I, I was to argue this myself, I... I'll be like, maybe he doesn't have enough fuel. Maybe hyperdrive's not working. Maybe it's just like mm, they don't really account for it. But all right. Yeah, I mean, uh, it would have been so awesome. easy to solve with a simple one line. It's like, well, damn, or like, no, no fuel, and yeah, and so it's one of those. Or just things open the episode play. with the engine damaged. No, yeah, but they um, need a battle. To get they can still do that with the engine. Yeah, they can do that with the. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Just show the engine. Uh, but um, obviously, before his engine is shot, uh, I was curious why he wouldn't have hyperdrive to get out of the way of this guy. But yeah, uh, not. And I will say yeah, I, I, um, that that one's very defensible with a lot of reasons. Unfortunately, then not nothing is given. Just to us yeah, just would have needed a throwaway line. There's a lot of reasons why hyperdrive might not work, and it would have been cool to have accounted for it. Um, but I moving have a note. on. The first note is. The guy who's chasing him, he says, hand over baby Yoda, but then keep yeah, blasting how are you the gonna ship. Do that? <laughs> I'm like, how are you man, be careful, dude. You're, you're shooting a ship with your laser blaster. It would have been really funny for him to down. blow it up. And he goes out in a space suit and looks for baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> like... Baby Yoda, Mary Poppins itself to his ship. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, why, I guess uh, bringing it in cold or bringing it in warm is like a thing bounty hunters say. Not Because he says, that's my line. It's like, is it? That guy just said it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like it's like a unique line. I, I thought it was really cool that that was his line, but it's like a, I guess a lot of bounty hunters say that. Okay. Yeah, it's not a. Doesn't seem like a very. You know, like I, I bet a lot of people would have thought of that, and use it. In any um, event, um, he it, this episode also confirms that the the ship in one blast he can destroy spaceships. So. It would have obviously destroyed the ATST with plenty of damage. It's a powerful cannon, story. which will be relevant in the next episode in terms of the firepower on his ship. You might even say it's quite a dangerous ship, wouldn't you, Rags? Maybe an attack I ship? I would say that that ship... Might you refer to it as an attack ship? <laughs> I might. I would say that fighter, that ship, if, ship I, if that thing was flying at me with those big fuck-off cannons in the front in of it... In a place I where a particular tractor beam thing was activated, not a tractor beam, tracer... Track of whatever. Oh, yeah. We'll get to I'd that. Like, oh shit! This thing's coming right at me. <laughs> we'll get anyway, to that. Anyway, <laughs> um, I have. So Mando's ship is damaged. He's close by to Tatooine. Um, I'm fine with him being around Tatooine. Uh, but at the same time, I just kind of like, wish it wasn't Tatooine. That's all. Yeah, it's like it just seems uh, like now that we know back, Tatooine okay. and the kind of people who are on Tatooine and Mos Eisley, where he goes. Having Baby Yoda with that tracker fob that he knows is active, like, man, what a place well, well, to go. Okay, hang, hang on, hang on. We are assuming that everything on Tatooine is the same as when Return of the Jedi was around. I mean, Jabba the Hutt was killed. and No, uh, this is assuming, tower. like... There's a so lot of this huts, is though. How many... Yeah, this is a couple years after Return of the Jedi, right? It's like two years after Return of the Jedi? I thought it was oh, seven. No, so, that, I, thought. I remember someone saying seven, it was seven. Yeah. Still not, yeah, still not, still not very long. Um, Moss Eisley's not gonna no longer become a hive of scum and villainy. Like, I, right. it, um, it just doesn't... It's I, just even dangerous. Even if it wasn't, like, yeah, like, it, he just, he goes there, and, and I what's... understand it's probably out of necessity, but, man, that you gotta go implied. in there thinking... You're right. What, gotta be really... what baffles me yeah, is I... that he seems to forget that Baby Yoda's a thing. Like, he walks off his ship... <laughs> Tells her to repair it without droids, and then goes and finds a job. And it's like, dude, there's a baby on board. I know. And, yeah, he and, leaves and what's the ship weird door is open. That there is a, a motherly like character right there who ends up being able to take care Thank of him goodness. really, really well. And he and he could have asked her before he left. Like just uh, yeah, which would have made a lot more baby. sense. <laughs> Yeah, and, 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 and they screen. already established that she's willing to do it and capable of doing it, and they just needed to do that earlier than later, but they don't. It's just okay. And uh, call back to the first episode. I still think is an issue. He won't let pit droids fix his ship. He will make deals at once immediately with assassin droids. Yeah, I agree. That's an inconsistency. Um, I wouldn't say it makes him incompetent, but I'd say this is definitely an inconsistency. I'd say the choice with Baby Yoda makes him incompetent. Yes, Sorry? I would 
What he did, the, the, the whole not mentioning Baby Yoda and letting it walk around willy nilly was extreme incompetence on his part, especially in Moss yeah. Eisley, dude. In Mo in Moss Eisley, yeah, like um, uh, anywhere really. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I was gonna I say know. that's why I said yeah. especially. Moss Eisley just makes it doubly so. He just leaves the ship so, door open, doesn't yeah, tell yeah. the mechanic about it, and leaves. So he's obvious, like. <laughs> at least with children he is very incompetent with um but I, I, honestly even as a bounty hunter and this is such a valuable you know target and everything the fact that he's not treating baby yoda with more concern and protection is very odd yeah so um, I'll, I'll add that to my list i think that's definitely an issue with mando yeah i um, like the reference to the droids from the prequels there i said it yeah, they're fine. I mean, that's where you'd expect a pit droid to be. A nice little doing detail they that they're on Tatooine as well. Like, you gotta throw some makes some pluses in. Yep. Yeah. You, know, you gotta you it makes gotta be perfect like perfect sense that yes, they're there. Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, look, the next thing that I have is again, he doesn't oh wait, mind talking to um, right here. about yeah. the droids. I kind of think it's ridiculous that he has this droid racism because uh, it gets to it, like. You can't have a droid that's designed to repair my ship, repair my ship, because I don't trust droids, question mark. Like, what does he think they're gonna do? It's like, how far does this go, Mando? When someone makes him a piece of toast, is he like, nah, I don't trust toasters. Well, I mean, it depends how deep the bias goes, and- I totally get it with IG parents. units, their literal assassin units or whatever, so I'm like, ah, cool. But this is like a mechanic droid that's only- point is to fix things and he's like nah don't trust it it's like uh and well, all I i'm saying is right th this can be a part of his character i'm okay with it if i was in the room with him i'd be like you are irrational as fuck <laughs> like that's all i have to say about that <laughs> but fine he has extreme droidism sometimes yes um, um so like again the next thing that happens he goes up and chats with a droid at the bar he doesn't go to the per. He doesn't go to the person. He hates droids a lot. He doesn't go to the person. Goes straight to the droid at the bar. Yeah. Try to get point. info. It was like, like all the, right. I thought he hated droids a whole lot. Didn't trust him. The but, lady pulled a gun on okay. Baby Yoda. By the way, what if she had just shot and killed? <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> Mad would have been like, oh, damn it. <laughs> just just ruins everything. But yeah. <laughs> you you shouldn't have left him alone. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone said droids can be hacked, or in like in episode uh, 5 when they sabotage the ship. It's like, well, why does he trust her? If you're gonna talk about how someone could be like ill, as as uh, Quill, Quill points out in the last episode, a droid is like not good or bad, it's just according to whoever programmed it in the first place. And if they're her droids, then surely he trusts her enough to fuck with the ship, so and surely he should trust the droids. And if we're using the droids can be hacked thing, what about the IG unit? We literally know it can be reprogrammed. The show tells us that can happen. Yeah, like so I just people can just decide to sabotage your ship. Yeah, I people think... can take your shit and leave. I think they could have done a better job explaining to us his position on droids. It seems strange to really figure out exactly. I think it definitely could have been done with more consistency. Because I actually I really like it. The idea that you have an aversion to droids in general. Um not because yeah. like it, it kind of reminds me of um Ripley and Aliens. She like hates the androids, but then she was on a nice yeah. little arc with uh, Bishop. Could have done that with Mando. Was, they kind of try it in this. They kind of yeah. They tried to pull that off because he ends up liking a droid, <laughs> not wanting yes. him to die. Um. All right. Uh, um. So I say um the droid the droid says the guild doesn't operate here anymore. And he's immediately uh, summoned over to by Toro, I believe his name is, who is trying to do and do a job to get in the guild. It's kind of funny to think Which about. This like... is a job that the guild is okay with. Well, what what do you mean? Uh, that, that they're okay with the, the guild doesn't operate here. I guess no, he no, means no. that there's the no guild... HQ here. Yeah, Maybe that's, that's what, what it means. But the guild. Clear. It's okay if a known job, because uh, it's okay if there's a known job here and someone's here wanting to use that job to get in the guild, but the guild doesn't operate here. No, no, I think you're just reading too much into it. There's no guild HQ there, but if you have hey. a target there, you can go to the planet to grab it. Yeah, that, that's not... That good. makes sense to me. I just find it funny that there's a guy who's got the perfect setup for Mando to join him, sitting two meters away from him when he asks publicly 
I need work. I, I, I don't think that one's a, a fair criticism either, because assumedly he might have gone to many planets and found nothing, and then uh, well, I guess it is convenient that it's the one he got he broke down on that he finds works. Well, so, I, I would, uh, I'm not even going to go that far, right? I would just say all I need is for like you could be like, has anybody got work here? And then that's how he finds it, as opposed to the one guy to overhear their conversation is like, oh, I do. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> good. Um, obviously, it's to um, facilitate the story moving, moving, moving. I'm just like, oh, honestly, okay. he stands out like a sore thumb in his Mandalorian armor. All he needed to do was not even have the conversation, have someone walk up to him and say, hey, yeah, you're Mandalorian. I think that would actually be better. You reckon you can help me out? <laughs> and the, that'll do it. I was like, okay. Um, so, moving on to Toro, when he has Mando come over. he's uh, So, Mando declines the job to bring in the super deadly galaxy-known assassin, which is a wise thing that Mando does to decline that. It's a very, very dangerous job. But when Toro says he's new and has no experience, he agrees to do the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this would be another moment of Mando being... Ridiculously stupid. Like this, this makes no whoa, sense. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you, well, say, on, if you on. say it's a suicide mission and he's no, like, no, no. if he feels so, sorry for the guy and wants to show him, guys, if he feels <laughs> sorry for him and wants to show him the ropes a bit and stuff, and you know, all right, I'll help you out because you knew. That, that wow, one, where'd that, that come size. from? What do you? Yeah, but... <laughs> Didn't you just say that he said no, but then it's because he says, um. Uh, yeah, he's not looking for okay, that. Uh, wait, so, so let, let's it's clarify, right? Job. So the the stakes of the of the of this proposition are Mando, a pretty experienced dude, uh, is talking to Guy, neutral at this point, who's claiming that he's got a bounty to capture, assassin lady. Mando is very strict in saying that I will not pursue this with you because she's incredibly dangerous. The guy says, he's, "Hey, I'm Mando completely says, I'm not inexperienced." For that kind of heat. Yeah, he says, "I'm completely inexperienced," so that changes Mando's mind. And if someone wanted to argue to me that uh, it's the fact that instead of getting half the pay, he could get all of the pay, Mando's point isn't about the pay; it's about the danger. Is, yeah. Yes, it's the fact that he specifically says, "I don't need that kind of heat," because I assume this is when he remembers that Baby Yoda is a thing, yeah. and he doesn't want that kind of attention that this high-profile target brings. Uh, see, I think what they were trying to pull off is that they're trying to show his compassion that he feels sorry for the young guy is probably going to get killed if he tries it on his own, and when he finds out his news, like, "All right, I don't want to see you get killed. I'll help you," because ultimately, under his helmet, Mandalorian is a really good guy. Yeah, but if he well, thinks that it's going to kill him, what good is it to help? You'll just both die. Why wouldn't no, he be like, no, he don't do it? He doesn't think it's a suicide mission. He thinks he'd be able to take it on, but he, he first didn't uh, was unwilling, but then was like... Say that. I think he said that he wouldn't even do it. Did he? Let me go. Well, he declines. Of course he wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, Mando said no. He leaves. He he walks away. He's gone. He says no. I'm not looking for that kind of heat. It is super dangerous. Yeah. Oh, you don't have any experience? Let's do it. Oh, let's do it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm just reading the subtitles here. He, he is fairly explicit that she's an elite one who's used to taking out... Uh, she made her name by killing... Yeah, he's looking for work, like, but he's not looking for that kind of work. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. All right, well, then... Yeah, and uh, apparently... Yeah, they, they, just, they just made the mistake of making her too tough, because he clearly is looking for work. Um, yeah, what's weird, though, is that the fee that it takes to get his ship repaired is apparently the money that someone carries around in their wallet. Well, then, I mean, we can bring that up later if you want. Because <laughs> that's the yeah, end. We will bring that up later, but he it's... Does he have the money for the repair himself already on it? Nope. Thought. Nope. He uh, takes it from Toro. Which, and Toro right didn't get it from any just... bounty. That's just what he has on him. Yeah, he just pulled it. Just Toro's wallet. That was enough. So, yeah. Moving on. Um... So he's got um, the uh, the fob, and Mando's like, "Give me it," and then he breaks it and says, "It's in his head." How the hell does that work? How that doesn't make sense. You can't that memorize a fob. That. It's a it's a homing no, device. You can't memorize break, a fob. He didn't break the fob. He broke the puck. He broke the fob. He broke the fob. He didn't have a fob. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't even he have, didn't a have, have a. Oh no, wait. He did he? Yeah, puck. no, he did have a puck, but he broke he the fob. I will double check just I to can, make sure. But I am. Very, I can promise very... he broke the fob. Take a little look, see. Oh yeah, he says, "Give me the tracking fob," and he holds out his hand. Yeah, and then he breaks it. Yeah. But this makes no yeah. sense. Yeah, you can't he, memorize he a fob. fob. Yeah, yeah he, he can't the memorize fob a fob. It's a tracker. <laughs> yeah. Also, okay. I have no I idea why he broke it. 
I guess, I guess because he assumed yeah, that Mando could, could kill him. the location it was pointing. Because I guess he didn't want Mando to take the fob and run. Yeah, and go with the bounty is on his own, I guess. Even though he wanted Mando it to be that he's invaluable is... to the uh, to the operation, which I kind of understand. Yeah. But how the hell do you memorize a fob? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, if she moves, you're fucked. <laughs> like this is insanely. It ruins dumb. the whole and thing. Then Mando, by the way, still goes, still goes along with the plan, even after he breaks the fob in front of him. He still goes with the plan. He still goes. He says, still goes with it. And then like, again, man, man, like no, this, this episode idiot. is pretty damn bad. So, so immediately after, right, you got the his knowledge that this guy is desperate to get into the guild. He's aware of the guild. He got a job from the guild. And he allows him to see Baby Yoda while also being a Mandalorian. I can't help yeah. but assume, which is confirmed later, actually. That there's a story going around right now that reaches the port that he ends up in the next episode, and it reached the uh, the assassin lady thereafter. That there is a Mandalorian that did not, uh, well, that took back his bounty. That's a baby, and he's on the run. Like, why would you let anyone see Baby Yoda? Why are you not saying, "Hey, lady, keep him in the ship. Don't let anyone see him." And the, of all the people you would have to see him, why a guy who's directly involved with the <laughs> guild? And again, like this is just Mando being an idiot. Hey guys, um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to call it quits. Uh, I got you. That is absolutely all right. Quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Over six hours. So. Oh my god. Oh, it's fucking ten twenty. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, it's been heaps of fun, and you know, it was a good kind of relaxing thing to do before I head off to surgery tomorrow. So, uh, lots of fun, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I can't stay for the whole thing though. Um. Well, do you want to uh, talk about what's coming for your channel, even though, technically speaking, you're taking a month off, sort of? <laughs> yes, yeah, not much! <laughs> uh, and everyone kind of already knows mm -hmm. uh, where I'm from and stuff, so it's not much, much to say. Just well, you gotta... pressed the update, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And so, appreciate you yeah. guys, appreciate the chat. Lots well, of fun, yeah, thank you and, for uh... coming on and giving us quite the uh, the conversation to have. Um, I, I, wish, I wish Mandalorian I know, oh, was gosh. better. I know that was so. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, why I gotta go now. We like with all the episodes left, we could I easily go for another six hours, and I should really, you know, spend some time with the family and things and get ready for that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. Right. Thanks for Thank hanging out for as long as you did. Yeah. Thank and good luck with uh, good good luck with the surgery. Absolutely, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, be the best patient you could be. <laughs> we look forward to your speedy recovery. Oh, no sudden no movements. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the surgery itself is, is the easiest part. It's the damn recovery is going to be miserable. Blech. So anyway. I hope you're a good listener. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'll catch you later. Toodles. Yeah, see you later. Bye-bye. All right, so I suppose, should we just try and machine gun these out? Yeah, we and can just... machine gun these out. Um the yeah we we got all these bullet points we can go through them i'll try to pay attention for chat to get some potential counters to a lot of these mm -hmm. so we can go through so there is a delay on the stuff we say and when chat scrolls up so give it some time but if you think you have legit counters to some of the stuff we say or just funny jokes then by all means send them through yeah we're in we're in efap after like hours at this me. point we're into 5 a.m britain time midnight almost for a lot yeah. of americans like if you're here with us tonight that means you're in uh your spooky after hours for efap it means you're a you're a real fan mm -hmm. okay this is the this is real loving hours um so. Yo, uh, we are at um, him seeing he lets Baby Yoda be seen by Toro. Apparently, he doesn't seem to care if people see him. Yeah, it's very weird. Uh, next up, I only got thing, a small yeah. thing, which is the Tuscan Raiders magically appearing. Um, yeah, they're like nowhere to be seen. I mean, they and then only he's just magically like, appear. Well, I'll say they only magically appear to him, who's inexperienced. Mandalorian knows they're there. But like, looking at this shot. I'm not sure where the hell they came from. I guess they were like just beyond the ridge. Um, Maybe. Um, I but I did. The show does point out that they only surprise the the green guy. They do not surprise Mando. He probably sees him walking up and is like gonna talk with him. So. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, I said, it was I, only, I it was only shows, gonna be. A, I think it shows the skill gap between the. They're two. like behind him. I don't know how they did it. 
But yeah, all right, fine. I'm I'm willing to let that one go anyway. Um, um I have the do back with the rider. It's a fucking obvious ass trap slash. It's just man. Just walk up to it, I guess. Flip him right on over. Yeah, and uh, Mando relying on Rookie Man to defend him. It was like, okay. Yeah, instead of saying, hey, you go do it. I know he has the armor, but I just it just surprises me that he's not... Uh, it, he seems very trusting, and uh, he's more trusting very of humans trusting. than droids, but I guess that's a part of his uh, his character. You think, he'd, you think a guy in his position would just be really resistant to trust people? Very hesitant to place that kind of trust in strangers he just met but i guess he's just a really trusting guy you know those bounty hunters just just be trusting two wild and trusting guys sounds racist whatever what? you just did you, oh you don't God. get the reference i guess someone said why do you think his thermals would detect the mudhorn when there's the predator movie so a mudhorn is really really big and it's inside of a cave that's fairly close to you. And when it comes to the Predator, Schwarzenegger specifically, and the, the people who do that, they are sapient and intelligent beings who are specifically trying to hide from thermal vision. Yeah. So I understand what you Not are whole, saying. Whole, I don't think that they all apply. I just, I, but I do understand what you're saying. So Rags has to love Mandalorian now, take Shad's spot. <laughs> I'll fucking do it. I'm not even sure where he gets hit oh, by by the second no shot. It seems to hit him in his bum and make loads of sparks. I don't know what this means for Mandalorian. Maybe he has some kind of... It means he's got that fucking ass-like fire. He has a best car butt plug <laughs> and it managed to hit that. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, uh, so they establish that there is a sniper lady. She hits him in his armor twice. And they decide that they'll wait yeah, till nightfall. Yeah, two more hits. The weird part of this is that they want to wait till nightfall so they can flashbang her on the way to getting to her. Which uh, would work in daylight. I don't really know why they need to wait for nighttime. Yeah, because the flashbang, because yeah. it, it's like a almost like an electrical. Because she's looking through a scope. It, it's like a thermal scope essentially. Um, so they could have done that during the day. I'm not going to count it against him though, because it is a it's it's a risk that he shouldn't take to assume that the scope is electronic and not optical. Um. So I'm fine with him waiting till night in yep. that regard. But my issue is, why are you not taking these speeders and fucking zooming all the way around Rounds, to cut yeah. wide to get to the to get to the stone? Why are you remaining out here until nighttime? You need to be <laughs> flanking her with your speeders behind the dunes. Yeah, no, you can only go where you forward. I mean, that's, that's how it works in Star Wars. You can only go forward. You know, you can only go through the fight cloud. You can only go through the desert to go get also, to places. Space cancer. Yeah. yeah also, right. I gotta say, this is another part where using his thermal vision would be very useful, and he does not use it. Mm -hmm. Because he can see the dewback with his thermal vision later in this episode from where she was sniping. So he asks her, where is she? Instead of him even making the attempt to use his thermal vision to try and spot her on the ridge. Mm -hmm. So, also, someone said I don't know who I Steve know. Martin is. Yeah, I do. He's and the it's guy. It's because I did the the two wild and crazy guys reference, and you didn't acknowledge it. Oh, I don't Martin think I've seen did. that. Um, uh, right. um, it's it's really good. It's it's yeah. probably it's really good. It was Steve back Martin's when the guy SNL who had like funny. white hair for sixty years. Yeah, he's. Panther. <laughs> yeah, Steve Martin. And Dan Aykroyd too. He's just like perpetually white hair, but he he's one of those people that just never seemed to age because he got white hair early, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, that was this is more real life tech being applied to Star Wars. No, I'm using the rules of what they the show. They specifically the show, show him in her spot where he can see using the thermals the do back. Yeah, to which she would immediately think well, why doesn't he use it earlier to when he's trying her, to yeah. find her? It's yeah. like he never he never is fully aware of his arsenal and what he can use. He always seems to be oblivious to what technology he has. It is very strange because like I'm like I play Arma and all sorts of video games and rarely am I like forgetting shit like thermal vision. 
and like grenades and equipment that I yeah. have, I you would think that if your shot. life depended on yeah. it, you would be really well attuned to your own. <laughs> Especially you got time to kill. If you wait until oh, the night, yeah. you might as well get your, night, your uh, thermal out. Um, it was kind of weird that he concluded what make of sniper she has when being as of being shot by it. Um, yeah, how, how could he possibly know? Like, I guess that's how that works. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was like, huh? I, I like, I like the idea that in the real world you shoot someone with a gun and they're like, oh, clock seventeen. Oh, <laughs> you got me. There's got to be times where you yeah, can I, tell certain things about certain guns. I just didn't. It, it's a, it's a this, rifle yeah, blast. I don't, like, I, I don't really. It. Only a something something Mark B modified rifle could make that shot. Is like that's fucking bullshit. This is Star well, yeah, Wars. Yeah, Do mean, not tell me that only one rifle can be a sniper rifle. Fuck off. There, there can only be one in a universe where there are apparently seventy million <laughs> inhabited planets. Therefore, yeah. countless numbers of people and different weapons. Someone in the chat makes a good thing. Mando should have used the thermals only to have them not work because the assassin's clothing has anti material. That would have been nifty. It would have made her yeah. more menacing. He would have been yeah. like, I can't see her on the thermals. Maybe she's using such and such fill in the blank tech. I was like, huh, yeah. that makes her more dangerous. Ooh, she's sneaky. But then they sneak up it's, on her anyway. But, that's yeah. the worthwhile thing to think about with a lot of the flaws is there's always an opportunity to do something better with, even with a little bit extra work, like a little extra, you know, explanation. And someone said they shouldn't have given him this much tech to begin with. I agree, because he doesn't use it anyway. Like, yeah, if they would have given him a bunch of tech and he actually used it in logical ways, I would have loved to see him using all his gadgets. Um, Andreas Edgeland said he gets shot in his armor a lot, so he's learned to know the feeling. <laughs> well, what? that's... Is that well, real? That, that doesn't bode well for him. He's been shot a lot, so he's he been, knows yeah, how he, he can so tell what armor. guns are being shot at him. Like, wow. Like, like, I'm so shit, I'm really good at being shit. I mean, it would have just been easier if he's like, shit, he got hit and he's like, hmm, range, tries to figure out range or something, and tries to figure out, you know what I mean? Like, it, he or doesn't need to be so specific. Or if he just said, he, he's like, did you hear that sound? That sounds yeah. like a da 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 rifle. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to the way that that felt when I got hit <laughs> makes me think that it was this rifle. Oh, he said it was a and, joke. Okay. Because for a second joking. there, I was yeah, just like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I would have been thinking if I was directing, I would have been like, it would have been so cool if in Star Wars that the blast hits him or the blast lands next to him and it's quiet and then you hear the report of the laser going off. That would have been that nice little detail that gun lover and me would have loved mm -hmm. um, um let's he, see they let like a whole day pass while he's sleeping in front of a guy he's just met with baby yoda so far away on its own i just it all seems so like wow he's so casual about all of this like it, it just feels like he should be a little bit more concerned but um mm -hmm. he's a very confident man it's nothing to do with his lack of i don't know intelligence it's all to do with the fact that he knows what's up and he's in control someone said he could see the heat of her gun that would be a nifty detail i'd have an issue with that that, that would be nifty um it would show that like he knows to look for it or he knows to really zoom in or like she shot twice three times whatever so he's like he's looking for the hot but like there's all these rooms for these cool ass little details that would give us an insight into all the tricks he's learned all of the training he's processed all the stuff that he's processed along the way but instead we get him doing stupid shit all the time when uh, assassin lady is like she knows the guy is behind her with a gun she like flips around throws it and it hits him and his gun knocks it out of his hand which happens again in the next episode if you remember yeah, there are two consecutive episodes where someone comes up behind someone else with a gun, a, a woman specifically, and she turns around, throws a knife, and knocks the gun out of their hand. And I'm like, oh, oh I guess is it that didn't work. Okay. I just watched the clip. It doesn't knock it out of his hand, it knocks his hand really far away, and before he can re aim it, she kicks it out of him. Oh, well, very strange. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's effectively it the same thing. No, if someone throws a knife at your at your gun, it's you're oh, not going to be like, no. whoa! <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't understand why he flips so far back. It's like, like he is like his gun was hit by a fucking punch. <laughs> it's like she threw a knife at you, mate. Calm down. It's one of those like it's it's almost like throwing star sized as well. It's not very big. 
Also, like, it's really weird that these people have all this incredible training with throwing knives in the Star Wars galaxy. Yeah. What like, that seems that? like a really specific skill that, like, man, all right. Like, I get it. She's an assassin. But then the person in the next episode, she's good at throwing knives. Like, man, everyone knows how to throw knives in space. They're not even like space knives. They're just sharp metal. Well, it's done. They, 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 they glow blue uh, in the next episode. She has blue knives, yeah, rags. Glow blue, they glow weird. blue. That means they're space knives. Fucking space knives. It was a heavy um, knife. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So, what? Uh, uh, Fennec has apparently got. So, Fennec is the name of the assassin, by the way. Fennec has a rendezvous point to get to. Why did she stay here? So yeah, is it just, is it just a good good place to shoot people who are coming after her, I guess? Um, also, um, he doesn't take his... Because someone brings it up. Bef I don't want to forget the point for later. Uh, someone says, Mando probably has the gun and knows what equipment goes with it. Um, don't know if, if he had it. Why does he use... Why does he not use it ever? Why is it never brought up? It isn't shown on his uh, gun rack or anything like that. Also, I think it's really strange that a bounty hunter who wants to have very non-lethal options, especially at range, carries a disintegrating laser that leaves no body behind. Comment if necessary. Um, I was distracted by vibroblades. Apparently that's what's being used as vibroblades. So many people have said it. Apparently, it's a thing. Um, I just I, and I know this is take taking video games into account, but I know in everything from Dishonored to Metal Gear Solid to all these to Splinter Cell and all that stuff, non-lethal takedowns at a distance are extremely valuable. But he has a disintegrator rifle, which just seems like a bounty hunter who would want to if he kills somebody. It could be the mark that he has to kill. He might need confirmation of the kill, so a disintegrator leaves no body. And even earlier in the original trilogy, Vader says no disintegrations to Boba Fett, right? Because bodies need to be confirmed or brought in. I mean, it's weird. I'm not sure what how how that works. It's weird. Uh... It doesn't bother. It doesn't bother me much. I just think it's really weird. Um, Someone says utilizing throwing knives makes some sense, Rags. Normal people do not have access to lightsabers in universe. That is an interesting therefore. Like, no, I understand that it makes like logical sense that it's a thing that is done, but like, like back to back, we have two people who are so good with throwing knives they could spin around and specifically throw the knife to hit guns out of people's hands. It just seems like a very specific skill. Vibro vibro blades can disable lightsabers. Oh. Mm. Uh. So yeah, they capture her. Um. Yeah, they capture her. Uh, he shows up. Mando trusts this her. guy enough that he's gonna go and retrieve the do back, and leave him with her and a speeder that could easily take them both away. Um, a lot of trust to put into that guy, and it's not rewarded, because no. the guy decides that after <laughs> what he him. finds out from the girl, that he can go and get the bounty by taking Baby Yoda hostage and using it to try and kill Mando. He kills Krennic, Ken, 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 Ken whatever, assassin, it's not Krennic, because that's Rogue One. Um, <laughs> one of his bounties, right? like, yeah, he kills her, and he doesn't sling her body on the back of the speeder, because you can do that. Uh, yeah. to collect the bounty. He just leaves the body because he thinks that it's much more worth it to just set up this whole Mando As killing thing. As opposed to, you know, just putting her on the bike and potentially getting double the money. No? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really strange. And, and here's the thing. It's really strange that rookie guy doesn't do it. That's the whole reason he's fucking out here in the first place. No, he's a it rookie. He gets really... tricked. He thinks oh, okay. he's, 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 he's biting off more than he can chew ranks. He thinks like, yeah, I could go for the silver medal, but I want to go for gold. Oh boy! Even though getting the silver medal, he can also get the gold medal too. Just two gold Taking medals. Taking her body along doesn't con contradict this. But also, it's super, super weird that Mando doesn't take the body either. 
He yes. specifically took this job for the money, I'm guessing. He needs money. Would, he legitimately just doesn't bring the body that's worth a lot of money. Also, let's do some logistics, shall we? Uh, they it, At man. nightfall, they go to attack her. And they go from where they were hiding, around where the dewback was, uh, all the way to her. And then Mando immediately goes back to get to the dewback, right? So the time it takes for him to yep. get to the dewback and back to them, it's day. How long yeah, is it going to take him to get from that spot on that creature all the way back to Mos Eisley? And someone said he's not Very up long. It'll uh, be an immense Frank, amount of just... time. We're talking like a week yeah. or something, I don't know. Yeah, someone say he's not after the money. It's like, but it's like he's basically turning down free it's money. At this point. It's free prestige. Yeah, it's it's not even about the money. Just yeah, this is free it. prestige and free money. Like the whole reason that, um, the whole reason, like, because remember, both the new guy, he needs the body for the prestige. The money that comes along with it. I mean, he says he's not in it for the money, but like that's free money that comes along with it at this point, especially if he's planning to double cross Mando. Mando how is he needs money to, to repair to his the guild. Actually, how is he? Gonna, how, is he how, how is Mando going to claim the money if he, he's on the bad side? Well, he could. He could probably hire hmm. someone to do it. I'm sure that there's. Yeah, I'm sure that there's not. Yeah, there's just... a way. There's a way, right? Like, oh yeah, absolutely. Not every like the guild isn't the be all end all of bounty hunting. And plus, in he fact, he could make a deal with a bounty body. hunter. He could be like, "Pay me now, and I'll give you this bounty for free." Well, not yeah. for free, obviously. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he doesn't lose anything by taking the body anyway, and there is potentially very good rewards. Um, and he needs also, the money. That's the important yeah. thing. Also going to say, really, really bugs me that they don't take the, her amazing rifle and scope and helmet. Yeah, might as well. Like, I am... Like, and, and we have this problem in a later episode, but man, you got this new green guy, and he's learning the ropes, he wants prestige... Not only would that make an excellent trophy because you took it from this specific person, but that is an incredibly valuable, useful tool that you will need. Like, this rifle is probably worth a lot of money. He could use it in the future. The fact that they just don't take things that are super useful bugs the shit out of me. Um... I've spoken. <laughs> So that pushes us all the way up to when he actually gets back, I guess. Um, uh, and, and someone says, yeah, they mentioned guild rates. He's like, yeah, because in the first episode, he says there's a lot of business, but not everybody wants to pay guild rates. There's plenty of places to get bounties and turn in bounties that don't involve the guild. Also, there's no way that's the only guild. There's no way. If there are no 70 way. million inhabited planets, then there's more than one guild. Yeah, don't tell me that Carl Weathers runs this the the whole galaxy's guild from the this one bar on Navarra. Yeah, the one that is guild Taylor, in the man. galaxy. I can only pay you in flan from Flanville or <laughs> Imperial credits. That's all I have. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's no way. There's there are many guilds. There's a flan guild. <laughs> Trade flan exclusive guild. flan. Uh <laughs> So we next for me was just the, when when he's like reveals himself to Mando, he's like, "Here I am." And Mando's got like a clean shot of his head, and he doesn't take it. And it's like, okay, I guess he thought it was too dangerous to try, but he does later when it's essentially the same scenario, except not really. Like like the yeah, the guy's still holding he, Baby he Yoda. For a worse, yeah, he waits for a worse time to shoot instead of like, that's the thing. How you want to make Mando badass? Toro walks out of the ramp with her and Baby Yoda in his hand. And remember, Mando's already pointing his gun at him. They're having a standoff. He just fucking pops him in the head, just right there. Just also, not even, uh, doesn't even say a word. He just, poof. At 2804-ish, uh, the guy is like taking aim, and he looks like he's gonna fire. And I'm just curious, what, he, what is he aiming for? It looks like he's aiming for Mando's head, which is gonna do fuck all. Why does everybody keep aiming in his head? <laughs> it's like, stab. Um... Uh, it is very weird. Um, I guess because we know that his best car armor will stop blaster bolts. He's seen him get hit twice, but he's like, "I'm gonna hold you up with a blaster." I'm like, okay. It's really People lucky he didn't just execute Baby Yoda when he does this whole flashbang plan. Yeah. But um. Yeah, uh, looks like he wins. He takes the money off his me... corpse, and it's enough to pay for for the repairs, as we mentioned earlier. Like, all right. I'm like, 
yeah, some of these points we covered. Mando doesn't shoot Toro. Toro threatens to shoot Mando despite knowing his armor. Mando shoots Toro after the distraction, not always standing still with his gun already raised at him. So Mando gives her money taken from Toro. So the amount of money, as I said before with Shad, the amount of money that he needed to get in order to fix his ship and pay her and be on his way, it was the amount of money that apparently a guy carries around in his wallet. Like he literally yeah. bends down takes the money out of the wallet and just doesn't even count it. He just dumps it into her hand. I guess it was a sign of him saying, this is all I have. Hopefully it's enough. And she was like, okay. I guess. So, okay. Um, of course. Um, I, let me see. A lot of, There's, like, I, the, the, the majority criticism from, like, fans in general were that this kid was invented for this episode and he was killed, the assassin was invented for the episode and was killed, the ship was damaged for the episode and repaired, and Mando leaves, and so it's, like, inconsequential. I mean, nothing is accomplished, well, nothing's accomplished by this episode. Um, yeah, but Gus, um, Gus shows up right at the end. Well, here's the thing, that doesn't actually, that doesn't, that's no, that's of no significance. I mean, if anything, it hurts, no. because shouldn't he yeah. then have access to the, like, oh, Baby Yoda scanner is going <laughs> off. Baby Yoda, where yeah. are you? It doesn't uh, solve yeah, anything. Of course. And there's still, there are, there are other tracking fobs on her body. Of course, other, ba other bounty hunters would show up, and I guess a bounty hunter just gets a freebie, so lucky him, I guess, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but it's of no surprise that someone shows up to her body. You would expect that. But this is an episode where nothing happens that's meaningful. And one of our complaints is that they breeze by a lot of stuff that really needed a lot more development. And you have episodes like this. And the next episode where just stuff doesn't happen. Uh, like, next episode is completely filler. Yeah, it's um, totally. And I'm fine with filler. But the problem is that it's at the, the expense of filler. rushing. Other, the yeah, problem. they're rushing other stuff. That needs to be developed the, more. I feel. Should we? The uh, plot critical episode. Yeah. I was just gonna say because like we're at seven hours. Um, we need you know at least try to get some super chats done before we hit the the timer. And uh, theoretically, if we got six, seven, and eight, should we just uh, do this again once Shadow's we have back? A... Or I'm fine with that because episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I am too. These I have a lot of notes for these. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are not going. We are not going to get through. I don't actually. Thing. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, don't, I didn't even realize this, but apparently half of my notes are uh, episodes six, seven, and eight. So. Yeah, six, seven. Yeah, they are. A, they are six, a big seven chunk. And eight, six is really. I got a lot There's of so issues. So much filler with... in this show. There is, yeah. Which uh, I, I, I think that we'll have to save us for another for the next time we talk about it. I guess, but like filler isn't inherently bad or anything. No, um, it's just like, when this, when the plot's already being rushed as it is, and half of the episode's superfluous. Yeah. Sometimes stuff doesn't happen on the Mandalorian. No, like, stuff doesn't happen that's meaningful in these specific episodes. Like, he begins and ends with nothing having been accomplished. They are filler episodes. Like, the plot is not advanced well, yeah, in any cause, way. Because you think about... The plot event episode one is when the plot starts, so there's obviously a lot going on. Episode two, the main advancement is oh, maybe Yoda knows the Force, but that's not that's that's sort of like not important till later on. Then episode three is obviously really a plot important. Episode four, totally a tangent. It's a complete tangent. Lots of stuff happens, but it's, it's not directly tethered to the Baby Yoda thing. Episode five happens and it's over and nothing's changed. Nothing. Episode six happens and it's over and. Like, five and six are the real filler episodes. Yeah, and we're fine with filler as an idea. We're fine, but yep. you have you only have eight episodes here. Like, you don't have a lot of time yeah. for filler. There are only this eight episodes short... here. A fourth of And the episodes are... that are in there a lot are not even 40 minutes long. A lot of them are less than 40 minutes. This is not a lot of content. Yeah, this one is like... This episode is... Let me go to the credits. The credits are at... Four minutes in, at least. No, even more than that. Five minutes in. So yeah, this is like a twenty-five minute episode. Yeah. Uh, and again, yeah. it's in. Uh, it's a problem because so much is really rushed before this and after this that needs to be developed for it to be impactful. But instead, we're fucking around in the desert. And so I was going to say, like, uh, hopefully, we have provided a lot of. Uh, 
food for thought about Mandalorian. Perhaps people won't take it that seriously and that it seems more like nitpicks, or it's ex exploring some stuff that maybe people weren't uh, as aware of. Who knows? Because we'll find out in the comments. I have a feeling that this one is going to be controversial. But uh, we will return, I suppose, once Shad comes back. We'll try and organize an episode for uh, the remaining three yeah. episodes. And um, I, I was going to say, I'll just, uh, I, I'm happy to kick on with Super Chats unless there's anything else anyone wants to say. Not right mm. now, nah. No, um, <laughs> okay. I, I, all of our complaints have been on a spectrum. We've talked about stuff that even we admit is nitpicky, but we're just bringing it up anyway. All the mm. way to really, really impactful stuff that's huge. And everything in between. Not all of the cri criticisms criticisms we have should be placed on the same scale and of the same importance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the little stuff really adds up into a big pile. Yeah, and again, five thousand cars. We, yeah, we still have six, seven, and eight, which mm -hmm. are bad. Mm -hmm. Seven so, kind of piqued my hope uh, in the first half, but then right at the end, it just yeah. Comp Completely plummeted. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, I don't think anyone can say it's a circle jerk on EFAP, right? at, least, at least with this episode, for sure. <laughs> like, this is just... There's no way. I don't understand how you can say that. Um, yeah, that is just like, like I said, there will be a lot of motivation ascribing. I hope uh, people try and avoid it as best as possible. But um, I know we're going to get the whole, you just don't like anything Disney. All right. Yeah, well, we were on record of that not being true, so. Yeah. I mean, like, we want it to be good. Like, guys, we want this to be really good. I want to be excited in the same way I'm excited for the next Batwoman episode. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to be like, oh, sweet, the next Mandalorian's out. I can't wait for this kick-ass, amazing character to just be doing stuff and watching his exploits and seeing how the story mm -hmm. progresses. Like, guys, I want good shows to watch, especially... If there are Star Wars, and we've had such terrible Star Wars stuff. Yeah, it'd be good to have some good Star Wars content. And of course, because, it's I mean, not as bad as the Wars sequel because... films. Not it's as bad not, as yeah. And, and it's not, like, maliciously bad, like I'd say... T it's not insultingly bad, it's not... It's just incompetently with... made. Yeah, it, well, incompetently written. Written. Um, and I can... I'll, I'll specify, I incompetently that... written. And... Not sure who that. I guess it comes down on John Favreau because he wrote a lot of the episodes and he's the showrunner. Because I, I know that I saw in the comment people like, "Oh, episode four, Bryce Dallas Howard directed this." Like, how much blame can you square on directors for television shows? I don't think you can do a lot. I think it's mainly the writing team that you got to hold accountable. I'd, I'd happily say shows. it's it's John Favreau and Bryce Dallas Howard and Dave Filoni to a degree, oh, sure. right? You guys well, just hate Ben. Producer. Yeah. Someone said, wait, what? Six, seven, and eight is bad. Then by definition, you consider the entire season bad. He's like, buddy, where have you been? Uh, I mean... <laughs> yeah, what, what are we... Seasons. Me and Rags gave it a three at the beginning of this, so... I gave it a three, man. I gave it's it a four, good. I think. You're yeah. showing good. As much as I wanted it to be, yeah. yeah. And there are and, good and... parts. Yeah. Trust me, guys, but... like, if you saw how I was reacting to show you would have seen the disappointment on my like, the disappointment i had as it deteriorated was really even after episode four i was like oh i still get better you know this is a bad episode now but it could get better and by like, man, the time know, episode yeah like how worried we were when we watched episode three mm -hmm. like we were worried and then four came out and we we're like well <laughs> well yeah. I think there was a logic of, like, that one was one that was sort of fillery, though. Like, it could be ignored. Like, hopefully they kick it back up with the plot episodes. The plot didn't come until 7. It was like, uh Yeah. It's way too short. But you could have stretched out the material in this season for a while. You could have done three or four seasons with this material. And it's funny, because people say that, like, that's stupid. You just, want it to, you just want it to, you know, meander along. But it's, you know, you need that time. It's valuable time. Someone said Taika Waititi ruined episode 10, hands down, or whichever one he did. That's episode eight, eight and yes, he did. Yeah. Eight well, is you... terrible. I, what do you mean? Like, in that episode, episode you eight. like, 
Oh, do you, do you mean because you like Jojo Rabbit and he made that, so... I love Ragnarok and I love Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. yeah. He directed no, episode was... 8 and it is terrible. Um, he wrote and directed who's, episode 8. Yeah. Who's John P. addressing? Who's, it says, so you're Rabbit. arguing it's as bad as Bla Batwoman, Rise of Skywalker, Last Jedi, and Captain Marvel, you're high on crack. It's like, does anyone actually think that? Uh, uh, no, no like, way. I look forward to Batwoman because of how terrible it is. Yeah, like, I no way that... Yeah, like, zero on the scale I'm... is Tism, Infinity Tisms, right? Batwoman's like a one. <laughs> yeah, and that's <laughs> where the Star Wars sequels are, about one to one and a half range. Yeah, I, I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. it's worthwhile to set the scale here. Zero is, yeah, like, Crisis on Infinite Earths. One is the I think Star that's going to be the bottom of my scale. I don't know if there's anything worse than Crisis on Infinite They break every possible rule you could ever have. Yeah, like, it's incomprehensibly yeah. bad. I couldn't like, believe the plot that. is actual nonsense. The CGI is terrible. The writing's horrible. It's just yeah, there's, it's, there's everything is bad. impressive about it. Whereas in Mandalorian, like at least the production values and everything is really good. But and the acting's good as well. But whereas yeah, with Crisis on Infinite Earths, God. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, yeah, but the scale, I guess. Like I saw someone saying, "Oh, come on, it's a six at least." It's like six is good. You know, six is good. Yeah, above I don't average, see how right? the show is a six. Yeah, it's above average. Is the Mandalorian above average from a writing standpoint? Absolutely no. not. No way. No. What was the question, sorry? Oh, it's just because someone said they were basically saying, really, it's at least a six. The Mandalorian. Did Rag say Wreck It Ralph instead of Ragnarok? Did I? <laughs> Thor no, Wreck It Ralph. Ralph. Okay, I was about to be like, damn, I liked Wreck It Ralph, though, but. Did yeah. he do Wreck-It Ralph? No. I want to watch doing, right? Thor Wreck-It Ralph. I want to see Thor Rack. Thor Breaks the Internet. Thor Breaks the Internet. Well, he the, was playing Fortnite. Maybe he did. All right. Um, that awesome. happened, everybody. So yeah, it'll be a perpetually promised episode, as in the next time we do uh, the second half of this. But we'll get there eventually. So it looks like it'll be at least a month. So, crap in, I guess. But, um, yeah, you guys good for me to start reading out these super shorts? Yeah, fucking do it. Uh, yeah. I will skip ones directed at Shad and save them for the intro to the next time he's on this show. We'll save them all up for him. Uh, this one just says, oh my god. So, oh, mm-hmm. Uh, what's your biggest issues with Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End? Uh, I can't even fucking remember which one that is. I don't. I don't. That's the third one. The one where oh. they have to go upside down to enter, yeah. exit purgatory. I can't even remember. It's been so long since I've seen them. Well, Davy Jones' locker, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would have to rewatch it to be able to tell you. The last time I watched it was, I want to say, a year ago, and for some reason, I have forgotten a lot of it. <laughs> like it wasn't even that long yeah. ago. Uh. And why they do people never in my head together like a blender? And why do people never mention Elizabeth Swan as a strong female character? I suppose because of how bad the later Pirates movies are that people kind of forget about her. Um, because there's probably far better examples. Most people don't remember Will Turner as a character well, as well. I, I guess the issue is that you can, every time because we always default to ripley and uh sarah connor because they're such great examples but people now think that there's insidious intent when someone says <laughs> yeah. those two they're like oh of course you would and so, so now we need to find but different yeah. better yeah. example well they're really good examples people yeah. it's people have ascribed political motivations behind citing those two now so in order to get around that you have to cite different people yeah, or like we, we use those as examples because they're so good. We yeah, 80s movies. Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny how good a lot of 80s movies are on the objectivity scale. Like, like Die Hard's really high up on there. Uh, Terminator, well, Terminator 2 is the 90s. Terminator 1, even. Predator. Yeah. Sorry, I've distracted from no, it's all good. Continue. Um, are any of you going to watch the Sonic movie? Yeah. I figure. We would say that for EFAB movies, or at least some of us will. I don't know. No, I, I was going to just go what watch it. What if the reviews come out? It's really good. Well, know. the thing <laughs> is, is um, 
because of course initially my reaction when they fixed the cgi was oh no instead of having a meme bad movie it's just going to be bad but there's some clips coming out and it doesn't look too bad i mean i'm, I'm sure it's probably just going to be like mediocre at best but i could be wrong Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'll want to see it, but I'm not going to go to the cinema to see it. And I'll be interested to see what the reviews are, like numbers, see what see what everyone's saying. It should be amusing. Um, And so it begins. Also, the wills of the wisps are shown in Clone Wars Season 6, but you stopped watching for that long time ago, didn't you, Mola? I did stop. Okay. I will do my best one day to restart, I suppose. Um... The Mandalorian is some people's last hope in Star Wars. Can't wait to see you destroy it. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, I mean, season two could be good. Yeah, yeah, it could be good. It won't be good, but it could. It, I, you know, I have... There, there's a, it is a new hope, uh, but, you know, it's not going to be the only one. They're going to be making more and more stuff. Hopefully one day they will strike gold. Uh, you guys like how Gideon needs Baby Yoda alive, so he sends a flamethrower trooper in to burn him alive? Yes. It's so stupid. <laughs> and none of them choose to shoot the flamethrower dude. They all just allow themselves yeah. to be killed, but then Baby Yoda's like, nah, I got this, bro. <laughs> Such a weird moment, because yeah, he's just... It, like, even goes to, like, slow-mo of everybody just reacting to him in the room, like, even if they have guns in their hands. You take it, take it one by one. You're him? like... IG-11 would obviously insta-kill this guy, but just doesn't. Um, Mando, despite being injured, has access to his pistol, can see the guy covered, he's just like, well, we're fucked. Kara, dude, Carl Weathers, like, yeah. he's got this gun in his hand. He's got two! He's just, doesn't, it's doesn't such it, a stupid moment. Like, that episode is really retarded. And it's, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get it to it tonight, but honestly, if, if Shad had stayed, I'm not sure if we could have gotten through, like, all of it before the stream cap. Uh, yeah. It's, it's it took surprisingly long. We we had a big old conversation about the fobs, and I'm really curious if season two is just gonna shut that down in terms of what they actually do. I wonder if it'll like be definitive or not. It'll be because I think or if they'll have some throwaway line. Oh, the fobs expired. Or, I just oh, think they're avoiding it's, explaining it's, it on purpose because it's it's really tough to be definitive about what they do. Well, they work themselves into a corner. Yeah, the like, fobs, fobs are just are a bad idea. And powerful. And I think they're, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I think they're a bad idea. They shouldn't have had the fobs. Um, I'm just going to read this one out. You, you, pickle, pee, pickle, pee, me, me, pumperum. All right. I ah. just want to make sure you guys heard that. So they try to make a magic AIDS. I mean, school bus episode of Star Wars. I mean, I guess coming out of my bum would be a great climax. I don't no, know what to I make agree. of that. Yeah, all right. Up on the magic school bus. Um, Have eight. I messed up a super chat last time. I meant to say you should efab one of his movies like you did with Chris. Is? Is that in reference to um uh Ralph the Movie Maker? Oh, right. Well, uh, yeah, we could. I mean, because guess... we we watched parts of it. It was offline, but we were looking over. So Some doing the people get very upset when when you review a YouTuber's movie because that's like mean, even though you know that's like what? yeah, but it was shit. <gasps> you don't like Chris Stuckman's work? <gasps> no, I don't. None of it. Wow. Um. But yeah, maybe I don't know. Do do do. Uh, I got really drunk one night with some friends while watching The Mandalorian and called Mando the Matadorian because he's played by Pedro Pascal. Ha. Oh my goodness. Nice. Um, okay. Have you seen Cinema Win's new Joker video? He says every movie will fall apart when you look at it objectively, then says Lord of the Rings is full of contrivances. Yes. <laughs> full? Sure. Depends. Uh, you have to give me some references. Wait, sure. what do you mean full? Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I say that like dismissively, like I don't buy it. Oh. Thank goodness. Like you have to, <laughs> like you have to make your case on that one, that it's full of contrivances. Um, me and uh, we, we uh, I don't think I don't know if Fringy has. I guess he can speak for himself. But uh, we have watched the Cinema Wins and Sins videos on Joker. They're both very well. Cinema Sins video is very bad. It makes those mistakes. Yeah. Cinema Wins is one. Quite a few good points in there. Quite a few that are like, wow, you're reading into that and reaching. And then this weird shit. 
he goes on several rants about how the film is being made political, uh, which isn't necessarily untrue. Uh -huh. It's just like it feels odd in his video because he's like, hey, "Look how good this movie is." Also, it's not making people kill each other. You're like, "All right." <laughs> um, I mean, that's a win. That's, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and then he he can he like concludes like, "Yeah, there are problems in the film, but every film has problems when you look at it objectively." And it's really weird because he, he dismisses it. But he's also conceding then that that's what objectively would mean, that you look at those flaws. He says there's a razor thin line between an amazing movie and a terrible movie. And I'm like, uh, no. Okay. It's a weird, right, weird, I'm weird not... one. Yeah, hit the second half of his part two is just, just, just fucking autism. But um, it's a really good candidate to have our very first episode where we cover a cinema wins and sins video back to back. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, because a lot of people don't like Cinema Sins, but they like Cinema Wins because he's positive. Which yeah. is being positive and inaccurate is fine. Being negative and inaccurate is well, that's wrong. And this is it's funny, right? Because this is an opinion that a lot of people actually hold, right? Where they're like, you know, you know, it's the same thing of like you're opinionated, and that's something they'll say if you say something negative. But if you say something really positive, you're not opinionated. You're just nice you know what I mean? like it's it's kind of the double standard of being nice and negative people just dislike negativity well he, the tagline for his channel is like because loving things is more fun than hating things or something like that okay i mean i like debating movies <laughs> yes know. uh are you guys gonna go through the leaked scripts slash how jj got screwed by disney in depth uh, all I planned to do was to read a like script summary of what uh, Colin Trevor's script for episode nine was, and that would be uh, next week. Uh, also, I got to admit, first few times you guys referenced Shad, I thought you meant a different Shad. Yes, yes, a lot of people have. Uh... I'm not. I don't even know. I don't think there's another Shad out there. Oh, oh well, there's a, there, one. there may be one or two. I don't know, maybe. Uh... I don't think so. I think this is the only one we got him on lockdown. Speaks in Sheev. I I have waited a long time for this. By the way, watched John Wick 2 the other night. The best part of it was Ruby Rose's lack of spoken lines. Women should only speak when spoken to. Oh, women should only speak when Honestly, spoken to. Well, I was thinking the reason she's fine in that is because she has she doesn't have any lines. I was going to say, she's downright uh, neat in that I'd film. Like, she's fine, but it's probably... like. If anything, when we watched the episodes 10 and 11 of Batwoman, which will be coming eventually, people, uh, I really couldn't help but notice her acting. Like, I was just like, oh. Oh, it's so it was weird. Rough. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, you guys are going to love the videos that we have on those. Episode 10 and 11 are real doozy. Yeah, they got Infinitisms 5 and Batwoman 10 and 11 uh, coming to Moolah eventually. Uh, no they promise are, on exactly They when. are wild. I mean, we hit the ground running, ladies and gents. Oh, we lost our shit within the yeah. first, like, minute of the first Batwoman episode. It was oh, so wonderful. Oh, yeah, because Batwoman forgets that momentum exists. <laughs> it's wonderful. You'll see soon enough. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, and that ends with, other than that, it was shit. Um, John Wick 2 was shit. I don't know what you mean. Uh... John Wick 3 was definitely shit, and Metal Commander will happily explain that to all of us in, in possibly like two weeks to a month's time. Very excited. And then he's going to make a John Wick 2 video. Uh, so uh -huh. that and will prove that be, it's bad. That's going to go over real well. I feel like both of those are going to be controversial videos to start with. <laughs> well, the John Wick one is definitely controversial. There are a lot of people who still think John Wick is really good. Yeah, but uh, not John, Wick. John Wick 1 is really good, but 2 and 3... Yeah. 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 One is great. I love John Wick. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason why, like, again, there's a reason why we hate the things we do. And you could all tie them back to pretty consistent, you know, criteria. Oh, hate the thing. I thought you meant hate the things we do as in the actions we take rather than hate the things that we hate. Oh, no, the hate, the, hate the things that we hate, yeah. This one says, try Dark Souls 2 if you've never played it. Don't listen to Mauler, he's being a complainy boy. It's a good game, just level ADP and have fun. I mean, <laughs> I would recommend you play it if you're a Dark Souls fanatic. It's just that, um, don't assume it's your fault when things go horribly wrong. That's all.
That's uh, good game design. Yes. Green man good. Also ooh ooh rags. Ooh ooh. How can the Dragon Demands get in touch with you? He'd love to come on EFAP and he believes in objective standards and has many long man documentaries. Uh, best Dragon way would probably Discord. be DM on Twitter email. or at me on Discord or email, yeah. These, I don't, has he tried any of those yet? Because um, I usually catch a lot of what comes in. I do miss stuff I, um, and a lot of stuff ends up in spam. I really hate that about email. It sends a lot of useful things to spam, but I mean, it's just trying to protect me, so... <sighs> you know. Do, do. Uh, hey guys, love your work. For those of you that play it, how are you guys enjoying Halo on PC and do you think an EFAB gaming on it could be in the future? Halo on PC has been fun, but I, they need to add in Halo 1, 2, and 3. I'm kind of sick of Reach. They need to add everything. Yeah, <laughs> I want Forge. And, and the I want thing theater. is, and it's not, right, it's not Reach's fault as a game. It's no. that 343 like, somehow fucked up a lot of stuff about it. Yeah. Which is like uh, inexplicably spawns, incompetent. The spawns, like, the u the user interface is a mess. Yeah, the changes to the progression and unlocking, mm -hmm. the DMR starts, no forge. Like there is just some yeah. baffling. Apparently, there's some bad audio issues going along. Like yeah, man, they I took heard... a game that you didn't have to do anything to and changed it and made it worse. And it is well, that's, so that's... frustrating. It's one of the problems with 343 in general is they seem to think that their ideas are all great. You know, it's like, I know that Bungie had these ideas. But we can do it better. And every single time it's it's worse. Like, yeah. just leave it alone. Just don't touch it. And and yeah, it's taken a little bit too long to release the new games. Can you add them in and add in Forge and, you know, theater mode and these other features and yeah, oh, yeah, customization? No mode. Yeah, um, no theater mode. So Yeah, yeah. I forgot. Is, and there, I mean, there's split screen either. Is there? Is there split screen support on our PC? I Hold do on. not know. Uh, I'm gonna look that up because if the like, yeah, man, yeah, surely let's... they know that nobody thinks about four and no, five no, no. as like. N first off, let alone good, but definitely yeah. not nearly as good as you know one through reach. Nobody no thinks. Everyone screen. thinks Bungie's is better, and three four three is just making all these changes. It's like, no, what do you stop? Stop. I'm like you're killing in Halo. Some, in some respects, it must be weird to be a studio that has been created solely to continue a series that you didn't make. Um, that must be a weird position to be in, where for the rest of your existence you're going to be making when Halo games. Well. Yeah, like when you haven't done well and you sort of got Halo Infinite, and they're being weirdly really quiet for a game that's coming out at the end of the year. I wonder if they're going to talk about it soon because they have to. It's, it's, Time is short. The Xbox Series X is coming out like October or November, and we don't know anything about Halo Infinite. We don't know what it plays like. We don't know what the story is. We, yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. If you, I, if you think Halo Infinite will, I do not know why you would think that. Yeah, you have no reason to really believe. Yeah. I, I would also, be curious yeah. why you would think that that um, thing that you think. Doing like a maybe. Halo Reach on Legendary with four players on EFAP Gaming is totally a possibility. Uh, I'm oh, no. I'm down for it. It's totally doable. Um, so, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. sure. And it, yeah. it ended in also high rag. Z -z 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 -z. Ah, hello. First live EFAP got my Viagra, lube, and tissues. Oh, oh my god. Uh, did you hear the leaked audio of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? She confesses she hits him and tells Johnny to stop worrying about it. Hashtag Johnny Depp is innocent. Yes, and yeah, she's some, uh, under... I thought there was a few tweets that age too well. She's under more and more fire as time goes on. Um, well, did you guys listen to... Um, there was a video where there was an audio recording of some kind of session that they were having. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, he, it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah, he's... Um, People are very sorry for not uh, believing him at this point, I think, which is uh, interesting with all of the, like, believe women stuff that goes on. It's like, maybe believe people sometimes, depending yeah, on uh, maybe maybe happens. believe evidence, yeah. Mm -hmm. In EFAP 2, you used Palpatine coming back in a hyperbolic joke, and that was months before the trailer for Episode 9 came out. Also, Hyrax. 
That make it, I feel like a lot of people would have joked about that. Like, oh yeah, they'll bring Palpatine back, lol. That it's like, oh. And then that oh, actually they brought it. Palpatine back. Lol. They ran with a joke, okay. I guess somebody lost a bet at Lucasfilm. I don't even know. Uh, react to Snar Wars 3 Revenge of the Sith, please. Revenge of the Sith. I'm guessing that's some kind of like parody video. I don't know, but uh. Yeah. Mola, would you consider replacing Wolf Spot? Um. Yes. I guess. Uh, I mean, I'll also be replacing my spot at the same time. Complete sense. No one can have my spot. Mm-hmm. Permanent guest. Permanent uh, guest. I have heard Brexit happened. Congrats on the UK regaining its independence. Also, when Fobbs appeared in Mando, I was like, the writing will be shit here. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you are correct. I just think that uh, they didn't want to have to explain how he could possibly find a lot of targets that are galaxy-wide, I guess. But you still didn't necessarily need the fobs. You could just... He could have just been good at his job. Yeah. You, you could do the... You know, you have montages of him talking to different people and tracking different things and just give us some nice cause and effect for how he would have been able to find certain things. And... I mean, this is the thing, I'm changing the entire season at this point, but I really would have been settled Good. for, you know, the payoff of him killing the robot and rescuing Baby Yoda? That could have been the season finale for me. And um, it would have been a really great mix of genres, because bounty hunting would be like part detective, part heist, part action. You know, these are all, you know, aspects of it that kind of mix Cowboy together. Cowboy noir in space. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what they do with Saison 2. Saison 2. Hi, Rags. Saison 2. Hello. Thanks for turning me on the masquerade. It was phenomenal. Love you, massives. Oh, glad you like it. Hmm. Appeals are coming up February 18th for Vic Mignogna. Fair enough. Best of luck. Hopefully justice is served. Also, yeah, if anyone feels like they're not having the thing read, but it had something to do with Shad in it, like I said, I'm, I'm just, I've stolen and kept all of them. So far we've got 11 already, so. They shall be savoured for him. Uh, heard on one of the EFAPs about Movie Circle Jerk, it's disheartening to know that the film community is so negative to discussion and differing ideas. Anyway, keep up the good guys. Keep up the good work, guys, sorry. Yeah, yeah they don't like will, us. We will keep up the good guys. They do not like us. Uh, we're nope, they don't like really bad people. Like you. Movie circle jerk, they uh... Oh. They, don't, uh yeah. <laughs> they don't like us. No, no, no. They spent eight hours talking about half the Mandalorian. God. Oh God. Those and fucks. Why, why didn't they just say it was shit or good? <laughs> just Hold say what down. you think and don't substantiate it at all. And then just, yeah. Uh, DP... The was trying to tell me how to feel. DP is now proudly sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. They sort out the sponsorship themselves. I have Fair enough. And I hope that they keep the show going with all the money. I hope that it keeps them. I don't. Afloat. I don't know anybody who isn't sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends at this point, except Efap. We uh, everybody in this, in this call. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I meant by Efap, I guess. Well. The, the regulars of EFAP. Like, Jay like hasn't that. been sponsored by them yet, right? Not me, right. yet. Um. Yet. Oh, that's for Shad. EFAP sponsors Raid Shadow Legends Rhino Milk. Um. <laughs> I, would, I would allow them to sponsor us if they had models in game that were a long man and a doggo and a frog and all yeah. these kind of things. <laughs> long man? No, <laughs> Plague Doctor. Come on. Okay, but alternate skin. He's a big froggo. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> uh, if EFAP was a theme park, what rides, restaurants, and stands would it have? Which hosts would have what kinds of rides? Also high rags. Hello. Um, I think I would just be a big roller coaster. The entire thing is one arm that's stretching all the way across <laughs> the whole really thing. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't know. What else? What else, guys? Spooky. An EFAP 
Right, a spooky. Uh, oh, I know. It's a haunted house where people jump out and say stupid things. Like, there's no <laughs> such thing as objective real criticism. All, ah! all <laughs> words only have one definition. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh no. <laughs> That's cool. In my subjective opinion, and then you just scream in horror, <laughs> and then they come out rocking in like a the fetal position. <laughs> and Rags could have like a like a brothel or something. Be his theme park ride. Oh wow, we're going, we're going we're going there, huh? I, yeah, let's do it. I mean, and I guess you uh, made the suggestion. Yeah, I. I... <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> EFAP, EFAP world. <laughs> EFAP world. Yes, we need to... lots of things to be kept in line, but thing that's work. not long here are the lines. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good yeah. Um... EFAP world. Yo, Fringboat, with my favorite honky long boys, Toot. <laughs> Fringboat. Uh, Fringboat. Hi, fellas, have you seen that there's a new Star Wars comic revealed how Maz Kanata got the lightsaber? Sent you a meme about it on Twitter. I have heard about this. So, the, the they have provided, they've kicked the can down the road, as, as we would say. Um, apparently when the lightsaber in Empire was falling down the, into Bespin, a hooded figure ca caught it. No, oh, okay. Okay, uh, and they get it to Maz, I guess. Apparently more of the story will be revealed across the comics, but that's the f biggest thing about it so far. It's just like... Well, that's, a, that's a very unsatisfying answer. I don't know a what you mean. I got it. <laughs> Sounds just like it. the kind of thing we want, I don't know. Um... Hey. You, hey, fellas, have you seen that there's a new... Oh, wait, I read that already. We got that one. Oh, boy, bracing myself for this one. Like, I also think season one is jank as frick, especially the finale. How do you have zero knowledge of the Force? You survived the Clone Wars, but I know I like it a lot more than Rags. Yeah, I think I have it brought up as well in a later episode. One of my points is people, like, there's no way the universe forgets about the Jedi. There's just, there's no, no way. Well, Bullshit. It'd be like if in the 1970s, they're like, so what's a Nazi? It's like, yeah. this is not going to happen. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that as well. The, the Clone Wars would have been majorly impactful to him. And uh, a, the Clone Wars ended with all of the Jedi being killed. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't people be like, wait, what are the Jedi? And be like, no, oh, nothing. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello. If you go outside, but you shit with the door shut, how do you get back inside the house? Hmm? Oh, that's a, that's a trade secret. And Mulesley, any thoughts on Ford vs. Ferrari? I need to watch it. There's a, still a couple Oscar movies I need to see. I'm behind on that. I've been uh, distracted with... Oh yeah, I best... Uh, uh, so, I have completed... One of two April Fool's videos. I'm very happy with the state of one of them. The other one is being <laughs> edited by Mr. Das Bullshit, so that's on its way. Right now, I am two-thirds of the way through the next redraft of TFA Part 3, which has been interesting. I've had to cut lots of bits and bobs to do with uh, things that are no longer accurate, uh, definitively. Instead of, like, speculation. I speculated what um, all of it could mean about Kylo talking to Vader's mask, and we have all the answers now, so I can actually... Yeah. Be definitive about it. <laughs> the, the brilliant answer. Love yes. Me. I did it. So, uh, I should need like one or two more days to finish redrafting that, recording it, editing, and sorting it out. And then once that one goes out, my next plan is to actually go for Joker. So, that is oh, what should yeah. be happening. Uh, unless I'm, I'm hoping 2020 will be the year where I catch up with all my stuff because nothing new and shocking will come out, but that never seems to be something I can rely on. Unless Black Widow's really bad and retcons a war in a I, negative way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how these are things we have to think about now with movies. What if this new movie comes out and ruins the old one? That's the thing. Like, we love Joker. I am terrified for a sequel. I am too. I know. I am terrified for Obi Wan, the scared. series, the yeah, movie. Like, you know, like, it feels like rolling a dice and, 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 well, rolling the dice and you only get, like, the only good answer is snake eyes, as in the likelihood of getting it good, so I'm like, just don't roll it. I don't want to risk the yeah. other results. <laughs> I just don't want it. Mm -hmm. 
but th fuck, if we get those snake eyes though, even though that's always associated with a loss, you know what I mean though. Double sixes, whatever. Uh, yeah. Just oof. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Uh, when I get my book published in a few years and become the next Shakespeare, I'll be sure to give you boys a shout out. Uh, thank you. I guess. Also, there is a. Hmm. Nah, go on. Well, there's a thing that says a uh, Scalagrim versus Shad sword fight. Who'd win? I'll have to save that for him. That'd be funny. Got my pocket pussy and mini bullet from Amazon today. Gonna use it while watching this later tonight, baby. Gonna be a lot of self-discovery for the next few hours. Hashtag blessed. Fucking, right. fucking go for it. Got to yeah. up. Go, go with the flow at that point. Uh, more or less, say my name in a Welsh accent. What is that? Michael and Andriotti? So it'd be like, Michael Andriotti. That'd be uh, nice and Welsh. Any of you seen Sargon's Black Panther video? If so, what did you think? I think I might have watched it, but I can't remember it now if it I, came out with I the film. I saw it, but it's been so long, I can't quite recall it. Uh, I thought it was real good in the context of the framework he used to analyze it. I honestly can't remember what, it, what the video is. Um... Greetings, you massives. My birthday was a few days ago. Longman, my birthday wishes for you to sing the birthday song in your best Goodell voice. Can you do that for me? Also, hi, Rags. I don't hey. want to sing a fucking birthday song in a stupid Goodell voice. I'm just going to say happy birthday. And, uh... Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's probably what it would sound like. Yeah, Mark on. Proud, like, sing happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Like happy fucking Christopher day Walken. Day to, you. to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, it's just these weird pauses that don't make any <laughs> sense at all. Uh, Rags, which Moronatsu character would you? Uh, one second. Moronatsu character. Oh, thank God it autofills. All right, uh, images. What is? Oh, these are animal people. Um, let's see. I am gonna go with. Hmm. I like that gray wolf there and the bear. They are both. Yeah, I guess those would be that. That's uh, who I'm tied between. All right. uh, I I don't know their names or what they're from or anything about their personalities going straight from the looks there. There you go. Uh, Rags, do you have any musical talent? Because I want you to play me like a trombone. Oh my god, we would play such sweet music. Um, but do you have any? Yeah, yeah. I do. I've played. Uh, I I haven't played it in a while, but I. Uh, took piano lessons for like nine years, and I was not to toot my own horn, uh, but I was rather good. I can't uh, hear just, you. You're tooting your own horn. What are you saying? Oh my god. It, you see, that's the thing. Burp, burp. I didn't actually take two burp. horn lessons. Burp. Um, but, uh, yeah, played piano. Pretty good at it. Just grew out. I just not grew out of it. It's, I, I mean, like, I... I grew to just not care about it anymore. It just didn't interest me. It's one of those things where parents make you do it and you don't want to do it. So yeah, maybe you're good at it, but your heart isn't in it. And once they say, you don't have to do it anymore, you're like, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to do something fun <laughs> and interesting that I care about. Hey, Rags. Yo. You going to try getting World of Darkness to sponsor EFAP or do they only endorse streams with Nazis? Oh my goodness. I hope that World of Darkness, if we can't get World of Darkness to officially sponsor in the Claws of the Eagle, then yeah, maybe EFAP is a, a next good, uh, a, a good second place. Um, banned for the Discord, from the Discord for posting Femboy Luke Skywalker. Hashtag no regrets. <laughs> Femboy oh Luke Skywalker. All right. Uh, that's a shad one. EFAP, have any of you seen The Edge? Thoughts? The Edge? Let I don't recognize see. that, I'm afraid. The Edge movie. It is from 1996. This is the one with... 
1997 or 1990. Yeah, 1997. I do not know what this is. Looks like it's a like a survival action kind of movie. Hmm. Wait, who's in it? Anthony Hopkins, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I don't know about this. Oh my God, Bart the Bear is in it. He plays the bear. Well, that makes the most sense. It's I on think. the cast list. Uh, outside of the sequels, what is the least practical Star Wars ship slash vehicle? Uh, in as they, in theory, the TLJ bombers have some use. Was it outside um, of the sequels? Oh, okay. outside of this, the most impractical spaceships outside of Star Wars. Outside, outside of the sequels. Of the sequels. Sorry. Oh, outside of the sequels. Um, I'm I'd have not to sure. think. Um, I'm just trying to think of ships and stuff. You can choose a ship or a vehicle. Um, I feel like the um. The yeah the the Trade Federation like tanks that have the two wheels that spin at an angle. Um, Federation. Which ones are they? Ships. I'll I'll, I'll get you a second. Um, images. I will get one for you here. If I can. Find a picture of it. It's showing me all the ones from episode one, which are actually probably perfectly fine tanks. In fact, I don't have an issue with them at all. What's the um, Death Star? Uh, there is a. Uh, uh, there are a couple the, people who the criticize I, the AT-ATs. So it's this one here. I'll put it in chat. Outside of the sequels, that. Oh, Hellfire seems droids. Seems to be Yeah, the Hellfire droids. I didn't know what they were called, but yeah, those seem super impractical. You uh, just hate wheels, tank. Rags, uh, is that it? Yes, no wheels. Uh but yeah, AT ATs I think yeah. are very impractical. They're very imposing, sure, but you could be imposing and practical. Yeah, they look cool, but they're impractical. Um, but generally, by the way, one of the tanks that generally pops up are uh, are these ones. And I really like these tanks. These tanks are actually kind of cool. I think they're really practical. Yeah, the and AATs. Shape. Yeah, the way that they're they shaped they cool. kind of deflect a lot of shots. They got all kinds of uh, stuff in the bottom. Uh, the, the turret can swivel all around. They got the turrets on the side. Uh, I think these are kind of cool, in fact. I remember them from Battlefront 2. Yeah. I was really liking them in Battlefront 2. Battlefront I had 2, one man. of those. Um, you, guys, you guys know the uh, the old, like, see-through uh, books and stuff that had all of the... Yeah. All of, yeah. The, for Star Wars, those were insanely good. I loved those books, those cross-section books. Man, you could just read those for ages. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Look at that. Those are so great. Maybe if I can get some high res pics of these. But I remember like everything from the Republic cruisers to the uh tanks and stuff, these cross sections of how it works on the inside. I'm like, man, especially if you're a kid, that's the thing. The prequels, they weren't good movies. But man, if you were a kid especially, your imagination would run wild with all the stuff that was in there. It really expanded the the universe in a crazy good way. Um, hi everyone except Rags. Also, hi Rags. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, I never got why if one taps into the dark side, they are better at lightsaber fighting. More aggression doesn't make one better, just different style. Uh, I never got the impression that you were better innately because you tapped into the dark side. Yeah, I uh, never, I, I never knew that. The way that it worked was that it was easier to tap into the dark side, not that it was any better, if you know what I mean. Like, it's easier, whereas being a Jedi is a harder path, but it's a path to greater power. I don't know. Is that true, considering the Emp? 
the Emperor. Yeah, but remember, Darth Vader beats the Emperor. He throws oh, him wait, off a no, thing. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. No, he didn't. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, maybe I'm. Well, I guess so, because it was the dark side that killed Palpatine, because he couldn't stop shooting lasers, electricity out of his fingers. <laughs> I like how he just melts himself. What an idiot. <laughs> just stop shooting electricity. Stop it. <laughs> uh, speaking of epic fights, Doom Eternal is looking fantastic. I'd also like to yes, apologize. it is. Uh, I would also like to apologize for telling you guys to watch Jojo Rabbit again. I missed the beginning where you guys mentioned it in EFAP 70. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Love Jojo Rabbit. I really liked the performances. I quite enjoyed what you would call the message of the film. A lot of the jokes had me laughing, and the drama hit quite well, too. Um, though, very much deliberately, they play with tone quite a bit in that movie like, comedic to dramatic is swapping in and out regularly. Yeah. But I think it works really well, and dare I say it, it's kind of the theme, and it works really well because they do it well. Despite making up just 13% of all DC comics, I represent 50% of Mauler's favorite heroes. Bill <gasps> Nigius, the Steamboat Baggins. Oh my gosh. I cannot... Was that them trying to get you to say the no Well, the, the, the follow-up one from this person says, I cannot believe that went through. <laughs> so... yeah. Well, I mean, remember, the, 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 one that, the one that gets through, at least if you've seen Wings of Redemption's Rage, co uh, rage Compilations or Troll Name Compilations, is Nick Gurr. That's, that's the one that seems to, to get through. Don't read that too fast. No, you you gotta you gotta deliberately or say Nicholas Gurr. That's probably the way to get around it. Uh, Rags, have you got your Albion yet? I have. If so, and what do very, you think? Very, oh, it's very impressive. I I think it is a it is a fine piece of work. I love it. I I take it out of the closet where it's temporarily uh, resting. And I swing it around haphazardly all the time. It's great. I love it. Uh, it is so cool to have it. Huge yeah. fan. Just saving up more for Shad. Uh, oh my god. Uh, opinion on Internet Historian's Game of Thrones last episode. I don't think I watched that. Um, I know about that video, though. Uh... Do, do, do. Um, I guess that's a message for Shad. Okay. Uh, they fly now. They fly now. They really were probably hoping that would be referenced when they made that joke, but not in the way that it ended up being referenced, I think. Um, because it's embarrassing. But hey, well, you know, whatever. Um,. I thought in the original they use lightsabers like that because of the technology available to them at the time. That's why they look heavy. Um, I mean, I thought that the, the the whole heavy comments were more about the sequels rather than the uh, the OT. But I will, you know, what? I'll save that one. There's a lot of shad questions uh, that are delaying my abilities. To... Not a lot of free questions, though. Well, yeah, what can I say, man? Do you do you have a sword channel? I don't think so. Yeah. Gonna write that in your ideas I, thing. <laughs> Maybe sword yeah, channel. I, You're like, hmm. <laughs> Maybe do swords, yeah. <laughs> uh Marry, fuck, kill, Ray, Padme, Leia. Um, marry Leia. And then yeah. It's probably obvious. <laughs> marry Leia, <laughs> next question. <laughs> say, say Sorry, Leia, Ray. Say <laughs> yeah. So uh say again? Well, it was, it was marry, fuck, kill, Ray, Padme, Leia. So, you marry yeah. Leia, no, the rest is pretty Leia, obvious. Marry Leia, fuck, Padme, kill, Ray. Yeah, it's yeah pretty <laughs> much. I feel like that, yeah. would, that would add this itself, doesn't it? It's just like, yep. Yeah. Uh, Rags, don't think I don't catch all the references to the best show ever. What sound does an arctic turn make? <laughs> Backstreet Boys? 
I, oh, what a good show. I totally oh, my it. God. <laughs> Colin. Oh, my goodness. People have made oh, the observation goodness. that you can't kill Ray, and, which is oh. true. No, no according to the, the rules in this game, uh, we were allowed to. She can't beat the rules of Fuck, right. Mary Kill. She can try. <laughs> um... Bringy, did you receive a set amount of N-word passes at birth, or are you given additional ones periodically? Wait, sorry, you, 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 you gotta say that again, I was lagging. Oh, this is a very important question. Uh, Fringy, did you receive a set amount of N-word passes at birth, or are you given additional ones periodically? What, did passes for me, or like passes for other people? I, I don't understand. Well, an N-word pass can be for other people, right? Because you already, you have a permanent pass yourself. Well, I mean, from what I- yeah, I guess so. Um, <laughs> and they ask if you're able to create your own passes. Ah, uh, oh, right, okay, I mean, <laughs> the whole topic is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so dumb. Wow, you're not even choosing to answer this incredibly philosophical question. I, Fine. Yeah, I don't- I don't have an answer, I don't- I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, me. Need to get an extreme amount of schoolwork done before working all of today and tomorrow. EFAP, let me stop you right there. Also, Star Wars Breath of the Wild when? Uh, what am I reading? Bre Star Wars Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when I see SW, I think Star Wars, then colon BOTW, I think Breath of the Wild. I don't, well then, yeah, like I don't... SW, BOTW, <laughs> what is that? What, what am I... My brain's someone, a little someone... melty. Someone in the chat has made the fatal mistake about the the word. Um, this you you gotta you gotta ignore the American centric aspect of it. America is not the only country in the world where black people exist. <gasps> All right, <laughs> you, you, lies. You gotta Gats. remember that. Gats. Um. All right then. Uh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But I I just don't know what. SW. Oh, Star Wars Best of the Worst? Is that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't follow. Um, Backstro of, of the West. That's probably what it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at some point. Uh, no promises right now. EFAP Gin and a bit of gaming. Hi, Rags. Love you all. Hey! Uh. Evening fellas and rags, what do you think of SC-38 Reimagined? I haven't seen it. I, I haven't know, actually it's, seen it's it. It's pretty good. I don't know what it is. What is it? It's SC-38 was the Obi-Wan reimagined fight with, uh, with oh, Vader. Oh, yeah, I have seen that. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, well, how, how was? Yeah, it's, it's a cool fight. I'm not sure that it would have been better in the movie, but it's a cool fight outside of it. Yes, very dynamic for New Hope, you know? Yeah. Um, as of unforeshad. Uh, my tithe to the Shad Man. Rags, list your top 10 art slash surrealist films. Justify your choices. My top 10? Fuck, that's a. Jesus talk, Christ, talk about making up a list on the spot. Um uh Legend The Lighthouse with probably in there. Tom Cruise. Um That is from 1985. Uh wow, what a film. I love I love The Critics gave that a 36. What the fuck? Anyway, I love Legend. It's so great. I don't even fuck. We need to watch Legend sometime. That's up there. Um, I like the Imaginarium of Doctor Parnassus. I like the Lighthouse. That's really good. We saw that recently. Hmm. Um. Let me see. Um. Gosh, I like. There's probably more that I just can't think of. Uh, help me out, guys. Be pretty good. This is your I list, Ranks. This is your list. You have is to have seen list? the film. Is, uh, I can only think of a few. Does um, Gattaca count as an art film? 
I'm not sure if it's an art film. Art is like art or what was it? Art or like trippy sort of surrealist. Uh, like Enter surrealist. the Void, I imagine yeah, would count. That explains my I guess At Eternity's Gate would be an art film. I like that movie a lot, but uh I'm not sure if you've seen it. Art that. or surrealist. Does the Babadook count? What about Witch? Witch might be one. Yeah. Witch. Um that could definitely be one. Let me see. The room. Uh, let... <laughs> Surrealist. <laughs> yeah. Um, Surrealist, oddly enough, in a way, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, I guess you could say so, yeah. Um, of course, Le Fromage. That's very good, <laughs> absolutely. Um, anything from Downward Thrust? Anything from Downward Thrust. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Mandy is probably a fair choice. Are I? I'm almost tempted to say Blade Runner. I don't know if I'd call that an art like, yeah, or in, like in a strange film. way. I would say seen... that Blade Runner is an art film. Yeah, um, it's, it's a normie great movie. Let's see, Black Dynamite. Uh. Let's see. Event Horizon? No. No well, way. No, no that's way. Not... <laughs> that's Paul W. S. Anderson. Wow, you're saying you can't make art. Ruby Rose uh... is Australian. I didn't know that. Oh, I did. Her accent breaks constantly in Batwoman. You did this. I thought, yeah, I thought you we I thought I said I made you apologize for her, remember? Oh, what is that? How it works? Yeah, and you did. <laughs> let me let me look up. Let me look up bad Welsh act actors. I don't know any Welsh actors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for Christian Bale or Anthony Hopkins. They're uh, they're awesome. Is Christian Bale Welsh? Mm-hmm. As Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh wow! So you've got two really good actors. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, also, why a black moon and Tetsuo absent from the list you just came up with? I don't know if Rags has seen those. No. Yeah, I haven't seen those. Why are we uh, talking about lightsabers well, stick like wait whoa why are we talking about lightsabers and then no just 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 stick like weapons are coming out I needed a comma there okay how am I supposed to work with these conditions but yes yeah, true there is a part in Clone Wars where Obi Wan had to impersonate mercenary sniper and he is best shot among all of bounty hunters that gather for mission yeah that's a really weird arc and it's one of the reasons why i selectively view the clone wars in canon because they just do a lot of goofy things in that show maybe use the force to like. be accurate you never know yeah see silence knew it oh sorry i didn't know that there was anything i could say in response to that <laughs> Uh, I'm making my first ever video on Civil War because it's my favorite MCU movie. I made a poll, and Evan Monroe, Smudboy, The Fandalorian, and a bunch of others helped me out. EFAP fans are best fans. They're pretty damn good. Uh, as fan bases go, I think it's pretty solid, and yeah, good luck. There's lots to say about Civil War for its writing. But it gets discounted because it's a, it's a cape shit movie. It's a, it's a, who cares, it's a superhero movie. Superhero movies can't be well written. Fringy, yeah. my girl. No, wait. Fringy, my girl and I hate Joe. Such a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> wait, what's it? Fr fr I say it again. I don't understand. Fringy. Oh, someone said. My girl and I hate Joe. He's such a douche. I don't understand what this. I don't. Well, I mean, both it. of you reacting to it, I was like, "Is this something I'm missing?" <laughs> just, I don't understand. Like, I don't. I don't get it. All right then. This one just says D's nuts. No. Um, I don't nuts. think. I don't think any of us disagree with that. Thanks, Jay. Uh, thirty-four fifteen. The Sith 
Home world in EU was Koroban. It's canon. It's Moraban. Forget poaching. That deserves a YouTube copyright strike. All right then. Yeah, oh, Moraban so Moraban now in the canon, it's Moraban, not Koroban anymore. That's just plagiarism. <laughs> it's just like yeah, all no, right. It's not just, Koroban. It's Moraban. Just keep the EU already. Like, geez, we gotta do this. Um, beetroot and pizza is the best. Beetroot. Sounds beetroot. like an interesting... Hmm, I've never had beetroot. And I only know it exists because of Minecraft. Hmm. Minecraft teaches people about all kinds of things. It's great. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm glad my month-old question was answered, and that Corvo and Emily aren't entirely screwed because of the folding sword. Someone should tell Jay. I, I think we're all, all right, okay that's for with... dishonored. Yeah, yeah, and I think... Jay's okay with not knowing stuff. He's very used to it. It's fine. Um, so, quick question. 3PO can read ancient with language. Was that just sitting around in Watto's junk pile when little Anakin was scrounging around to make him... S and he said, this'll help mum. Uh, what? I think the assumption is that it was just like a standard operating system that was given to C-3PO or something. I don't think we're supposed to assume that Anakin uploaded all of those languages himself. Um... Cause that'd be weird. Uh, do, 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 do. How repugnant would someone's political views have to be for you to consider or actually stop being friends with them after years of friendship? Uh, I don't know. It'd probably It'd... have to be like a fundamental moral yeah, disconnect. Like some really harsh and often brought up racism slash yeah. bigotry in general, like a yeah, like strong if, if hatred. I was there, they're like, you know who I hate? Black people. I just hate him. <laughs> yeah, and if it just like <laughs> keeps just showing like, up and you're just like, yeah. okay, all right. Every day, you're just like, hey, uh, what do you want to do today? Run over people. <laughs> like, people of different yeah. At that point, I'd be like, how the hell were we friends? <laughs> how did that even start? <laughs> I mean, I'd probably be calling the police at that point, but... <laughs> yeah, like, fundamental value differences if they shifted uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. There's actually a Jedi yeah, with a red crazy. saber. Also, trolled Cosmonaut Variety Hour with obvious bait, and he sent his fan base at me. Discord and I had a laugh at his hypocrisy. Oh, yeah, did I... I don't know if you saw it, Fringy, but Rags, on, on Twitter... Um, he quote tweeted somebody who said that Trump, you can't just impeach somebody because you don't like them. He quote tweeted them from a year ago and said, sometimes I like to just look back on my haters and like fuck with them or some shit like that. And he um he scrubbed out the name, but you can see everything else in terms of like his, the, the cosmonauts tweet, right? And his mm -hmm. what he said and what the guy said. And so someone uh, commented on his thing saying like, I'm a fan of yours, but didn't you call Mauler out, like, not a couple of days ago for doing stuff oh, like yeah, this? I this? And then he was like, uh, it's different, because one, he blocked the name out, and two, uh, this is more for funnies, while Mauler, like, does it because he can't take criticism. Um, first of all, like, him blocking out the name doesn't stop anybody with two brain cells from going to find that account. It's really not hard, you just, you just literally Google what each of them said, and you'll find that thread. Yeah. Uh, secondly, he was like, oh, it's just funny, and it's like, wait, so what about if I'm doing it to have some fun? Like, I think these people are funny. And then people will highlight it, it's like, you saved this from a year ago. Like, how do you, how is it that, like, this doesn't come across as petty? And then, um, yeah. he, he got into, like, an, I guess, an argument with some people, and at one point he put out a tweet saying, um, listen, if somebody's talking down to me, I reserve the right to clap back, no matter what the, like, follower counts are. And, like, I just collected up some yeah. tweets. I was like, I literally said that in response to you. Like, <laughs> you copied my argument after saying, like, you should find a better way than responding to people while simultaneously saying, like, I get to respond to people if they say stuff about me. Like, yeah. oh, I was kind of annoyed. I was just like, he's such a hypocrite. It's beyond. Yep. But Very I mean, hypocritical. he's comfortable, I guess. So that's all that matters. Um, Ahsoka left the Jedi after being framed for murder in the Clone Wars. I uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that just reminded me. Yeah, that's what happened. Mauler, heavy sword, Shad, Re. I remember that. That was like eight hours ago. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a while ago. 
Saw an ad for Ark Knights, where they say the game is objectively better than your life. Have you seen it? I have not. No, I don't know what Ark Knights. Ark Knights? Um. No idea. Uh, I guess it's some anime. Uh, I guess it's some anime game. Uh. It's a oh, mobile boy. game. Hmm. Not interested. Uh, Ahsoka was forced to leave the Jedi Order at the end of the Clone Wars, so when she says, I am no Jedi, she is telling the truth. Alright. Yeah, but she, but if you're forced, do you have to be in the Jedi Order to be a Jedi at this point? I don't know. Yeah. Raise a Jedi. <laughs> yeah, and there's no order. It's all shambolic. She sits on a throat of lies. Yeah. I'm just here for the memes. You guys are great. Enjoy the memes. Memes will be coming next episode. Plenty of memes. Um, in Rise of Skywalker, is no shields in Atmosphere only on Exegol? Uh, they don't specify that, but uh, that would be the only way they could actually justify it. But even still, how would that make sense? What, what, on, an, what on Exegol's Atmosphere would prevent a shield from behaving as normal? I have no idea. Yeah, maybe, it's, it's maybe evil it's... Sith Atmosphere. It's lots. It's carbon dioxide. <laughs> There's lots of it. You see. You're like, oh, the ozone, the global warming. We're evil, so lots of global warming. The ozone. Look, look at that man over there pouring out his chemicals. <laughs> it's a guy like with a big toxic we love to side on a barrel. The rivers with our sludge. Shad, we I will. Oh, I'll save that one. What is everyone's favorite war movie? Oops. Also, high rag. Oh, hold on. I Hello. I feel like so. What what was it they said about? Um, ah, uh, that's not going to work. I wanted to do a, a joke, but it's not going to work. Uh, what was it with the, the on Exegol with the navigation? What do you mean? What like, was it? They they could they couldn't know the up was down, right? Wasn't that the whole idea? They just didn't know how to go up without a tower. Right. Uh, no, nah, that's not going to work. Oh well. And this could have been a good joke. I wanted to do a stonecutter's joke, a Simpson stonecutter's joke, but oh well. Now you know that I tried and failed. I'm so sorry. To come um, up with a good joke. My favorite war movie is still probably Saving Private Ryan, but runners up would be Anthropoid, 1917, Black Hawk Down. I like all four of them a lot. Great what about everyone else? Favorite war movies? A war movie. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, 1917. 1917, uh, yeah. Black Hawk Down, yeah. Those would be the ones. Yeah, Full Metal Jack is very good. Platoon. Apocalypse Now, I assume, will pop up as well. Uh, oh, no, I got it. What makes spaceships fall to ground? What keeps, I don't know, spaceship shielding down? We do for Exegol. Wow, <laughs> wasn't very good. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. A Simpsons reference is always good. Uh, thoughts for a plasma bayonet on a rifle? Plasma bayonet on a rifle? Mm hmm. That seems really dangerous. So I think they have that actually in Halo 5 now. Uh, it gives you a one-hit melee kill. It is fucking broken shit. Um, so <laughs> let me see. Um, so the positives would be that you could turn it on and off. It didn't always have to be deployed. The bad news is it's a it, another move. Like, I just, uh, it seems like it's a lot of work and effort to make something that probably wouldn't be useful in almost all scenarios. And you could just put a knife up there. I when mean, why not? Put Mandalorian a knife up there. Are you a referring to a bum bum? His... What? Hmm? You said put a knife up there. I was just thinking of bum bums. Is that where you're going with that? Or... Knife up your bum bum. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it'd be spacey and nifty and. Maybe there could be practical use for it. It seems like it'd be more of a tool than anything to cut things, to open stuff up, to get through doors and stuff. I could definitely see how like police forces and SWAT teams in the future would have stuff like that, but uh, like to cut chains and lock doors and stuff. But as a standard issue thing, no, I don't see it. Uh, Fringy, the use of the periodic table of elements as powers is in a trash anime manga series, Psychonoquasa. 
where random people get the ability to control an element on the table. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. But you said it was crap, so I guess it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. The trash part was their powers were fueled by breast milk. Okay, that's a bit weird. That is a bit weird. I think you're right. Uh, how cool would it be if women's boobs only inflated when aroused and were otherwise always completely flat? Half cubs would only mean one inflates. I think he means chubs. And, uh... Yeah. That would be weird. Um, be weird. That would be very strange, but that'd be bad because you would have to, like, think about the sizing for your shirts that you'd have to have. And they'd get stretched out and then they'd get loose depending on how... Uh, aroused you were, and you wouldn't be able to hide it at all, which would be super awkward. Mm -hmm. And if you, especially if you have big tits, um, yeah, that'd, that'd be a shame. It's funny, but imagine they were huge, and so when you get aroused, it like slowly inflates. It's like, and then something really horrible happens, and it goes, that's <laughs> it, like undeflates. This is dumb, but funny. Anyway, uh. Columbus sucks. That was from Ferdinand Magellan. <laughs> uh, Mola, you just don't like it because you're a massive. Very true. Oh, well. And he follows up with saying, Shad, you just like it because you're the ultimate neckbeard, which I think he would own at this point. He's cool with that. Uh, pass this along to... Oh, that's Shad again. Uh... Whether you like the Mandalorian or not, you have to agree the biggest problem is that 85,000 children died in Yemen of starvation. Oh. Um, I don't think Mandalorian had anything to do with it, but... You know, all the dead kids in Mandalorian were because Mando and they, yeah. Hmm. Uh, toss a coin to your Moopa. Oh yeah, Moopa's doing alright. He's, uh... Away. To your to your what is the uh what is the stream length limit by the way i've what is it like nine hours or 11 54 59 is what i would say to be safe ah right oh so we could still be going for like another two and a half hours <laughs> two and a half oh, i think you mean three and a half. Oh right okay all right <laughs> well three and 20 minutes something like that but yes uh the visuals good? No, the CGI was pretty bad. Oh, about Mando? I don't know. CGI seemed pretty good. I, I disagree. I think it was pretty darn good. But I'd be curious what you think is good CGI then. Controversial take. Baby Yoda is a Mary Sue. I don't know. Baby Yoda gets tuckered out quite a bit. And uh, close yeah, to killed. I mean, I see times. why people might think that. But I do think that he... Um, does that is like the redeeming aspect of it is that like after stomping the mud horn he is just like out for at least a day mm -hmm. uh, so that's something the writing is so bad i feel like this is the only place on the internet where it's okay to dislike it can't wait to hear the arguments you guys bring me joy like none other can truly appreciate you hey rags hey um yeah i mean we got through the first six it was no five. We got through the first five. We got five. three left. Yeah. They shall have their time. Um, TV for all the hours of entertainment, gentlemen. Oh, TY. Um, no problemo. Um, every fob a pause. Fobs are just McMuffins. Fobs, uh, yeah, because fobs were talked about for a while, but at least we know where the, we're in the stream we are right now. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Right. Trackers take away the intellect of the bounty hunters they use to find clues and hunt their target. Now anyone can follow a beacon. Makes them less unique. I mean, yeah, not much stopping you from signing up to be a bounty hunter quite quickly. You should be like, give me that fob. Especially if you've got enough money to buy straight-up armor and a blaster. You've mostly got all you need. You think, yeah. Imagine the first guy who's like, guys, you could buy armor. And they're like, like, what? He's like, yeah, <laughs> down the street. They just fuck. Yeah. Like, fucking hell, man. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, 
why didn't the Imperials just do it themselves with special recovery teams and lots of fobs? Well, that was something, see, and that was something we brought up in the first, like, selection of discussions, and I'm pretty sure Shad conceded that, especially when considering the finale. And yet, like, he would look back and be like, nothing's hugely significant in terms of flaws have really been discussed. I was like, isn't that, doesn't that destroy the entire season? The idea that the Empire are just really stupid? Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't just go get Baby Yoda themselves? It's like, hmm. It's like, oh, but they need to protect their men outside of the ones they murdered. <laughs> it's like, God damn it. Uh, late, so y'all might have to cover this, but I think fobs are significantly limited by range, hence trying to hide in the middle of nowhere. Also, we know AA capabilities of ATSTs. What are, uh, AA capabilities? Anti-air. Oh. So, it looks like they're just slow, f they, they seem to be slow firing blasters, and they only have two of the cannons. If you wanted AA capabilities, and you wanted blasters for it they needed to be yeah, and all you need to do is either park his ship like like a while away well not too far away but an, away enough that once it's drawn out you raise up the ship and just immediately go for it and attack it without it realizing it's a thing as long as you fire off one yeah, like, shot that would be and besides be an we've established he's willing to risk hit. his own life yeah. so of course he'd be willing to risk the ship uh also high rags hello Movie fall. Yeah, an ATST Ooh. taking care of taking down that ship is like no way. It ain't happening. The Mandalorians contradict Filoni's retcon of the law in CW. They in Clone Wars, I think. Uh, they took off their helmets in it. The Mandalorians in the Old Republic were better because they weren't all fairies on jetpacks. <laughs> yeah, on these jetpacks. Mandalorians are kind of shit. When and you that get, was, that's more of a that's when more you of a get point beaten, we bring up later, but yeah, when you get beaten by the guys who have. A specific scene to let you know how stupid they are. Like, mm -mm, not looking good. Hello, long man. From a Quebec <sighs> City listener, do you and Fringy feel vindicated to always wear a mask since the beer virus started to spread? Obligatory high rags. Hello. I feel like my mask is going to be more effective than Fringy's, but yes, yeah, so I think we'll both yeah. be fine. Well, uh, yeah, I guess. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fobs are the biggest plot hole since Ryan Johnson's anus. It makes the finding of bounties irrelevant. What if they don't have DNA to lock onto? Does the person get away? Also, seven too many montages. Yeah, there's, uh, in seven you get, you get the, the, the robot becoming a friend montage, and don't you get the flashback montage as well? Where he, um... I think you... Or is that eight? I think that was eight. Okay. Eight. Because he learns the, that it's Moff Gideon. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with that. And uh, yeah, we don't know exactly what the fobs track yet. They've uh, been nice and vague on it, or at least vague enough that we can't be sure. Movie Bob bounty hunter name is Boba Fett. Nice. I enjoy The Mandalorian. Let's see if that lasts. I mean, I'll be paying attention to season mm. two. I, I hope it's... Better, to say the least. Uh, Ari Fobbs. Let's assume there are 10k hunters in the guild. How many planets do you think there are in the galaxy? 10k hunters covering billions of planets, one per hunter per day would take decades. Well, I guess it's just... Again, this, most... this, this entire, as he said before, this entirely depends on what... If, if it uses range, um, it depends on what the range is. Like, that's that's the entire crux of the whole thing. Yeah, and there's, there's, you can't have it both ways. You, if you want to establish it's going to take them decades to find, then how come that dude found him on uh, the episode mm -hmm. four? The Randy found him. Like, it didn't take that long, apparently. And, uh, I don't know, man. Like, it's just that they're playing fast and loose, for uh, for sure. They, they just don't seem to... um care too much and I just feel like once season two locks down exactly what they do, which I assume it will, who knows, maybe they'll just avoid talking about it. Um it's gonna fuck up season one even more, potentially. Uh I just got into an argument on why Ruby is badly written and I thank you Massives for showing me how to accurately break down how something can be bad. Oh well, hope it's uh been useful for you. I've never seen I'm pretty Ruby. sure I thought a lot of people had were of the opinion that Ruby has been bad for a while. I don't really know much about the show. 
Yeah, I've never seen it. Planet hopping the way you guys are talking about isn't feasible. There were over 70 million worlds in the Galactic Empire, and more than that charted. Again. Then how is it that he got found so quickly? What is the- this is what I mean, like, the rage seems to just be whatever the plot allows it to be at the time, or in terms of just like, it was- it was however much it needed to be for that guy to have found them, and when we're just sitting here like, so what then? And it's like, hmm. Like, um, the guy in episode 5, he knew that the assassin lady was on Tatooine, I guess? And the fog only activated once he got there, question mark? I don't know. How long have these trapping fobs existed? Seems like it would have been useful for tracking down the rebellion. <laughs> I don't even know what they lock onto. Uh, we didn't even manage <laughs> to figure that out exactly if it is. Because they're the two halves of the problem. What is it that mm -hmm. it's locking onto, and what is its effective range? Assuming it uses range. Yeah, we don't even, don't even really know. Because when you because remember we're using, like if we can communicate across insanely vast distances with each other, like the technology is incredible. So who knows? That's the thing. Who knows? Oh my god. I haven't watched the show yet, so I'll just say hi to all. That includes you, Rags. Good luck tomorrow, Shad. May the light brighten your... The light brighten your fall. Um... We'll save that, I suppose, but... I don't know what you mean. Light brighten your fall. Uh, do you have any advice for writing scripts? I'm looking into doing my own series. Like TV show? Wow, well, fuck! We can't clarify it. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, it's quite it's quite hard to give decent advice yeah. that's generalized. Uh, something like writing yeah. a script. I know that we we usually stick to the whole like, you know, stay true to everything you write down from the moment it's become a rule. Uh, work to try and make things feel natural. I suppose. Uh, redraft, redraft, redraft. Send it around to different people, see what they think. I remember um, Smudboy talking about when he was writing some stories that he would have friends of his write dialogue uh, based on how they would react in a situation after being told the basic, like the skeleton of what they'd be wanting to say and stuff, just to uh, see how mm -hmm. they would say stuff and change up the dialogue, I guess. Yeah. Um, Oh, it probably is a reference to Shad's book, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. Like I said, I've saved that message. I'll uh, read it to Shad as well. But yes, um, without going into too much detail, uh, it's tough to give strong advice for uh, writing a script. It's a very complicated mm -hmm. process. Yeah, man. Give me the big Corona daddy rags. I love the content of two of you. Debbie oh. Corona. That was when all four of us were here, and they said it just says, "I love the content of two of you." Well, oh my <laughs> Mola, chat has something's wrong. Chat is messed up. Oh no, this is crap. Are we going to end up debating the morality of adoption again? Sad face. Perhaps we will. Perhaps we will. Oh no, I'm literally in the middle of writing a script for a breakdown of the show. Outlast <laughs> Part Five, eleven fifty to eleven fifty four. And 2050 to 58. What does gratuitous mean? Uh, gratuitous Excessive. means like, yeah. I would. If let me check it because uh, I feel more like more than is necessary. Overly, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the perfect synonym is excessive. Um, gratuitous apparently is primarily the primary definition is done without good reason or uncalled for. Interesting. Um. More than is required, so you'll often find it associated with violence, uh, sexual content, that sort of thing. When they put it in because you're like, oh, I see why you're doing this, because it's not to do with the story, it's to do with you wanting to see this stuff. Bringy, if fobs have a system-sized range... Oh yeah, you did respond to that one. Yeah, I have a response. <laughs> <laughs> no worries about specificity and devil's advocate, Shad, and the rest of you. Explicitness is the point of EFAP, and that's what I love. Yeah, we like it when there's uh, definitive references, and they don't have to be overt as long as, you know, they're information. 
Why are you talking with Shad? The ultimate neckbeard is coming out. And can we get some Slonald in here? Mando debates are boring as fuck. The show is meh at best. Oh. Well, you know yeah. what? We had a super chat in the last one, didn't we? That said, like, when's the next debate happening? They're my favorite kinds of episodes. Hopefully that person is satisfied with this episode. Who knows? Yeah, I hope that works out. Um... Good day, Mauler. Finished your Soma Amnesia videos. In the last part, you mentioned you finished uni and you were stopping YouTube altogether. What did you study at uni? What were you going to be? And what made you push on prior to TLJ's release? Um, so I figured that I was getting a new job at that point that was uh, extremely taxing in terms of, like, I wouldn't be free other than maybe the Saturday and Sunday of the week. And uh, I figured that I'd be spending my time having fun, doing normal things instead of like working on mm -hmm. videos and stuff. But I decided that I really wanted to keep making videos. Um, I was uh, when I'd finished uni, I, I was doing illustration. Um, I liked it, but the course was awful, and I really hated it. And I kind of wish I never did it. But I did two years, and then I didn't want to do the third because I I'd pushed through on the second when I didn't really want to. And, uh, what are you going to be? I had no idea. I did illustration because I enjoyed drawing, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, but I knew I kind of wanted to always get into YouTube in some way, shape, or form. Um, because I really liked lots of people's videos that were, like, analysis of, uh, media. And I was like, I'd like to do that in some way. I tried out a bunch of other sorts of videos, and, um, I settled on making reviews. Long form. Long man, long form. Uh, I meant in charted space, Fringy, not the whole galaxy. The Star Wars galaxy is actually slightly bigger than ours. Um, I think we, we have more planets, right? But apparently it's like bigger in just general size. Uh, but yeah, it's just too tough to figure this stuff out because we don't have enough information on how the fobs work. Like, all this stuff is extrapolation from just assumptions. I just figured the fobs pretty much worked at infinite distances. Like, I didn't really have assumed any other reason. Uh, the, anything other than that, I guess. Who knows? Uh, hyperspace is like highway with gravity points as junctions, planets, etc. That's why some planets are dead ends and others are high value for travel. Very well. Talk about all the great mm. montages. I assume they're referring to... When he's flashbacking, because the only other montage I can the think great. of is when or maybe the... he's talking about all like the great montages of movie history. Oh yeah, I got the toes you could give it the best, and you got to reach your something. You remember that, that one from uh Team from America? Team America? Yeah, yeah. And show us the passage of time. You're gonna need a montage. Montage! You know? That's a good <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. I'm uh, so talented. In KOTOR, it's implied that Tatooine is Earth. Oh my god. I thought it was a galaxy far, far away. Well, <laughs> oh my goodness. maybe it's not so far away at all. Mm, uh, maybe that's the secret, because when it's far away, but it's not that, uh, yeah. I'm, I got nothing. My brain is dying here. I think I might have to call it. I know. I it's funny because I woke up for this, but like I'm really tired now. <laughs> well, I think I need some Z's. That's all right. Would you like to uh, tell chat about how you're totally bringing out loads of new videos soon? Uh, yeah, maybe video, but definitely I've done some streams on Twitch. Is uh, that so... hold on. I need to. I need to find the link. I want. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, even though I haven't done one for like a week at this point, because my in you may have noticed it during this stream, but the internet's been real spotty today. I'll be honest but, with uh, you, I did notice yeah. that. I'm sure you did. Yeah, once or yeah. twice. I, uh... Yeah. But I've been doing streams, and I'm working on, uh, I'm working on things, but I, I'm not going to say, because I don't want to give people expectations. Hopefully there will just be something that comes out, maybe, and then you'll be really surprised, like, with the Christmas video. Oh, wait. Bringy isn't the thing. It's dubious sanity. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. 
But the freaking ones there too, because I host it through there anyway. So e either way, either way, that's fine. Come come along whenever my internet starts working again. You can see me playing Halo mostly. And XCOM 2, I was going to play before my save file corrupted. Damn. XCOM, give it to you. I like XCOM 2 a lot. I know Top Hats doesn't like XCOM 2, but I don't care. I like XCOM 2. Uh, but yeah, that's it. This was fun discussion. I guess I'll be around for the part two, right? Yes, that shall happen eventually, one day. It'll be wonderful. Uh, I guess, yeah, thanks for popping in for yeah. the good, for good near nine hours. It's been fun. Oh. Um, yes, absolutely. We will yeah, we did. Around. Wait, only nine hours? I know, right? I'm pretty sure that's my fuck? longest. I think my longest. Oh yeah, Fringy. Was uh, you remember that Mission Impossible one we did that went for seven hours, and we were all like, "Wow, this was a long one." <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> now I'm like, God, we got three hours to kill. What do you guys want to talk? Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. Uh, all right. I need to catch some Z's, but it's been fun. I will catch you later. See you later, everyone. Bye. All righty. Yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. Why are you leaving, or we do the stream? Okay. All right. uh, I didn't know. I, just, I wanted to kind of do like a goodbye just in case. I didn't know if he was leaving or if the stream was cutting. So I wanted to make sure this goodbye would be both applicable to him and to everybody just in case. That makes he didn't sense. Know. I wonder. I think chat is staying. They're not leaving yet. So we'll we'll, we'll hang around with them for no. a bit. You know. Yeah. I guess we can hang around a little bit. I'm tired, but I can uh, mm -hmm. I can hang around. P push uh, on. Could, uh, uh, this EFAP is cursed. Very well. Hi, Rags. Yeah. Hi. Hey there. Have you heard about JTEC TV? I have. All right, then. Yeah, there you go. Check out It's a Gundam's video on JTEC TV. Oh, I'm presume? not interested. I'm not interested in people's personal drama in the, of, that, of that kind. I have, I have no interest in it. It's not, it's not something I want to... Not, not something I want to delve into it's not my business uh it's probably due to how inoffensively the show is that i actually enjoyed it although it definitely has problems baby yoda is adorable as well yes he is how do you think the mandalorian compares to rise of skywalker and the last jedi the show has been propped up by how bad those movies are it's better than those but like yeah it's better than those i don't think that's an it's achievement it's yeah. just those those are so bad uh I miss Wolf. You would have called anyone who liked the show an objective retard. Would have ripped them a new brown table. Can we go back to ripping on TLJ? I mean, probably. There's loads of TLJ <laughs> I'm sure videos. It that, will happen. Yeah. Uh, well, the Mandalorian wears Beskar, but the silly thing about Beskar is it's actually supposed to be invulnerable to blaster fire, but extremely rare to get. Yeah, I, I have no doubt that it is extremely rare to get. Yeah. Of all the armor, it seems to be very. High end. Uh, shag, marry, kill, work for, befriend, enslave. They, they are our options. I'm gonna have to paste this to you in case you have to keep track of all yeah, these options. I, yeah, um, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Your, your options are Leia, Padme, Kira, Jin, Ray, and Rose. Who's Kira? Well, Kira's Kira. the one from Solo. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and this is Fuck, Mary Kill? So I'm going to marry Leia immediately. Yeah, marry Leia. Enslave um, Rose, I imagine. Well, wait, then again, we got to kill somebody. Uh, Maybe Enslave Ray. She's pretty Rey. powerful as a slave, you know? Yeah, if she was Enslave, yeah. So enslave uh, Ray, kill Rose. Marry Leia. Uh, yeah, plus you could fuck Ray uh, if you needed to, yeah. We already got that. We got Shag. We got Shag. Some Padme probably. Uh, I'd befriend I'd shag Padme, but Kira's. I'd Shag Kira. Well, uh, I guess it's between you got to be friends with slash or, or Shag between. I would uh, work for Padme because she's like super rich, so she probably works in really nice upscale places, and uh, she's like a queen and everything, senator queen lady. So. Probably really nice working for her. Go to some nice fancy Senate parties on place planets. Um, befriend. Hmm. I'd probably befriend Kira because she's 
ruthless kind of. And I, I would. If that means she's going to be our friend, then yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it means so you that shag leaves... Jin. We shag Jin. Okay. Let me see. Uh... Jin Urso. Yeah, she's a good looking. Uh, she's a good looking chick. Yeah. All right. She looks, uh... it. But... She looks fine. Yeah, she looks good. Uh, all of Not you. Not my agree? first choice for shagging, but you know. I think that we came out. I definitely see this as a. I absolutely see this as a win. All of you are great. Keep up the great work. Hi, Rags. Hello. Okay, I understand it's convenient. He's constantly shot in the armor, but he has way better coverage than Captain America, and Cap goes against trained soldiers who almost always hit his shield. Yes, yeah, part of one of the issues with uh, Winter Soldier is they never shoot his legs. They always shoot the shield, and I think that um, they comment on it in Civil War. Um, Spider-Man says, uh, he told me to go for your legs, or something like that, because that's the obvious weak spot. But, um, yeah. Uh, don't ever assume that just because me and Rags like something, that means that we don't recognize a fault in it that we are pointing out in something at the time. Like, there's a good chance yeah, that we agree. because, yeah, we're fine with saying that this other thing also is bad, maybe not to the same degree. But we're absolutely fine saying, yeah, other things can be bad too. We're not talking about those things now. We hate it when people do this on videos we cover any fat. So don't do it here. After episode one, I had so much hope for this show. God knows we could all use some good Star Wars again. Yes, ma'am. A hundred belly rubs for rags. Yay. I'm going to bed. See you in eight hours because I'm certain you'll still be streaming. We might very well oh, be. He might be right. Yeah, oh God. For example, when you're playing Halo games on Legendary, you're not going to run into a horde of enemies as you'll die very quickly, even with your armor. Agreed. Exactly, that's the thing. And, like, the way his armor even covers his body, and I was being generous, too, let's say it will stop 90% of blaster bolts from hitting your body. That's a 1 in 10 shot that, um, uh, you know, it hits you. Like, that's not something I'm risking. Uh, Empire had laser-proof metal, but use it for money. Say that one more time. The Empire has laser-proof metal, but they use it for money. I guess they're referring to the Beskar. It's like they're not using that for their own armor. They just use it for exchanging for goods and stuff. Like, yeah. It's, it's I mean, it's, yeah, it's still... Yeah, even if you don't use it as armor, it's still, like, super valuable. Mm -hmm. As a material, yeah. Mola makes good objective critique of TLJ. Chat, I like Mola. Makes good objective critique of Mandalorian. Gay idiots in chat. Re. I mean, I can understand. There's a lot of reing in chat. I can understand it though because it's just, it's hard to get used to because it's like, but this is so much better than the sequel trilogy. Why are you ripping into it in the same way? And it's just like, I don't know. We're just same judging stuff. it with the same standard we judge. The and, other um, Star Wars stuff. And it took a while to get to references. Hopefully, with what we piled out in each of these episodes, uh, people are going to be relatively satisfied, but there's a lot more to come for episodes 8, 7, and 6. So, we'll have to get to them when we get to them as well. But uh, the season as a whole is just its very flimsy. Also, would you, you're you probably going to be able to do most of your video by the time we get to a stream with those remaining three, right? Yeah, maybe. Depends on what... Depends on what order I do stuff in, but maybe. That's very mm -hmm. possible. Episode 5 and 6 2 is just dumb episode. Criticism of don't apply to the rest of the show. It's not nearly as bad as some moments in 5. Not sure what to make of that one. Uh, getting hit in armor is still should be extremely painful with at least a couple broken ribs or worse. I'm willing to understand that it bounces the standard blasters away from it, but the ones where he gets hit and he actually, like, it explodes on him and he falls over, like the sniper shots in episode 5, you'd think that would do some permanent stuff to him, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, I see it as, like, a really heavy punch or getting hit with a hammer or something. Like, that can't be good. Can't be um, good. And again, when you take... It's not just the amount of times he shot in eight episodes is like it's almost like every time he's fucking in combat at all he gets shot snipers aim for the largest you... part of the body 
So if you're playing a video game, and I'm like against rags, and I see him in my sights, shoot him, and it sparks off, and he survives, and it's zero damage, and I'm like, what the fuck? I do it again, and it's just, yeah, his, his body armor protects him 100%. Then uh, I see him standing still in the open. I'm not going to shoot his chest again. Yeah, um, and I mean, like, if you watch, watch the episode. He is right there. He's just still as can be. She has him dead in his sight. Like, he's taking up, like, half of her scope. She's like, an expert marksman. Mm, to to argue that she's obviously going to shoot the biggest portion of him, it's like, I think she'd rather shoot to kill at this point. Yeah, especially because he's getting that close and she could tell he's a Mandalorian. Like, come on. Like, this, of all the things to defend, you're trying to defend this? It's like, come on. Quit. Love the streams, and I'm currently marathoning all of EFAP. Not sure if it's been said yet. Snipers are trained to aim for center mass like the chest. I mean, we pretty much just went Not over here. That. It's dead. Yeah, we just explained just explain that, yeah. Uh, 0 0.5 MOA groups at a distance. A kilometer are impressive. At a kilometer, it's 26 centimeters, even more at longer range. Good luck aiming at a neck. I mean, she literally just had to move up slightly. Saw the yeah, screenshot. she just had to move it up just a little bit. Yeah, and then she pulls the trigger and it hits him right in the chest where she was aiming. Like, she clearly could have hit him anywhere she wanted, but she just chose to shoot him in the chest again, and once again, it protects him fully again for the third time. Like, quit defending this, guys. Come on. Um, just, just She didn't even try as well. She just aimed for the chest again. He's like, oh, oh well. Uh, I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was, and now what I'm with isn't it, and what it seems to be is weird and scary to me. Abe Baggins. That is a good Simpsons reference. Approved. Nitpick EFAP bad. I'm so sorry that these are considered nitpicks. Uh, Shad. As far as I remember, the distance is larger than just one kilometer in this case, so the fact that she can consistently hit him is impressive. In. Yeah, she is an extremely good. good shot. Yeah. She's very good. And as far as I remember, the distance... Uh, oh, wait, yeah. Uh, the Mandalorians lose because as good of warriors they are, they have no cohesion. They fight as individuals. What do you mean? They didn't do that in episode three. Uh, yeah. What was the they team? Clearly and even in the flashback, they are clearly communicating with each other. Yeah. And bes and besides, like they're in like tight hall, tall, uh, sorry, tight hallways and tunnels and stuff. And, and how much cohesion do you have to do you need if you're a Mandalorian to fight stormtroopers? They literally make a point about how worthless and shitty they are. Like, how much teamwork do you need exactly? I miss OT stormtroopers. ST stormtroopers look bad. I mean, I don't, I don't really mind the redesign in the ST, the DT as they call it, uh, but I just, I just, I'm just getting tired of incompetent stormtroopers. I've seen so much of it now. Yeah, it's like, because now we know in the episode, whenever they say, oh, we can't fight them, or oh, we can't do it, we know that that's just a lie. Just throw out literally like a duck. A duck will kill him. Don't do it. They a can't duck do with a blaster would kill. You know, not even a blaster. Duck with a knife. Just the duck. <laughs> what if Joker was a person of color rather than a white male? The performances and everything else was the same. How do that change things for movie blob and Jebby types? They'd love it. Um, they probably prefer it, to say the least. Like, if, if Joker was trans, they would think it's the greatest movie ever made. Uh, the proper term is Fandalorian rags, not Mandaboo, you silly fairy. I was reading someone else's mm -hmm. thing in the chat, so that one is not on me. This guy said, what's a Y-Wing? Boo! Boo! Not everyone knows what a Y-Wing is. That's for sure. Uh, TLJ bombers are duh wings. Uh, I get it, duh wings. Duh. Blurgs are the dumbest looking creatures ever invented with a dumb name to match. Biologically, how does such a constructed creature work? I have no idea. I am not Jeebus. I do not know how these species work. I'm so sorry. It's very mysterious. 
You should have milked it and gained its trust. That is true. Scopes need to be zeroed in. Fire scares animals. You didn't, it filled his scope. In, you remember this part they're talking about episode one again? Uh, yeah, like it filled, like it- He can't miss. <laughs> he just had to fire. Yeah, he couldn't miss. It was right there. It pops up right in front of him. Uh, pretty basic firearm safety is to not have a firearm you don't intend to use loaded. It's a bit odd that the rifle wasn't loaded, but not unimaginable. He wouldn't have loaded it when leaving because he didn't plan to use it. Apparently he okay, does. Okay, so... He does yeah, he does need it, and if anything... Like, he knows why he's going there, right? There's to no reason not to load it. I don't see why you wouldn't have it loaded. Yeah, who's who is he afraid of shooting exactly out there? By himself? Yeah, I don't know about that. Also, they have, like, safeties, and there's the whole finger on the trigger thing. I'll have to watch Mando now, so I'll watch this EFAP later. In the meantime, you Dumbos have to watch Hardcore Henry. It'll be perfectly balanced. One day. One day. day. Uh, zzz, it just says S dash was too drunk to respond the first time, so I'll repeat. I guess this is about directed at you. Uh, he's wrong about armor in fantasy needing to be practical. Fashion over function, rags. Oh yeah, it's like an MMO. Um, to me, it sounds like R Will Smith's robophobia in iRobot is more consistent. Yeah. Uh, do yeah, you, uh, he is very inconsistent. If I remember that, the in iRobot, a robot decides to save Will Smith and not save his... Is it his, it's a family member, maybe his daughter, because the likelihood of his survival was higher. And so from that point on, he just hates robots because they're too cold and calculating, that sort of thing. Um, and obviously it associates directly with the death of that family member and stuff, but I'm pretty sure even Will Smith is, like, in that movie, willing to talk to robots and deal with them and stuff. He just kind of hates them because of that scenario in his life, and he ends up being friends with one in that film, I think, but... They do it weirdly in Mando. They just... it's weird. Uh, to clarify, the 70 million point... Because I got a bit inconsistent there. It's 70 million worlds in the Empire, millions of independent but charted worlds beyond its borders, then a huge chunk of the galaxy unexplored. Which means that um, they would always... Like, we're almost advocating that fobs are useless because you'd have to know what planet the person's on for the fob to be worth anything, right? Can't go around jumping between them. So again, like we're, it's like lots of arguments happening at the same time when we don't have enough information to... Um, be definitive. But I seriously doubt they only work within the range of a planet or a system. Gotta be more than that. At least I would imagine so. Um, mm. I just came home from the hospital as my mother had a heart attack today. Damn. For those of you... Oh, I hope she's, she hopes she's alright. For those of you who believe in such things, could you send your prayers or wishes? She's very important to me. Of course, yeah, dude. I hope she... Yeah, I good thing she's at least getting taken to the hospital where they can take care of that, man. Yeah, sorry to hear it. Um, hopefully she recovers. Alright, there's a question for Fringy and Shad. Uh, just watched your surgery video. Oh, that's for Shad. Shad. Mullen Rex, has anyone else who feels like it do your best Wesker impression? Oh, we've done that before. Yeah, we've done that before. Like where he says, like... Complete Press. global saturation. Total global saturation. Seven minutes. Press. Seven minutes Seven is all minutes, I can spare to Chris. play with you. To play with you, Chris. <laughs> Chris. To play with you, Chris. Chris. Are you going to cry? Huesca. Maybe shit and come. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> ah, found you. Resident Evil 5 is a strange game. Yes, it is. Oh, what happened? Yoda's OP powers are okay if he's some kind of special force thing, like a species powerful in the force. I like he's sleeping for a while, so they need to pay this off when they explain him. I mean, we'll get more info on him in Season 2, I imagine. Women of color, some bunch may refer to as a female Ewok, along with the delightful dwarves, still deserve the proverbial unbridled peen. Begidious. Uh, that was a message of some kind. Uh, Anakin was literally made by the Force, and he couldn't match anything before training, and he couldn't do much of anything before training. 
Uh, you know, savage, blah, blah, blah. I'm willing to bet uh, yeah, people can do that. something to a degree uh, without, you know, like, like off instinct, I guess, but... Yeah, like self-taught, sure. I, I totally believe self-taught, but lifting and stopping a charging mud horn is just pushing it a bit too far. Um, is for Shadaruni. Danny DeVito should voice Baby Yoda if it happens. Agreed. Rags pooped with the door open while in Vegas. You proud of them? Wow, that's uh. Wow, that's uh. Oh, well, I guess if you're gonna do it, do it in Vegas. Yeah. That's that's the place to do it. They got some nice bathrooms in there. Oh, in their Vegas, like at Vegas, not in Vegas, like in Vegas, like in general, around the Vegas area. Mm hmm. Good luck with the surgery. Oh yeah, I'll save that. How was Luke able to learn Force Choke in Return of the Jedi? Was he taught by Obi Wan or Yoda to use a power like that? Also, Baby Yoda. So Force Choke is an interesting one because Force Choke yeah. shouldn't even be a thing. It's just telekinesis, which is something they already know how to do. Yeah, yeah. You're just using Force Push to push their throat closed. Like calling it Force Choke as a specific ability to me seems kind of silly. We should just assume that he's Though I performing. Will odd that he knows Force Choke. Odd that he knows an application of that is to choke people for a baby. Like. Mm. Right. You'd think he would instead try to pick her up, maybe? Or, yeah, or push, push her, her over. back or something, yeah. Lift her in the air, or, uh, who knows. Also, using for Baby Yoda using Force Heal was awful. Would you guys be interested in reviewing the leaked Duel of Fate script, as you did with the TROS leak? Yeah, we're going to look into a summary for it and probably talk about it a bit. Um, chat has put on their retarded hat for today. I I don't agree entirely with that. I think the we 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 got to explore a lot of counter arguments. I think a lot of people. The this thing about Mandalorian is loads of people hate it, loads of people love it, loads of people are indifferent. It was a full selection today. We're not because like Rise of Skywalker. It wasn't exactly a fucking surprise that the people who hated TLJ hated that film too. Um, but Mandalorian's a bit different and. It was it was cool to have something in this community that isn't um, definitively agreed upon, or at least eighty percent agreed upon. You know, it's quite the uh, diverse set of opinions. And once we get through talking a bit more about the last few episodes and maybe some stuff about it as a whole, and once season two comes out, we'll be able to definitively say some more stuff about Mandalorian. The discussion goes on, and who knows what's going to happen when we get an Obi Wan series if that actually happens. Oof. Uh, do you know of a response to your DS2 vids from a small YouTuber named Modi? It puts into question your objectivity. I, I've been told about a, quite a few now that are responding to lots of different videos of mine. Um, I just don't have time to get around to each of them, but uh, I'm happy that it's happening. Good to get that discussion rolling. I, have, I know I made mistakes in the DS2 one. Um, if you go to the comments on a selection of them. I'm in there trying to like explain how I made certain mistakes or uh, I didn't mean to and stuff. Like obviously the easy reference is the Jester robes, which I still don't think really matters that much because I showed so many other examples of the backstab not working. But there are other things as well. Um, there are droid scavengers. Jawas aren't rare. It should be common knowledge that they would have they would have shock based weaponry. Yeah, yeah especially was... if you care enough to learn the language. I don't know. Yeah, I felt like that was a bit graspy at strawsy. Like, um, I was trying because I was letting the argument run out between uh, you guys, but I was just like, I was listening to all of it, and I just, I just think his approach with the sand crawler was retarded. I think that uh, there's a lot of other things he could have done. I don't exactly know what he expected to do. I think he just hoped that they wouldn't have hit him with the shock guns and that he would have killed all of them killed the driver, managed to find all of his parts and take them back to his ship, I guess. I think that's what he was gunning for, it's just, uh... It was always gonna be tough, Mando. Uh, 
Uh, move on, you're spending too much time on this. Why do these people watch EFAP and not expect examination and discussion? That's the whole premise. Yeah, I mean, everybody has a limit, right? On how long anyone can spend on a, uh, on a topic, and some feel that... I mean, we spent a while on the fobs, even, even I think so, but oh, yeah. we were thorough. There are, in fact, frog species that live in deserts. Their life cycle pretty much involves hibernating until a rainstorm, then eating and breeding, and then starting to hibernate again. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. I can't believe that. Mola, when do we get an unbridled rags from you? Um... Bridled rags. I don't know if that means rags being angry, or, uh... Unbridled rags. Excited to know what that means. I um, never wear a bridle. Also, I don't thing. have a bride. But if you were to uh, have one of those, I could create a video in which you were un of that. Totally makes sense. Yeah. The Mandos in the 90s comics were like on Predator. Okay. Uh, you don't even know what race of aliens he is from. He can have powers that we don't even know about because he was saved by the Mandalorians and adopted. Maybe, and if they explain Oof. that later on, I'll be down with it, but... I hope they don't mm, pull that then. out of their asses. Like, uh, 1315, Rebels made fun of Stormtroopers first. The Rebels had a strike team led by Vader's former clone commander using stolen ST uniforms. He kept missing until he took off his helmet in anger, and then he gained sniper-level aim. Oh, oh, so the Rebel show made fun of Stormtroopers first. Yeah, I, I don't care who did it first, really. I just don't like it. I think it's dumb. And it, uh, it really only gets in the way when Stormtroopers do good. Because you're just like, wait, I thought they were a joke. And I did see people commenting that it's just those two Stormtroopers at the beginning of Episode 8. But uh, it's a Bill Beer comment as well. He says he wasn't a Stormtrooper in relation to having good aim. Like he's, he's like, I wasn't a stormtrooper, wise ass. I don't like it. I don't like I it. I don't like it either. Um, night vision and thermal are sensitive equipment. Wouldn't getting shot by ion blasters fry them? <laughs> apparently not. No, apparently not. Future me, remember you parked at lot A. All right, there you go. Ah, I'm there you go. I miss Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, where main characters could bleed, break bones, and be out of action for episodes. Except Alphonse, obviously. Very true. Muller, have you ever thought of doing an unbridled praise and an unbridled rage on the same movie? Pick apart what lifts it up and what drags it down? I think Spider-Man Far From Home would be a good candidate for that. Yeah. It's, um, it's got a lot of good stuff in there, but a lot of it is half-baked. Which is the kind of film that could work for that sort of thing. What do Parasite you would be a good contender. Yeah, to a degree. Uh, what do you think of abstract film? I don't know Orange. what you are referring to specifically. It's something like films that are primarily allegorical or interpretive. And... Um, I can like them a lot, depending on execution. Yeah, I, I'm, f yeah, I'm fine with the idea. He's gonna be super artsy, but do something. Hi there, EFAP. What is the best way to get a hold of any of you for business? I'm the weirdo making the fighting game, and I would like to make some inquiries about the characters, if at all possible. Oh my god, uh, Discord message me. Uh, or email me on uh, my YouTube. Yeah, email my probably. Email. But uh, email or Discord messages is the best way to reach me. Would that be nifty? Let the oo-woo flow through woo you woo Mubshly. Ooh, thank you. Also, slams fob and puck on dest. What'd you bring me? Also, also, hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. On Wikipedia, it states that Django Fett was a Mandalorian who was adopted by them after his family is murdered. In the shitty new canon, he is nothing more than an impersonator. Lame Disney. God, that's oh, awkward, that's isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope the story is still kind of interesting, at least. <laughs> There's an account called Baby Yoda that says, You talking poop about me? 
Yes. You talk poop about bit. me? What are you gonna do? I'm just having a fun time and enjoying the ride. I even made a meme for you guys, but it has Godzilla in it, so you'll probably hate it. I'm just messing with you. Either way, I'm glad to listen. You know what's funny? That our Godzilla EFAP movie still isn't out yet. Jesus. I mean, the Fellowship of the Ring one isn't. I was thinking, do you think it's risky to try and do a premiere for the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring EFAP? Because, like... Copyrightisms and stuff. I don't know. If it's not been detected while enlisted, then theoretically streaming it should be fine, right? Theoretically. Could crash and burn, obviously. Yeah, it could crash and burn and or you you'll get a strike tism on the channel and who knows. YouTube is a fickle thing. Um but I need to use the loo, so I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Did I act? Did they finish all the episodes? We did one through five, Jay. We've got six, seven, and eight to do. Uh, hopefully we will do them in a part two style thing once uh, once Shad has recovered. Toriel. Critics. EFAP are just bigots who won't let people have opinions. Also critics. The right opinion. I hate everything. Just right. You are watching movies wrong. <gasps> My god. Maybe a few of the show's logical issues could be fixed if Mando was a talented novice with lots to learn instead of Mando, king of the bounty hunters. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, like, I wish his mistakes were more... Uh... Say... Reasonable compared to what we expect of his level. If that makes sense. His mistakes were more comparative to what we would expect a man of his... The ability to be making. This was my first participation on EFAP. Love you. Well, thank you. Love you too. She's hot, you massive fig trees. Sans is in Smash. That's very good. I believe she is attractive. I believe everyone else said she was attractive, actually. That is uh, in reference to Gina Carreno, I believe. And that means we'd be talking about episode 4 at this point in the Super Chats. Not bad. Uh, frog lives matter, Mauler. I apologize. Uh, I'm off to bed, but I've been enjoying the debate so far. Excellent. In the episode with the defense of the village, it is clearly a ripoff of Magnificent Seven. The entire show is a garbage ripoff of a classic western. The, I don't 100% mind if it had been a ripoff if they had done it well, though. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of people feel that way. So, like, as long as you copy it in a way that gives it a new skin and Sort of maybe explores different things with different characters of their own, but also kind of you know feels a bit of the um, a bit of the plot, if not all of it. Just but just but in a, in a way that's believable and consistent. You know, they didn't really do that. Uh, fortunately, this whole teach villagers to fight back thing was done way better in Clone Wars season two, episode seventeen. Same plot, just done much better. Oh. Lone Wars has them beat as well. Uh, lol, short men inside the ATST, lol. What a garbage episode, so contrived. Yeah, episode 4 is probably the worst one. Uh, I don't know what they were doing with that. Like, episode five's poopy as well, for sure. But, I mean... Oof. One of the greatest flaws of the show is that Mando never uses his ship in tactical situations. It's as if his ship is treated as a horse would be treated in a B-movie western. I mean, he'd probably use a horse more often than the ship at that point. Is ER ever coming on again? Mola should do a sci-fi episode with Borzoi and Sven from The Right Stuff Biz. I have no idea who they are, and as for ER coming on again, yeah, probably. Um, he was actually on the last EFAP, I believe, the Super Chat section, if I remember correctly. Good old Mr. ER. Um, just because it's a Seven Samurai reference does not make it good. Watch Clone Wars for a de decent se Seven Samurai homage. Or homage. Huh? They did it okay the way that they did it. An epic line from an, an incredible philosopher. Uh, my favorite part is when the other Mandalorians just showed up out of nowhere for no reason, just in time to save our hero's ass. Great writing. I think it's reasonable to assume that they were... Vaguely aware of what was happening up there, because lots of dramas were going on. Maybe they have some kind of informant that came down to tell them about it. But, um, yeah, they got ready quick. I don't know. 
Chad is doing an excellent job of Mando apologetics. Bless his heart. I mean, he felt he would uh, try and counter the arguments um, as best as possible with each of the arguments that were provided, I suppose. It's, um, it's a thankless job, a tough job, but he did it. There are so many desert plains planets in the show, it's ridiculous and feels lazy. They even all have Jawas. At least Geonosis was distinct. Yeah, I agree. Geonosis is very distinct. One of the ones that uh, most people remember. Wow, Rex must be taking an old dumperoo, I suppose. Mando, ah, you're entirely inexperienced in matters like these. This changes everything. Sign me up. Yeah, it's, it's a weird moment. All these criticisms are good, it just hurts to hear them. Really like this show, I want it to be good. I mean, there's still good stuff in it, as as we did discuss. It's not like it gets a zero. Just that uh, there's a lot of stuff that I think does not work. Sad loser reads Super Chats all by himself, 2020 colorized. I'm not going to be alone forever. Rags is totally on his way back. May Shad surgery... Oh, I'll save that for him. We've got a lot of Shad messages. I don't even know if we're going to be able to read all of these in the intro for the one where he comes back. It's going to be crazy. Mola, how do you feel about being free from Article 13? That is pretty hilarious. The, if Article 13 goes forward, I will be saved because of Brexit, I suppose? I don't know what to think. We'll have to see how uh, everything goes. Mando is the Gedelb guy of space wizard characters. Um, I can see the connection. Can Mola be called Britain Man? Not British Man, Britain Man. Call upon your Celtic Britonic ancestors. Screw the Anglo-Saxon invaders. Very well. Britain Man it is. That can be one of my AKAs. Nothing to say, but I always run ad blocks, so here's your ad money. Thank you. Hyperdrive requires calculation time. See episode 4. Mando is engaged in a space battle while waiting for calculations, and before he's ready to jump, he manages to destroy the other ship. Also high rags. Well, that's... We did say there's lots of ways to explain it, but they don't bother with, uh... Any. They just, uh, we're just meant to assume that, for whatever reason, he was unable to do it. And we're like, alright then. Be cool to know what it was. So, this is a selection of Super Chats all in a row. I'm going to read them. It's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's quite a few, but uh, here we go. Pee pee. Poo poo. Pee pee. Pee pee. Poo poo. Pee pee. Poo poo. Pee pee. Poo poo. Uh, sorry, Mauler. It's cortosis blades that can disable lightsabers, not vibroblades. Vibroblades can just deflect slash parry lightsabers. My bad. Very well. I am back. Ah, they what were two. They were two for you that you had missed. Oh my um, god. I'm sorry, Rags. Buff chicks are hot. Not everyone is into pregnant chicks like you, man. Her personality is okay, but I definitely agree on that, though. I mean, yeah, the actress is hot. Sure, absolutely. I do think there's definitely some appeal to be had in, you know, strong buff chicks. Absolutely. Uh, Rags is scared of a strong woman. I've seen him IRL, a lightweight. No wonder two beers make him drunk. Oh, it takes more than two. Um, if you have, you see old pictures of me and stuff. Sure, but those were years ago, and I have... Uh, I've bulked up a fair amount. I'm not really scrawny anymore. I like to think I've been... Uh, Taking pretty good care of myself. Hey. Well, I think Dave Filoni's episodes are the better ones. You can tell how inexperienced he is with live action shows. Uh, which ones are his? Dave. Me. He direct and write. Lorian. Oh, he wrote episode 5, the one that everyone hates, so that's awkward. Hooray. And directed... Episode 1 and episode 5. How strange. Oh, man. That's weird. Like I said, I think that we agree that episode 4 is worse than 5, but like I said, most of the general public seem to think that 5 is the worst. Um... Yeah, I I think it's I think four or eight are kind of up there for me. Mm -hmm. 
I'd give it a bad, 7 out of 10. All right. Have a happy right. 0202 2020, guys. Oh, yeah. It's a palindrome. <gasps> At least that's what I read online. Mola, what do you think of Luigi's Mansion 3? I haven't played it, I'm afraid. Uh, Moosley, what's your favorite corruption of your name? Moola, Mulebshley, etc. Also high rag. What? It was a high rank. I I said hello. Didn't hear anything. I'm. Sorry. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, but just um, in case it didn't come through, hello. Yeah, my favorite is probably the Mulebshly one because it's such a crazy nonsense version. But I guess the more insane and crazy it is, the funnier I find it. Um, but then again, yeah. there's a balance. There's a balance. So Mulebshly is is quite the quite the amusing one. Uh, watch Jay Longbone's new video. It's fucking great. Uh, are you talking about the one she did for CinemaSins? Or has she done something else? Oh, she's got one called Birds of Prey Looks Great. I will check that out after this stream. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Halo 4 and 5 were okay games, just bad Halo games, in my opinion. Rags, you're a stand-in yeah, I, I, I didn't play 5. 4 was fine, I guess. But you expect better from Halo. Mm -hmm. uh, Baby Yoda asks, do you like me, though? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Rags, do you like Baby Yoda? It's fine. He's fine. No, he's fine. I just don't like babies in general. So, but he's fine. Horrible ones that can save I'm so your life. Glad he's not, I'm, not, I'm so glad he's not just like whining and all the time and just being an annoying little asshole. Mm -hmm. Does anyone remember Halo Forward Unto Dawn? And if so, what are your thoughts on it as a video game movie? And could it work for the big screen? I have not seen it. I have not seen it. But there's nothing about the Halo universe that wouldn't lend itself well to a movie. So. Uh, would you call saving those chats for foreshadowing? Ah. Foreshadowing. Oh, yeah. Very clever. I see. Um, in Shad's book, the protagonist catches a grapist, rips his wang doodle off, and kills him. Later, would be grapists get decapitated in the street. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, guys, what is the best monster horror movie, and why is it Tremors? I'm sorry, I like Tremors, but the thing beats out Tremors in that category. Uh, why do monster movies not have such creativity anymore? It bums me out. Yeah. I agree. It sucks. Uh, I don't know. Because they made that Thing remake. They're probably going to remake Tremors, right? That sounds like something they would do. Give it time. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know, wait. maybe we shall have a renaissance in terms of movies. A whole bunch of Crazy new movie monsters will come out. I'm sure it'll happen. Renaissance. Renaissance. Uh, fuck Padme and marry Leia. Banjos intensify. All right. Oh. Oh boy. Fringy sword channel when also high rags. I guess I'll keep Hello. that message for Fringy, and one day In I will read it out, and he'll be channel? confused. Yeah, You'll just be like, what, what, what is the context? And I'll be like, maybe you don't deserve the context, Fringy. How about that? Yeah, Fringy. How maybe dare you, Fringy. Clone Wars was fracking gold, even the goofy stuff. Except, except for that one bit where Grievous was captured by Gungans. Oh. Uh... Sounds funny. So many people here are thirsty for Rags' piping hot homo milk. All right. This is the very first time I catch you guys live and super stoked. I'm a huge fan of you guys and Wolf. Love you all. Also, hi, Rags, lol. Hello. Hello there. Happy to see you and hope you're having fun. TLJ's light speed tracker was just a fob. <laughs> could be. Oh my god, and it could have been. You never know. <laughs> oh my god, it could have been. Uh, based Neo Sophistry. Yeah, hyperspace is really cool, ignoring Rise of Skywalker, frack hyperspace skipping. Civilization settles around and expands based on the hyperspace lanes like real-life civilizations did around rivers. 
eight. Uh, Will Smith wasn't related to the girl in iRobot. Truck pushed both their cars into the water. Will Smith wanted her saved because she's a child. And it went for, uh, for him instead. Yeah, I haven't seen that film in a while. I just remember somebody died. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Greetings. Hi, Come from frozen wastelands. Love your work, you absolute massives. DS2 series was amazing. Wish you could hook up with TB. God rest his soul. Oh, yeah, it would have been really awesome to have met him. But, oh, uh, yeah, man. And fucking, I can't imagine the amount of shit you would have ripped into had he still been here with all the shit that's happened with the, the gaming world. Yeah, for those of you who really like Total Biscuit, um, if you don't know Richard Lewis, he's a... Uh, yeah, if you if you like Total Biscuit, you might like him. I listen to his uh, stuff fairly often. He's a pretty decent guy, so that might be an option for you. Um, of course, y'all are still going. On a side note, I work as a Domino's delivery driver, and this podcast will get me through Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you, Logman and Rags. May the dawn bless your souls. Oh, and you too. May the uh, dawn bless yeah, you. Be safe and. Always, it's always great to hear people saying that we help them get through work. Can Jedi use the Force to squeeze titties and ass? Yes. Yeah, boy, I bet they have some crazy sex. I just took a huge dump and clogged my toilet. Mola, please say the N-word in celebration. Thank you in advance. <laughs> Ewok. Uh... Not sure what the other person is talking about, but vibroblades have a cortosis weave, which makes a person able to use one against lightsabers. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm just, just, you, I'm, I, I don't know what vo, 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 vibroblades are. I, I don't Vorpal know. Vorpal swords, never, um, I have yeah. no idea what those are. I don't know. Uh, is that the thing that the, that Moff Gideon has in the last episode? That's, that's a dark blade, idiot. That's Jeez. a dark blade? Yeah, they're made oh of sins. Some of these, they're lightsabers, there's dark blades, they're there's powered by blades, being evil. Swords, like stick like weapons. If ever it's running out of power, you just have to start swearing and saying racial slurs and it gets powered up. It's a very strange sword design, but it works very much so. Very 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 does much. Is the Mandalorian not allowed to have a moment of weakness? His ship was broken and he had everything to lose. Shadlow Baggins. Um, I'm not sure what part Sounds of the like entire it's all discussion the more re that's referencing. Yeah, it prob probably the Jawa thing. And if anything, that's all the more reason for him to keep his cool so he can get it back. Negotiate, yes? Negotiate. Like, um, imagine if he had snuck a bomb on board the... Uh, sand crawler ship, and it was like, listen here, you little shits. If you don't put my shit back exactly how you found it, I'm gonna blow up your fucking sand crawler. PP. Oh. Right. Speaking oh. of good monster movies, what was your thoughts on A Quiet Place? Uh, I like the idea. The execution was horrifically like bad. Idea. Yeah, the execution was really bad. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, I... It's kind of like, I was just trying to think of what I could do with that. I don't think any fab movies would work, and I don't think I ever want to make a video on it myself, but, uh... Yeah, like, I don't hate it. It's just a poorly executed idea for a film. Monster film. I feel film. like the river oh. part just destroys the entire film. Uh, Mupa, what's your take on The Walking Dead? I watched the first five seasons, I want to say, up to when Beth gets shot in one of the most funniest death scenes I've ever seen. <gasps> Um, Spoilers. If you haven't seen it at all, you'll forget who that is. I'm sure about it before you finally decide to watch it. But if you're like a couple of episodes away from seeing that moment, and I've just spoiled it for you, I genuinely apologize. But I mean, it's been out for a really long time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've always found Walking Dead to be pretty dumb. Season one's definitely the best, but it's not exactly nontism. And season two is a joke, and I can't believe they actually managed to get that to be something that people enjoyed. It's impressive to me. Season two? Yes, the one with the farmhouse. The one where they try and... I haven't seen it. I saw, like, the first 
Episodes, so okay, so. yeah. Let me ask you a question, Rags. Okay, so we're in the farmhouse, right? All we're right. surviving. We're surviving. There's some zombies around the the world, but we're mostly okay in our little farmhouse. Yeah, I, cool. I imagine if you're up at a farmhouse, there's not that many zombies around. And you know, uh, we have our water like supplied that. by a well. Isn't that wonderful? Now, That's one day, good, yeah. you walk to this well and you hear some noises, and you're like, "Oh, what's this?" And you're like, "Oh, oh my goodness, there's a zombie in there. There is a literal zombie swimming around in the well water." Now, oh. uh, I, I'm standing there with you, and you're, you're there, and I say, Rags, let's get a series of pulleys to get a lasso-type rope to wrap around this zombie to pull it all the way up and out so that we can uh, drink the water. Well, that sounds like uh, one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. But why? It's not contaminated if we get the zombie out, right? Oh my goodness. Do they do that? Yes, and the hilarious part is they spend a while doing it, and when it finally gets to the top of the well, when they pulled it all the way up with the rope, its body splits open and its bottom half just falls into the well and bleeds all over the place, and then they're like, well, the water's contaminated now. <laughs> do they drink it? No, but it's just funny that they thought it wasn't contaminated I mean, I until that point. That, yeah. I guess if they were thinking they could just, uh, yeah, like, I would have been like, God, this well is now off limits. Um, and like, obviously. Mola, please say this same you did for Wolf's story. What does that mean? You covet our viewers, you covet our wealth, your channels fail while we endure. What you will find is our curse. Our true king will show them we do not serve, we roof. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Walking Dead's a really dumb show, and uh, I really yeah. wish that YMS continued to rip it a new one. Um, but he decided to fry different fish. Yeah, yeah I fun. heard it got pretty bad. My parents used to watch it, and then they just said they just stopped caring and got bad um okay so these are the streamlabs ones now we managed to catch up to super chats uh oh my god love you guys can't wait for you to finish the breakdowns of tfa and the newest star wars abortion mauler your rage on ros is fantastic well done bud thank you Two questions for Shad. I shall save those. Mola, please read in your best English policeman voice. Oh, this is for Shad as well. All right. I'll have to save it all. Hello, Massives. On 15, you say limiting artists is bad. But on 16, you say limiting artists inspires creativity. Do you remember that, Rags? We got called out for that uh, way back when. We said Wait, that... When? So the idea is that we say that forced diversity is bad because it limits your artists' abilities to make the stories they want. But then we mm -hmm. say also that limitations through, like, say, for example, you make the force. In future episodes of your thing, you want to make certain things happen, but you've made the force a boxed-in thing that can only do certain things means that you are forced to be creative in terms of solving problems or creating scenarios. And so... People managed to construe from that that we simultaneously said that rules are restrictive and rules encourage creativity. But obviously, um, right. the qualifier was basically arbitrary rules versus rules you set within your own universe. Yeah, within the universe, yeah. Don't like, it's just like Rags writes his own story, and then I'm just like, hey, uh, all of those white people have to be black. Yeah, it's like uh, you can't have the letter uh, R in your script. You can't have any three-wheeler or four-wheeler cars. It has to be six-wheelers. You're like, what? <laughs> You're like, well, we're promoting the the six-wheeler fucking car thing. I don't know. Like, just just arbitrary restrictions versus um, ones that come with creating the universe. Um, I agree with the latter, and you briefly addressed this on 17, but I don't feel it was a good justification. P.S. I, I feel like we said the same thing, because that's the same uh, explanation I just gave. Um, can I use M's avatar for a project? I assume M refers to Mauler, in which case, yes, go for it, have, have fun with whatever you're doing. Um... Yeah, absolutely. 
Do. Another confusing element in Star Wars is the color of lasers. Empire ships fire green, rebels red, stormtrooper blasters are red, clone troopers are blue, Padme's handgun fires green, clone troopers ships fire blue and red. Are they food coloring them, lol? I don't know. I think that's a fair confusion to have, though. And I've always wondered if there's, like, a reason why it's different colors. Like, does it have different properties? Is it slower but have more mass in the plasma does is it like the are there different properties that they have just like you know ammunition and you know the real world has different properties very very curious i wonder if there's anything behind that oh that's what they meant by for wolf story the wolf uh sorry the the knight the dragon the king i, I understand ah uh, have you guys played The Last of Us? It's a PS4 exclusive, so not sure if you would have. It's a good game, IMO. Also, Rags... Oh, hi, you massive. Oh, hi. I have played The and Last yeah, of Us. Yeah, I played The Last of Us years and years ago. I never finished it. I it was, liked it, it, but I was surprised with what people had said about it up to the point of me playing it. I was like, wow, this is the game everyone's going nuts over? Okay. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, yeah, it was it was fine. It was fine. Um, Jay said arbitrary restrictions can result in some great creative stories, though. You know this because you've seen Midnight. Yeah, but you didn't require restrictions to make Midnight. Like, so in that case, they would have made them in spite of restrictions rather than because of restrictions. Um. As opposed to having to write your stories within the rules of your own universe, which can... I mean, any restriction can promote creativity, but it's, like we said, the whole uh, arbitrary ones Yeah, it's like you could versus... guess and get the right answer. That doesn't mean guessing is a good pathway to truth. And Midnight is a matter of budget. Uh, not necessarily anything else. Like, like, Catherine Tate's barely in the episode, and they're mostly in one room. So if the restriction there is low budget as a writer, um, it just means a story that doesn't go to many places or has many people, which isn't necessarily like, I you know I I don't think that that's such a, a harsh restriction compared to something like you have to have this character, this character, this character, or something. But yeah, uh, any any restriction can technically encourage creativity. It's just um, I don't think you should impose restrictions for no just for arbitrary reasons, especially after the story's completed, as opposed to before it started. Um. You both need some R and R, raw and rooftops. Sounds. Wonderfully relaxing. Era. Doom Annihilation is on Netflix. EFAP movies when? Um, oh, it's, is it's it on, out? It's on the we list. Gotta see it. We've, oh, known, we've known it's been it out for ages. <laughs> oh, I know, but I keep forgetting about it. So it's every time I'm reminded of it, it's like a new experience. Apparently, Tom Holland got swapped in the MCU. What? Really? Uh, Tom Holland. Um, what the fuck? Marvel Robert reportedly Green. plans to replace him. Really? That can't be real. Like, why the hell would they do that? Uh. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm just reading a sec. <laughs> this looks like Efton is... Yes, when Holland eventually makes his exit from the role, the franchise will be in need of a spidey and according to industry insider daniel rpk that new hero will come in the form of miles morales um okay 
I mean, I, 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 this is all like down the line and stuff. I yeah, it's probably not. Yeah, but we'll, it we'll, seems we'll like see it really... what happens with that. Um. Originally, the color of blasters was dependent on the different types of gas that were used to fire. Right. Huh. I can believe it. I wonder in, and I wonder if they have different properties to them. But interesting. Mm hmm. Maybe. The use they the use the ship on the ATST means a long trip back to the landing site and spending money on fuel, far more expense than he's willing to manage. What do you mean? Say that wait, say that one more time. The use the use of the ship on the ATST means a long trip back to the landing site and spending money on fuel, far more expense than he was willing to manage. He puts his life in jeopardy. If anything, he only survived because of the of luck, of yeah. the, the terrible incompetence of the ATST, like he's willing he to sacrifice all those other people's death. lives, like yeah, for for what for some fuel, and 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 for, and for a walk, like that's insane. Yeah, these kind of rationalizations are nuts to me. Um, but they should have just bombed it in the sneaking segment since it was sitting, not patrolling. Agreed. The, nothing I works agreed. about that episode. Should have been their top priority is putting a bomb on it, blowing it up. Uh, the one bad visual was from the Trandoshans looking more like DS9 Jim Hadar than Trandoshans in episodes 1 and 2 because they use prosthetic makeup instead of non emotive snouted masks. Alright. Uh, the easy hmm. excuse for the fobs is that they only work a few miles range and only on pre chipped people like Baileys or prisoners, assuming Yabby was Empire held and need dangerous EMP or surgery if they're just genetic trackers it would be bad. I suppose we'll have to find out. Yeah, but once you once you got out of prison you're fucking taking that thing out. If you're any kind of ne'er-do-well, if you're any kind of What if they establish it'll kill you to person, take it out of your rag? Hmm? Ugh, I, it's like that just seems like something there's they it's would lazy. work around and they would know about it and then Mando would say something but again like I said before they never even entertain the idea of how to deactivate it or to fool the system or spoof the system mm -hmm. or anything and if it's not possible then like man they should have said it's not even possible or someone suggests it Mando's like nah it can't be done I should know is, is, no. Uh, I liked the scout trooper banter scene, but hated the marksmanship scene. Thought they were damn good with their actual main weapon, the cannons on their bikes. Mando's weakness is going to be concussions. Beskar's rear cars and droid tanks with thickness. They tank with thickness. I mean, the thing that he was on in episode 3 didn't seem very thick, and yet it was tanking mm. a shit ton. Um... And yeah, I hate the marksmanship scene too. I hate it. And yeah, so once much. we get there, we'll be able to highlight that they're not even that bad. They managed to fucking nail Quill. But I guess that was because the plot needed them to nail Quill. Um. Do do. Rifle could have been unloaded to prevent negligent discharge disintegrating something. He should have used the prod. Maybe he was worried the charge inertia would break the rifle? Maybe there's a bit of backblast if you use the disintegrator point blank? A lot of... Uh, I, don't, I don't buy a lot of that. I mean, it's, the idea that... I, just, I, I don't know, man. It comes across as people are really desperate quit. to make him seem like he's not an idiot. Yeah... Like, like, who is it out there that he's afraid of disintegrating? I don't know. But that doesn't even match up because later he just has it loaded. Yeah, he walks around with it loaded. And if you're thinking, well, in that situation, he's with Baby Yoda and he, he could has to fucking protect discharge him. Like, and man, kill Baby Yoda. <laughs> what about that? Yeah. And also, like, he knows what he's going to do, right? To kill a bunch of dudes and there's an outpost and a compound and people have died going there. Like, man, that should be loaded. 
Also, surely Mandalorian, whose weapons are a religion to them, know things like trigger discipline and putting the safety on, like basic stuff. Given they take 50 years to still be an infant, Yoda's species would not exist if they didn't have natural force talent to protect them in infancy. What do you mean? Why? Wouldn't they just be protected by the adult visions of their species? Yeah, they have, like, parents, right? It's consistent, dumb, but consistent. I don't know about that. And in new canon, the, dumb and, the dumber you are, the better you are at the Force. What? You talking about Rey? <laughs> I don't know. Is Rey really stupid? I don't know. I don't really think she's stupid. It's... Sometimes. She does, she does some weird stuff in the third film. Uh, the Jawa guns are ion cannons, most models of which are actually not very good at stunning organics. If only two or three hit him, he would have been fine. Other than some armor glitches he'd need to ten. fix. Desert there were ten, and there were actually a variety of different weapons in this still. In fact, they actually, one of the things that they did was kind of nifty, was one of them, it looks like they took three rifle scopes and stacked them on top of each other and connected them and basically added a handle to it. To make a strange little space ion laser it was kind of kind of nifty, but yeah, there were like ten. There's a shot him. And besides, can you just shoot more than once? You'd think. Maybe they maybe they have to be reloaded significantly. Yeah, they gotta pop it up or something. Desert frogs have been a thing since Return of the Jedi. Well, apparently they're a real thing. So. Yeah, sure. I'm fine with that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, haven't you heathens watched Predator? Mud blocks thermal vision, or it's cold blooded. Yeah, but even in Predator, they, uh. They. Like him covering himself 100% isn't, uh. I think they, they, they cheat a little bit with movie magic in that moment, because he goes from being, Absolutely. like, mostly covered to just 100%. Um, the part that I do love is that when the Predator scans the area, you can spot him. It's just hard to see. And, uh. I like this. Uh, the ion blast has left his helmet scrambled and glitchy. You don't know this shit. Like this is just being made up. Maybe he did get the th the baby did get the thermals later once he got the breastplate. It's like oh my god, so many excuses have to be made because it doesn't make sense on its own. Uh, in um, a yeah, and also a mudhorn is really big. It has a lot of body space. And when it comes out, it is clearly not actually covered in mud. Like, there's no way he wouldn't be able to see it, especially in a cave where it's cool, and that thing is putting out an immense amount of body heat. Like, there's no way. Like, I get what you're saying. There's no way. Inertial compensators and anti-concussion fields are things in Star Wars. His armor may have had something like that in the circuitry to deal with blunt impact. Blunt impact is always weak in media anyway. Plus, he's just an, a tough bastard. I guess this is to explain how he wasn't hurt more yeah. significantly by the fall. And man, he is really tough. Inertial compensators, anti-concussion fields, circuitry to deal with blunt impact. Blunt impact is always weak in media. Also, he's really tough. Like, wow. Some, some reaching right there. Gotta make sure we make it believable. Can't have it that he's just extremely protected by the plot. Uh, the other upgrade possible to make the lockdown bigger than just a normal lock is maybe a light lightning field, the way Slave 1 destroyed Obi's tracker in Episode 2. But maybe... But Mando probably opened the door by remote as he ran, and Carl was just waiting for the ramp to drop. Um, I suppose that's a potential explanation, but you'd think that he would have had a straight shot to the ship at that point, so we'd see him get on. I don't know why he wouldn't, uh, he would open it well before getting there, you know, it's just risky. I don't, th it, however you cut it, there's an issue. Um, I love the Clatoonian makeup in episode 4, but the episode was weak as hell. The Raiders should, also should have been the same Raiders as the second Ewoks movie. They have the same mix of melee and duct tape blasters. ATST should have patrolled during sneak time. Alright. Um uh, The crime racket went bust when Jabba died. They were you don't know that. You can't just base that off like third party shit. 
Yeah, and I'm like, I don't see how Hut getting killed makes all the crime go away. Like all the Didn't... criminals are just. Jabba has like a family. There's the uh, what's her yeah, name? Yeah, they're the Huts. There's there's and a... even even if the Huts all disappeared, like people are still there. Like they're all there. They're not gonna leave. I mean, it's still Moss Eisley. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah? It would just be a power vacuum or crime vacuum or whatever. Essentially. The crime racket went bust when Jabba died. There were revolutions in the hut slave species when they saw mere slaves strangle Jabba to death. That's why... What do you mean, saw? Nobody lived to tell that tale. Everything exploded on that thing outside of our main heroes. Unless they would run around yeah. the universe telling everybody that he got strangled. That's why episode 1, Nikto, and episode 4, Clatoonians, were totally monoracial. Mono they no longer had the huts to tie them. These explanations, man. Like, there's so much that comes from just content that's not in the mainline stuff. What up, Majawas? Hi, Fringy. Have you seen Mr. Robot? He has. I don't know if he's seen the, he's seen the newest season, but he's probably going to be on it. Um. Gorgula the Hut. Gardula the Hut? Yeah. I know that there was, because she shows up in um, Phantom Menace. She's, like, behind him. And just imagine that when you kill a hut, another hut would take the hut's place. Or someone would take his place. Mm. Yeah, it wouldn't even need to be a hut at that point. Do you guys ever get tired? Yes. I am actually, uh... Uh, yeah, I am currently tired. Mm-hmm. You fool. Killer Queen has already touched the super chat. Have fun repeating the last two hours. Love your vids. Good night, Mola. Good night. Night night. Uh, I made it just in time to spill my shackles on the boys. Thank you for doing what you do. Best wishes, my guys. Best wishes to you too. All right, and that is us caught up with all of today's stuff. Um, how 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 much of an overflow thing do you think we could do, Rags? Well, I am rather tired as mm -hmm. it is. So, I would like to go sleep. All right. Well, as you were, when you were gone last time, it I collected is. up all of the rags-related comments, as in like two word stuff. I'm just gonna read them all out to you in a row, okay? Oh yeah, go for it. All right. Night rags. Oh, good night. Hi rags. Oh, hello. Hi rags. Hello. Bye rags. Oh, goodbye. Hi, Rags. Hi. Also, hi, Wags. Hello. Let's rub our doggo butts together. Let us rub our doggo butts <laughs> together. Traditional greeting, of course. Also, also, hi, Rags. Oh, hello. A chat or so back, I said, hello, Rags, backwards. Just in case it was confusing, sorry if it was. On the subject, how is Rags doing? Rags is doing good. My life is going A-OK. -okay. Uh, I guess right now I'm just tired. It is 1.30 in the morning here. Mm -hmm. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, this one just says rags. Oh. <laughs> Hello, waggers. Hello. Hi, rags. Hi. Also, howdy doggo. Howdy to you, too. Hi, Rags. Hi. Also, hi, Raggers. Oh, hello. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Also, hi, Rag. Hey there. What kind of tea do you drink, Rags? Also, hi. Hi. Um, I just drink Louisiana, just iced tea. Nothing fancy there. I don't, and unsweet. I don't like sweet tea. Uh, it's a really common thing here in Arkansas, in the South especially, that you have sweet tea. But I really do not like sweet tea. I, I just, I don't like it. I like unsweet tea. That's why I, that's, by the way, that's why I take so many bathroom breaks in the stream, is because I drink a lot of tea, which is basically water. Yes. So, yeah, I'll go through you. Uh, hi, Rags. Hi. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Good night, Rags. Ah, uh, good night. 
Hi, Rags. Hello. This also says hi, Jay, but I kind of find that offensive. I'm just going to move on. Uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I haven't watched the review. What are your thoughts? I think that's about uh, episode nine, which has been thoroughly done. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, I think that I think your question's been answered once or twice. Hi rags and hail the god emperor of man. Oh hello and absolutely. Um, all right, and that leads us up to where we're at with the overflow, which normally I would tackle a bit of that, but I am very tired as well, and I don't like giving really schlumpy answers instead of giving uh, more more um, lumpled answers. That that makes total sense. It's proper English. Uh, you went schlumping up flump flump. Mm -hmm. And there was a super chat that came in saying, Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. And then, I Rags. I Rags? Mm hmm. Someone's claiming to be you, Rags. Stop them. Oh, I think it'll be obvious once they try and pull it off. Oh. Nothing like the real deal. And, uh, yeah, with that, I suppose that brings us to the end. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing the one with all of the things I said we've been trying to do for ages. Uh, we've got a shit ton of memes. I'm going to have to spend a while sorting that out mm. in prep. Uh, we're going to listen to that I Hate Everything conversation. I'll probably release it as a separate thing once it's covered onto Sounds Mueller. Good. It'll be an extended universe like thing. Like a mini? Uh, no, like, so the conversation I actually have with him will be an EU thing, and then we will actually play it, uh, on stream as well, so. Uh, uh alright, I got you. Um, and yeah, there's the movie Bob thing, and reading the script thing, it's gonna be this whole thing, it's gonna be great. I think we'll have, I think Jay is the only person I can think of who would want to do all of those things, because it's gonna be a weird stream, I don't know what kind of guests would even want to be on that one. But once that one's done, yeah, we'll uh, it. We, we will be in a position of who knows what's going to come next for EFAP, because we will have done all of the ones that we expected to do. Like, this was one, the Mandalorian stream. We only managed to do five episodes, so yes, we should be chastised for that. I'm sorry. The long man was too yeah, long a Um, But of course, we're very much uh, hoping that uh, we, we can get that all sorted out. And, yeah, stuff is on the way. Working on TFA Part 3, April Fool's is already set, which I'm very happy about, getting all that sorted out nice and early. Uh, we got Infinity Tisms 5 coming soon, and the Batwoman episodes coming soon. What else is there? Oh yeah, the Wolf Part 1 and Part 2 videos for EFAP minis. I'm, gonna tr I'm trying to find a good place to release those, instead of just like piling a bunch of things out at once. Yeah. Um, I'll figure it out. And I guess yeah, that's that's about it. Anything anything else other than obviously? Uh, you... Yeah, uh, I I hope that we can get back to these episodes later so we can wrap up the Mandalorian talk and discussion. Mm. Uh, a lot to cover, a lot to discuss. Um, so whenever we can get back to it, man, let's do it. Yes. Uh. Thanks, of course, to uh, all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for the donations. The memes that I can find will be collected and placed in for the next one. Uh, and thank you to our guests who stayed for so long. Mm -hmm. Permanent guests. Mr. Rags, of course. So, that about brings us to the end. I will read out um, these these other super chats that came in. from. Uh, so, the last one was I Rags, then it was Rags, then Ags. Oh. Then guz, <gasps> then s. Uh, I don't know what to make then, of all of this. Oh my god, someone's really stretching that one out. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, like I said, Streamlabs and Super Chats, they're all, they're all caught up outside of the overflow, which shall be dealt with. Been uh, chipping away for a bazillion years. Definitely gonna get it, get it down. It's just that, um, obviously, very, very tired tisms right now. And, uh, shall be continued. And yeah, the, the Sargon EFAP should happen eventually. Um, Armored Skeptic said he was interested, but doesn't respond to DMs. Um, I'm oh. eventually gonna just fucking tweet at him saying, you're annoying. <laughs> like, respond. Keep track of DMs. Awful, awful yeah, human. Come on. Man. Mm. Um, I think, like, we're supposed to at some point do TLDR. I think he was interested. I need to get back to him. Um... Obviously, Arch with, with, with Sargon. Should be playing, I guess, Elvis the Alien at some point. 
it will uh, you know, pl plenty of wondrous things to come. And I suppose we shall see you all there. Thank you for watching, and if there's nothing else, Rags, I suppose this is good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for stopping by and hanging in there with Toodle Pip Cheerio. Bye bye.